C-H-A-P-T-E-R-B-I-I Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B Mishnah for deaths have been entrusted to Beth Din stoning burning slaying by the sword and strangulation are simian enumerated them thus burning stoning strangulation and slaying that is a matter of stoning Gemara Rabbah said in the name of our seer in the name of Rab whatever the sages taught by number is in no particular order excepting the mission of the seven substances for we learn seven substances are applied to the stain this tasteless. Saliva the liquid exuded by crushed beans urine natron lichemol and earth and ashlag now the latter clause of that mission states if they were not applied in this order or if they were all applied simultaneously the test is inconclusive our papa the elder said in Rab's name the same exception applies to four deaths etc for since our simian disputes the order it is to be inferred that it is exact but the other he does not refer to cases where the order is disputed our papa said the order of Service on the Day of Atonement is also exactly taught for we learn all the rites of the Day of Atonement which are prescribed in a particular order if one was performed out of its turn it is invalid but the other that law is merely one of added stringency are who not the son of our Joshua said the order of the Tamit is also exact for in connection therewith we have learned this is the order of the Tamit but the other that Mishnah merely teaches that the precept of the Tamit is best carried out in this order now reverting to Rabbah's statement this whatever etc is intended to exclude the precept of Eliza from the need of a particular order in its procedure for we have learned the precept of Eliza is thus carried out either deceased man's brother and his sister in law come before Beth Din who counsel him in a manner fitting for him as it is written and the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him and she declares my husband's brother refused etc whilst he states I like not to take her the members of Beth in thereupon announce in Hebrew then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and remove his shoe from off his foot and spit in his sight the spittle was to be visible to the judges then shall she answer and say so shall it be done unto that man etc and his name shall be called in Israel etc now Rab Judah said the precept of Eliza is carried out thus first she declares my husband's brother refused etc then he declares I like not to take her then she removes his shoe and spits in his presence and then she again declares so shall it be done etc but we pondered thereon what does Rab Judah teach us is this not stated in the mission Rab Judah teaches us this the precept is best carried out thus but if the order was changed it does not matter it has been taught likewise whether the Eliza was performed before the spitting or the reverse the ceremony is efficacious Rab's statement above is also Intended to exclude that which we learned the high priest officiates in the temple wearing eight garments but the ordinary priest wears only four of his tunic bridges mitre and girdle to which the high priest adds the breastplate ephod robe and headplate now it has been taught once do we know that nothing must be done before the bridges from the verse he shall put on the holy linen tunic and the linen bridges shall already be upon his flesh but why does the tanna give precedence in this enumeration to the tunic because it is given precedence in scripture and why does scripture do this because it prefers to state first that which covers the whole body stoning burning etc stoning is severer than burning since thus the blasphemer and the idol worshipper are executed wherein lies the particular enormity of these offenses because they constitute an attack upon the fundamental belief of Judaism on the contrary is not burning more severe since that is the punishment of a Priest adulterous daughter and wherein lies the greater enormity of her offense in that she profanes her father Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin a Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the rabbis maintain that a priest's daughter only if an Esau is accepted from the usual punishment by strangulation meted out for adultery and is executed by burning but an Arusa who of an Israelite's daughter is stoned as if a priest's daughter not accepted from the usual punishment i.e. she is stoned likewise now since. In the case of a priest's daughter an Arusa is singled out by the divine law and punished by stoning instead of burning we may conclude that stoning is more severe than burning stoning is severer than slaying by the sword since it is the punishment of a blasphemer and an idol worshipper the greater enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not death by the sword more severe since that is the penalty for the inhabitants of a seduced city the greater character of who sin is proved by the fact that their property is destroyed now let us consider whose crime is greater that of a seducer or of a seduced surely that of a seducer and it has been taught the seducers of a seduced city are executed by stoning stoning is severer than strangulation since it is the penalty of the blasphemer and the idol worshipper the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer since it is the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater seriousness of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is assimilated to that of the omnipresent since the divine law excluded and arose the daughter of an Israelite from the general penalty of an Esau the daughter of an Israelite altering her punishment from strangulation to stoning it follows that stoning is severer burning is severer than slaying by the sword since it is the penalty of a priest's adulterous daughter the greater enormity of whose Offense lies in the fact that she thereby profanes her father on the contrary is not the sword severer since this is the penalty of the inhabitants of a seduced city the enormity of whose crime is shown by the fact that their property is destroyed her father is mentioned in connection with stoning her father is also mentioned in reference to burning just as when her father is mentioned in connection with stoning stoning is severer than the sword so her father when mentioned in connection with burning shoes that burning is severer than slaying by the sword burning is severer than strangulation since it is the punishment of a priest adulterous daughter the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer since it is the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is assimilated to that of the omnipresent since the divine law varied the penalty of Anisua, if a priest's daughter from that of an Esau of an Israelite's daughter from strangling to burning we may conclude that burning is severe or slaying is severer than strangling since thereby the inhabitants of a seduced city are punished the severity of whose punishment is attested by the fact that their property is destroyed on the contrary is not strangulation severer being the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is assimilated to that of the Almighty even so the offense against the fundamental tenet of Judaism which is the crime of a seduced city is greater are simian enumerated than thus etc in his view burning is severer than stoning since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter the enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that she profanes her father on the contrary is not stoning severe being the punishment of a blasphemer and idol worship the gravity of whose Offense lies in that they reject the fundamental tenet of Judaism. Our Simeon's view here is in accordance with his other opinion is that a priest's adulterous daughter, whether an Aruza or an Esau, is accepted from the punishment meted out to an Israelite's daughter, and that her penalty is burning. Now, since the divine law varied the punishment of an Aruza, if a priest's daughter from that of an Israelite's daughter from stoning to burning, it follows that burning is a severe penalty. Burning is severer than strangulation, since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter. The gravity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer than burning, being the punishment of one who strikes his father or mother. The enormity of whose offense is constituted by the fact that their honor is compared to that of the omnipresent, since the divine law excluded an Esau, the daughter of a priest, from the penalty of an Esau, if an Israelite's daughter by. Changing her death from strangling to burning it follows that burning is severe burning is severe than slaying since it is the punishment of a priest adulterous daughter the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not the sword more severe since it is the penalty of the inhabitants of a seduced city the gravity of whose offense is shown by the fact that their property is destroyed now consider whose offense is greater that of a seducer or of a seduced Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin be surely that of a seducer this affords an argument from a major to a minor premise if burning is severe than strangulation as has already been shown though the latter is severe than the sword it burning is surely severe than slaying which is a lesser penalty stoning is severe than strangulation being the penalty of a blasphemer and idol worshipper the extreme gravity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severe since it is the Penalty of one who smites his father or mother the gravity of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is likened etc. Since the divine law excluded an Aruza the daughter of an Israelite from the penalty of an Esau the daughter of an Israelite changing it from strangling to stoning it foll
Punishment is stoning Arsimian said it is burning if she committed incestuous adultery with her father. Her punishment is stoning Arsimian said it is burning. What does this shoe that according to the rabbis only Anisua of a priest's daughter was excluded from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter by being burnt instead of strangled, but not so in Aruza, but according to Arsimian, both in Aruza and Anisua of a priest's daughter were thus accepted by being burnt instead of strangled. Why so? Because the rabbis consider stoning to be severe, but Arsimian holds burning to be severe, and from this is inferred that if a person incurred two death penalties, he is punished by the more severe. What statement of Arsimian shows that he holds that the priest's daughter, whether in Aruza or Nisua, is punished by burning? It has been taught Arsimian said two general principles have been stated in respect of a priest's daughter. Do these principles apply only to a priest's daughter and not to an Israelite's daughter? Surely not say thus in respect of a priest's daughter too, but then scripture excluded a priest's daughter in Nisua from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter in Nisua and in Aruza from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter in Aruza. Now just as when the scripture excluded the priest's daughter in Nisua from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter in Nisua, it was in order to decree a severe punishment, so also when excluding the priest's daughter in Aruza. From the penalty of an Israelite's daughter in Aruza, it must have been in order to impose a greater punishment. But false witnesses in respect of an Esau, the daughter of a priest, are treated as though they had testified against an Israelite's daughter. Likewise, if in respect of an Aruza who is a priest's daughter, they are punished just as though they had testified against an Israelite's daughter. Our rabbis taught, and the daughter of any priest, if she profaned herself, I might think that this applies even to the profanation of the Sabbath. But the writ states by playing the whore, the scripture speaks only of profanation through whoredom. I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman. But her father is mentioned in this passage, and her father is also mentioned elsewhere. Just as elsewhere, the reference is to whoredom by one who is bound to a husband. So here too, but perhaps her father is stated in order to exclude others. When scripture states she profaneth her father. It must apply to whoredom with others hence to what purpose do I put the phrase her father which strictly speaking is superfluous her father is mentioned in this passage and her father is also mentioned elsewhere just as elsewhere the reference is to whoredom by one who is bound to a husband so here too if so just as the reference there is to a maiden who is an Aruza so here too the reference is to a maiden who is an Aruza but if she is a maiden and an Isua or if she is a full grown damsel and an Aruza or a full grown damsel and an Isua or even if she is aged once do we know that the same law applies the writ states and the daughter of any priest implying that the law holds good in all cases the daughter of any priest Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin from this phrase I know the law only if she was married to a priest but if she was married to a Levite Israelite even a profane person bastard or a Nathan once do we know that the same applies from the verse and the daughter of a man who is a priest which teaches that even if she is married to one who is not a priest the same applies further she profaneth her father she shall be burnt in fire teaches that only she is punished by fire but not her paramour nor those who testify falsely against her are Eliezer said if with her father she is burnt if with her father in law she is stoned the master said I might think that this applies even to the profanation of the Sabbath but if she profane the Sabbath must she not be stoned robber replied this is taught according to our Simeon who regards burning a severe penalty I might think that since the divine law has in general been stricter with the priests than with the Israelites giving them an additional number of precepts therefore the priest's daughter if she profane the Sabbath should be burnt hence we are taught that this verse applies only to profanation by whoredom but why should she differ from a priest himself I would think that a priest is punished more leniently because he is permitted to work on the Sabbath in the sacrificial service but since a priest's daughter is not so permitted her punishment should be stoning we are therefore taught otherwise I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman but does not the writ state by playing the whore this is taught on the view of our Eliezer who maintained if an unmarried man cohabits with an unmarried woman without conjugal intent he renders her a harlot but perhaps her father is stated in order to exclude others how then would you explain the verse that she committed adulterous incest with her father if so why only a priest's daughter does not the same apply to an Israelite's daughter for did not Rabbi say our Isaac be a he said unto me we learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages and likewise similar wickedness into the verse she profaneth is necessary for El would think that this whole passage treats of incest with one's father and the penalty of burning is prescribed here intentionally to obviate Rabbi's deduction hence the deduction from she profaneth the daughter of any priest from this phrase I know the law only if she was married to a priest if she was married to a Levite Israelite even a profane person bastard or a Nathan once do I know that the same applies from the verse and the daughter of a man who is a priest which teaches that even if she is married to one who is not a priest the same applies but because she is married to one of these is she no longer considered a priest's daughter moreover does scripture state a priest's daughter married to a priest I might think that since scripture states if she profaned herself by playing the whore the law deals only with one who now profanes herself for the first time but in these other cases where she was already profaned before this law should not apply for a master stated the verse if the priest's daughter also be married Unto a stranger she may not eat of an offering of the holy things teaches that if she cohabits with one who is unfit for her he disqualifies her to eat of the holy food and similarly if she was married to a Levite or an Israelite since scripture also states but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's her house as in her youth she shall eat of father's meat i.e. of the holy food it shows that as long as her husband a Levite or Israelite is alive she must not eat of the holy food hence El would think that she should not be burnt therefore the verse teaches otherwise now this ruling that even if married to a bastard etc she is burnt does not agree with our mayor's view for it has been taught if a priest's daughter married to an Israelite aid of Terah she must repay the principles but not the additional fifth if she committed adultery her penalty is burning but if she was married to one unfit for her e.g. a bastard etc she must repay the principal and the added fifth and her penalty is strangulation this is the ruling of our mayor but the sages hold that in both cases she must pay the principal but not the fifth and her penalty is burning our Eliezer said if with her father she is burnt if with her father-in-law she is stoned what is meant by her father and her father-in-law if we say her father means that she committed whoredom with her father and her father-in-law that she did so with her father-in-law why speak particularly of a priest's daughter and Israelite's daughter too is thus punished a daughter for incest with her father by burning and a daughter-in-law by stoning but her father means under her father's authority and her father-in-law indicates under her father-in-law's authority whose view is this if the rabbis do they not maintain that an is excluded from strangulation and punished by burning but not so an who is stoned if our Simeons does he not maintain that both an Aruza and Anisua are burnt and if our Ishmaels does he not maintain that only an Aruza is burnt but not Anisua and accordingly when under the authority of her father-in-law she is strangled Rabin sent a message in the name of our Jose son of our Hannah this is the explanation of the teaching indeed it is in accordance with the rabbi's views and this is its meaning where an adulterous woman's death is more lenient than that of her father for incest with his daughter that is in the case of an Israelite's daughter who is Aruza her punishment being strangulation and in the case of a priest's daughter her punishment is the same as her father's is burning but where an adulterous woman's penalty is greater than her father's that is in the case of an Israelite's daughter who is an Aruza her punishment being stoning then in the case of a priest's daughter her punishment is as that of her father-in-law for incest with her be stoning our Jeremiah objected to this explanation does then the the state greater or lesser but our Jeremiah explained it thus Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be in truth this is in accordance with our Ishmael's views and this is its meaning with her father i.e. whilst under her parental roof i.e. Aruza her punishment is burning with her father-in-law i.e. for incest with her father-in-law she is stoned but if she committed adultery with any other person she is strangled Rabbah objected to this why this difference in the meaning attached to the two phrases either each is to be understood literally or to refer to the authority under which she is hence Rabbah explained it thus this is in agreement with our Simeon who holds burning to be the severest penalty our Eliezer who taught this maintaining that Anisua is as an Aruza just as with an Aruza the penalty of
Statement of our Ishmael was referred to and has been taught in the daughter of any priest if she profanes herself by playing the whole scripture here speaks of a maiden and heir who is an Aruza you say so but perhaps it also refers to Anisua the Ritz saith and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death now all are included in the terms adulterer and adulteress. But the writ excluded the daughter of an Israelite teaching that she is stoned and the daughter of a priest teaching that she is burnt just as the exception made for an Israelite's daughter refers to an Aruza but not an Isua so also when a priest's daughter was accepted an Aruza was so accepted but not an Isua further false witnesses in respect of the charge of adultery and the paramour of an adulterous woman were originally included in the verse if a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong then ye shall do unto him as he had thought to hope done unto his brother now how can the words as he had thought apply to a paramour but save us the punishment of her false witnesses is included in the text referring to the death of her paramour because scripture states then ye shall do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother implying but not unto his sister this is our Ishmael's opinion our Akibah said a priest's daughter. Whether an Aruza or an Isua he's accepted from the punishment of strangulation but is punished with fire I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman but her father is mentioned in this passage and her father is also mentioned elsewhere just as elsewhere the reference is to whoredom by one who is bound to a husband so here too thereupon our Ishmael said unto him if so just as the second passage refers to a maiden and heir who is an Aruza so this verse treating of a priest. Daughter should be taken to refer to a maiden who is an Aruza but if an Isua her punishment should be different our Akiva replied my brother I interpret the end the daughter etc when it would have been sufficient to say the daughter etc as teaching the inclusion of an Isua our Ishmael said to him shall we accept this woman i.e. an Isua from the punishment of strangulation and impose the severe penalty of death by fire because you interpret the superfluous of and if the superfluous. Law indicates the inclusion of an Isua then include an unmarried woman too whilst if it implies the exclusion of an unmarried woman since the Deuteronomic passage explicitly relates to a married woman then exclude an Isua too and our Akiva he holds that the Gezerish Allah serves the purpose to exclude an unmarried woman whilst the superfluous Bob serves to indicate the inclusion of an Isua and our Ishmael in raising the foregoing objection he thought that since our Akiva had replied I Interpret the superfluous Bob it proved that he had withdrawn his deduction from the Gezerish Allah now how does our Ishmael interpret the superfluous Bob as showing that which was taught by the father of Samuel B. Ob and since we find scripture differentiating in male priests between the physically unblemished and the blemished I would think that a distinction must also be drawn in their daughters therefore scripture writes a plenastic Bob to teach the inclusion of the daughter of a Physically blemished priest and our Akiva he deduces this from the verse for the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they i.e. the priests do offer therefore they shall be holy and our Ishmael he maintains that that verse could apply only to priests themselves but not to their daughters hence the necessity of the pleonastic Bob now how does our Ishmael interpret Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the verse she prophet her father he employs it in accordance with our Meir's dictum. As it has been taught our Meir used to say what is meant by the verse she prophet her father if he the father was regarded as holy he is now regarded as profane if he was treated with respect he is now treated with contempt and men say curse be he who begot her curse be he who brought her up curse be he from whose loins she sprung or as she said in accordance with whose view is a wicked man called the son of a wicked man even if he is actually the son of a righteous man it is in accordance. With this tannis dictum that is the manner of stoning to what does this refer to the statement in the preceding mission when the verdict of guilty was finally announced he the accused was let out to be stoned now the scaffolding for stoning was twice a man's height etc and because the tannis is about to teach the manner of death by fire he sums up the foregoing with the words that is the manner of stoning etc mission of the manner in which burning is executed is as follows he who had been thus condemned was lowered into dung up to his armpits and a hard cloth was placed within a soft one wound round his neck and the two loose ends pulled in opposite directions forcing him to open his mouth a wick was then lit and thrown into his mouth so that it descended into his body and burnt his bowels or judah said should he however have died at their hands being strangled by the bandage before the wick was thrown into his mouth or before it could act he would not have been executed by fire as prescribed hence it was done thus his month was forced open with pincers against his wish the wick lit and thrown into his mouth so that it descended into his body and burnt his bowels or Eliezer Bezotic said it once happened that a priest's daughter committed adultery whereupon bundles of faggots were placed round about her and she was burnt the sages replied that was because the Beth Din at that time was not well learned in law Gemara what is meant by wick our mathness said elite. Or whence do we know this it is inferred from the fact that burning is decreed here and was also the fate of the assembly of Korah just as there the reference is to the burning of the soul the body remaining intact so here too our Eliezer said it is deduced from the employment of the word burning here and in the case of Aaron's sons just as there the burning of the soul is meant while the body remained intact so here too now he who deduces it from the assembly of Korah whence does he know that? They were thus burnt because it is written speak unto Eliezer that he take up the censers out of the burning the censers of these sinners against their own souls implying that their souls were burned but their bodies were unharmed and the other he maintains that they were literally burnt i.e. their bodies and what is the meaning of against their own souls that they incurred the punishment of fire because of the pollution of their souls as Resh Lakish taught for our Simeon B. Lakish. Said what is the meaning of the verse with hypocritical mockers in feast they gnashed upon me with their teeth because they hypocritically i.e. polluting their own sincerity flattered Korah in return for the feast he set before them the prince of Gehenna and gnashed his teeth against them for their destruction now here Eliezer who infers it from the sons of Aaron whence does he know that their bodies were not burnt because it is written and they died before the Lord teaching that it was. Like normal death from within and the other he maintains that they were actually burnt whilst the verse and the died before the Lord choose that the fire commenced from within as in normal death for it has been taught Abba Jose B. Dost I said two streams of fire issued from the Holy of Holies branching off into four and two entered into each of their nostrils and burned them but it is written and the fire devoured them this implies them but not their garments but why should we not learn? The manner of death by fire from the bullocks that were burnt just as there they were actually burnt so here too it is logical to learn this from men because these have the following points in common I man two sin three soul and four pickle on the country should we not compare it rather to the burnt bullocks since they have in common I the carrying out of God's command and two permanency even so the others have more in common now he who deduces it from the assembly of Korah why did? He not learned it from Aaron's sons because they were actually burnt this being his opinion then why not deduce from them that this shall be the method of burning Arnaman answered in the name of Rabbi Abu the verse but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself which implies choose an easy death for him now since we have Arnaman's dictum what need is there of the Gezerish Allah but for the Gezerish Allah I would think that burning of the soul the body remaining intact is not deemed burning at all whilst as for the implication of the verse thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself this can be fulfilled by piling up an abundance of faggots to cause a speedy death hence the teaching of the Gezerish Allah Moses and Aaron once walked along with Nadab and Abihu behind them and all Israel following in the rear then Nadab said to Abihu that these old men might die so that you and I should be the leaders of our generation but the Holy One blessed be he said unto them we Shall see who will bury whom our papa said thus men say many an old camel is laden with the hides of younger ones our Eliezer said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Bihau is the scholar regarded by the ignorant at first like a golden little if he converses with him like a silver little if he the scholar derives benefit from him like an earthen little which once broken cannot be mended the daughter of Tali priest committed adultery thereupon our Hamabitobia had her surrounded by faggots and burnt our Joseph said he our Hamab was ignorant of two laws he was ignorant of our mathness dictum and of the following Beritha and thou shalt come unto the priests the levites and unto the judge that shall be in those days this teaches that when the priesthood is functioning in the temple the judge functions in respect of capital punishment but when the
ordinances, but the rabbis maintain since scripture decreed the sword, we do not imitate them when using their method. For if you will not agree to this, then how about that which was taught pyres may be lit in honor of deceased kings, and this is not forbidden as being of the ways of the Amorites, but why so is it not written? Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances, but because this burning is referred to in the Bible as it is written, but thou shalt die in peace and with the burnings of thy father, so shall they burn for thee. It is not from them the heathens that we derive the practice. So here too, since the Torah decreed the sword, it is not from them the Romans that we derive the practice. Now we have learned in another chapter the following are decapitated a murderer and the inhabitants of a seduced city. We know this to be true of the inhabitants of a seduced city, because it is written, Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, but Whence do we know it of a murderer? It has been taught, and if a man smite his servant and he die under his hand, he shall surely be avenged. Now I do not know what form this vengeance is to take, but when the writ set, and I will bring a sword upon you that shall execute the vengeance of the covenant, I learned that vengeance is by the sword, but perhaps it means that he must be pierced through the writ set with the edge of the sword, and perhaps it means that he must be cut into. Lengthwise, our nomin said in the name of Rabbi Abba, scripture teaches, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, choose an easy death for him. Now we find this law of execution by the sword when one murdered a slave. Whence do we know that this law holds good if he murdered a free man? Surely this can be deduced by reasoning from the minor to the major. If the murderer of a slave is decapitated, shall he who slays a free man be only strangled? Now this answer agrees with the view that. Strangulation is an easier death, but what of the view that strangulation is more severe? It is then deduced from the following: It has been taught the verse, "So shalt thou put away the guilt of the innocent blood from among usurps." To denote that all that shed blood are likened in treatment to the atoning heifer, just as there it is done with the sword, and at the neck. So here too, execution is with the sword, and at the neck, i.e., the throat. If so, just as there it was done with an axe, and on the nape of the neck. So here too, our nomin answered in the name of Rabbi Abba. Scripture saith, "But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself." Choose an easy death for him. Mission strangulation was thus performed. The condemned man was lowered into dung up to his armpits, and a hard cloth was placed within a soft one wound round his neck, and the two ends pulled in opposite directions until he was dead. Gemara, our rabbis taught, and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he. That committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. The man excludes a minor that committed adultery with another man's wife, excludes a wife of a minor. Even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, excludes a wife of a heathen, shall surely be put to death by strangulation. You say by strangulation, but perhaps one of the other deaths decreed by the Torah is meant here. I will answer you whenever the Torah decrees an unspecified death penalty. You may not interpret it stringently, but leniently. This is our Josiah's view. Our Jonathan said not because strangulation is the most lenient death, but because by every unspecified death in the Torah, strangulation is meant. Rabbi proceeding to demonstrate the said death by God is mentioned in Scripture, and death by man is also decreed. Just as the death by God leaves no mark of violence on the body, so also death by man must leave no mark of violence. A condition which. Only strangling fulfills, but may it not apply to burning, since the divine law explicitly decreed burning for a priest's adulterous daughter. It follows that the adulterous married Israelite woman is not put to death by burning Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, and now our Jonathan's view raises no difficulty. Its reason being explained by Rabbi, but on our Josiah's view, how do we know that there is death by strangulation at all? Perhaps the sword is meant. Rabbi replied, It is a tradition that there are four deaths. Why does our Jonathan say not because strangulation is the most lenient death? Because his dispute with our Josiah is on the same lines as that of our Simeon and the Rabbis Arzera asked of Abbe those who are stoned, but in whose case scripture does not explicitly decree stoning, so that we derive the penalty by analogy of a necromancer or a wizard. From which phrase do we deduce it from? They shall surely be put to death, or from their blood shall be upon them. He replied, It is deduced from the phrase. Their blood shall be upon them, for if it is inferred from the passage, they shall surely be put to death. What need is there of the words their blood shall be upon them? But do you say that it is deduced from their blood shall be upon them? What need is there then of the phrase they shall surely be put to death, even as it has been taught he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. I only know that he may be executed with the death that is decreed for him. Whence do I know? That if you cannot execute him with that death, you may execute him with any other death from the verse he that smote him shall surely be put to death, implying in any manner possible. Araha of Difti questioned Robin, and now had the deduction been from the phrase they shall surely be put to death, what would be our Zara's difficulty? Shall we say that his difficulty would be in respect of adultery with a married woman, namely that we ought to learn the manner of death from the law of a necromancer or a wizard, just as there it is stoning, so here too. But since the divine law ordains stoning for an Arusa, it follows that an Isua is not stoned. If again the difficulty would arise in respect of one who smites his father or mother, namely that we ought to learn by analogy of a necromancer or a wizard that he is stoned, but instead of deducing it from the necromancer, etc., deduce it rather from adultery with a married woman who is strangled, since you may not make a deduction in favor of a stringent penalty in preference to a lenient one. He replied, His difficulty would be in respect of all others who are stoned, for if the punishment of them by stoning is deduced from the phrase, they shall surely be put to death. Why deduce it from a necromancer and a wizard? Deduce it rather from the adultery of a married woman. Mission of the following are stoned. He who commits incest with his mother, his father's wife, or his daughter-in-law, he who sexually abuses a male or beast, a woman who commits bestiality with a beast, a blasphemer, an idolater, he who gives of his seed to Molech, a necromancer, or a wizard, one who desecrates the Sabbath, he who curses his father or mother, he who commits adultery with a betrothed maiden, he who incites individuals to idolatry, he who seduces a whole town to idolatry, a sorcerer, and a wayward and rebellious son, one who unwittingly commits incest with his mother, incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his mother and as his father's wife, Arjuna. Said he is liable in respect of her as his mother, only one who commits incest with his father's wife, incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his father's wife and as a married woman, he is guilty in respect of the former, both during his father's lifetime and after his death, whether she was widowed from Arison or from NESU, and he who commits incest with his daughter-in-law, incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his daughter-in-law and as a married woman, he is guilty in respect of it. Former both during his son's lifetime and after his death, whether she was widowed from Arison or from NESU and Gemara, it has been taught. Arjuna said, if his mother was unfit for his father, he is guilty only in respect of her maternal relationship to him. What is meant by unfit for him shall we say forbidden to him on pain of extermination or death inflicted by the Beth Din? This would prove that the rabbis hold that even for such he incurs a twofold penalty, but how so seeing that his father cannot be legally married to her at all, hence it must refer to a woman who is forbidden to him in virtue of a negative precept. Arjuna agreeing with Arakiba who holds that Kiddushin is not valid between those who are interdicted to each other by a negative command. Arashai objected, we have learned a woman who is forbidden to her deceased husband's brother by a positive precept or on the score of sanctity must perform the halissa ceremony but may not marry her brother in law Talmud, Mas. Sanhedrin be now forbidden by a positive precept means the prohibitions in the second degree imposed by the Sofrim and why is it thus designated because it is a positive precept to obey the sages forbidden on the score of sanctity refers to the prohibition of a widow to marry a high priest and of a divorcee or a halyza to marry an ordinary priest and why is it so called because it is written the SC the priest shall be holy unto their God and it has been taught thereon Arjuna reversed. The definition now though reversing the definition he agreed on the fundamental law that these required halyza before being free to marry others but if you maintain that Arjuna agreed with Arakiba on the invalidity of Kiddushin between those who are forbidden by a negative command and consider Arakiba places those who are forbidden by a negative command in the same category as those who are forbidden on pain of extermination but are not the latter exempt from both halyza and Levi right. Marriage Arjuna reverses the definition according to the ruling of the first Tana with which
Nakedness this teaches you may penalize him for one degree of nakedness but not for two degrees if so what of the verse thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law she is thy son's wife thou shalt not uncover her nakedness does this too teach you may penalize him for one degree of nakedness but not for two but we have learned he who commits incest with his daughter-in-law incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his daughter-in-law and as a married woman he has guilty in respect of her both during his son's lifetime and after age s death and Arjuna does not dispute this but since she is but one person though forbidden in a double capacity the writ saith her nakedness singular here too then in the CAE of one's mother who is also the father's wife since sh hashtag is one person even if she were doubly forbidden the writ saith her nakedness but Rabba answered thus and Arjuna maintains that the nakedness of thy father thou shalt not uncover means thy father's wife deducing this by Azurisha and it applies to her whether she is his mother or not whence do we know then that one's mother who is not his father's wife is likewise forbidden from the verse the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover hence the phrase she is thy mother teaches that he is guilty only on account of her maternal relationship but not because she is his father's wife Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin it has been taught in support of Rabba and the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness both of them shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them the man excludes a minor that lieth with his father's wife implies whether she is his mother or not whence do I know that his mother who is not his father's wife is also thus forbidden from the verse he hath uncovered his father's nakedness for this is redundant in order that an analogy may be drawn therefrom and identity of meaning based on Azurisha why deduce they shall Surely be put to death by stoning you say by stoning but perhaps it means by one of the other deaths decreed in the Torah the writ saith here their blood shall be upon them and in the case of a necromancer or a wizard the writ saith likewise their blood shall be upon them just as their stoning is meant so here too now in this verse we are informed of the penalty once do we know the formal prohibition from the verse the nakedness of thy father shalt thou not uncover the nakedness of thy father means thy father's wife you say so but perhaps it has its literal meaning it is here said the nakedness of thy father shalt thou not uncover and elsewhere it is said he hath uncovered his father's nakedness just as there the reference is to the opposite sex so here too and it implies his father's wife whether his mother or not once do we know that this law applies to his mother even if she is not his father's wife from the verse the nakedness of thy mother thou shalt not Uncover from this I learn only the formal prohibition is that the scripture interdicts his mother though not his father's wife just as his father's wife once do I derive the punishment it is here stated the nakedness of thy father thou shalt not uncover and it is said elsewhere he hath uncovered his father's nakedness just as the writ assimilated his mother when not his father's wife to his mother who was also his father's wife in respect of formal prohibition so it assimilated her in respect of punishment she is thy mother this teaches you must punish him in respect of her as a mother but not as his father's wife but the rabbis contend the nakedness of thy father is literally meant but is this not taught by the verse thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind this teaches that a double penalty is incurred and as Rajuda said if he even committed pederasty with his father or with his paternal uncle he incurs a double penalty Rabbi said this dictum of Rabjuda. Presumably refers to a Jew the offense having been committed unwittingly and the penalty mentioned being a sacrifice whilst the designation even is a euphemism for if you will say that he meant even literally what is his penalty death will you slay him twice it has been taught likewise he who commits pederasty with his father or with his paternal uncle incurs a twofold penalty some say that this does not agree with Arjuna of the mission but others maintain that this may agree even with Arjuna and he deduces a twofold penalty by reasoning from the minor to the major basing his argument upon the law pertaining to a paternal uncle thus if for a paternal uncle who is but a relation of one's father a twofold penalty is incurred how much more so is a double penalty incurred for pederasty with one's father these two conflicting views are involved in the dispute of Rabba and Abbe one maintaining that punishment is imposed as a result of a minor to a major conclusion the other Maintaining that it is not now whence do the rabbis derive a formal prohibition against the father's wife from the verse the nakedness of thy father's wife thou shalt not uncover and Arjuda he maintains that this verse interdicts her after his father's death and the rabbis they maintain that this is derived from it is thy father's nakedness and Arjuda he utilizes it to teach that he is punished in respect of her as his father's wife but not as a married woman but we have learned one who commits incest with his father's wife incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his father's wife and as a married woman he is guilty in respect of the former both during his father's lifetime and after his death and Arjuda does not dispute it Abbe answered he does dispute it in the very now whence do the rabbis derive punishment for incest with one's father's wife after the former's death it is all well according to Arjuda for he derives it by means of the Gizurisha but whence do the rabbis derive it? The answer thus he hath uncovered his father's nakedness, which Arjuda utilizes for a gazerisha while he is rather to be employed as teaching punishment for incest with one's father's wife after his death. Now, whence do the rabbis derive punishment for incest with one's mother who is not his father's wife? Arshisha, the son of Aradi, said the Ritzet, she is thy mother, thereby teaching that one's mother, even if not his father's wife, is exactly as his father's wife, he who commits incest with his daughter in law, etc. Why is he not also guilty in respect of her as his son's wife? Abbe answered the Rit commences with his daughter in law and concludes with his son's wife, teaching that they are identical. Mishnah, he who commits sodomy with a male or a beast and a woman that commits bestiality are stoned if the man has sinned wherein has the animal offended, but because man was enticed to sin there by scripture ordered that it should be stoned. Another reason is that the Animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is the animal on account of which so and so was stoned tomorrow once do I know that Peter Asti is punished by stoning our rabbis taught if a man lieth also with mankind as the lines of a woman both of them have committed an abomination they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them a man excludes a minor that lieth also with mankind denotes whether an adult or a minor as the lines of a woman this teaches that there are two modes of intimacy both of which are punished when committed incestuously our Ishmael said this verse comes to throw light upon Peter Asti but receives illumination itself they shall surely be put to death by stoning you say by stoning but perhaps some other death decreed in the Torah is meant their blood shall be upon them is stated here and also in the case of one who has a familiar spirit or is a wizard just as there the reference is to stoning so it is here too. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be this teaches the punishment whence do we derive the formal prohibition from the verse thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination from this we learn the formal prohibition for him who lies with a male whence do we know a formal prohibition for the person who permits himself thus to be abused scripture said there shall be no Sodomite of the sons of Israel and it is further said and there were also Sodomites in the land and they did. According to the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel this is our Ishmael's view our Akiva said this is unnecessary the writ said thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind read thou shalt not be lame with whence do we learn a formal prohibition against bestiality our rabbis taught and if a man lie with a beast he shall surely be put to death and ye shall slay the beast a man excludes a minor that lieth with a beast whether it be young. Or old he shall surely be put to death by stoning you by stoning but perhaps one of the other deaths decreed in the Torah is meant it is here said and ye shall kill the beast and it is stated elsewhere but thou shalt surely kill him and thou shalt stone in him with stones just as their stoning is meant so here too we have learned from this the punishment for him who commits bestiality once do we derive punishment for him who allows himself to be thus abused the writ saith whosoever lieth with the beast shall surely be put to death since this is redundant in respect of the person committing bestiality you must regard it as applying to the person permitting himself to be thus abused from the writ we know that there is punishment both for him who commits bestiality and for him who permits himself to be thus abused once do we know the formal prohibition scripture saith neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith from this verse we learn the formal Prohibition for him who commits bestiality once do we derive the formal prohibition for him who allows himself to be thus abused scripture said there shall be no Sodomite of the sons of Israel and it is elsewhere said and there were
oneself to be bestially abused from the verse whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death now this being redundant in respect of him who actively lies with a beast apply it to him who passively permits himself to be abused this and the divine law designates the passive offender as the active offender this teaches that the punishment for and the formal prohibition against active bestiality apply to passive submission to he who submits both to pederasty and to bestiality are about said on our Akiva's view he incurs two penalties one for thou shalt not lie with mankind and the other for thou shalt not lie with any beast but on our Ishmael's view he incurs only one punishment both offenses being derived from a single verse there shall be no sodomite Abbe said even on our Ishmael's view he incurs two penalties because it is written whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death this being redundant in respect of active bestiality it must be applied to passive submission and the divine law thus designated passive submission as an active offense just as for the active offense there is punishment and prohibition so for the passive offense too but he who commits pederasty and causes himself to be abused thus and also commits bestiality and causes himself to be abused too both our Abbe and Abbe maintain that on our Ishmael's view he is trebly guilty and on our Akiva's view he is doubly guilty our rabbis taught in the case of a male child a young one is not regarded as on a PAR with an old one but a young beast is treated as an old one what is meant by this rap said pederasty with a child below nine years of age is not deemed as pederasty with a child above that Samuel said pederasty with a child below three years is not treated as with a child above that what is the basis of their dispute rap maintains that only he who is able to engage in sexual intercourse may as a passive subject of pederasty throw guilt upon the active offender whilst he who is unable to engage in sexual intercourse cannot be a passive subject of pederasty in that respect but Samuel maintains scripture rights and thou shalt not lie with mankind as with the lines of a woman it has been taught in accordance with rap pederasty at the age of nine years and a day Talmud ma Sanhedrin who commits bestiality whether naturally or unnaturally or a woman who causes herself to be bestially abused whether naturally or unnaturally is liable to punishment are and son of Arhista stated in an exposition in the case of a woman there are two modes of intimacy but in the case of a beast only one are pop objected on the contrary since sexual intercourse with a woman is a natural thing guilt should be incurred only for a natural connection but for nothing else whilst since a connection with a beast is an unnatural thing one should be punished for every such act however it be done it has been taught pederasty at the age of nine years and a day she who commits bestiality whether naturally or unnaturally and a woman who causes herself to be bestially abused whether naturally or unnaturally are liable to punishment Robin asked Rabba what if one commits the first stage of pederasty he replied dost thou ask what if one commits the first stage of pederasty is it not written thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind but the question to be asked is what if one commits the first stage of bestiality he replied since the Culpability of the first stage of incest, which is explicitly stated with reference to one's paternal or maternal aunt, is redundant, therefore, it is likened to the first stage of intercourse within it. Apply its teaching to the first stage of bestiality as being punishable. Now, consider bestiality is a capital offense punishable by Beth Din. Why then does the scripture teach the capability of its first stage in a law relating to a sin punishable by extinction? Should it not rather have been indicated in a verse dealing with sexual intercourse as a capital offense, too, so that one capital offense might be deduced from another, since this entire verse is written for the sake of new interpretations whereby additional laws are deduced? Another statement for the same purpose is inserted. Our Ottawa BMI propounded a problem to Arshi's hate. What if one excited himself to the first stage of masturbation? He replied, You annoy us, Arshi said, What is your problem? This is impossible in self. Stimulation, but it is possible in the case of cohesion with a member more to him on the view that such an incest is not punishable in masturbation too. It is not punishable, but on the view that it is punishable, a twofold penalty is incurred here since he is simultaneously the active and passive partner of a deed. It was asked of Arshi's hate what if a heathen committed bestiality is the animal killed or not? Must it have been both a stumbling block and a cause of degradation in order for it to be stoned? But here it was only a stumbling block, but not a cause of degradation, or perhaps even if it was only a stumbling block without having led to degradation, it is still stoned. Arshi's hate replied, We have learned it if in the case of trees which neither eat nor drink nor smell, the Torah decreed that they should be burnt and destroyed because they had proved a stumbling block. How much more so must thou destroy him who seduces his neighbor from the path of life to that of death if so were? A heathen worships his cow, should it not be forbidden and killed? Is there anything which is not forbidden to an Israelite yet forbidden to a heathen? But why should it not be forbidden if an Israelite worshipped it? Is it not analogous to bestiality? Abay answered in the latter case, bestiality the degradation is great, whilst in the former animal worship the disgrace is little, but in the case of trees the degradation is not great yet. Did not the Torah order them to be burnt, destroyed, and annihilated? We are speaking of living creatures for which the all merciful one shoot pity. Rabbah said the Torah ordered that the animal should be destroyed because it too derived pleasure from sin, but trees derive no pleasure yet. The Torah commanded that they should be destroyed, burnt, and annihilated. We are speaking of living creatures for which the all merciful one shoot pity. Come and here another reason is that the animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is it. Animal on account of which so and so was STO and now surely Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. Since the latter reason embraces both the reason of a stumbling block and of human degradation, the former reason is that of stumbling block alone, e.g., when a heathen commits bestiality, no, the second reason is that of stumbling block and of degradation, but the first teaches that even if there is degradation without a stumbling block, the animal is stoned, e.g., if a Jew committed bestiality in ignorance of the fact that it is forbidden, even as our Hamnana propounded, what if a Jew committed bestiality in ignorance, must there have been both a stumbling block and degradation for the animal to be stoned, and in this case there is only degradation but no sin, or perhaps for degradation alone without there having been a stumbling block, the animal is stoned, our Joseph said, come and here a maiden aged three years and a day may be acquired in marriage by coition, and if her deceased husband's brother cohabits with her she becomes his the penalty of adultery may be incurred through her if in it as she defiles him who has connection with her so that he in turn defile that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon the person afflicted with gonorrhea if she married a priest she may eat of terima if any unfit person has a connection with her he disqualifies her from the priesthood if any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her they are executed on her account but she is exempt now any of the forbidden degrees implies even a beast in this case there is degradation but no stumbling block yet it is taught that they including a beast are slain on her account no this is not conclusive as it can be argued that since she deliberately offended there is a stumbling block though she is a minor but the all merciful one had mercy upon her now he should mercy to her but not to the animal Rabbah said come and here a male age nine years and a day who cohabits with his deceased Brother's wife, the former having left no issue, acquires her as wife, but he cannot divorce her until he attains his majority. He is defiled through cohesion within it, so that he in turn defiled that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon a person afflicted with gonorrhea. He disqualifies a woman from the priesthood, but cannot enable a woman to eat of terima. He renders an animal unfit for the altar, and it is stoned on his account. And if he had intercourse with one of the degrees forbidden in the Torah, the latter is executed. Now here there is degradation, but no stumbling block yet. It is taught it is stoned on his account, since it was a deliberate offense. There is a stumbling block, but the All Merciful One had mercy upon him. Now he showed mercy to him, but not to the animal. Come and here another reason is that the animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is an animal on account of which so and so was stoned. Now surely since the latter. Reason embraces both stumbling block and degradation. The former reason refers to degradation only that is when a Jew committed bestiality in ignorance. No, the second reason is one of stumbling block and degradation, but the first teaches that even if there is a stumbling block without degradation, the animal is stoned. E.g., if a heathen committed bestiality, even as it was asked of Arshi's hate mission, the blasphemer is punished only if he utters the divine name. Our Joshua B. Karha said Talmud, Mas. Sanhedrin of the whole day of the trial, the witnesses are examined by means of a substit
divine name together and piercing them both in that case one name is pierced after the other but perhaps it prohibits the engraving of the divine name on the point of a knife and piercing there with the divine name written on a slip of parchment in that case the point of the knife pierces not the divine name but perhaps it refers to the pronunciation of the ineffable name as it is written and Moses and Aaron took these men which are expressed nicobu by their names the formal prohibition being contained in the verse thou shalt fear the Lord thy God firstly the name must be blessed by the name which is absent here and secondly it is a prohibition in the form of a positive command which is not deemed to be a prohibition at all an alternative answer is this the writ Seth and the Israelitish woman son blaspheme W.A. Yacob and curse proving that blasphemy no kept denotes cursing but perhaps it teaches that both offenses must be perpetrated you cannot think so because it is written bring forth him that hath cursed and not him that hath blasphemed and curse proving that one offense only is alluded to our rabbis taught any man that curseth his God shall bear his sin it would have been sufficient to say a man etc what is taught by the expression any man the inclusion of heathens to whom blasphemy is prohibited just as to Israelites and they are executed by decapitation for every death penalty decreed for the sons of Noah is only by decapitation now is it Prohibition of blasphemy to heathens deduced from this verse but it is deduced from another is the Lord referring to the blessing of the divine name our Isaac the Smith replied this phrase any man is necessary only as teaching the inclusion of substitutes of God's name and the very that is taught in accordance with our mayor's views for it has been taught any man that curseth his God shall bear his sin why is this written has it not already been stated and he that blasphemeth the name of it. Lord he shall surely be put to death because it is stated and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death I might think that death is meted out only when the ineffable name is employed once do I know that all substitutes of the ineffable name are included in this law from the verse any man that curseth his God shewing culpability for any manner of blasphemy even without uttering the name since the name is not mentioned in the sentence this is of you of our. Mayor, but the sages maintain blasphemy with use of the ineffable name is punishable by death with the employment of substitutes. It is the object of an injunction, but not punishable by death. This view of our Isaac the Smith conflicts with that of Armiyasha. For Armiyasha said, if a heathen son of Noah blasphemed, employing substitutes of the ineffable name, he is in the opinion of the sages punishable by death. Why so? Because it is written as well, the stranger as he that is born in the land. When he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death. This teaches that only the stranger, i.e., a proselyte and the native, i.e., a natural born Israelite, must utter the ineffable name, but the heathen is punishable even for a substitute only. But how does our Mayor interpret the verse as well? The stranger as he that is born in the land. It teaches that the stranger and citizen are stoned, but a heathen is decapitated. For I would think since they are included in the prohibition, they are. Included in the matter of execution too, hence we are taught otherwise. Now, how does our Isaac the Smith interpret the verse as well? The stranger as he that is born in the land on the view of the rabbis, it teaches that only a stranger and a native must revile the name by the name, but for a heathen this is unnecessary. Why does the Torah state any man the Torah employed normal human speech? Our rabbis taught seven precepts where the sons of Noah commanded social laws to refrain from blasphemy. Idolatry, adultery, bloodshed, robbery, and eating flesh cut from a living animal. Talmud, Moss and Hedron B. Our Hanani, Gamaliel said also not to partake of the blood drawn from a living animal. Our Hidka added emasculation. Our Simeon added sorcery. Our Jose said that heathens were prohibited. Everything that is mentioned in the section on sorcery is there shall not be found among you anyone that make his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that use divination or an observer of times or an Enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive the messy the heathens in Canaan out from before thee now the Almighty does not punish without first prohibiting our Eliezer added the forbidden mixture in plants and animals now they are permitted to wear garments of mixed fabrics of wool and linen and sow diverse seeds. Together they are forbidden only to hybridize heterogeneous animals and graft trees of different kinds whence do we know this are Yohanan answered the writ and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat and he commanded refers to the observance of social laws and thus it is written for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment the Lord is a Prohibition against blasphemy and thus it is written and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord he shall surely be put to death God is an injunction against idolatry and thus it is written thou shalt have no other gods before me the man refers to bloodshed murder and thus it is written whoso shed man's blood by man shall his blood be shed saying refers to adultery and thus it is written they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and became another man's of every tree of the garden but not of robbery thou mayest freely eat but not flesh cut from a living animal when our Isaac came he taught a reverse interpretation and he commanded refers to idolatry God have Elohim to social law now God may rightly refer to social laws as it is written and the master of the house shall be brought unto Elohim i.e. the judges but how can and he commanded connote a prohibition of idolatry our and our Isaac be of demi one sided the verse they have turned aside quickly out of it way which I commanded them they have made them a mold and calf etc and the other side Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment wherein do they differ in respect of a heathen who made an idol but did not worship it on the view that the prohibition of idolatry is derived from they have made them a mold and calf guilt is incurred as soon as the idol is made even before it is worshipped but according to the opinion that it is from because he willingly walked after the commandment there is no liability until the heathen actually follows and worships it Rob objected does any scholar maintain that a heathen is liable to punishment for making an idol even if he did not worship it surely it has been taught with respect to idolatry such acts for which a Jewish court decrees sentence of death on Jewish delinquents are forbidden to the heathen but those for which a Jewish court inflicts no capital penalty on Jewish delinquents are not Forbidden to him now what does this exclude presumably the case of a heathen who made an idol without worshipping it or Papa answered no it excludes the embracing and kissing of idols of which idols do you say this is it of those whose normal worship is in this manner but in that case he is surely liable to death hence it excludes the embracing and kissing of idols which are not usually worshipped the social laws were then the children of Noah bidden to observe these surely it has been taught. The Israelites were given ten precepts at Merah seven of which had already been accepted by the children of Noah to which were added at Merah social laws the Sabbath and honoring one's parents social laws for it is written there S.C. at Merah he made for them a statute and an ordinance the Sabbath and honoring one's parents for it is written as the Lord thy God commanded the Arnaman replied in the name of Rabbi Abu'ah the addition at Merah was only in respect of an assembly witnesses. And formal admonition, if so, why say to which were added social laws? But Robert replied, Thus the addition was only in respect of the laws of fines, but even so should it not have been said additions were made in the social laws. But our Ahabi Jacob answered, Thus the Beritha informs us that they were commanded to set up law courts in every district and town, but were not the sons of Noah likewise commanded to do this. Surely it has been taught just as the Israelites were ordered to set up law courts in every district and town, so were the sons of Noah likewise enjoined to set up law courts in every district and town. But Robert answered, Thus the author of this Beritha, which states that social laws were added at Merah, is a tana of the school of Manasseh who omitted social laws and blasphemy from the list of Noahian precepts and substituted emasculation and the forbidden mixture in plants, plowing, etc. For a tana of the school of Manasseh taught the sons of Noah were given seven. Precepts this prohibition of idolatry, adultery, murder, robbery, flesh cut from a living animal, emasculation, and forbidden mixtures are Judah said Adam was prohibited idolatry only for it is written, and the Lord God commanded Adam our Judah be but there remained he was forbidden blasphemy to some add social laws with whom does the following statement of Rab Judah in the name of Rab grievous God said to Adam, I am God, do not curse me, I am God, do not exchange me for another, I am God, let my fear be. Upon you this agrees with the last mentioned who adds social laws to the list. Now what is the standpoint of the Tana of the school of Manasseh
Robbery flesh cut from a living animal as it is written but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat and the other he may hold that this verse teaches that flesh cut from live reptiles is permitted emasculation for it is written bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein and the other he may regard this merely as a blessing forbidden mixture as it is said of fowls after their kind and the other he will maintain that this was merely for the sake of mating our Joseph said the scholar stated a heathen is executed for the violation of three precepts Nemonic GSHR is adultery bloodshed and blasphemy are she's hate objected now bloodshed is rightly included since it is written whoso sheddeth the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed but once do we know the others if they are derived from bloodshed the other four should also be included whilst if their inclusion is taught by the extending phrase any man should not idolatry to be Included but Arshis hate said thus the scholar stated a heathen is executed for the violation of four precepts including idolatry but is a heathen executed for idolatry surely it has been taught with respect to idolatry such acts for which a Jewish court decrees sentence of death on Jewish delinquents are forbidden to the heathen this implies that they are merely forbidden but their violation is not punished by death or nomin b Isaac answered their prohibition is their death sentence are who are Judah and all the disciples of Rab maintained a heathen is executed for the violation of the seven Noachian laws the divine law having revealed this of one murder it applies to all now is a heathen executed for robbery has it not been taught with respect to robbery if one stole or robbed or seized a beautiful woman or committed similar offenses if these were perpetrated by one Kutian against another the theft etc must not be kept and likewise the theft of an Israelite by a Kutian, but that of a Kutian by an Israelite may be retained, but if robbery is a capital offense, should not the Tana have taught he incurs a penalty because the second clause wishes to state, but that of a Kutian by an Israelite may be retained, therefore the former clause reads theft of an Israelite by a Kutian must not be kept, but where a penalty is incurred, it is explicitly stated for the commencing clause teaches for murder, whether of a Kutian by a Kutian or of an Israelite by a Kutian punishment is incurred, but of a Kutian by an Israelite there is no death penalty. How else could that clause have been taught? Could he state forbidden permitted? Surely it has been taught a Kutian and a Jewish shepherd of small cattle, sheep, goats, etc. need neither be rescued from a pit nor may they be thrown therein and similar acts to what can this apply in the case of robbery are Ahavi Jacob answered to a worker in a vineyard who eats of the grapes when so if it is it. Finishing work it is permitted if it is not the finishing work is it not actual robbery but our papa said this applies to the theft of an article worth less than a paratah but if so why say that such robbery of a Jew by a Kutian must not be kept does he not forgive him though he later forgives him he is grieved when it occurs therefore it is prohibited but how can you say that such robbery by one Kutian from another is but a similar act i.e. bordering on robbery since a Kutian does not forgive is it not actual theft but Araha the son of R.I.K.A. answered it applies to the withholding of a laborer's wage one Kutian from another or a Kutian from an Israelite is forbidden but an Israelite from a Kutian is permitted to what can a similar act apply in the case of a beautiful woman when Ardimi came he said in the name of our Eliezer in the name of our Hannah to a heathen who allotted a bond woman to his slave for concubinage and then took her for himself for this he is executed eh? Similar act, however, is not taught with reference to murder. Abay said, if it should be, however, that it is so taught, it would be in accordance with our Jonathan B. Saul, for it has been taught if one was pursuing his neighbor to slay him, and the latter could have saved himself by maiming a limb of the pursuer, e.g., his foot, and did not thus save himself, but killed him instead. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. He is executed for his death. Our Jacob B. Aha found it written in the scholar's book of Agatha. Even is executed on the ruling of one judge on the testimony of one witness without a formal warning on the evidence of a man, but not of a woman, even if he the witness be a relation on the authority of our Ishmael. It was said he is executed even for the murder of an embryo. Once do we know all this? Rab Judah answered, the Bible saith, and surely your blood of your lives will I require. This shows that even one judge may try, even at the hand of every living thing will I require it. Even without an admonition having been given and at the hand of man even on the testimony of one witness at the hand of man but not at the hand i.e. on the testimony of a woman his brother teaching that even a relation may testify on the authority of our Ishmael it was said he is executed even for the murder of an embryo what is our Ishmael's reason because it is written whoso sheddeth the blood of man within another man shall his blood be shed what is a man within another man an embryo in his mother's womb but the first Tana who excludes the murder of an embryo from capital punishment is a Tana of the school of Manasseh who maintains that every death penalty decreed for the heathens is by strangulation he connects the second man with the latter half of the sentence and interprets thus whoso sheddeth man's blood within man i.e. within him shall his blood be shed now how can man's blood be shed and yet be retained within him by strangulation our Hamnon objected now is not a even woman commanded to keep the social law surely it is written for I know him that he will command his sons and his household which includes the women folk after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to exercise charity and judgment he raised the objection and he answered it himself he would command his sons to exercise judgment his daughters to perform charity are we the elder said to our papa let us say that a heathen woman who committed murder must not be executed since it is written at the hand of every man who committed murder etc implying but not at the hand of woman he replied thus did Rab Judah say whoso shed man's blood implies whosoever it be even a woman let us say that a heathen woman who committed adultery is not executed since it is written therefore shall a man forsake his father and mother and cleave to his wife implying that a man must cleave but not a woman he replied thus did Rab Judah say the verse and they shall be as one flesh Reassimilated them to each other, making the law of fidelity applicable to both our rabbis taught a man a man shall not approach to any that is near akin to him to uncover their nakedness, it would have been sufficient to state a man shall not approach, etc. What is taught by the repetition, amen, a man, the extension of the law to heathens that they too are forbidden incest, including adultery. Now is this deduced from this verse? Is it rather not deduced from a different text? Visited. Lord God commanded saying which refers to adultery, the latter text refers to adultery with a woman of their own, i.e. with a heathen married woman, the former to adultery with one of ours, i.e. a Jewish married woman. For the second clause teaches if he committed incest with a Jewess, he is judged according to Jewish law with regard to what is this our said in the name of Rabbi with regard to an assembly witnesses and formal admonition is a Jewess then of less account, but are you had had? Answered thus it is with regard to a betrothed Jewish maiden whose violation by heathen law is not a capital offense hence they are judged by Jewish law but if their offense was against a fully married woman are they judged according to their law surely it has been taught if a heathen committed adultery with a Jewish betrothed maiden he is stoned with a fully married woman he is strangled now if we judge them according to the law pertaining to them should he not be decapitated our nomin b. Isaac answered by a married woman this very means one whose hafa ceremony has been performed but without the marriage being consummated since by their law her violation is not a capital offense they are judged by ours for our hand and taught they recognize the inviolability of a woman whose union has been consummated but not if she merely entered the hafa without the union having been consummated it has been taught in agreement with our Yohan and all prohibited sexual relationships for which a Jewish Beth Din imposes capital punishment are forbidden to heathens, but those for which a Jewish Beth Din does not impose death are permitted to heathens. This is our mayor's view, but the sages maintain there are many relationships for which a Jewish Beth Din does not impose death, which are nevertheless forbidden to a Gentile. If a heathen committed incest with a Jewess, he is judged according to Jewish law. If with a heathen woman, he is judged according to heathen law. The only difference that this makes is with respect to a betrothed maiden, but should not the Tana include a woman whose hafa ceremony has been performed without the marriage being consummated. The teacher of this very is the Tana of the College of Manasseh, who maintains that every death penalty decreed for the heathens is by strangulation, and by both codes Jewish and heathen, this last mentioned offense is punished by strangulation. Now is our mayor of the opinion that all relationships for which a Jewish Beth Din Imposes capital punishment are forbidden to heathen. Surely it has been taught a proselyte Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin born but not conceived in sanctity possesses skin on his mother
And he shall cleave but not to a male to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife and they shall be as one flesh applying to those that can become one flesh thus excluding cattle and beasts which cannot become one flesh with man the master stated our Eliezer said his father means his father's sister but may it not mean his father literally this is forbidden by and he shall cleave but not to a male but perhaps it means his father's wife that is taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife which includes his father's but perhaps it forbids her even after his father's death it must be similar to his mother just as his mother is not his relation by marriage so his father must refer to a non-marriage relationship his mother means his mother's sister but may it not be literally meant that is taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife but perhaps it forbids her even after his father's death it must be similar to his father just as his father is not literally meant so his mother is not literally meant our Akiba said his father means his father's wife but perhaps it is literally meant that is taught by and he shall cleave but not to a male if so is not his father's wife taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife that teaches that she is forbidden even after his father's death his mother is literally meant but is this not taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife this refers to his mother who was violated by his father what are they? Grounds of their dispute are Eliezer is of the opinion Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B that only by referring to collateral relations can his father and his mother bear similar interpretations but our Akiba prefers to interpret his father as his father's wife who is designated as the nakedness of his father rather than his father's sister who is designated as his father's kin not his father's nakedness come and here and Amram took him Josh his father's sister to wife does it? Not presumably mean his father's sister on her mother's side to know it means his father's paternal sister come and here and yet indeed she is my sister she is the daughter of my father but not of my mother does not this prove that his mother's daughter is forbidden now is this logical was she then his sister she was his brother's daughter and therefore whether by his father or mother permitted to him but Abram declared to him i.e. by Melech thus I am fraternally related to her she is my brother's daughter on my father's side i.e. my brother by my father but not on my mother's side come and here why did not Adam marry his daughter so that Cain should marry his sister as it is written for I said the world shall be built up by grace but otherwise she would have been forbidden to Cain once however that it was permitted it remains so are who said even may marry his daughter but should you ask if so why did not Adam marry his daughter in order that Cain might marry his Sister that the world might be built up by grace others give this version Arhuna said he may not marry his daughter the proof being that Adam did not marry his daughter but that proof is fallacious the reason was that Cain should marry his sister so that the world should be built up by Adam's grace Arhus said a heathen slave owned by a Jew may marry his daughter and his mother for he has lost the status of a heathen but has not yet attained that of a Jew when Ardimi came he said in the name of our Eliezer in the name of our Hannah a heathen who allotted the bond woman to his slave for concubinage and then took her for himself is executed on her account from when is she regarded as the particular concubine of that slave Arnaman said when she is referred to as so and so's mistress when is she free again to others Arhuna said from the time that she goes bareheaded in the streets our Eliezer said in our Hannah's name if a heathen had an unnatural connection with his wife he Incurs guilt for it is written and he shall cleave which excludes unnatural intercourse Rabbah objected is there anything for which a Jew is not punishable and a heathen is but Rabbah said thus a heathen who violates his neighbor's wife unnaturally is free from punishment why so scripture said to his wife but not to his neighbors and he shall cleave which excludes unnatural intercourse our Hannah said if a heathen smites a Jew he is worthy of death for it is written and he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man he slew the Egyptian our Hannah also said he who smites an Israelite on the job is as though he had thus assaulted the divine presence for it is written one who smites man i.e. an Israelite attacketh the holy one Nemoth lifts his servant Sabbath Reshlakish said he who lifts his hand against his neighbor even if he did not smite him is called a wicked man as it is written and he said unto the wicked man wherefore wouldst thou smite thy fellow Wherefore hast thou smite is not said but wherefore wouldst thou smite showing that though he had not smitten him yet he was termed a wicked man Zeir I said in our hand of his name he is called a sinner for it is written but if not I will take it by force and it is further written wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord Arhuna said his hand should be cut off as it is written let the uplifted arm be broken Arhuna had the hand cut off of one who was accustomed to strike. Other people our Eliezer said the only thing to be done with him is to bury him as it is written and a man of uplifted arm for him is the earth our Eliezer also said the earth was given only to the strong as it is said but as for the mighty man for him is the earth Reshlakish said also what is the meaning of the verse he that serveth his land shall be satisfied with bread if one enslaves himself to his land continually toiling thereon he shall be satisfied with bread if not he shall not be. Satisfied with bread, Reshlakish also said, Even who keeps a day of rest deserves death, for it is written, and a day and a night they shall not rest. And the master has said, Their prohibition is their death sentence. Rabbin has said, Even if he rested on a Monday, now why is this not included in the seven Noachian laws? Only negative injunctions are enumerated, not positive ones. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, but the precept of observing social laws is a positive one, yet it is reckoned it is both positive and negative. Are Yohanan said, Even who studies the Torah deserves death, for it is written, Moses commanded us a law for an inheritance, it is our inheritance, not theirs. Then why is this not included in the Noachian laws? On the reading Rosh, an inheritance he steals it on the reading or raise a betrothed, he is guilty as one who violates a betrothed maiden who is stoned. An objection is raised. Our Meir used to say, Once do we know that even a heathen who studies the Torah is as a high priest? From the verse ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments which if man do he shall live in them priests love it and Israelites are not mentioned but men hence thou mayest learn that even a heathen who studies the Torah is as a high priest that refers to their own seven laws our Hanani Abigamaliel said they were also commanded not to partake of the blood drawn from a living animal our rabbis taught but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat this. Prohibits flesh cut from the living animal our Hanani Abigamaliel said it also prohibits blood drawn from a living animal what is his reason he reads the verse thus flesh with the life thereof shall ye not eat blood with the life thereof shall ye not eat but the rabbis maintain that this reading teaches that flesh cut from live reptiles is permitted similarly it is said only be sure that thou eat not the blood for the blood is the life and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh but the Rabbis maintain that the verse teaches that the blood of arteries with which life goes out is also forbidden as blood why was it first enjoined upon the sons of Noah and then repeated at Sinai as the dictum of our Jose Bihanna for our Jose Bihanna said every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai was meant for both heathens and Israelites that which was given to the sons of Noah but not repeated at Sinai was meant for the Israelites but not for the heathens now the only law thus commanded to the children of Noah and not repeated at Sinai was the prohibition of the sinew that shrank nervous sciaticus and in accordance with our Judas view the master said every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai was meant for both Noahites and Israelites on the contrary since it was repeated at Sinai should we not assume it to be meant for Israel only since idolatry was repeated at Sinai and we find that the Noahites were punished for Practicing it, we must conclude that it was meant for both that which was given to the sons of Noah, but not repeated at Sinai, was meant for the Israelites, but not for the heathens. On the contrary, since it was not repeated at Sinai, should we not assume that it was meant for the Noahites and not for Israel? There is nothing permitted to an Israelite yet forbidden to a heathen. Is there not but what of a beautiful woman there? It is because the heathens were not authorized to conquer, but what of a thing worth less than a parata? There it is because the heathens do not forgive every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai, was meant for both Noahites and Israelites. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be but circumcision which was given to the sons of Noah, for it is written, Thou shalt keep my covenant and repeated at Sinai, and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, yet was meant for Israel and not for the Noahites. That repetition was inserted to. Permit circumcision on the Sabbath by interpreting on the day whichever it is and even on the Sabbath but procreation
Exempt did not our Jose B. Abin or as say our Jose B. Hanan estate and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broke OE my covenant. This extends the precept of circumcision to the children of Chirorab Judah said in Rab's name Adam was not permitted to eat flesh for it is written behold I have given you all the herbs etc. to you it shall be for food and to all the beasts of the earth implying but the beast of the earth shall not be for OU but W I and H the advent of the sons of Noah it was permitted for it is said every moving thing that liveth shall be me for you even as the green have have I given you all things now one might think that the prohibition of flesh cut from a living animal does not apply to the messy the Noahites therefore the Ritiak hate but flesh with life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat one might think that this prohibition applies even to Reptiles, therefore, it is stated, but how is this implied? Arhuna said, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, issues that the prohibition applies only to those creatures whose flesh is distinct from their blood, and its prohibition excluding reptiles whose flesh is not distinct from their blood. An objection is raised and rule over the fish of the sea. Surely that means that they should serve as food. No, it refers to toil, but can fish be made to work? Yes, even as Rehoboth propounded. What if one drove a wagon with a goat and a shibuta come and here and over the fowl of the heaven? Surely this is in respect of food. No, it refers to toil, but can fowl be made to work? Yes, even as Rabbi of Arhuna propounded according to the ruling of Arhuse B. Arjuda. What if one thresh corn with geese or cocks come and here and over every living creature that moveth upon the earth? That refers to the serpent, for it has been tugged high. Our Simeon B. Manasseh said, Woe for the loss. Of a great servant, for had not the serpent been cursed, every Israelite would have had two valuable serpents sending one to the north and one to the south to bring him costly gems, precious stones, and pearls. Moreover, one would have fastened a thong under its tail with which it would bring forth earth for his garden and wasteland. A further objection is raised. Our Judah B. Tima said Adam reclined in the garden of Eden whilst the ministering angels roasted flesh and strained wine for him thereupon. The serpent looked and saw his glory and became envious of him. The reference there is to flesh that descended from heaven, but does flesh descend from heaven? Yes, as in the story of our Simeon B. Halapta, who was walking on the road when lions met him and roared at him thereupon. He quoted the young lions roar after their prey and two lumps of flesh descended from heaven. They ate one and left the other. This he brought to the schoolhouse and propounded is this clean fit for food or not the essay. The scholars answered nothing unclean descends from heaven. Arzara asked Arabad what if something in the shape of an ass were to descend. He replied thou howling your rod did they not answer him that no unclean thing descends from heaven. Arsimian said they were also forbidden to practice sorcery. What is Arsimian's reason because it is written Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin that thou shalt not suffer a wish to live and this is followed by whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Thus all who are included in the second prohibition are included in the first. Our Eliezer said they were also enjoined against the forbidden mixtures whence do we derive the Samuel replied because scripture saith my statutes ye shall keep implying the statutes which I have already decreed is thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. This teaches just as in the case of animal life the prohibition is against hybridization so in plant life it Injunction is against grafting and just as the former holds good both within the land SC Palestine and without so the latter holds good both within and without Palestine but if so does the verse ye shall therefore keep my statutes also imply the statutes which I imposed long ago there the verse reads ye shall therefore keep my statutes which I now command you but here it reads my statutes ye shall keep implying the statutes decreed from of old shall ye keep our Joshua B. Karha said etc. Araha. B. Jacob said he is not guilty unless he curse the tetragram and excluding a literal name the blaspheming of which is not punishable is this not obvious the Mishnah stating may Jose smite Jose I might think that the name is used as a mere illustration he therefore teaches otherwise others give this version Araha B. Jacob said this proves that the tetragram is also a divine name but is it not obvious since the Mishnah states Jose smite Jose using a four lettered name I might think. That the great name must be employed whilst Jose is merely an illustration of the mode of testifying, therefore he teaches otherwise when the trial was finished, etc. Whence do we know that they arose our Isaac B. Ami said because the Ritzeth and Ehud came unto him and he was sitting in a summer parlor which he had for himself alone, and Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee, and he arose out of his seat. Now does this not afford an admagious conclusion if a long king of Moab who was only a heathen and knew but an attribute of God's name nevertheless arose? How much more so must an Israelite arise when he hears the Shem Hamforish? Whence do we know that they rent their garments from the verse? Then came Eliakim the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household engine, and the scribe and Joe the son of Azath, the recorder to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rab Shekhe, which rent was not to be re Whence do we derive this Arabab said, Deduced from the word rent this verse states with their clothes rent whilst elsewhere is written and Elisha saw it, SC Elijah's ascension and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into rents now do we not understand from and he rent them into that the cognate object is rents why then does the writ expressly state rents to teach that they were always to remain thus our rabbis taught he who hears the name blasphemed and he who hears it from the person who first heard it i.e. from the witness who testifies are both bound to rent their garments but the witnesses are not obliged to rent their clothes when they hear themselves repeating the blasphemy in the course of their testimony because they had already done so on first hearing it but what does this matter do they not hear it now too you cannot think so because it is written and it came to pass when king Hezekiah heard it as see the report of Rab Shekhe's blasphemy that he rent his clothes thus Hezekiah rent his clothes but they did not Rab Judah said in Samuel's name he who hears the divine name blasphemed by a Gentile need not rent his clothes but if you will object what of Rab Shekhe he was an apostate Israelite Rab Judah also said in Samuel's name one must rent his clothes only on hearing the Shem Hamehu had blasphemed but not for an attribute of the divine name now both of these statements conflict with our highest views for our highest said he who hears the divine name blasphemed nowadays need not rent his garments for otherwise one's garments would be reduced to tatters from whom does he hear it if from an Israelite are they so unbridled as to sin thus so frequently but it is obvious that he refers to a Gentile now if the Shem Hamehu is meant are the Gentiles so well acquainted with it as to make such frequency possible hence it must refer to an attribute and concerning that he says that only nowadays is one exempt, but formerly one had to rent his clothes. This proof is conclusive. The second witness stated, I too have heard. Thus, Reshlake said this proves that I too have heard. Thus, is valid evidence in civil and capital cases, but that the rabbis imposed a greater degree of stringency, insisting that each witness should explicitly testify here. However, since this is impossible on account of the desire to avoid unnecessary blasphemy, they reverted to biblical law. For should you maintain that such testimony is biblically invalid, can we execute a person when it is impossible for the evidence to be validly given? And the third did likewise. This anonymous statement agrees with our Akiva, who likens three witnesses to two Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, B Mishnah, he who engages in idol worship, is executed. It is all one whether he serve it, sacrifice, offer incense, make libations, prostrate himself, accept it as a god, or say to it, Thou art my god, but he who embraces. Kisses it sweeps or sprinkles the ground before it washes it anoints it clothes it or puts on its shoes he transgresses a negative precept but is not executed he who vows or swears lit confirms a thing by its name violates a negative precept he who uncovers himself before Baal peoris guilty for this is the mode of worshipping him he who casts a stone on Mercules thereby worships it tomorrow what is meant by whether he serve it or Jeremiah said this is what is meant whether he serve it in its normal way or sacrifice make libations offer incense or prostrate himself even if these acts are not the normal mode of worshipping that particular deity why is blood sprinkling not included have they said because sprinkling is the same as offering libations as it is written there drink libations of blood will I not offer once do we derive all these our rabbis taught had scripture written he that sacrifice that shall be utterly
Hence prostration was singled out to eliminate itself alone whilst sacrificing was singled out to throw light upon the general proposition the master stated I would have thought that the rid refers to sacrificing without the temple precincts but is that not punishable by extinction I might have thought if he was warned he is executed if not he is punished by extinction it is therefore taught otherwise Rabbi son of Arhin and Askabe let us say that prostration was singled out in order to throw light upon the general law and if you answer in that case why was sacrificing singled out to to throw light upon itself is that the intention to perform one act in the service of idolatry even if made during the performance of another non-idolatrous act renders one liable to punishment for it has been taught if one slaughtered a cow with the intention of sprinkling its blood and burning its fat idolatrously are Yohanan said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the animal is forbidden for any use but Resh Lakish ruled that it is permitted now this difficulty is disposed of on Aryohanan's view but on the view of Resh Lakish why not say that the verses required for this purpose are popular with the verse singling out sacrificing be superfluous on Aryohanan's view surely he merely rules that the animal is forbidden as a result of the analogy from pickle but the person may not be liable to death hence the verse teaches by singling out sacrificing that he is so liable are ahavit. Son of R.I.K. emerged with the verse singling out sacrificing not be superfluous on the view of Resh Lakish surely he merely rules that the animal is permitted yet the person may be punishable by death just as in the case of one who prostrates himself before a mountain the mountain remaining free for use though the person thereby renders himself liable to decapitation are ahav dipti said to Rubin according to Rubin son of Arhanan's question to have a six let us say that prostration was singled. Out in order to throw light upon the general law what is excluded by the verse take heed to thyself that thou inquire not after their gods saying how did these nations serve their gods even so will I do likewise should you say it excludes the act of uncovering oneself before deities whose normal mode of worship is sacrifice but that is derived from prostration just as prostration is an act of honor so every act to be punishable must be one of honor but it excludes the act of uncovering oneself before Merhulis for I would think since its normal mode of worship is a contemptuous act is casting stones thereon therefore any other degrading action incurs guilt hence the verse excludes it but what of our Eliezer's dictum once do we know that if one sacrificed an animal to Merhulis he is liable to punishment from the verse and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto demons since this is redundant in respect of normal worship being derived from how did these Nations serve their gods apply it to abnormal worship as being punishable now on Rabbi son of Arhanan's hypothesis that prostration throws light on the general statement is not abnormal worship derived from prostration that verse teaches that even if he sacrificed to Merhulis merely as an act of provocation but without thereby accepting it as a divinity he is punished Arhanan lost his oxen on going to seek them he was met by Rabbi who showed a contradiction in two Mishnahs we have learned he who engages in idol worship I is executed implying only if he actually worshipped it but he merely said that he would serve it he is not punished but we have learned if he the seduced person says I will worship or I will go and worship or we will go and worship the seducer is executed he replied the first mission refers to one who said I will not accept it as a god before I serve it or Joseph said you have chosen Tanaim at random this is a conflict of Tanaim for it has been Taught if a man said come and worship me or Meir declared him liable to death as any other seducer but our Judah ruled that he is not now if they his listeners did actually worship him all agree that he is executed for it is written thou shalt not make unto thee any idol their dispute is only if they merely affirmed that they would worship him or Meir maintaining that a mere affirmation is of consequence whilst our Judah holds that a mere affirmation is of no consequence subsequently our Joseph said my answer is groundless for even our Judah maintains that guilt is incarnate for a mere assertion as it has been taught our Judah said he the seducer is anti liable to execution unless the seduced person declares I will worship it or I will go and worship or let us go and worship but the dispute of our Meir and our Judah applies to a case where he incited others to worship him and they replied yes our Meir maintaining that when a man incites others to worship him he is paid he to and the yes was Said in earnest whilst our Judah holds that no heed is paid to him for they say Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin beware and does he differ from us and in saying yes they were but mocking him the two Mishnahs however are to be reconciled thus the first mission refers to a multitude who were seduced the second to an individual for an individual will not reconsider his resolve hence he will surely go astray after the seducer but a multitude do reconsider because they discuss it with each other and will therefore not go astray after the seducer our Joseph said once do I know it that the seducer is liable in the case of an individual from the verse if thy brother entice thee thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him hence if he consented and hearkened unto him declaring that he would do as the seducer urged guilt is incurred to this is there any difference whether the one or the many are seduced surely it has been taught if thy brother the son of thy Mother enticed thee it is all one whether the one or the many are seduced scripture however excludes an individual from the law pertaining to a multitude and a multitude from the provisions of an individual is an individual is excluded from the law pertaining to a multitude and that his person is punished with greater severity whilst his property is treated with greater leniency whilst a multitude are excluded from the law of an individual being personally punished with greater leniency but their property is treated with greater severity hence the distinction is only in this respect but in all other matters they are alike a therefore answered thus the first mission refers to one who is self persuaded the second to enticement by others if he is self persuaded he may reconsider the matter therefore he is punished only if he actually engages in worship but if he is enticed by others he will be dragged after them therefore for his mere assertion the penalty is merited Abbey. Said once do I know this from the verse thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him hence if he consented and hearkened unto the seducer by affirmation he is liable Rabbi said both Mishnahs deal with one who was seduced by others the second mission refers to a seducer who described the idols might saying it eats thus it drinks thus it does so much good and so much harm but the first mission treats of a seducer who did not thus descant upon the idols greatness Rabbi said once do I learned this from the verse if thy brother entice thee saying let us go and serve other gods namely of the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee or far from thee now what does it matter whether they are far or near but the root means this from the character of the near idols you can learn the nature of the distant ones surely then it means that the seducer had said to the seduced it eats thus it drinks thus it does so much good and so much harm this proof is Conclusive Arashi said the second mission refers to a non-conforming Israelite Rabbin said the two Mishnahs teach not only this but even that it has been taught if one engages in idolatry through love or fear of man but does not actually accept the divinity of the idol Abbe said he is liable to punishment but Rabbi said he is free from a penalty Abbe ruled that he is liable since he worshipped it but Rabbi said that he is free only if he accepts it as a god is he liable but not otherwise. Nimanaki Gishtahabi Lamashia Abbe said how do I know it because we have learned he who engages in idol worship it is all one whether he serve it etc surely it means whether he serve it through love or fear or whether he sacrifice to it as a god but Rabbi answers you that is not so but as our Jeremiah resolved the difficulty Abbe further said once do I know it for it has been taught thou shalt not bow down thyself to them thou mayest not bow down to them but thou mayest bow down to it. Human being like thyself I might think that this applies even to one who is worshipped like Haman but the writ adds not serve them but Haman was thus served through fear Rabbah however explains it thus like Haman but not altogether so to bow down to one like Haman is forbidden since he set himself up as a divinity but not altogether so for Haman was worshipped through fear whilst the prohibition of this verse applies only to a voluntary action Abbe said once do I know it for it has been taught as for an anointed high priest's liability to a sacrifice for unwitting idol worship Rabbi said it holds good even if his inadvertence it was in respect of the action only but the sages say there must have been forgetfulness of the principal law itself they agree however that his sacrifice is a she-goat as that of a private individual who committed idolatry inadvertently they also agree that he is not bound to bring the guilt offering of doubt now how can the act of idol worship be committed unwittingly if he saw an idolatrous try thought it to be a synagogue and bowed down to it surely his heart was to heaven but it must mean that he saw a royal statue and bowed down to it now if he accepted it as a god he is a deliberate sinner
Whilst if kindling was singled out to indicate separation, prostration was likewise singled out for the same reason. Our Joseph objected. Perhaps our Jose maintains that kindling was singled out to teach that it is the object of a negative precept only because he derives separation of different acts of labor from the phrase of one of them. For it has been taught our Jose said, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do of one of them, this teaches that sometimes one sacrifice is incurred for all of them transgressions, whilst at others for each one of the transgressions a separate sacrifice must be brought. Whereon our Jonathan remarked, what is the reason of our Jose? I.e., how does he deduce this from the verse? Because it is written, and shall do of one of them, this teaches that liability is incurred for one complete act of violation. I.e., one and for one, which is but a part of one. I.e., of one and for. Transgressing actions forbidden in themselves, i.e., them and for actions the prohibited nature of which is derived from others, i.e., of them further that one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, i.e., one equals them, whilst many offenses may involve but one sacrifice, i.e., them equals one, thus one complete act of violation. The writing on the Sabbath of Simeon, one which is but a part of one, the writing of Shem is part of Simeon actions forbidden in themselves, i.e., them it. Principal acts of labor forbidden on the Sabbath actions the prohibited nature of which is derived from others, i.e., of them the derivatives, one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, i.e., one equals them, e.g., if one knew that it was the Sabbath and that some work is forbidden on the Sabbath but was unaware that these particular acts are forbidden, many offenses may involve but one sacrifice, i.e., them equals one, e.g., if he was unaware that it was the Sabbath but knew. That his actions are forbidden on the Sabbath, but here in idol worship, since separation of actions is not derived from elsewhere, may we not say that all agree, even our Jose, that prostration was singled out to indicate separation, but is this so may not separation of acts in the case of idolatry to be deduced from of one of them, thus one complete act of idolatry, sacrificing to idols a part of one, i.e., of one, the cutting of one organ, actions forbidden in themselves, i.e., them principle. Acts, i.e., sacrificing, burning incense, making libations, and prostration actions derived from others, i.e., of them, the derivatives of these, e.g., if he broke a stick before it, one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices, i.e., one equals them, e.g., when one knows that it is an idol and that idolatry is forbidden, but is unaware that the particular acts in question constitute idol worship, many offenses may involve, but one sacrifice, i.e., them equals one, if he is unaware that it is an idol, but Knows that these acts are forbidden in idol worship. Now, how is the unawareness of the idolatrous nature of a thing possible? If one saw an idolatrous shrine, thought it to be a synagogue, and bowed down to it, surely his heart was to heaven. But it must mean that he saw a royal statue and bowed down to it. Now, if he accepted it as a god, he is a deliberate sinner. Whilst if not, he has committed no idolatry at all. Hence, it must surely mean that he worshipped it idolatrously through love or fear. Now, this interpretation of the phrase of one of them is possible on Abbe's view that a penalty is incurred for this, but on Rabbe's view that there is no liability. What can you say? Hence, you will have to explain it that his inadvertence arose through his declaring that idolatry is permissible. But on that assumption, you may solve the problem which Rabbe propounded to our nominees. What if one forgot both? Now, on that assumption, you may deduce that he is liable only for one sacrifice that causes no. Difficulty then solve it, but canst thou apply this verse to idolatry in this chapter for the sin of an anointed high priest of bullock is prescribed of a chief a he goat and of a private individual a she goat or a lamb. Whilst with respect to idolatry, we have learned they agree that his sacrifice is a she goat as that of a private individual. There is nothing more to be said about the matter when our Samuel be Judah came, he said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be this is the teaching. Which Yerazakai recited to him or Yohanan in one respect the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts, in another it is the reverse. Now the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one did two acts of work in one state of unawareness, he must make atonement for each separately. This is not so in the case of other precepts, other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath, for in their case if an injunction was unwittingly and unintentionally violated, atonement must. Be made this is not so with respect to the Sabbath. The Aster said the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one did two acts of work, etc. How so shall we say that he reaped and ground corn then an analogous violation of other precepts would be the partaking of forbidden fat and blood, but in both cases two penalties are incurred. But how is it possible in the case of other precepts that only one liability is incurred, e.g. if one ate forbidden fat twice, then by analogy the Sabbath was desecrated by reaping twice, but in each case only one liability is incurred. Therefore our Yohanan said to him, Go teach it outside, but what is the difficulty? Perhaps it can be explained after all as referring to reaping and grinding, whilst this is not so in the case of other precepts refers to idolatry and in accordance with the dictum of RMI who said if one sacrificed burnt incense and made libations to an idol in one state of unawareness, only one penalty is incurred though. Number of services were performed. This cannot be explained as referring to idolatry because the second clause states other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath. For in their case, if an injunction was unwittingly and unintentionally violated, atonement must be made. Now, how is an unwitting and unintentional transgression of idolatry possible? If one thought it see an idolatrous shrine to be a synagogue and bowed down to it, but his heart was to heaven, but it must mean that he saw a royal statue and bowed down to it. Now, if he accepted it as a god, he is a deliberate sinner. Whilst if he did not accept it as a god, he has not committed idolatry at all. Hence, it must mean that he worshipped it idolatrously through love or fear. Now, this agrees with Abbe's view that a penalty is incurred, but on Rabbe's view that there is no liability. What can you say? You will therefore explain that his inadvertence arose through his declaring that idolatry is permissible. Then this is not so in the case. Of the Sabbath will mean that there is no liability at all, but this cannot be so for when Rabbah propounded to our nominee, what if one is unaware of both, i.e., that it is the Sabbath and that labor on the Sabbath is forbidden, his problem was whether one sacrifice is incurred or two, one for each act of work, but none maintain that he is entirely exempt. What difficulty is this? Perhaps after all, it ought be said the first clause dealing with the greater severity of the Sabbath refers to idolatry. Whilst the second treats of other precepts, the unwitting and unintentional transgression of which consisted of thinking that melted forbidden fat was spittle, which he swallowed for this liability is incurred, which is not so with regard to the Sabbath, there being no liability in an analogous case, e.g., if one intended lifting something detached from the soil but accidentally tore out a plant from the earth, he is exempt from a penalty. Now, this is in accordance with our nominee's dictum in Samuel's. Name this he who violates the injunction of forbidden fat or consanguineous relationship whilst intending to do something else is liable to a penalty since he derived pleasure thereby but he who mistakenly did a forbidden act on the Sabbath whilst intending to do another is free from penalty because the Torah prohibited only a calculated action but our Yohanan who said go teach it outside was consistent with his attitude elsewhere that two clauses of a mission must not be interpreted as referring each to different circumstances for our Yohanan said he who will explain to me the mission of a barrel to agree with one tana entirely I shall carry his clothes for him to the baths to revert to the main text Talmud Ma Sanhedrin ARMI said if one sacrifice burnt incense and made libations to an idol in one state of unawareness only one penalty is incurred Abbe said what is RMI's reason scripture said thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them thereby the writ declares that all idolatrous deeds constitute one act of service, but did Abbe say thus did he not say why is prostration forbidden three times once to prohibit it when it is the normal mode of service, the second even if abnormal, and the third teaches separation, he explains RMI's ruling, but disagrees with it himself to revert to the main text. Abbe said why is prostration forbidden three times once to prohibit it when it is the normal mode of service, the second even if abnormal, and the third teaches separation, but is not the normal mode of worship derived from take heed that thou inquire not after their gods, saying how did these nations serve their gods, even so will I do likewise. But amend thus one teaches that prostration is forbidden when it is the appropriate but unusual mode of worshiping that deity, the second forbids it even if
the up the wicked of Israel would have deserved extermination. This is disputed by Tanaim. It has been taught others say, but for the Lawan who have brought the up the wicked of Israel would have deserved extermination. Thereupon our Simeon Beoli remarked, but whoever associates the heavenly name with anything else as Kodiades is utterly destroyed, lit eradicated from the world, for it is written, he that sacrificeth unto any god save unto the Lord alone, he shall be utterly destroyed. What? Then is intimated by the plural in who have brought the up that they lusted after many deities, but he who embraces kisses it sweeps or sprinkles the ground before it, etc. When Ardimi came, he said in our Eliezer's name for all these offenses, he is flagellated except for bowing or swearing by its name. Now, why for bowing or swearing by its name? Because it is a negative precept, the transgression of which involves no action, but those others two are only forbidden by a negative precept stated in general terms, and for such one is not flagellated, for it has been taught. Whence do we know that the eating of the flesh of an animal before it has expired is forbidden by a negative precept from the verse, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood? Another meaning of Ye shall not eat anything with the blood is Ye shall not eat the flesh of sacrifices whilst the blood is in the sprinkling bowl. Ardosa said, Whence do we know that the meal of comfort is not eaten for criminals executed by Bethdin? From the verse, ye shall not eat, i.e., observe the funeral meal for one whose blood has been shed. Our Akiva said, Whence do we know that a Sanhedrin which executed a person must not eat anything on the day of the execution? From the verse, ye shall not eat anything with the shedding of blood. Our Jonathan said, Whence do we derive a formal prohibition against the wayward and rebellious son? From the verse, ye shall not do anything to cause bloodshed. Now, Arabin Bihai, or as others state, Arabin Bikahana said, For none of these offenses is the offender flagellated because it is a negative precept in general terms. But when Rabin came, he said in our Eliezer's name, For none of these embracing, kissing, etc., is the offender flagellated, excepting for bowing and swearing by its name. Now, why are these not punished by flagellation because it is a negative command in general terms? But these two should be exempt since they are forbidden by a negative precept involving no action that is in accordance with our. Judah who said one is flagellated for a negative precept involving no action for it has been taught and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire now the scripture follows up a negative precept with a positive one Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be there by teaching that one is not flagellated for it this is our Judah's view our Jacob said this is not the real reason but because it is a negative precept involving no action for which one is not flagellated from this we infer that in our Judah's opinion one is flagellated for such transgressions he who vows or swears by its name violates a negative precept once do we know this it has been taught and make no mention of the name of other gods this means one must not say to his neighbor wait for me at the side of that idol neither let it be heard out of thy mouth one should not vow or swear by its name nor cause others as he to swear by the name another Interpretation and neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. This is a formal prohibition against the Messiah and Madiah, but a is explicitly forbidden, and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. But it is a formal prohibition against the Madiah, nor cause others, as see heathens, to vow or swear by its name. This supports the dictum of Samuel's father, for the father of Samuel said, One may not enter into a business partnership with a heathen, lest the latter be obliged to take an oath in connection with a business dispute, and he swear by his idol. Whilst the Torah hath said, Neither let it be heard out through thy mouth. When Ola came to Babylonia, he lodged in Kalnabo. Subsequently, Rabbah asked him, Where did you stay the night? He replied, In Kalnabo, but said, He is it not written, and make no mention of the name of other gods. He answered, Thus did our Yohan, and say, The name of every idol written in the Torah may be mentioned. Now, where is? This name written bell bowed down Nebo stupid, but if the name is not written may it then not be mentioned to this our measure she objected we have learned if one had a protracted issue of matter from his body lasting as long as three normal issues which is equivalent to the time of walking from Gadiah to Shiloh namely as long as it takes to perform two ritual immersions and dry oneself twice he is a zav in all respects Rubin answered also Gad is written in the Bible is that preparing table for Gad are and said all scoffing is forbidden excepting scoffing at idols which is permitted as it is written bell bowed down Nebo stupid, they stoop they bow down together they could not deliver the burden and it is also written they have spoken the inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth for the people thereof shall mourn over it and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it for the glory thereof which is departed from it read not Kabato, its glory but Kabito is weight, our Isaac said what is meant by and now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols in their image. This teaches that each made a small image of his idol, put it in his pocket, and whenever he thought of it, withdrew it from his bosom and embraced and kissed it. What is meant by let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves, our Isaac of the school of our I said, whenever the idols priests became envious of any wealthy men, they starved the calves, which were worshipped, made images of these men and placed them at the side of the crypts. Then they loosed the calves who, recognizing these men from the images set before them, ran after them and pawed them thereupon. The priest said, The idol desires thee, come and sacrifice thyself to them. Rabbah said, If so, the verse should not be they sacrifice men and kiss the calves, but the calves kiss them, i.e., paw and fawn upon them that they should sacrifice themselves. But Rabbah explained it thus if one. Sacrificed his son to the idol, the priest said to him, You have offered a most precious gift to it, come and kiss it. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, and the men of Babylon made Sukhabanoth, what is this a fowl? And the men of Kuth made Nurgle, what is it a cock? And the men of Hamath made Ashima, what is that a bald buck? And the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, what are these a dog and an ass? And the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to a Dramalek and Amalek, the gods of Sepharvim, what are these the mule and the horse a Dramalek, meaning that if the mule honors its master, the king with its load, and Amalek, meaning that the horse responds to its master in battle, the father of Hezekiah, king of Judah, wished to do likewise to him, i.e., burn him in fire, but that his mother anointed him with the blood of the salamander. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, the Israelites knew that the idols were non-entities, but they engaged in idolatry only that they might openly satisfy their incestuous. Lusts are measured, she objected as those who remember their children, so they long for their altars and their graves by the green trees, etc., which our Eliezer interpreted as one who yearns for his son, so they yearned that was after they became addicted thereto. Come and here, and I will cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. It was related of Elijah the righteous that whilst searching for those who were languishing with hunger in Jerusalem, he once found a child faint with hunger lying. Upon a dung heap on questioning him as to the family to which he belonged, he replied, I belong to such and such a family. He asked, Are any of that family left? And he answered, None excepting myself. Thereupon he asked, If I teach thee something by which thou wilt live, wilt thou learn? He replied, Yes, then said he recite every day, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. But the child retorted, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be silent, for one must not make mention of the name of the Lord. He said this. Because his father and mother had not taught him to serve the Lord, and straightway he brought forth an idol from his bosom, embracing and kissing it until his stomach burst. His idol fell to the earth, and he upon it, thus fulfilling the verse, and I shall cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols that do was after they became addicted thereto. Come and hear, and they cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Now what did they say, Rab Judah, or as others maintain? Our Jonathan said, They cried this woe, woe! It is that essay idolatry which destroyed the sanctuary, burned the temple, slew the righteous, and exiled Israel from their land, and still it sports amongst us. Hast thou not set it before us that we might be rewarded for withstanding its allurements? But we desire neither temptation nor reward that do was after they were seduced by it. Continuing Rab Judah's statement, they fasted for three days and reading for mercy thereafter their sentence fell from heaven. The word. Ema truth written upon it are Hananah said this proves that the seal of the Holy One blessed be he is Emeth the shape of a fiery lion's well issued from the Holy of Holies and the prophet said to Israel that is the tempter of idolatry whilst they held it fast a hair of its body fell out and his roar of pain was heard for four hundred parasangs in perplexity they cried what
Yet that did cleave unto the Lord your God indicates that they were firmly attached. Our rabbis taught Sabta, a townsman of a class once hired and asked to a Gentile woman when she came to Peer, she said to him, Wait till I enter and come out again under issuing. He said to her, Now do you wait for me too until I go in and come out again? But said she, Are you not a Jew? He replied, What does it concern thee? He then entered, uncovered himself before it, and wiped himself on the idol's nose whilst the acolytes praised him, saying, No man has ever served this idol, thus he that uncovers himself before Baal Peer thereby serves it, even if his intention was to degrade it. He who cast a stone at Merhulis thereby serves it, even if his intention was to bruise it, or Manasseh was going to be torn on the way he was told an idol stands here. He took up the stone and threw it at the idol statue thereupon. They said to him, It is Merhulis. He said to them, But we have learned he who cast a stone for Merhulis thereby. Serves it. So he went and inquired at the Beth Hamidrash whether he had done wrong since his action was a gesture of contempt. They informed him, We have learned he who cast a stone at Mercules thereby serves it. That is to say, even if it is merely to bruise it, he said to them, And I will go and remove it. But they replied, Whether one cast a stone or removes it, he incurs guilt because every stone thus removed leaves room for another mission. He who gives of his seed to Molech incurs no punishment unless he delivers it to Molech and causes it to pass through the fire. If he gave it to Molech but did not cause it to pass through the fire or the reverse, he incurs no penalty unless he does both. Himara, the Mishnah teaches idolatry and giving to Molech. Our Abin said, Our mission is in accordance with the view that Molech worship is not idolatry, for it has been taught if one causes his seed to pass through the fire, whether to Molech or to any other idol, he is liable to death. Our Eliezer son of Arsimian said if to Molech he is liable if to another idol he is not a base our Eliezer son of Arsimian and our Hanabi Antigonus said the one and same thing our Eliezer son of Arsimian that which has just been stated our Hanabi Antigonus as it has been taught our Hanabi Antigonus said why did the Torah employ the word Molech to teach that the same law applies to whatever they proclaimed as their king even a pebble or a splinter robin said the difference between them is in respect of a temporary Molech Talmud Ma Sanhedrin B.R. Jane said punishment is not incurred unless one delivers his seed to the acolytes of Molech for it is said and thou shalt not give up thy seed to pass through the fire to Molech it has been taught likewise I might think that if one caused his seed to pass through the fire to Molech without first delivering it to the priest he is liable therefore the writ teaches thou shalt not give if he gave it to the priest but did not cause it to Pass through the fire I might think that he is liable therefore the writ states to pass through if one delivered it to the priests of Molech but caused it to pass through to some other deity I might think that he is punished therefore the writ teaches to Molech now if he delivered it to the priests and caused it to pass to Molech but not through the fire I might think that he is liable but as here is written to pass through and elsewhere it is stated there shall not be found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire just as there the reference is to fire so here too and just as here the reference is to Molech so there too Araha the son of Rabbah said if one caused all the seed to pass through the fire to Molech he is exempt from punishment because it is written of thy seed implying but not all thy seed are actually propounded what if one caused his blind or sleeping son to pass through or if he caused his grandson by his son or daughter to pass through one at least of these you may solve, for it has been taught any man that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall he put to death, and I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Molech. Why is this stated? Because it is said, There shall not be found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire from this. I know it only of his son or daughter. Once do I know that it applies to his son, son or daughter, son too from the verse. And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will cut him off. Now the Tanna commences with the verse, Because he hath given of his seed, but concludes with when he giveth of his seed. This is to intimate another deduction, thus, because he hath given of his seed from this. I know only that the law applies to legitimate seed, that being the normal meaning of. The word once do I know that it also applies to illegitimate seed from the verse when he giveth of his seed. Rab Judah said he is only liable to punishment if he causes his seed to pass through in the normal way. How is that? Abbe said there was a loose pile of bricks in the middle and fire on either side of it. Rabbah said it was like the children's leaping about on Purim. It has been taught in support of Rabbah. Punishment is incurred only for causing one seed to pass in the normal fashion. If he caused him to pass through on foot, he is exempt. He is liable only for his own issue, e.g., for his son and daughter. He is punished, but for his father or mother, brother or sister, he is not. If he passed through himself, he is free from punishment. Our Eliezer son of Arsimian ruled that he is liable further, whether to Molech or to any other idol, he is liable. Our Eliezer son of Arsimian said if to Molech he is liable, if to another idol, he is not. Allah said, What is our Eliezer son of Arsimian? As reason. Scripture said, There shall not be found among thee among the means in thyself, and the rabbis do they not interpret among thee. Thus surely we have learned if one must search for a lost article of his own and of his father's priority is given to his own, and we observe thereon why so to which Rab Judah replied, Scripture said, Save that there shall be no poor among thee, teaching that one's own loss has priority over that of any other man there. The deduction follows from Save that our Jose son of our Hannah said, Why is extinction thrice threatened for idolatry? One teaches extinction for the normal worship of idols, one for abnormal, and one for the service of Molech, but on the view that Molech worship is included in general idolatry, why is extinction mentioned in its case to amply to one who causes his son to pass through to an idol, not Molech, where such is not the normal mode of worship now on the view that a Megadeth is a worshipper of idols, why is extinction stated for it even as it has been taught that soul shall surely be cut off from among his people, he shall be cut off in this world and in the next. This is our Akiva's view, our Ishmael said, but the verse has previously stated that soul shall be cut off. Are there then three worlds? But interpret this and that soul shall be cut off in this world. He is to he cut off of the following verse and denoted by the infinitive in the next. Whilst as for the repetition, the finite form of the verb that is because the Torah employs human phraseology. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, Amishnah, Abalob is the Pitham who speaks from his armpit, the Yidoenai, wizard, Is one who speaks from his mouth. These two are stoned, whilst he who inquires of them transgresses a formal prohibition. Gemara, why are both Abalob and Yidoenai mentioned here as being executed, whilst in the list of those who are punished by extinction only Abalob is included, but Yidoenai is omitted? Are Yohanan said because both are stated in one. Negative precept Resh Lakish said Yido and I is omitted in Kiratha because it involves no action now according to our Yohanan why is Abalob mentioned rather than Yido and I because it is written first in the scripture now why does Resh Lakish reject our Yohanan's answer our Papa said they are stated separately in the verse decreeing death but our Yohanan maintains offenses which are distinct in their injunctions there being a different one for each are held to be separate in their atonement but if only in the decree of death they are not regarded as separate now why does our Yohanan reject Resh Lakish's answer he can tell you the mission of Kiratha is taught in accordance with our Akiva's views that action is unnecessary for a sin offering to be incurred but Resh Lakish maintains granted that our Akiva does not require a great action but he requires at least a small one but what action is there in blasphemy which is included in the enumeration the movement of the lips but what action is done by Balob the knocking of his arms now is this so even in the view of the rabbis but it has been taught the idolater is liable to a sacrifice only for that which entails an action e.g. sacrificing burning incense making libations and prostration whereon Resh Lakish observed which Tana maintains that a sacrifice is due for prostration our Akiva who rules that a deed entailing much action is unnecessary but our Yohanan said it even agrees with the rabbis for in bending his body he performs an action now since Resh Lakish maintains that in the view of the rabbis bending one's body is not regarded as an action surely the knocking of the arms is not one well then Resh Lakish statement that the Balob performs an action is made on the view only of our Akiva but not of the rabbis if so should not the mission of their state but the rabbis maintain that the blasphemer and Balob are excluded but Allah answered the mission there refers to a who
is liable to punishment because the movement of his lips is an action. Rashi Lakish ruled that he is not because this is not an action. But Rabbi answered, thus false witnesses are different because their offense is caused through vision. Our rabbis taught a balob is one who speaks from between the joints of his body and his elbow joints. A yido and I is one who places the bone of a yido in his mouth and it speaks of itself. An objection is raised and thy voice shall be as of one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground. Surely that means that it speaks naturally. No, it ascends and seats itself between his joints and speaks. Come and hear. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw a godlike form ascending out of the earth. And Samuel said to Saul, Surely that means that it spoke naturally. No, it settled itself between her joints and spoke. Our rabbis taught balob denotes both him who conjures up the dead by means of soothsaying and one who consults his skull. What is the difference? Between them the dead conjured up by soothsaying does not ascend naturally but feed first nor on the Sabbath whilst if consulted by its skull it ascends naturally and on the Sabbath too you say it ascends but whither does not the skull lie before him but say thus it answers naturally and on the Sabbath too and this question W.A. asked by Turnus Rufus of our Akibah wherein does the state of Sabbath differ from any other he replied wherein does one man differ from another because M. Lord. The emperor wishes it the Sabbath to our Akibah rejoined and is distinguished because the Lord W. She so he replied I ask this who tells you that this day is the Sabbath he answered let the river salvation prove it let the B.A.L.O.B. prove it let th hashtag father's grave once no smoke ascends on the Sabbath prove it he said to him you have shamed disgraced and reviled him by this proof he who inquired of an OB is that not the same as one that consultate the dead as has been taught or that. Consultate the dead this means one who starries himself and spends the night in a cemetery so that an unseen spirit of a demon may rest upon him to enable him to foretell the future and when our Akiba reached this verse he wept if one who starves himself that a new clean spirit may rest upon him as his wish granted he who fasts that the pure spirit the divine presence may rest upon him how much more should his desire be fulfilled but alas our sins have driven it away from us as it is written but your iniquities have separated between you and your god Rabbah said if the righteous desired it they could by living a life of absolute purity be creators for it is written but your iniquities have distinguished between etc Rabbah created Amma and sent him to our Zega our Zara spoke to him but received no answer thereupon he said unto him thou art a creator of the magicians return to thy dust our Hannah and our Ashai spent every Sabbath even studying the book of creation by means of which they created a third grown calf and aided our rabbis taught me one and our simian said that is one who applies the semen of seven male species to his eyes in order to perform witchcraft the sages say it is one who holds people's eyes our akiba said it is one who calculates the times and hours saying today is propitious for setting forth tomorrow for making purchases the wheat ripening on the eve of the seventh year is generally sound let the beans be pulled up instead of being harvested in the usual manner to save them from becoming worthy our rabbis taught him an age is one who says so and so's bread has fallen out of his hand his staff has fallen out of his hand his son called after him a raven screamed after him a deer has crossed his path a serpent came at his right hand or a fox at his left talmud ma sanhedrin do not commence with me it is morning it is new moon it is the conclusion of the sabbath our rabbis taught ye shall not use enchantments nor observe times this Refers to those who practice enchantment by means of weasels, birds, and fish. Mishnah, he who desecrates the Sabbath, I ask stone, providing that it is an offense punished by extinction if deliberate and by a sin offering. If unwitting Gemara, this proves that there is a manner of desecrating the Sabbath for the deliberate committal of which there is no extinction, nor is a sin offering to be brought for its unwitting transgression. What is it? The law of boundaries according to our Akiba and Kindling A. Fire according to our Jose Mishnah, one who curses his father or his mother is not punished unless he curses them by the divine name. If he cursed them by an attribute, our Meir held him liable, but the sages ruled that he is exempt. Gemara, who is meant here by the sages, our Menahem, son of our Jose, for it has been taught our Menahem, son of our Jose, said when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. Why is the name mentioned to teach that he who curses his father or his mother does not incur? A penalty unless he employs the divine name or rabbis taught for any man that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death his father and his mother he hath cursed his blood shall be upon him now the scripture could have said a manish what is taught by any manish is the inclusion of a daughter a tumtum and a hermaphrodite as being subject to this law that curseth his father and his mother from this I know only that he is punished for cursing his father and his mother once do I know the same if he cursed his father without his mother or his mother without his father from the passage his father and his mother he hath cursed his blood shall be upon him implying a man that cursed his father a man that cursed his mother this is our Joshua's opinion our Jonathan said the beginning of the verse alone implies either the two together or each separately unless the verse had explicitly stated together he shall surely be put to death by stoning you say by Stoning, but perhaps it means by one of the other deaths decreed in the Torah. Here it is written, His blood shall be upon him, and elsewhere it is written, A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them, just as their stoning is meant. So here too from this we learn punishment. Whence do we derive the prohibition from the verse, Thou shalt not revile the judges nor curse the ruler of that people? Now, if his father is a judge, he is included in the Thou shalt not revile the judges of an Asai nor curse the ruler of the people, if neither a judge nor a ruler. Whence do we know it? You may construct a syllogism with these two as premises. The case of an Asai is not analogous to that of a judge, nor of a judge to that of an Asai. Now, the case of a judge is not analogous to that of an Asai, for you are commanded to obey the ruling of a judge, but not of an Asai, whilst the case of an Asai is. Not analogous to that of judge, for you are enjoined not to rebel against the decree of an Asai, but not of a judge. Now, what is common to both is that they are of that people, and you are forbidden to curse them. So I extend the law to thy father, who is of that people, that thou art forbidden to curse him. No, their common characteristic is their greatness, which is a decisive factor. Hence, Scripture writes, Thou shalt not curse the deaf, thus applying the injunction even to the humblest of that people. No. In the case of the deaf, his very deafness may be the cause of the prohibition. Then let the Asai and the judge prove otherwise. But in their case, their greatness may be the cause. Then let the deaf prove the reverse. And thus, the argument proceeds in a circle. The particular characteristic of one is lacking in the other, and vice versa. What is common to all is that they are of that people, and you are forbidden to curse them. So I include thy father, who is of that people, and you are forbidden to curse. Him know what they have in common is that they are distinguished from the average person, but if so, scripture should have written either the judge and the deaf or the Nasai and the deaf, why then is the judge mentioned since this is superfluous for itself? Apply it to one's father. Now this agrees with the view that Elohim is profane, but on the view that it is holy, what canst thou say for it has been taught Elohim is profane, that is our Ishmael's opinion. Our Akiva said it is sacred and it has been taught thereon. Our Eliezer B. Jacob said, Whence do we derive a formal prohibition against cursing God's name from the verse, Thou shalt not revile God on the view that Elohim is profane, the sacred is derived from the profane, hence contrary wise on the view that Elohim is sacred, thou mayest derive the profane from the sacred. Now it is quite correct to say that on the view that Elohim is profane, the sacred is derived from it, but on the view that Elohim is holy, how canst thou derive the profane from? It perhaps the prohibition is only in respect of the sacred i.e. God but not of the profane at all if so scripture should have written Elohim lo tekel thou shalt not revile God Talmud, ma sanhedrin be why right lo tekel that both God and judge may be understood therefrom Mishnah he who has intimate connection with the betrothed maiden is not punished until she is a nara virgin betrothed and in her father's house if two men violated her the first is stoned but the second is strangled Gemara our rabbis taught if nara damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband nara excludes a bogareth virgin excludes one who is no longer a virgin betrothed excludes a nasua because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house this excludes one whom her father has given over to her husband's messengers to take to her new home Rab Judah said in Rab's name this our Mishnah is our Meir's view but the sages maintain that by
Joshua, how does he interpret alone even as it has been taught if ten men cohabited with her yet leaving her a virgin they are all stoned? Rabbi said the first is stoned but the others are strangled or rabbis taught and the daughter of any priest if she profaned herself to hell by playing a whore Rabbi said it implies the first and thus it is also written and the man only that left with her shall die what does this mean Arhuna the son of our Joshua said Rabbi agrees with our Ishmael this. That only in Aruzah the daughter of a priest is singled out for burning but not Anisua who is strangled just as an Israelite's daughter and this is what he says if her first coition is adulterous i.e. if she is in Aruzah at the time she is burnt otherwise she is stoned what is meant by and thus etc. It is as there just as their scripture refers to her first coition so here too our BBB Abbe said to him the master has not said thus who is it our Joseph but that Rabbi agreed with our Meir who held that if a priest's daughter married one who was unfit for her and then committed adultery she is strangled instead of burnt and this is what Rabbi says if her first profanation is through adultery she is burnt otherwise she is stoned and what is meant by and thus etc. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin that is merely a mnemonical sign Mishnah Amos is a seducing layman and he who seduces an individual saying there is an idol in such and such a place it eats thus it drinks thus it does so. Much good and so much harm for all whom the Torah condemns to death. No witnesses are hidden to entrap them, excepting for this one. If he incited two to idolatry, they themselves are witnesses against him, and he is brought to Beth Din and stoned. But if he entice one, he must reply, I have friends who wish to do so. Likewise, come and propose it to them too. But if he was cunning and declined to speak before them, witnesses are hidden behind the partition. Whilst he who was incited says to him, Make your proposal to me now in private. When the Messiah does so, the other replies, How shall we forsake our God in heaven to go and serve wood and stones? Should he retract it as well? But if he answers, It is our duty to worship idols and is seemly for us. Then the witnesses stationed behind the partition take him to Beth Din and have him stoned. If he says, I will worship it, or I will go and worship, or let us go and worship, or I will sacrifice to it, I will go and sacrifice, let us go and sacrifice. I Will burn incense, I will go and burn incense, let us go and burn incense, I will make libations to it, I will go and make libations to it, let us go and make libations, I will prostrate myself before it, I will go and prostrate myself, let us go and prostrate ourselves. Guilt is incurred, Gemara Amos is a limb, thus only because he is a limb is he stoned, but if a prophet he is strangled who seduces an individual, thus only if he seduces an individual, but if a community he is strangled, hence who is the tana of the mission, our Simeon, for it has been taught a prophet who entices people to idolatry is stoned, our Simeon said he is strangled, and consider the second clause, a Madia is one who says, let us go and serve idols, whereon Rab Judah observed in Rab's name, this mission teaches of those who lead astray a seduced city, thus it agrees with the rabbis who maintain that these two are stoned, not strangled, hence the first clause is taught according to our Simeon, the second according to. The rabbis Rabbana said both clauses are based on the rabbis ruling but proceed from the universally admitted to the disputed our papa said when the Mishnah states Amos is a headite it is only in respect of hiding witnesses for it has been taught and for all others for whom the Torah decrees death witnesses are not hidden excepting for this one how is it done a light is lit in an inner chamber the witnesses are hidden in an outer one which is in darkness so that they can see and hear him. But he cannot see them and the person he wished to seduce says to him tell me privately what thou hast proposed to me and he does so then he remonstrates but how shall we forsake our God in heaven and survivals if he retracts it as well but if he answers it is our duty and seemly for us the witnesses who were listening outside bring him to the Beth Din and have him stoned Mishnah Amadiah is one who says let us go and survivals a sorcerer if he actually performs magic is liable to death. But not if he merely creates illusions. Our Akiva said in our Joshua's name of two who gather cucumbers by magic, one may be punished, and the other exempt. He who really gathers them is punished, whilst he who produces an illusion is exempt. Amar Rab Judah said in Rab's name, This Mishnah teaches of those who lead astray a seduced city, a sorcerer, if he actually performs magic, etc. Our rabbis taught, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. This applies to both men and women, if so, why is a female? Which stated, Because mostly women engage in witchcraft, how are they executed? Our Jose the Galilean said, Here it is written, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, whilst elsewhere is written, Thou shalt not suffer anything that breathed to live, just as there the sword is meant, so here is the sword meant to our Akiva said, It is here stated, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, whilst elsewhere it is said, There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be. Beast or man, it shall not live just as their death by stoning is meant. So here too, our Jose said to him, I have drawn an analogy between thou shalt not suffer to live written in two verses, whilst you have made a comparison between thou shalt not suffer to live and it shall not lie. Our Akiva replied, I have drawn an analogy between two verses referring to Israelites for whom the writ hath decreed many modes of execution, whilst you have compared Israelites to heathens in whose case only Talmud, Mas, Sanhedrin be one death penalty is decreed. Ben is a said, it is here written, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, whilst immediately after it is said, whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Now this is placed in proximity, teaching that just as the latter is stoned, so is the former. Thereupon our Judah said to him, shall we because of this proximity exclude the former from the easier death implied by an unspecified death sentence, changing it to stoning, but reason this the obi. And Yido and I were included among other sorcerers. Why were they singled out that other sorcerers may be assimilated to them and to teach thee just as the Obi and Yido and I are stoned? So are all other sorcerers stoned, but even according to our Judah are not Obi and Yido and I. Two statements teaching the same thing and two statements teaching the same thing cannot throw light upon anything else. Our Zechariah answered for this very reason. Our Judah is generally said to maintain that even two statements singled out for the same purpose eliminate the proposition as a whole. Our Yohanan said, Why are they sorcerers called Kashafim? Because they lessen the power of the divine agencies. There is none else besides him. Our Hanan said, Even by sorcery, a woman once attempted to take earth from under our Hanan's feet. He said to her, If you succeed in your attempts, go and practice it. As see sorcery, it is written, however, there is none else beside him, but that is not so for did not our Yohanan say, Why are they? Called me Kashifim because they lessen the power of the divine agencies. Our Hannah was in a different category owing to his abundant merit. Our Abbe Binagri said in the name of our Habib Abu Blahem refers to magic through the agency of demons. Beloved him to sorcery without outside help, and thus it is also said in the flame and of the sword that turns of itself. Abbe said the sorcerer who insists on exact paraphernalia works through demons. He who does not works by pure enchantment. Abbe said the laws of sorcerers are like those of the Sabbath. Certain actions are punished by stoning. Some are exempt from punishment yet forbidden. Whilst others are entirely permitted. Thus, if one actually performs magic, he is stoned. If he merely creates an illusion, he is exempt yet it is forbidden. Whilst what is entirely permitted, such as was performed by our Hannah and our Ashai, who spent every Sabbath even studying the laws of creation by means of which they created a through grown calf and. Aided Arashi said, I saw Karna's father blow his nose violently and streamers of silk issued from his nostrils. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. Our Eliezer said, This proves that a magician cannot produce a creature less than a barley corn in size. Our Papa said, By God, he cannot produce even something as large as a camel, but these larger than a barley corn he can magically collect and so produce the illusion that he has magically created them. The others he cannot. Rab said to our high, I myself saw an Arabian traveler take a sword and cut up a camel. Then he rang a bell at which the camel arose. He replied, After that, was there any blood or dung? But that was merely an illusion. Zeir, I happened to go to Alexandria in Egypt and bought an ass when he was about to water it. It dissolved and there stood before him a landing board. The vendors then said to him, Were you not Zeir, we would not return you your money. Does anyone buy anything here without first testing? It by water Janet came to an end he said to them give me a drink of water and they offered him Shadi seeing the lips of the woman who brought him this moving he covertly spilled a little thereof which turned to snakes then he said
Yours will be more cruel than theirs. He then put his two arms over his heart and bewailed them, saying, Woe to you, two arms of mine that have been like two scrolls of the law that are wrapped up. Much Torah have I studied, and much have I taught. Much Torah have I learned, yet have I but skeined from the knowledge of my teachers as much as a dog lapping from the sea. Much Torah have I taught, yet my disciples have only drawn from me as much as a painting stick from its tube. Moreover, I have studied three hundred laws on the subject of a deep bright spot, yet no man has ever asked me about them. Moreover, I have studied three hundred, or as others state, three thousand laws about the planting of cucumbers by magic, and no man excepting Ahibabi Joseph ever questioned me thereon. For it once happened that he and I were walking together on a road when he said to me, My master, teach me about the planting of cucumbers. I made one statement, and the whole field about us was filled with cucumbers. Then he said, Master, you have taught me how to plant them, now teach me how to pluck them up. I said something, and all the cucumbers gathered in one place as visitors, then asked him, What is the law of all the shoemakers? Last an amulet, a leather bag containing pearls, and a small weight. He replied, They can become unclean, and if unclean, they are restored to their uncleanliness just as they are. Then they asked him, What of a shoe that is on the last? He replied, It is clean, and in pronouncing this word, his soul departed. Then our Joshua rose and exclaimed, The vow is annulled, the vow is annulled. On the conclusion of the Sabbath, our Akiba met his beer being carried from Caesarea to lit in his grief. He beat his flesh until the blood flowed down upon the earth. Then our Akiba commenced his funeral address, the mourners being lined up about the coffin, and said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, I have many points, but no money changer to accept them. Thus from this story we See that he learned this SC the producing of cucumbers by magic from our Eliezer he learned it from our Eliezer but did not grasp it then he learned it from our Joshua who made it clear to him but how might our Eliezer do so did we not learn if he actually performs magic he is liable if it is only to teach it is different for it has been said thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations thou mayest not learn in order to practice but thou mayest learn in order to understand. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B C H A P T E R V I I mission is stubborn and rebellious son when does he become liable to the penalty of a stubborn and rebellious son from the time that he produces two hairs until he grows a beard right round by which is meant the hair of the genitals not that of the face but that the sages spoke in polite terms for it is written if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son a son but not a daughter a son but not a full grown man whilst a minor is exempt since he does. Not come within the scope of the commandments tomorrow. Whence do we know that a minor is exempt? Whence do we know the mission of states? The reason is that he does not come within the scope of the commandments. Moreover, where else do we find that scripture prescribed the penalty for a minor that a verse should be necessary here to exempt him? This is our question now. Is then a stubborn and rebellious son executed for his actual iniquity? Surely he is rather slain on account of his ultimate end. And that being so, even a minor should be executed. Moreover, the interpretation a son but not a man implies a minor. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, Scripture said, If a man have a son that is stubborn and rebellious, implying a son near to the strength of manhood until he grows a beard right round, etc. Our high taught until he grows a beard round the corona when our came, he explained it. Thus it means until the hair surrounds the membrane, but not until it grows round the testicles are his da said, if a Minor begot a son, the latter does not come within the category of a stubborn and rebellious son, for it is written, If a man have a son, but not if a son, i.e., one who has not reached manhood, have a son, but is not that verse needed for the deduction made by Rab Judah in Rab's name, if so, the verse should write, If there be a son to a man, why state, if a man have a son to teach our his dictum, then let us say that the entire verse teaches this, if so, scripture should have said, If there be the son of a man who has seen the son is stubborn, etc., why state, if a man have a son, etc., hence both are deduced now, our his statement conflicts with Rabbis, for Rabbis said, A minor cannot beget children, for it is written, but if the man hath no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto now, is there any man in Israel that has no kinsman, hence the writ must refer to the robbery of a proselyte Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin A, and the divine law states, but if the man, etc., teaching that only in the case of a man must thou Seek whether he has kinsmen or not, but not in the case of a minor, for it is obvious that he can have none. Have objected? It has been taught, and if any manly hath carnally with a woman that is a bond made a man from this, I know the law only with respect to a man. Whence do I know it of one age, nine years, and a day who is capable of intercourse from the verse? And if a man he replied, such a minor can produce semen, but cannot be get there with, for it is like the seed of cereals less than a third. Grown the school of Hezekiah taught, but if a man came presumptuously, yes, it upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, a man can inflame his genital and emit semen, but not a minor. Our Mordecai asked of Arashi, whence do we know that was it denotes eating from the verse? And Jacob saw W A S pottage, but this is not so for the school of Ishmael taught. If a man have a son implying a son, but not a father, now how is this possible? Shall we say that he impregnated his wife after producing two? Hairs and begot before the hair was fully grown, but can there be such a long interval between these as to allow for complete gestation? Did not Archiros but say the extreme limits of a stubborn and rebellious son are only three months hence he must have caused conception before producing two hairs and begot the child before the hair was fully grown, and in that case he is excluded from the operation of the law, thus proving that a minor can beget children. No, in truth, this refers to one who impregnated his wife after the appearance of two hairs and begot the child after his hair was fully grown. But as for the difficulty raised by Archiros Bidet's dictum when Ardimi came, he said in the West, i.e., Palestine, they explained the deduction of the school of Ishmael thus a son, but not one who is fit to be called a father to revert to the above text. Archiros Bidet said in our Shabbatai's name, the extreme limit of a stubborn and rebellious son is only three months, but did we not learn from? The time that he produces two hairs until he grows a beard right round if he grew a beard even if three months have elapsed or if three months elapsed even if he did not grow a beard he is no longer liable our Jacob of Nihar Pekot sat before Rabbanah and said thus in the name of Arhuna the son of our Joshua from the dictum of Archie Rusbidei and our Shabbatai's name one may deduce that if a woman bears at seven months her pregnancy is not discernible at a third of its course for if it is why three months two and a third are sufficient he demurred in truth it may be that her pregnancy becomes manifest at a third of its course but we must regard the majority now this was repeated before Arhuna the son of our Joshua whereupon he remarked but can we consider the majority only disregarding the majority entirely in capital charges did not the Torah say then the congregation shall judge and the congregation shall deliver the slayer yet you say regard the majority this was reported back to Rabbanah he replied, Do we then not follow the majority in capital charges? But we learned if one witness testified that the crime was committed on the second day of the month and one on the third, their testimony is valid for one knew that the past month had been full and the other did not. But if you maintain that we do not follow the majority, should we not say that these witnesses testify exactly and thus contradict each other? Hence it surely must be that we follow the majority who are wont to err. With respect to the fullness of the month, our Jeremiah of Dipti said, We also learned the following a maiden age three years and a day may be acquired in marriage by coition, and if her deceased husband's brother cohabited with her, she becomes his a penalty of adultery may be incurred through her if in it as she defiles him who has connection with her, so that he in turn defile that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon a person afflicted with gonorrhea if she married a priest. She may eat of Teramah if any unfit person cohabits with her, he disqualifies her from the priesthood if any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her, they are executed on her account, but she is exempt Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. But why may she not prove to be barren her husband not having married her Z and such a condition? Hence it must be that we take into account only the majority and the majority of women are not constitutionally barren, no the penalty incurred on her account is a sacrifice but not death, but it is explicitly stated they are executed on her account that refers to incest by her father, but the statement is if any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her, hence this mission refers to a husband who explicitly accepted her under all conditions. Our rabbis taught if a woman sported lewdly with her young son a minor and he committed the first stage of cohabitation with her Beth Sham
him home to his house to his city and put his household in order and hanged himself and it is written nine bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days and it has been taught dogleb but 34 years and a fell 33 hence deduct seven years Solomon's age when a fell committed suicide which leaves a fell 26 years old at his birth now deduct two years for the three pregnancies leaving each eight years old when he begot a child but why so perhaps both Ahitophel and Eliam were nine years old at conception Bathsheba being only six years when she conceived because a woman has more generated vitality the proof being that she bore a child before Solomon but it is deduced from the following now these are the generations of Terah begot Abram Nahor and Haran now Abraham must have been at least one year older than Nahor and Nahor one year older than Haran hence Abraham was two years older than Haran and it is written and Abram and Nahor took them wives the name of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah the daughter of Haran the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah were on our Isaac observed Iscah with Sarai and why was she called Iscah because she foresaw the future by holy inspiration hence it is written in all that Sarah had said unto thee hearken unto her voice another reason is that all gazed at her beauty it is also written that Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Hence Abraham was ten years older than Sarah, and two years older than her father Haran. Therefore Sarah must have been born when Haran was eight years old. But why so? Perhaps Abram was the youngest of the brethren, the writ giving them in order of wisdom and proof of this contention. It is written, and Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Hence, if the order is, according to Shem was at least a year older than Ham, and Ham a year older than Japheth, so that Shem was two years older than Japheth. Now it is written, and Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of water was upon the earth. And it is written, these are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. But was he a hundred years old? He must have been a hundred and two years old. Hence thou must say that they are enumerated in order of. Wisdom not age then here too in the case of Terah's sons they are stated in order of wisdom Arkahana said I repeated this discussion before Arzibad of Nahartia thereupon he said to me you deduce that the order is according to wisdom from these verses but we deduce it from the following unto Shem also the father of all the children of ever the brother of Japheth the elder even unto him were children born this means that he was the eldest of the brothers then the difficulty remains whence do we know it from this I am Bezaliel the son of Uri the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah and it is written too and when Ashba Caleb's wife was dead Caleb took unto him Ephrath which bore him her now how old was Bezaliel when he made the tabernacle thirteen years for it is written three and all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made and it has been taught for in the first year after the exodus Moses made the tabernacle in the second he erected it and sent out the spies and it is written B and Caleb said forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land and now lo I am this day fourscore and five years old now how old was he when sent as a spy forty deduct fourteen Bezaliel's age at the time this leaves twenty-six as Caleb's age at Bezaliel's birth now deduct two years for the three pregnancies hence each must have begotten at the age of eight. A son but not a daughter it has been taught our Simeon said logically a daughter should come within the scope of a stubborn and rebellious child Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin since many frequent her in sin but that it is a divine decree a son but not a daughter Mishnah when does he become liable when he eats a tartamar of meat and drinks half a log of Italian wine our Jose said Amina of flesh and a log of wine if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act or gathered for the purpose of Intercalating the month if he ate the second tithe in Jerusalem if he ate the nibbleth or turfut abominable and creeping things or tebal or the first tithe from which Teramah had not been separated or unredeemed second tithe or unredeemed sacred food if his eating involved a religious act or a transgression if he ate any food but meat or drank any drink but wine he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son thereby unless he eats meat and drinks wine for it is written this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton zolal and a drunkard we so and though there is no absolute proof there is a suggestion for this as it is written be not among wine givers be so among gluttonous eaters of flesh be so lele gamara arzara said I do not know what is this tartamar but since our Jose doubled the measure of wine he must have doubled that of meat too hence the tartamar is half a mean arhain and bimolata said in Arhuna's name he is not liable. Unless he buys meat and wine cheaply and consumes them, for it is written he is a Zola Arhain and Bimolata also said in Arhuna's name he is not liable unless he eats raw meat and drinks undiluted wine, but that is not so for did not Rabbah and our Joseph both say if he ate raw meat or drank undiluted wine he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son. Rabban answered by undiluted wine insufficiently diluted wine is meant and raw meat means only partially cooked like charred meat eaten by thieves. Rabbah and our Joseph both said if he eats pickled meat or drinks wine from the Bad I.e. new wine before it has matured he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son. We learned elsewhere on the eve of the ninth of one must not partake of two courses, neither eat meat nor drink wine and attend a taught, but he may eat pickled meat and drink new wine. Now what length of time must elapse before it is regarded as pickled meat as opposed to fresh meat? Our Hannah Bikahana said as long as the flesh. Of the peace offering may be eaten, and how long is it called new wine? As long as it is in its first stage of fermentation, and it has been taught wine in the first stage of fermentation does not come within the prohibition against uncovered liquid. And how long is this first stage? Three days. Now, what is the law here? There, the prohibition of eating meat on the eve on the month of it is on account of joy. As long as it is as the flesh of a peace offering, it yields the joy of meat eating here. However, it is on account of its seductiveness, and when a short period has passed, it no longer attracts. Whilst wine is unattractive until it is forty days old, Arhain and said the only purpose for which wine was created was to comfort mourners and requite the wicked. For it is written, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, i.e., the wicked, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Our Isaac said, What is meant by look not thou upon the wine when it is red? Look not upon the wine which. Reddens the faces of the wicked in this world and makes them pale with shame. In the next, Rabbah said, Look not thou upon the wine, key that look not upon it, for it leads to bloodshed. Dam Arkahana raised a difficulty. The Bible writes, Tyrus for wine, but the word is red. Tyrus, if one has merit, he becomes a leader. If not, he becomes impoverished. Rabbah raised a difficulty. The Bible writes, And wine yajama the heart of man, but it is red. Yesima, if one has merit, it gladdens him. If not, it saddens him. And thus, Rabbah said, Wine and spices have made me wise. Aramurum, the son of Arsimian, be Abba said in Arhana's name, What is meant by who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. When Ardimi came, he said in the West, it is said in these verses, the second may be interpreted as explanatory of the first, or vice versa, Yabar the Galilean gave it. Following exposition the letter Bob and occurs thirteen times in the passage dealing with wine and Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness and Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him with respect to the last verse Rab and Samuel differ one maintaining that he castrated him whilst the other says that he sexually abused him he who maintains that he castrated him reasons thus since he cursed him by his fourth son he must have injured him with respect to a fourth son but he who says that he sexually abused him draws an analogy between and he saw written twice here. It is written, and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father, whilst elsewhere it is written, and when Shechem the son of Hammer saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Now on the view that he emasculated him, it is right that he cursed him by his fourth son, but on the view that he abused him, why did he curse his fourth son? He should have cursed him himself. Both indignities were perpetrated,
Knowledge of the Torah and fit for prophecy it is not for kings O Lemuel it is not for kings to drink wine nor for princes to say where is strong drink she spoke thus to him what hast thou to do with kings who drink wine and say what need have we of God our Isaac said whence do we know that Solomon repented and confessed to his mother the justice of her rebukes from the verse surely I am more brutish than man and have not the understanding of a man I am more brutish than a manish that is. Then Noah of whom it is written and Noah began to be an husband manish and have not the understanding of a man Adam of Adam if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act Arabab said he is not liable unless he eats in a company consisting entirely of good for nothings but did we not learn if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act he does not become a rebellious son thereby hence it is only because they were celebrating a religious act but otherwise he becomes a Rebellious son even if they are not all wasrels the Mishnah teaches that even if they were all wasrels yet if they were celebrating a precept he is not punished or gathered for the purpose of intercalating the month shall we say that they ate meat and wine on such occasions but it has been taught they ascended for it with a meal consisting only of wheat bread and beans the Mishnah teaches us though they normally ascended only with wheat and red and beans whilst he brought up meat and wine and ate yet since they were engaged in a religious act he would not be led astray our rabbis taught not less than an ascent for the purpose of proclaiming the month of full one nor do they ascend for it except with a meal consisting of wheat bread and beans they ascend only on Tifa evening following the intercalated day and at night not by day but has it not been taught they may not ascend for it by night but only by day it is even as our high B Abba said to his sons go up there early and come out early so that the P.E.O.P.E. may learn of your celebration if he ate the second tithe in E.R.U.S. carrot lem for since he eats it in the normal way i.e. in Jerusalem L. he is not drawn to wickedness i.e. ate nibbleth or T.E.R.E.F.O.B.H. abominable or C.Q.E.P.I.N.G. things rob S.I.D. if he eats the flesh of fowl he did not become a stubborn and rebel son but did we not learn if he ate nibbleth or T.E.R.E.F. abominable or C.R.M.E.P.I.N.G. things he does not become a stubborn and T.E.R.E.F.O.B.H. as O.N.O.T.H. ray this implies beauty if he ate the flesh of clean fowl he did a mission refers only to that completion of the necessary amount if his eating in day elegious act or a transgression bg a religi usat is meant the meal for comforting mourners a transgression mean acting on a public fast day and what is the eason slash v bible sth he will not obey our voice the six clutch dobe die any of god's voice if he i.e. any food who let him eat or drank any drink but unique if he ate any food but meat this includes e and press it fives fro am kayla or drank any drink but wine this includes e and loqui slash h and milk for it ns and talk if one jt breast fix f from kilo g and d drank honey o carrot me k and he entered the sanctuary talmud ma san hedron he is punished he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son unless he eats meat and drinks wine our rabbis taught if he ate any food but meat and drank any drink but wine he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son unless he eats meat and drinks wine for it is written he is a glutton and a drunkard and though there is no absolute proof there is a suggestion for this as it is written be not among the wine among gluttonous eaters of flesh and it is also said for the drunkard and glutton shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags Arzara said whoever sleeps in the Beth Hamid rashes knowledge shall be reduced to tatters for it is written and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags Mishnah if he stole of his father's and ate it in his father's domain or of strangers and ate it in the domain of the strangers or of strangers and ate in his father's domain he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son until he steals of his father's and eats in the domain of strangers are Jose son of Arjuna said until he steals of his father's and mother's Gemara if he stole of his father's and ate it in his father's domain though this is easily within his reach he is afraid or of strangers and ate it in the domain of strangers though he is not afraid yet it is not easily within his reach how much more so if he stole of strangers and ate in his father's domain this not being easily attainable and he in addition is afraid until he steals of his father's and eats it in the domain of strangers which is easily within his reach and does not cause him fear our Jose son of Arjuna said until he steals of his father's and mother's but how can his mother possess not seeing that whatever a woman acquires belongs to her husband our Jose son of Arhanana answered it means that he steals from a meal prepared for his father and mother but did not Arhanan Bimalat say in Arhuna's name he is not liable unless he buys meat and wine cheaply and consumes them but save us from the money set aside for a meal for his father and mother an alternative answer is this a stranger had given her something and said to her I stipulate that your husband shall have no rights there in mission if his father desires to have him punished but not his mother or the Reverse he is not treated as a stubborn a rebellious son unless they both desire it Arjuna said if his mother is not fit for his father he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son tomorrow what is meant by not fit shall we say that she is forbidden to him under penalty of extinction or capital punishment at the hand of Bethdin but after all his father is his father and his mother is his mother but he means not physically like his father it has been taught likewise Arjuna said if his mother is not like his father in voice appearance and stature he does not become a rebellious son why so the writ seth will not obey our voice and since they must be alike in voice they must be also in appearance and stature with whom does the following very agree there never has been a stubborn and rebellious son and never will be why then was the Lord and that you may study it and receive reward disagrees with Arjuna alternatively you may say it will agree with our Simeon for it has been taught our Simeon said because one eats a tartamar of meat and drinks half a log of Italian wine shall his father and mother have him stoned but it never happened and never will happen why then was this Lord and that you may study it and receive reward our Jonathan said I saw him and sat on his grave with whom does the following agree visit has been taught there never was a condemned city and never will be it agrees with our Eliza for it has been taught our Eliza said no city containing even a single mezuzah can be condemned why so because the Bible saith in reference thereto and thou shalt gather all the spoil of it in the midst of the street thereof and shalt burn them but if it contains a single mezuzah this is impossible because it is written and ye shall destroy the names of them i.e. the idols ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God our Jonathan said I saw it a condemned city and sat upon its ruins with whom does the following agree there never was a Leopard's house to need destruction and never will be then why was it Lord and that you may study it and receive reward with whom does it agree with our Eliezer son of Arsimian for we learned our Eliezer son of Arsimian said a house never becomes unclean unless a plague spot appears the size of two beans on two stones in two walls and at the angle of the walls it must be two beans in length and one in breadth why so because the Bible refers to the walls of the house and also to the wall. Whereas one wall is two at its angle it has been taught our Eliezer son of Arzadok said there was a place within a Sabbath's walk of Gaza which was called the leper's ruins Arsimian of Farako said I once went to Galilee and saw a place which was marked off and was told that leper stones were thrown there mission if one of them his father or his mother had a hand or fingers cut off or was lame dumb blind or deaf he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son because it is written then. Shall his father and his mother lay hold on him this excludes those with hands or fingers cut off and bring him out excluding lame parents and they shall say excluding the dumb this our son excluding the blind he will not obey our voice excluding the deaf he is admonished in the presence of three and flagellated if he transgresses again after this he is tried by a court of twenty three and cannot be sentenced to stoning unless the first three are present because it is written this our son. Implying this one who was whipped in your presence Gemara this proves that the Bible must be taken literally as it is written no for here it is different Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be since the entire verse is superfluous he is admonished in the presence of three why so are not two sufficient Abay answered the Mishnah means this he is admonished in the presence of two and ordered lashes by a court of three where our lashes stated for a stubborn and rebellious son as in our Abav's exegesis for. Our Abab said we draw an analogy between and they shall chastise him written twice and the meaning of and they shall chastise him is deduced from the fact that Ben occurs in this passage and then a further analogy is drawn between the word Ben written here and in and it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten if he transgresses again after this he is tried by a court of twenty three etc but is not this verse s c this our son needed to teach this excluding
This is true of a murderer before conversion his penalty was decapitation and it is so now too but the violation of a married woman was punishable before conversion by decapitation but now by strangulation this refers to the violation of a betrothed maiden for which stoning is decreed in both cases but if he did this to an Israelite is parallel to or violated his neighbor's wife the lesser punishment is included in the greater now this agrees with the view of the rabbis that decapitation is severer than stoning but on the view of Arsimian that stoning is the greater punishment what can you say Arsimian concurs with the Tana of the school of Manasseh who says that wherever death is decreed for the Noahide it is by strangulation now this is true of adultery the penalty for which both before and after conversion is strangulation but murder was punishable before by strangulation now by decapitation the lesser is included in the greater shall we say that the Following supports him for it was taught if she has seen a betrothed maiden sin by committing adultery and then attained puberty becoming a bogar if she is strangled now why not stoned surely because since she is changed physiologically she is likewise changed in respect of punishment how much more so in this case where a complete change has taken place this does not support him for our Yohan and said to the Tanner she is stoned mission as stubborn and rebellious son is tried on account of his ultimate destiny let him die innocent and let him not die guilty for the death of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world wine and sleep of the wicked benefit themselves and the world of the righteous injure themselves and the world the scattering of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world the assembling of the wicked injures themselves and the world of the righteous Benefits themselves and the world the tranquility of the wicked injures themselves and the world of the righteous benefits themselves and the world Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Agamar it has been taught our Jose the Galilean said to the Torah decree that the rebellious son shall be brought before Beth Din and stoned merely because he ate a tartamar of meat and drank a log of Italian wine but the Torah foresaw his ultimate destiny for at the end after dissipating his father's wealth he would still seek to satisfy his accustomed gluttonous wants but being unable to do so go forth at the crossroads and rob therefore the Torah said let him die while yet innocent and let him not die guilty for the death of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world sleep and wine of the wicked benefit themselves and the world of the righteous injure themselves and the world the tranquility of the wicked injures themselves and the world of the righteous Benefits themselves and the world the scattering of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world mission of the thief who burrows his way and is judged on account of its probable outcome if he broke through and broke a judge should there be blood guiltiness for him he must pay for the judge but if there is no blood guiltiness for him he is not liable Gamara Rabbah said what is the reason for the law of breaking in because it is certain that no man is inactive where his property is concerned therefore this one the thief must have reasoned if I go there he the owner will oppose me and prevent me but if he does I will kill him hence the Torah decreed if he come to slay the forestall by slaying him Rab said if one broke into a house and stole some utensils and departed he is free from making restitution why because he has purchased them with his blood Rabbah said it would logically appear that Rab's dictum holds good only if he broke it. Utensils so that they are not in existence but not if he merely took them and they are still intact but in truth Rab's dictum applies even if he merely took them for even where there is blood guiltiness for him if the utensils are injured he is liable this proves that they stand under his the thief's ownership so here too they are under the thief's ownership but it is not so the divine law placed it under the thief's control only in respect of injury but as to ownership it remains the property of the first owner just as in the case of the borrower we learned if he broke through and broke a jug should there be blood guiltiness for him he must pay for the jug but if there is no blood guiltiness for him he is not liable thus it is only because he broke it that he is exempt when there is no blood guiltiness for him but if he only took it he is not exempt the same law of exemption applies even if he merely took it and the reason it states and broke a jug is to show that if there is blood guiltiness for him he is liable even if he broke it but is this not obvious since he damaged it we are thereby informed that he is liable even if he broke it unintentionally what does this teach us that a man is always regarded as forewarned but we have already learned this a man is always regarded as forewarned whether he did damage unwittingly or wittingly accidentally or deliberately this is a difficulty our BBBMA objected we learned if one steals a purse on it. Sabbath he is bound to make restitution since the liability for theft arose before the desecration of the Sabbath but if he drags it out of the house he is exempt since they are simultaneous no this ruling holds good only if he threw it into the river Rabba was robbed of some rams through a thief breaking and subsequently the thieves returned him but he refused to accept them saying since Rab has thus ruled I abide by his decision our rabbis taught if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die there shall no blood be shed for him if the sun be risen upon him now did the sun rise upon him only but this is the meaning if it is as clear to thee as the sun that his intentions are not peaceable slay him if not do not slay him another bury the top if the sun be risen upon him there shall be blood shed for him now did the sun rise upon him alone but if it is as clear to thee as the sun that his intentions are peaceable do not slay him otherwise slay him these two unnamed buried this contradict each other this is no difficulty Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be he first buried refers to Ather robbing his on the second to SJN robbing his father Rapsod any man that broke into my house I would kill excepting our Hanan of Bishila why shall we say because he is righteous and therefore certain not to kill me surely he has broken in but because I am assured that he would have pity upon me like a father for his son our rabbis taught if the sun be ye recent upon him there shall be blood damn shed for him both on a weekday and on the Sabbath if the thief be found breaking up there shall no blood damn be shed for him neither on weekdays nor on the Sabbath now granted that the exegesis of there shall no blood be shed for him as including both weekdays and the Sabbath is necessary for I might think that this case is similar to that of those who are executed by Beth Din who may not be executed on the Sabbath we are therefore told that Tuesday thief I be slain even on the Sabbath but why deduce there shall be blood shed for him neither on a weekday nor on the Sabbath if he may not be slain on a weekday he may surely not be slain on the Sabbath Arshis he replied this is necessary only to teach that a pile of debris must be removed for his sake our rabbis talk if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten by any man that he die by any death wherewith you can slay him now the exegesis and be smitten by any Man is rightly necessary for I might think that only the owner may be assumed not to remain passive whilst his money is being stolen but not a stranger it is therefore taught that H is regarded as a potential murderer whom even a stranger may kill in defense of the owner but what may backslash of that he die by any death wherewith you can slay him can this not be deduced from a murderer for it has been taught he that smote him shall surely be put to death for he is a murderer I only know that he may be executed with the death that is decreed for him once do I know that if you cannot execute him with that death that you may execute him with any other death from the verse he that smote him shall surely be put to death implying in any manner possible there it is different because scripture writes he shall surely be put to death then why not derive this from it because the murderer and the avenging kinsman are two verses with the same object and the teaching of such two verses does not Extend to anything else our rabbis taught if a thief be found breaking in from this I know that law only for breaking in through the wall once do we know it if he be found on the roof in the court or in an enclosure attached to the house from the verse if the thief be found implying wherever he is found as thief if so why state breaking in because most thieves enter by breaking in another very the taught if a thief be found breaking in from this I know the law only for breaking in once do I know it if he be found on the roof in the court or in an enclosure from the verse if the thief be found implying wherever he is found as thief if so why state breaking in because his breaking in constitutes a formal warning our who not said a minor in pursuit may be slain to save the pursuit thus he maintains that a pursuer whether an adult or a minor need not be formally warned our his to ask our who not we learned once his head has come forth he may not be harmed because one life may not be Taken to save another, but why so is he not a pursuer? There it is different, for she is pursued by heaven. Shall we say that the following supports him? Is if a man was pursuing after his fellow to slay him, he observer says to him, See, he is an Israelite and a son of the covenant. Whilst the Torah has said, Whosoever would shed the blood of a man to save that man shall his own blood be shed, meaning save the blood of the pursued by the blood of the pursu
must be saved from sinning even at the cost of their lives he who pursues after his neighbor to slay him or after a male for pederasty or after a betrothed maiden to dis her but he who pursues after an animal to abuse it or would desecrate the sabbath or commit idolatry must not be saved from sinning at the cost of his life Gemara our rabbis taught once do we know that he who pursues after his neighbor to slay him must be saved from sin at the cost of his own life from the curse thou shalt not stand by the blood of thy neighbor but does it come to teach this is it not employed for the following barrier that has been taught once do we know that if a man sees his fellow drowning mauled by beasts or attacked by robbers he is bound to save him from the verse thou shalt not stand by the blood of thy neighbor that in truth is so then once do we know that the pursuer must be saved at the cost of his own life it is inferred by an admagious reasoning from a betrothed maiden if a betrothed maiden whom he wishes merely to disinherit yet the Torah decreed that she may be saved by the life of her ravisher how much more so does this hold good for one who pursues his neighbor to slay him but can punishment be inflicted as a result of an admagious conclusion the school of rabbi taught it is derived by analogy for as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him even so in this matter but what do we learn from this analogy of a murderer thus this comes to throw light and is itself illumined the murderer is compared to a betrothed maiden just as a betrothed maiden must be saved from the sinur at the cost of his or violator's life so in the case of a murderer he the victim must be saved at the cost of his the attacker's life and whence do we know this a betrothed maiden as was taught by the school of Arish male for the school of Arish male taught the betrothed damsel cried and there was none to save her but if there was a rescuer he must save her by all possible means including the death of her ravisher to revert to the above text whence do we know that if a man sees his neighbor drowning mauled by beasts or attacked by robbers he is bound to save him from the verse thou shalt not stand by the blood of thy neighbor but is it derived from this verse is it not rather from elsewhere is whence do we know that one must save his neighbor from the loss of himself from the verse and thou shalt restore him to Himself from that verse I might think that it is only a personal obligation but that he is not bound to take the trouble of hiring men if he cannot deliver him himself therefore this verse teaches that he must our rabbis taught he who pursues after his neighbor to slay him he who pursues a male for sexual abuse or a betrothed maiden a woman forbidden to him on pain of death at the hands of Beth Din or one forbidden on pain of extinction these are saved from sin at the cost of their own lives but a high priest in pursuit of a widow and an ordinary priest in pursuit of a divorcee or a halyza may not be saved at the cost of their lives if the betrothed maiden has been ravished previously she may not be saved by her pursuer's death likewise if she can be otherwise rescued our Judah said this applies also if she said to her rescuers let him be lest he slay her once do we know all this but unto the damsel naar thou shalt do nothing there is in the damsel no sin worthy of Death NAAR refers to a male NAAR to a betrothed maiden sin to women forbidden on pain of extinction death to those forbidden on pain of death at the hands of Beth Din why are all these needed they are necessary for had the divine lord in NAAR youth I would have thought that he must thus be saved because it is unnatural lust but since connection with a maiden is natural I would think that she may not be saved thus whilst if NAAR damsel were written I would think that the law applies only to her because he destroys her virginity but not to a youth who is not thus injured and had these only been stated Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B I would think that it is because the one is unnatural and the other is deprived of her virginity but other consanguineous relations cohabitation with whom is both natural and does not inflict a great loss might not be thus saved therefore the divine lord right sin now had the divine lord in sin only I would have thought it applies even to those who are forbidden merely by a negative precept, therefore the divine law of death and had the divine law written death only, I would have thought the law applies only to those forbidden on pain of death by Beth Din, but not on pain of extinction, therefore the divine law writes sin, then why did the divine law not write merely there is no sin worthy of death? NAAR youth and NAAR a damsel being superfluous, that is so, but as for NAAR and NAAR one teaches the exclusion of an idolater and the other the exclusion of bestiality and the desecration of the Sabbath, but on the view of our Simeon B. that an idolater must be saved from sin at the cost of his life, why are these verses necessary? One excludes bestiality and the other excludes the desecration of the Sabbath, for I would otherwise think that the Sabbath is included through an analogy with idolatry since profanation is written in both, but on the view of our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, that he who Desecrates the Sabbath must be saved from sin by death because an analogy is drawn with idolatry on account of profanation being written in both what can you say one excludes bestiality and as for the other since the divine law wrote NAAR it also wrote NAAR our Judah said the same applies if she said to her rescuer let him be lest he slay her in which case do they differ Rabbi said when she objects to this and yet permits him so that he should not slay her the rabbis maintained it. Divine law was insistent for her honor and since she too is particular about it her pursuer may be slain but our Judah maintains that the reason that the divine law decreed that he should be slain is because she is prepared to give her own life rather than be violated but this one is not prepared to do so our Papa said to Abbe but does not a high priest Dizianur widow he replied the divine law sought to protect her from great Dizianur but not from little Dizianur sin refers to women. Forbidden on pain of extinction, the scholars objected. We learned fine is imposed for the violation of the following maidens. He who outrages his sister, the rabbis explained this before our Hista. Once he has committed the first stage, thereby disinuring her, he may no longer be slain, whereas monetary liability is not contracted until the completion of cohabitation. Now, this agrees with the view that the first stage which disinures her is contact with her sexual organ, but on the view that the first stage is the insertion of the member. What can you say? But our Hista answered thus this refers to unnatural followed by natural cohabitation. Rabbi said this applies where she allows him to have his will so that he shall not slay her and is based on the ruling of our Judah Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin A. Our Papa said this refers to seduction, not outrage, and therefore agrees with all Abbe said this applies where she could have been saved at the cost of one of the limbs of the violator and agrees. With our Jonathan B. Saul, for it has been taught if one was pursuing his fellow to slay him and he could have been saved by maiming a limb of the pursuer but did not thus save himself killing him instead he is executed on his account what is our Jonathan B. Saul's reason because it is written if men strive and hurt a woman he shall be surely punished and pay as the judges determine and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life whereon our Eliezer said the verse refers to attempted murder for it is written and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life and yet the divine law states if no mischief follows he shall surely be punished now this is correct if you say that where the pursuit can be saved at the cost of one limb of the pursuer the latter may not be slain hence it is conceivable that he shall be punished by paying monetary compensation but if you maintain that he may be slain how is it possible for him to be punished perhaps it is Different here because his liability to death is incurred on account of one person but his monetary obligation on account of another that makes no difference for Rabbi said if a man was pursuing after his fellow to slay him and broke some utensils whether of the pursuit or of some other person he is free from liability why so because he is liable to be killed if the pursuit broke some articles if they belong to the pursuer he is not liable for them if to someone else he is if they belong to the pursuer he is not liable because his property is not more precious than his own person but if to someone else he is because he saved himself at his neighbor's expense but if one pursuer was pursuing another pursuer to save him the latter's victim and broke some utensils whether of the pursuer or the pursuit or of any other person he is not liable for them this should not be so in equity but if thou wilt not rule thus no man will save his neighbor from the pursuer but he who pursues an animal to abuse it it has been taught our Simeon B.O. he said an idolater may be saved from sin at the cost of his own life this is deduced by reasoning from the minor to the major if the disinnering of a human being must be averted even at the cost of the violator's life how much more so the disinnering of the all highest but can we punish as a result of an admagious conclusion he maintains that we can it has been taught our Eliezer son of our Simeon said he who desecrates the Sabbath may be saved from sin by his own life he agrees with his father that punishment is imposed as a result of an admagious conclusion and then he deduces the Sabbath from idolatry by Gazerisha while based on the use of
Wealth is more precious than life has been with all them, i.e. substance incest and murder may not be practiced to save one's life even as rabbis dictum for it has been taught rabbi said for as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him even so is this matter but what do we learn from this analogy of a murderer thus this comes to throw light and is itself illumined the murderer is compared to a betrothed maiden just as a betrothed maiden must be saved from the sin at the cost of his the ravisher's life so in the case of a murderer he the victim must be saved at the cost of his the attacker's life conversely a betrothed maiden is compared to a murderer just as one must rather be slain than commit murder so also must the betrothed maiden rather be slain than allow her violation and how do we know this of murder itself it is common sense even as one who came before Rabbah and said to him the governor of my town has ordered me go and kill so and so if not I will slay thee he answered him let him rather slay you than that you should commit murder who knows that your blood is redder perhaps his blood is redder when Ardimi came he said this was taught only if there is no royal decree but if there is a royal decree one must incur martyrdom rather than transgress even a minor precept when Rabin came he said in Aryohanan's name even without a royal decree it was only permitted in private but in public one MST be martyred even for a minor precept rather than violated what is meant by a minor precept Rabbah son of our Isaac said in Rab's name Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be even to change one shoe strap and how many make it public our Jacob said in Aryohanan's name the minimum for publicity is ten it is obvious that Jews are required for this publicity for it is written but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel our Jeremiah propounded one of nine Jews and one Gentile come and hear for our Jenna, the brother of our high be an analogy is drawn from the use of talk among in two passages here is written but I will be hallowed among the talk the children of Israel and elsewhere separate yourselves from among the talk this congregation just as there the references to ten all Jews so here to ten all Jews but did not Esther transgress publicly Abay answered Esther was merely natural soil Rabbah said when the SC the persecutors demanded for their personal pleasure it is different for otherwise how dare we yield to them SC the parses or fire worshippers are braziers or fire bellows and coal shovels but their personal pleasure is different so here too in Esther's case this answer concurs with Rabbah's view expressed elsewhere for Rabbah said if a Gentile said to a Jew cut grass on the Sabbath for the cattle and if not I will slay thee he must rather be killed than cut it cut it and throw it into the river he should rather be slain than cut it why so because his intention is to force him to violate his religion it was asked of RMI is a Noahide bound to sanctify the divine name or not Abay said come and hear the Noahides were commanded to keep seven precepts now if they were commanded to sanctify the divine name they are eight Rabbah said to him the men and pertaining thereto what is the decision the disciples of Rab said it is written in this thing the Lord pardon thy servant that when my master goeth into the house of Rimen to worship there and he leaneth on my hand and I bow myself in the house of Rimen and it is written and he said unto him go in peace Talmud Ma Sanhedrin and now if it be so that a Noahide is bidden to sanctify the divine name he should not have said this the one is private the other public Rab Judah said in Rab's name a man once conceived the passion for a certain woman and his heart was consumed by his burning desire his life being endangered thereby when the doctors were consulted they said his only cure is that she shall submit thereupon the sages said let him die rather than that she should yield and said the doctors let her stand nude before him they answered sooner let him die then said the doctors let her converse with him from behind the fence let him die the sages replied rather than she should converse with him from behind the fence now our Jacob B.E.D. and our Samuel B. Namani dispute there and one said that she was a married woman the other that she was unmarried now this is intelligible on the view that she was a married woman but on the latter that she was unmarried why such severity our papa said because of the disgrace to her family Araha the son of R.I.K. said that the daughters of Israel may not be morally dissolute then why not marry her marriage would not assuage his passion even as our Isaac said since the destruction of the temple sexual pleasure has been taken from those who practice it lawfully and given to sinners as it is written stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant C.H.A. PTERI X mission of the following are burnt he who commits incest with a woman and her daughter and a priest adulterous daughter there is included in a woman and her daughter his own daughter his daughter's daughter his son's daughter his wife's daughter and the daughter of her daughter or son his mother-in-law her mother and his father-in-law's mother Gemara the mission does not state he who commits incest with a woman whose daughter he has married but he who commits incest with a woman and her daughter this proves that both are forbidden who are they then his mother-in-law and her mother then the mission further states there is included in a woman and her daughter this proves that the first are explicit and the others derived now this agrees with Abbe who maintains that they differ as to the text from which the law is derived hence the mission is taught in accordance with our Akiva's view but on Rabbah's view that they differ about his mother-in-law after his wife's death with whom does the mission agree? Rabbi can answer. You read in the mission he who commits incest with a woman whose daughter he has married. There is included in a woman and her daughter his mother-in-law, her mother and his father-in-law's mother. In Abay's view, since the mission desires to state his father-in-law's mother, it adds his mother-in-law and her mother on Rabbi's view because the mission must teach his father-in-law's mother and his mother-in-law's mother his mother-in-law to his. Mentioned once, do we know this for our rabbis taught? And if a man take a woman and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire. Both he and they. This law refers only to a woman and her mother. Once do I derive it for a woman and her daughter, or her daughter's daughter, or her son's daughter? The word ksima wickedness occurs here and is also written elsewhere. Just as there, her daughter, her daughter's daughter, and her son's daughter are meant by ksima. So here to her. Daughter, her daughter's daughter and her son's daughter are included in the punishment of burning decree for incest with them. Once do we know that males are as females wickedness Sima is stated here and also elsewhere just as their males are as females so here too. Once do we know that the lower is as the upper wickedness Sima is stated here and also elsewhere just as there the lower is as the upper so here too and just as here the upper is as the lower so there too the master. Said once do we know that males are as females what is meant by this shall we say that her son's daughter is equally forbidden as her daughter's daughter but these are simultaneously derived again if it means that his father-in-law's mother is as his mother-in-law's mother but seeing that the latter is as yet unproven why demonstrate that the former is equal there to Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin B. Abbe said this is what is meant once do we know that his issue is as hers the word Sima occurs. Here and is also written elsewhere, etc. But Sima is not written in connection with this issue. Rabbi answered, Our Isaac be a me said unto me, We learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages, and likewise Sima wickedness into the master said, Whence do we know that the lower is as the upper? What is meant by lower and upper? Shall we say that her son's daughter and her daughter's daughter lower are as her own daughter upper, but are not all three? Simultaneously derived again, if it means that his father-in-law's mother and his mother-in-law's mother are as his mother-in-law, then instead of the lower is as the upper, the Tana should have said the upper is as the lower, read the upper is as the lower. If so, how explain wickedness? Sima is stated here and also elsewhere, seeing that their very prohibition is as yet unknown. How can Sima be written in connection there with Abay answered this is its meaning? Whence do we know that the Third generation above is treated as the third below the word Sima is written in connection with both the lower generation and the upper just as in the lower the third generation is forbidden also so in the upper too and just as the lower is assimilated to the upper in respect of punishment so is the upper to the lower in respect of formal prohibition or as she said after all it is as taught what then is the meaning of lower lower in gravity of the prohibition now if so then just as her i.e. his wife's maternal grandmother is forbidden to him so is his maternal grandmother Abbe answered the writ saith the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover she is thy mother teaching thou canst punish for incest with his mother but not with his mother's mother Rabbi said whether we maintain judge from it in its entirety or judge from it and place it on its own basis this could not be deduced for on the view judge from it in its entirety the Deduction would proceed thus just as her his wife's maternal grandmother is forbidden to him so is his maternal grandmother forbidden then carrying the analogy to its uttermost just as in her case I incest with the former is punished by fire so in his case I incest with the latter
A thus why is her case i.e. his wife's maternal grandmother forbidden because her mother is forbidden on pain of death by fire but can you say the same in his case seeing that his mother is forbidden on pain of stoning only further his maternal grandmother is like hers just as in the latter case no distinction is drawn between his wife's maternal grandmother and her his wife's daughter so in the former no distinction should be allowed between his own maternal grandmother and his daughter whilst on the view that stoning is severe the analogy cannot be made on account of this last difficulty but if so just as his daughter-in-law is forbidden him so is his wife's daughter-in-law forbidden him Abay answered the writ set thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law she is thy son's wife teaching you can punish only for incest with his son's wife but not with her his wife's son's wife Rabbah said whether it be maintained judge from it in its entirety or judge from it and place it on its own basis this could not be deduced for on the first view the deduction would proceed thus just as his daughter-in-law is forbidden him so is hers forbidden him then carrying through the analogy in its entirety used as in his case the penalty is stoning so in her case is the penalty stoning but if we regard stoning severe this analogy can be refuted thus why is his daughter-in-law forbidden because his mother is forbidden him on pain of stoning can you then say the same of her daughter-in-law seeing that incest with her mother incurs only death by fire moreover her daughter is forbidden on pain of burning shall her daughter-in-law be forbidden on pain of stoning this is no difficulty for let his own case prove it his own daughter is forbidden by fire yet his daughter-in-law by stoning but refute the analogy thus just as in his case thou drawest no distinction between his mother and his daughter-in-law so in hers his wife's you can Draw no distinction between her mother and her daughter-in-law and on the view that burning is considered more severe the analogy cannot be made because of this last difficulty whilst on the view judge from it and place it on its own basis the deduction would proceed thus just as his daughter-in-law is forbidden him so is her daughter-in-law forbidden and place it on its own basis thus in the former case his daughter-in-law the punishment is stoning but in the latter burning the punishment. We find for incest with her mother but if stoning is severe this can be refuted thus why is his daughter-in-law forbidden because his mother is forbidden him on pain of stoning but can you say the same of her daughter-in-law seeing that her mother is forbidden only on pain of burning moreover just as in his case you draw a distinction between his daughter punished by burning and his daughter-in-law by stoning so in her case you should draw a distinction between her daughter and her Daughter-in-law and even on the view that burning is severe the analogy cannot be made on account of this last difficulty whence do we know that his daughter by a seduced woman not his wife is forbidden him Abay said this may be roped by arguing from the minor to the major if he is punished for incest with his daughter's daughter surely he is punished for his own daughter but can punishment be imposed as the result of an ad major's conclusion the argument merely eliminates the prohibition. Rabbah answered our Isaac Biabudimi said unto me we learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages and likewise Sima into the father of Arabin learned because we have no express sanction from scripture that incest with an illegitimate daughter is punished by burning therefore the rid must say and the daughter of a man and a priest if she profaned herself through her father she profaneth him she shall burn with fire if so just a in the case of a Priest adulterous daughter only she is burnt but not her paramour so for incest with an illegitimate daughter only she should be burnt but not her paramour Abay answered the writ say if she profaneth her father teaching that this applies only to a case where she profaneth her father excluded thus is this case since her father profanes her rub answered in the former case you highly exclude him from the penalty of a priest's daughter and assimilate him to an Israelite's daughter but in this case to whom will you assimilate him to an unmarried woman now whence do we derive a formal prohibiton of incest with an illegitimate daughter this is in order according to Abay and Rabba from the Verjayi from which they deduce punishment they also learn the prohibition but what of the deduction made by our Abin's father Arlay answered the writ say if do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be whore Jacob the brother of our Ahabi Jacob objected is this verse do not profane thy daughter to Cause her to be a whore employed for this purpose, but it is needed for that which has been taught. Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. I might think that this prohibits a priest from marrying his daughter to a Levite or an Israelite. Therefore, Scripture states to cause her to be a whore, showing that the reference is only to profanation by harlotry, thus prohibiting the giving over of one's daughter for sex purposes without marriage intention. If so, Scripture should have said, Al. To hell why Al. Tehal Al. That both may be deduced from it. Now, how do Abay and Rabba utilize the verse? Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Armani said, according to them, this refers to one who marries his young daughter to an old man, as it has been taught. Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Arlizer said, this refers to marrying one's young daughter to an old man. Arakiba said, this refers to the delay in marrying off a daughter who is already a bogor Kahana said on our Akiva's authority the only poor in Israel is the subtly wicked and he who delays in marrying off his daughter of Bogareth but is not one who thus delays himself subtly wicked Abay answered Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B this is its meaning which poor man is subtly wicked he who delays marrying off his daughter of Bogareth our Kahana also said on our Akiva's authority beware of one who counsels thee for his own benefit Rab Judah said in Rab's name one who marries his daughter to an old man or takes a wife for his infant son or returns a lost article to a kuti and concerning him scripture saith that he bless himself in his heart saying I shall have peace though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst the Lord will not spare him an objection was raised he who loves his wife as himself and honors her more than himself and leads his children in the right path and marries them just before they attain puberty of him scripture saith and thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin if just before puberty it is different our rabbis taught he who loves his neighbor displays friendly intimacy towards his relatives and marries his sister's daughter and lends a cellar to the poor man in time of his need of him scripture saith then shalt thou call and the lord shall answer our rabbis taught and if a man take a wife and her mother it is wickedness they shall be burnt with fire both he and they at end this means he and one of them that is our ishmael's opinion our said it means he and both of them wherein do they differ abay said they differ as to the text from which the law is derived our ishmael maintains that he and at end means he and one of them for in greek one is hello hence incest with his mother-in-law's mother as a punishable offense is arrived at only by biblical interpretation but our maintained he and at end means he and both of them hence his mother-in-law's mother is explicitly interdicted in this verse. Rabbah said they differ about his mother-in-law after his wife's death. Our Ishmael holds that incest with his mother-in-law after his wife's death is punished by burning. Whilst our Akiva's view is that it is merely forbidden. Mission of the following are decapitated a murderer and the inhabitants of a seduced city. A murderer who slew his fellow with a stone or an iron or kept him down under water or in fire so that he could not ascend. Hence is executed if he pushed him into water or fire, but so that he could ascend. Yet he died. He is free from death if he set on a dog or a snake against him and they killed him. He is free from death. But if he caused a snake to bite him by putting his jaws against him, our Judah ruled that he is executed. The sages that he is not Gemara Samuel said why his hand not mentioned in connection with iron because iron can kill no matter what its size. It has been taught. Likewise, Rabbi said. It was well known to him who spake and the world came into being that iron no matter how small can kill therefore the Torah prescribed no size for it this however is only if one pierced therewith or kept him down underwater the first clause teaches the extreme limit of the law and so does the last thus the first clause teaches the extreme limit of the law that though he himself did not push him into the water yet since he could not ascend through being held down and so died he is executed. The last clause likewise teaches the extreme limit that though he actually pushed him into the water yet since he could have ascended but died he is free from death whence do we know that he is liable to death for keeping him down Samuel answered the writ saith or if with enmity he smote him with his hand this extends the law to one who keeps his neighbor fast e.g. in water thus causing his death a certain man can find his neighbor's animal in a place exposed to the sun so that it died of Sunstroke Rabbana held him liable or Ahabi Rab ruled that he was not Rabbana held him liable by an ad major's argument from a murderer if a murderer in whose case unwitting murder is not treated as deliber
is not it can be proved that it was Rabbah who ruled that he is not liable for he said if one bound his neighbor and he dies of starvation he is not liable on the contrary it can be shown that Arzara ruled that he is not liable for Arzara said if one let his neighbor into an alabaster chamber and lit a candle therein so that he died of the fumes he is liable now the reason is only that he lit a candle that he is liable but had he not lit a candle and the prisoner died of the natural heat and lack of air he would be exempt I will tell you in that case without a candle that he would not have commenced its effects Talmud, Moss and Hedron be immediately he placed him therein but in this case of placing the upturned bat over him that he commences immediately Nemotic ladder shield balsam in a wall Rabbah said if one thrust his neighbor into a pit in which there was a ladder so that he could have climbed out and then another came and removed it or even if himself hastened to remove it he is not liable for the victim's death because when he threw him and he could have climbed out Rabbah also said if one shot an arrow at his neighbor who was holding a shield but another came and snatched it away or even if he himself the thrower hastened to do so he is not liable because when he shot the arrow its force was spent Rabbah also said if one shot an arrow at his neighbor who had balsam in his hand wherewith he could have healed the wound but another dashed it out of his hand or even if he himself the thrower did so he is not liable because when he did it he could have been healed Arashi said therefore this holds good even if there was balsam in the market Araha the son of Rabbah asked Arashi what if he came across the balsam by chance he replied behold he has left Beth in a free man Rabbah also said if one threw a stone at a wall which rebounded and killed his neighbor he is liable and attended teaches in support of this if murder is committed by a man Playing for example with the ball if intentional the thrower is executed if unintentional he is sentenced to the refuge cities if unintentional he is sentenced to the refuge cities but is that not obvious it is necessary to teach that if intentional he is executed the second half being added to complete it for I might say this is a case of a doubtful warning for who knows that it will rebound we are therefore taught otherwise our talifah of the west recited before our above the following if unintentional murder is committed by a man playing for example with the ball if the victim was within four cubits of the wall the thrower is exempt if beyond four cubits he is liable to exile Robin objected to our ashi how is this if he desired it to rebound he should be liable even for a short distance whilst if not he should be liable even for a greater distance he replied the greater the rebound the more is the average player please are we to say that a murder so committed is Regarded as by his direct action, but the following contradicts it if one was sanctifying the water and the ashes fell upon his hand or upon the side of the utensil whence it fell into the trough, it is unfit. The reference here is to a dripping down come and here if an unclean needle was lying upon a shard and the purifying water was sprinkled thereon, but it is doubtful whether upon the needle or upon the shard and then it spurted Miza upon the needle, the sprinkling is invalid. Our Hina. B. R. Judah said in Rab's name, we have learned it was found Maza. Our Papa said if one bound his neighbor and then caused a column of water to inundate him, it is as his arrows and he is liable for his death, but that is only if he was drowned by his direct agency, but if through his indirect agency he is merely regarded as a subsidiary cause. Our Papa also said if one threw a stone upwards and it returned in a slanting direction and killed a man, he is liable. Mar son of Arashi asked our Papa why so? Because it is by his agency, but if so, it should go upwards. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, whilst if it is not by his agency, it should fall vertically down, but it is through his agency, though weakened. Our rabbis taught if ten men smote a man with ten staves, whether simultaneously or successively, and he died, they are exempt. Our Judah be, but there is said if successively the last is liable, because he struck the actual death blow. Our Yohan and said both derive their rulings from the same verse, and he that kill a kol nefesh, let all life of man shall surely be put to death. The rabbis maintain that kol nefesh implies the whole life, but our Judah be, but there holds that kol nefesh implies whatever there is of life. Rabbis said both agree that if he killed a tirfa, he is exempt. If he slew one who was dying through an act of God, he is liable. Their dispute refers only to one who was dying through man's act. The one likens him to a tirfa, the other to a person dying naturally. Now he who likens him to a Therefore, why does he not liken him to a person dying naturally because no injury has been done to the latter but an injury has been done to this one whilst he who likens him to a person dying naturally why does he not liken him to a tirfa a tirfa has his vital organs affected but this one has not a tanner recited before our she's hate and he that cleft all life of man this includes one who smote his fellow but there was not in his blow enough force to kill and then a second came and killed him teaching the latter is executed but if the first man's blow was insufficient to kill is it not obvious that the second is liable but say thus the first smote him with sufficient force to kill but before he expired a second came and slew him then the second is liable this anonymous barita agrees with our judah b but the rabbi said if one kills a tirfa he is exempt whilst if a tirfa committed murder if in the presence of a beth he is liable otherwise he is exempt why is he Liable if in the presence of a Bethin because it is written so shalt thou put away the evil from the midst of thee but if not he is exempt because the law of CONFU testimony is inapplicable and testimony which cannot be so CONFU is inadmissible Rabbah also said he who commits pederasty with a tirfa is liable to punishment but if a tirfa committed it if in the presence of a Bethin he is liable otherwise he is not if in the presence of a Bethin he is liable because it is written so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee otherwise he is not because the law of CONFU testimony is inapplicable why state the second law is it not identical with the first it is necessary to teach concerning one who commits pederasty with a tirfa for I might think that he is as one who abuses a dead person and hence exempt therefore he teaches that punishment is generally imposed because of the forbidden pleasure derived and in this case two pleasure is derived Rabbah also Said if witnesses testified to murder against a tirfa and were then CONFU, they are not executed, but if witnesses themselves tirfa were CONFU, they are executed. Arashi said even these are not slain because those who disprove their evidence are not liable if their own is subsequently CONFU. Rabbah also said if an ox a tirfa killed a man, it is liable to be stoned, but if an ox belonging to a tirfa person killed, it is exempt. Why so? Because the writ set the ox shall be stoned and his owner shall also be put to death wherever it is possible to read and his owner shall also be put to death. We also read the ox shall be stoned, but where we cannot apply and his owner shall also be put to death, we do not read the ox shall be stoned. Arashi said even an ox a tirfa is exempt. Why so? Since the owner in a similar condition would be exempt, the ox too is exempt if he set on a dog or a snake against him, etc. Arahabi Jacob said if you will investigate the grounds of it. Dispute you will learn that in our Judah's opinion the snake's poison is lodged in its fangs therefore one who causes it to bite by placing its fangs against the victim's flesh is decapitated whilst the snake itself is exempt but in the view of the sages the snake emits the poison of its own accord therefore the snake is stoned whilst he who caused it to bite is exempt. Mishnah if a man smote his fellow whether with a stone or with his fist and they, the experts declared that death would ensue. But then its effect lessened so that it was thought that he would live only to increase subsequently so that he died he is liable. Our Nehemiah said that he is exempt since there is evidence that he did not die as a result of his injuries as he had already been on the men. Gemara our rabbis taught our Nehemiah gave the following exposition if he rise again and walk abroad Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be upon his staff and shall he that smote him be quit now could you have thought that whilst he walks. In the marketplace his assailant is executed but it must refer to one who it was judged would die of his injuries but then their effect lessened only to increase subsequently so that he died the Torah thus teaching that his assailant is quit but how do the rabbis explain and shall he that smote him be quit this teaches that he is incarcerated until the result is known once does our Nehemiah know this from the gatherer of sticks then let the rabbis also deduce it thence the gatherer was certainly liable to death Moses merely not knowing by which death that excludes our case where we do not know whether he is liable to death at all but our Nehemiah maintains that it can be deduced from the blasphemer though not knowing whether he was liable to death they imprisoned him but the rabbis say that in case of the blasphemer his incarceration was an ad hoc decision the preceding discussion agrees with what has been taught Moses knew that the gatherer was to be executed for it is written everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to
Second assessment after the first another bury the tot if his injuries were declared fatal they may subsequently be declared non-fatal but once his injuries are declared non-fatal they cannot subsequently be declared fatal if the blow was assessed to be fatal but then he became better second assessment of the financial damages made and if he subsequently died he must make compensation for the damage pain etc to the ears from when must compensation be made from when he smote him and thus this anonymous bury agrees with our Nehemiah mission if he intended killing an animal but slew a man or even and he killed an Israelite or a prematurely born and he killed a viable child he is not liable if he intended to strike him on his loins where the blow was insufficient to kill but smote the heart instead where it was sufficient to kill and he died or if he intended smiting him on the heart Talmud Moss and Hedron where it was enough to kill but struck him on the loins. Where it was not and yet he died he is not liable if he aimed a blow at an adult whom it was insufficient to kill but caught a child whom it was enough to kill and he died he is not liable if he struck at a child with sufficient force to kill him but it caught an adult for whom it was insufficient and yet he died he is not liable but if he intended to strike his loins with sufficient force to kill but caught the heart instead he is liable if he aimed a blow at an adult hard enough to kill but struck a child instead and he died he is liable or Simeon said even if he intended killing one but killed another he is not liable Gemara to which clause does our Simeon refer shall we say to the last in that case the mission should state our Simeon declares him not liable but he refers to the first clause if he intended killing an animal but slew a man or even and he slew an Israelite or a prematurely born and he slew a viable child he is not liable this implies that if he intended killing one Israelite and killed another he is liable thereupon our Simeon said even if he intended killing one but killed another he is not liable now it is obvious that if Reuben and Simeon were standing and the murderer said I intended killing Reuben not Simeon whom he did actually kill that is the case wherein they differ but what if he said I intended killing any of them or again if he thought that this victim was Reuben but then found him to be Simeon come and here for it has been taught our Simeon said he is not liable unless he declares my intention was to kill so and so whom he did kill what is our Simeon's reason the writ but if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him and rise up against him teaching that his intention must be against him but the rabbis the disciples of Arjane said this excludes the case of one who threw a stone into the midst of a company of Israelites and heathens how is this shall we say that the company consisted of nine heathens and one Israelite then is non-liability can be inferred from the fact that the majority were heathens and even if half and half when there is a doubt in a capital charge a lenient attitude must be taken the verse is necessary only if there were non-Jews and one heathen so that the heathen though in a minority is settled there and every settled minority is as half and half all is well according to the rabbis who maintain that if he intended killing one man and killed another he is liable. For it is written if men strive and hurt a woman with child whereupon our Eliezer observed the verse refers to attempted murder because it is written and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life but how does our Simeon interpret thou shalt give life for life it refers to monetary compensation in harmony with rabbis interpretation for it has been taught rabbi said then thou shalt give life for life this refers to monetary compensation you say monetary compensation but perhaps this is not so life being literally meant giving is stated below and giving is also stated Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be above just as the latter refers to money so the former two rabbis said the following tana of the school of Hezekiah differs from both rabbi and the rabbis for a tana of the school of Hezekiah taught and he that killeth a beast shall pay for it and he that killeth a man he shall be put to death just as in the case of one who kills an animal you draw no distinction between an unwitting or a deliberate act an intentional or unintentional blow a downward blow or an upward one not acquitting him thereof but imposing monetary liability so in the case of killing a man you must draw no distinction between an unwitting or a deliberate act an intentional or unintentional blow a downward or an upward thrust not imposing a monetary liability but acquitting him thereof now what is meant unintentional shall we say entirely unintentional but then it is identical with unwitting. Hence it obviously means not intending to slay this one but another and for such a case it is taught not imposing monetary liability but acquitting him thereof but if he is liable to death it is surely unnecessary to teach that he is not liable to make compensation hence it follows that he is liable neither to execution nor to make compensation mission if a murderer became mixed up with others they are all exempted from the penalty our Judah said they are placed in a cell if a number of condemned persons differing in their death sentences became mixed with with one another they are executed by the most lenient death if criminals condemned to stoning became mixed up with others condemned to burning our Simeon said they are stoned because burning is severe but the sages say they are burned because stoning is more severe our Simeon said to them were not burning severe it would not be decreed for a priest adulterous daughter they replied were not stoning more severe it would not be the penalty of a blasphemer and an idolater if men condemned to decapitation became mixed up with others condemned to strangling our Simeon said they are all decapitated the sages say they are strangled Gemara who are meant by others shall we say other innocent men is it not obvious moreover could our Judah say in such a case that they are placed in a cell Nemonic Bishrak Arabab said in Samuel's name the Mishnah treats of an unsentenced murderer who became mixed up with other murderers already sentenced the rabbis holding that no man can be condemned save in his presence therefore they are all freed while our Judah maintains that they cannot all be exempted since they are murderers therefore they are placed in a cell Rush Lakish said if this happened to human beings all agree that they are exempt but here the reference is to an ox that had gored but was as yet uncondemned which was mixed up with other oxen already condemned the rabbis maintain as a death penalty of its owner so is that of the ox therefore an ox too can be sentenced only in its presence hence they are all exempt but our Judah rules that they are placed in a cell Rabbi Demer Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin if so how could our Jose observe thereon even if Abahelafta were amongst them but Rabbi explained it thus if two were standing and an arrow was shot by one of them unknown and killed they are both exempt whereon our Jose remarked even if Abahelafta was one but if an oxygoro which had been sentenced was mixed up with innocent oxen they are all stoned our Judah said they are placed in a cell and thus has it been taught likewise if a cow killed a man and then calved if before sentence the calf is permitted for any use if after the sentence the calf is forbidden if the cow became mixed up with others and these with others again they are placed in a cell our Eliezer son of our Simeon said they are all brought to Bethdin and stoned the master said if it calved before sentence the calf is permitted implying even if it was with calf when it gored but did not Rabbi say the calf of a cow that gored is forbidden because the mother and the calf gored the calf of a cow subjected to bestiality is likewise forbidden because the mother and the calf were thus subjected say thus if the calf was conceived and born before its mother was condemned it is permitted for use but if conceived and born after sentence it is forbidden now this agrees with the view that the product of two things one being forbidden is itself forbidden Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be but on the view that such is permitted what can you say but Rabbi said read thus if the calf was conceived and born before its mother was condemned it is permitted but if conceived before sentence and born after sentence it is forbidden because the embryo is a thigh i.e. part of its mother if a number of condemned persons differing in their death sentences etc they are executed by the most lenient death this Proves that a warning of a greater penalty is ipso facto a warning for a smaller one to our Jeremiah said this is no proof for the Mishnah treats of a case where he was warned in general terms and it agrees with the following tenet for it has been taught but others liable to any death penalty decreed in the Torah are executed only on the testimony of at least two witnesses by a congregation i.e. a full Beth din of 23 and after a warning which warning must have we see that if it cow was with calf when it gored the calf is regarded as identical with its mother stated that he was liable to death at the hands of Beth din our Judah said that the witnesses must have informed him by which death he would be executed the first tenet deduces his ruling from the gatherer of sticks who had not been warned how he would be executed but was nevertheless stoned whereas our Judah maintains that the gatherer was executed on an ad hoc decision if criminals condemned to stoning became Mixed up with others condemned to burning our Ezekiel taught his son Ram if criminals condemned to burning became mixed up with others condemned to stoning our Simeon said they are stoned because burning is severe thereupon Rab Judah said to him father teach it not thus why state the reason because
which lay upon him Jimmer is it not obvious that he is executed by the severer shall he then profit by his additional crime Rob answered the circumstances are these first he committed the lighter offense for which he was sentenced and the more serious one I might think since he was already under sentence for the lighter offense he is as a dead man underscore and cannot be further sentenced we are therefore taught otherwise the father of our Joseph Behama inquired of Rabbi B. Nathan whence do we know this law stated by the rabbis is one who incurs two death penalties passed by Beth is executed by the severe he answered from the verse if he has seen the righteous man beget a son that is a robber a shedder of blood who hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife now if he beget a son that is a robber a shedder of blood this murder is punished by decapitation and defiled his neighbor's wife this is adultery punished by strangulation and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols refers to idolatry for which stoning is incurred and it is written he shall surely die his blood shall be upon him which indicates stoning Arnam and B. Isaac objected may it not refer to a series of offenses all punishable by stoning thus if he beget a sword a robber a shedder of blood refers to a wayward and rebellious son who is stoned and defiled his neighbor's wife to a betrothed maiden whose ravisher who is stoned and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols to idolatry for which Stoning is likewise incurred if so what does Ezekiel teach us but perhaps he was merely revising the Torah then he should have revised it all just as Moses had revised it or Ahab Hanani gave the following exposition what is meant by but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right etc and hath not eaten upon the mountains i.e. he did not eat through his forebears merit neither hath he lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel that he did not walk with haughty mean. Neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife indicating that he did not competitively enter his neighbor's profession neither hath come near to a menstruous woman meaning that he did not benefit from the charity fund and it is written he is just he shall surely live when Argamaliel read this verse he wept saying only he who does all these things shall live but not merely one of them thereupon our Akiba said to him if so defile not yourselves in all these things is the prohibition against all. Combined only but not against one surely not but it means in one of these things so here too for doing one of these things shall he live if he committed one sin for which a twofold death penalty is incurred etc. It has been taught when did our Jose rule he is judged according to the first interdict which lay upon him e.g. if a woman was first interdicted as a mother-in-law and then became a married woman he is judged for incest with her as for his mother-in-law only if she was first forbidden. To him as a married woman and then became his mother-in-law he is punished for a married woman or Abba said to Rabbah if she was first his mother-in-law and then became a married woman he is judged as for his mother-in-law only but should he also not be punished for the interdict attaching to her as a married woman for our said our Jose agrees in regard to a more extensive prohibition that it becomes operative where a prohibition already exists Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B he replied. Adam, my son, will you execute him twice? Mishnah, he who was twice flagellated for two transgressions and then sinned again. I is placed by Bethdin in a cell and fed with barley bread until his stomach bursts. Kamara, because he has been twice flagellated, Bethdin places him in a cell. Our Jeremiah answered in the name of Reshlakish. The reference is to flagellation for an offense punishable by extinction, so that he is already liable to death at the hand of God, but the time of his death has not yet come. Since, however, he abandoned himself to sin by transgressing a third time, we hasten his death. Our Jacob said to our Jeremiah, Be talafah, come, I will interpret it to you the streets of flagellation for one sin involving extinction, which was twice repeated, but if he committed two or three different sins, each involving extinction, it may merely be his desire to experience sin and not a complete abandonment thereto. One who was twice flagellated twice, though not thrice, shall we say that the Mishnah does not agree with Arsimian B. Gamaliel for if it did does he not maintain there is no presumption until a thing has happened three times Rabbin has said it may agree even with Arsimian B. Gamaliel the mission is of the opinion that transgressions afford a basis for presumption and objection was raised if one committed an offense involving flagellation the first and second time he is flagellated on the third occasion he is placed in a cell Abyssal said even on the third occasion he is flagellated but on the fourth he is placed in a cell now presumably both agree that flagellation affords a basis for presumption and they differ on the lines of Rabbi and Arsimian B. Gamaliel no both agree with Arsimian B. Gamaliel but they differ on this question one master holds that transgression affords a basis for presumption the other master that only flagellation affords it but what of the following that has been taught is if he the transgressor was warned of his liability to flagellation but Remain silent or warned and nodded his head the first and second time he is to be warned but on the third occasion he is placed in a cell Abbas said the third time too he is warned but on the fourth he is placed in a cell now there he is not flagellated wherein then do they differ Rabbin said they differ as to whether one must be warned of the cell and what was the form of the cell Rab Judah said a chamber of his the transgressor's full height and where is it alluded to Reshlakish. Quoted evil shall slay the wicked Reshlakish also said what is meant by for man also know it not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil trap what is an evil trap Reshlakish said a hook mission one who commits murder without witnesses is placed in a cell and forcibly fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction Gemara how do we know that he committed murder Rab said on a disjoint evidence Samuel said without a warning Arhis said in Abimi's name through witnesses who were disproved as to the minor circumstances of the crime but not on the vital points as we learned it once happened that Banzakai examined the witnesses as to the stocks of the fix and fed bread of adversity and water of affliction why does this mission teach and fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction whilst the former teaches he is placed by Bethdin in a cell and fed with barley bread until his stomach bursts are she's hate answered in both cases he is fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction for his intestines to shrink thus blocking the passage and then he is fed with barley bread until his stomach bursts mission if one steals a key or curses by enchantment or cohabits with a heathen Lazarian woman he is punished by zealots if a priest performed the temple service whilst unclean his brother priests do not charge him there with at Bethdin but the young priests take him out of the temple court and split his skull with clubs a layman who Performed the service in the temple, our Akiva said he is strangled. The sages say his death is at the hands of heaven. Gamara, what is Kiswar Rab Judah answered the service vessels of the temple, and thus it is said, and the vessels cast of libation. And where is this alluded to that they come not to see how the holy things are stolen, lest they the purloiners die or curses by enchantment? Our Joseph learned he curses, thus may the charm the idol slay its enchanter. The rabbis others say, Rabbi Bimari say he curses, may the charm slay him, his enemy, his master, and his provider, etc. Or cohabits with a heathen woman. Arkahana propounded a problem to Rab Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin, what if zealots did not punish him? Now Rab had completely forgotten what he had learned about this, so Arkahana was made to read in his dream. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem, for Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and hath. Been intimate with the daughter of a strange god, he then went and related to Rab. This was I made to read thereupon. He reminded Rab of it. All Judah hath dealt treacherously. This refers to idolatry, even as it is said, surely as a wife to partake treacherously from her husband. So have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel? Saith the Lord, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Refers to Peter Asti, and thus it is written, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination for Judah hath profaned the holiness coach of the Lord. This refers to harlotry, and thus it is said, There shall be no consecrated harlot Kadesha of the daughters of Israel, and hath been intimate with the daughter of a strange god. This refers to intimacy with a heathen woman. Now this verse is followed by the Lord will cut off the men that doth this, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts this. Means if he is a scholar, he shall have none awakening, i.e., teaching among the sages and none responding among the disciples. If a priest, he shall have no son to offer an offering unto the Lord of hosts. Our high Abiyah said he who is intimate with a heathen woman is as though he had entered into marriage relationship with an idol, for it is written and hath been intimate with the daughter of a strange god, hath been a strange god a daughter, but it refers to one who cohabits with a heathen woman.
Counsel, we do not instruct him to do so. What is more, had Zimri forsaken his mistress and Phinehas slain him, Phinehas would have been executed on his account, and had Zimri turned upon Phinehas and slain him, he would not have been executed since Phinehas was a pursuer seeking to take his life. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay every one of his men that were joined unto Baal Peer there upon the tribe of Simeon, went unto Zimri ben Salu and said unto him, Behold, capital punishment is. Being meted out yet you sit silent, i.e. inactive, what did he do? He rose and assembled twenty-four thousand Israelites and went unto Kashbi and said unto her, Surrender thyself unto me. She replied, I am a king's daughter, and thus hath my father instructed me, Thou shalt yield only to their greatest man. I too, he replied, am the prince of a tribe. Moreover, my tribe is greater than his Moses, for mine is second in birth, whilst his is third. He then seized her by her coiffure and brought her before. Moses, son of Amram, exclaimed, He is this woman forbidden or permitted, and should you say she is forbidden who permitted the Jethro's daughter? At that moment Moses forgot the halacha concerning intimacy with a heathen woman, and all the people burst into tears, hence it is written, and they were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and it is also written, and Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it. Now what did he see? Rab said he saw what was happening and remembered the halacha and said to him, O great uncle, did you not teach us this on thy descent from Mount Sinai? He who cohabits with a heathen woman is punished by zealots. He replied, He who reads a letter, let him be the agent to carry out its instruction. Samuel said he saw that there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord whenever the divine name is being profaned. Honor must not be paid to one's teacher. Our Isaac said in our Eliezer's name he saw the angel. Wreaking destruction amongst the people, and he rose up out of the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand. Hence, one may not enter the house of learning with weapons. He removed its point and placed it in his undergarment and went along Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin, be leaning upon the stock of the spear into which the pointed blade is inserted, and as soon as he reached the tribe of Simeon, he exclaimed, Where do we find that the tribe of Levi is greater than that of Simeon? I.e., I too wish to indulge thereupon. They said, Let him pass too. He enters to satisfy his lust. These abstainers have now declared the matter permissible. Are you had and said six miracles were wrought for Phinehas. Isimri should have withdrawn from the woman, but did not too. He should have cried out for help, but did not three. Even he succeeded in driving his spear exactly through the sexual organs of the man and woman, for they did not slip off the spear. An angel came and lifted up the lintel six. An angel came and wrought destruction amongst the people, and he Phinehas came and struck them down before the Almighty, saying, Sovereign of the universe shall twenty-four thousand perish because of these even as it is written, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Hence it is written, then stood up Phinehas and executed judgment. W.A.F.L.L. Our Eliezer said, W.A.F.L.L. He prayed is not written, but W.A.F.L.L. as though he argued with his Maker on the justice of punishing so many thereupon the ministering angels wished to repulse him, but he said to them, Let him be, for he is a zealot, and the descendant of a zealot, a turner away of wrath, and the son of a turner away of wrath. The tribes now began abusing him. See, the son of Pudi equals Putiel, whose maternal grandfather fattened pit him cattle for idols, and who has now slain the prince of a tribe of Israel. Therefore, scripture detailed his ancestry, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest. Moreover, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to Moses, Be the first to extend a greeting of peace to him, as it is written, Wherefore, say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and this atonement that Phinehas has made is worthy of being an everlasting atonement. Our nomin said in Rab's name, What is meant by Greyhounds, Arzur, Math, Nine, Lit, Energetic of Loins, and he goat also Tayesh, and a king against whom there is no rising up that wicked man, as Caesar reached by the four hundred and twenty-four times that day, and Phinehas waited for his strength to weaken, not knowing that God is a king against whom there is no rising up in the berry, though we learned sixty times until he became like an adult egg, whilst she became like a furrow filled with water. Our Kahana said, and her seat was a Beth Ser. Joseph learned her womb opening was a cubit. Our Sheshit said her name was not Kashbi, but Shulan, the daughter of Zur. Why then was she called Kashbi because she falsified her father's teachings? Another interpretation is she said to her father, Devour me, coast by this people, and thus it is a pillar proverb. What business had Shulana by the reeds of the lake? What had Shulana to do amongst the peeling rushes? She prostitutes her mother, Ar Yohanan, said Zimri had five names Zimri, the son of Salu, Saul, the son of a Canaanitish woman, and Shalomil, the son of Zuri, Shadai Zimri, because he became like an adult egg, Bezaham Yuzareth, the son of Salu, because he outweighed his leave the sins of his family, Saul, because he lent himself, Hishilfar Shal, to sin, the son of a Canaanitish woman, because he acted in a Canaanitish fashion, i.e., depravedly, whilst his real name was Shalomil, the son of Zuri, Shadai, if a priest performed the temple service whilst unclean, Ar Abbi, who not propounded a problem to Ar Shis, hate does a priest who performed the temple service whilst unclean merit death at the hands of heaven or not, he replied, We learned it if a priest, P -E -R -F -O -R -I -E -D, the temple service whilst. Unclean his brother priests do not charge him at Bethdin, but the young priests take him out of the temple court and reak his skull with clubs. But shall you think that he merits death at the hands of heaven? Should he not be left to be slain by him? Will you say then that he is not so liable? Is there anything for which the merciful one did not impose a penalty for which we may kill? And is there not? But we learned one who was twice flagellated is placed by BTH in a cell, thus the messiful one. Exempted him, yet we slay him. That is no difficulty for did not our Jeremiah say in the name of Reshlakish the reference is to flagellation for an offense punishable by extinction, hence he is liable to the TH. But what F1 who steals a Kiswa that too causes no difficulty for did not Rab Judah say this refers to service vessels death for the theft of which being alluded to in the verse thought they come not to see how the holy things are stolen unless they the purloiners die. But what of one? Who curses by enchantment thereto did not our Joseph learn he curses thus made the charm slay the enchanter so that it excess somewhat analogous to blasphemy but what of one who cohabits with a heathen woman thereto our Kahana was made to read a verse in his dream which on being told to rab entirely reminded him of the law he objected h who pours the oil on the meal offering mingles it with the flour breaks up the meal offering cake salts the meal offering waves it presents it opposite the southwest corner of the altar sets the table with the shoe bread trims the lamps takes off the handful of flour from the meal offering or receives the blood if he did any of these outside the temple court he is not liable to extinction nor is punishment incurred for any of these acts Talmud Ma Sanhedrin on account of Zeruth uncleanliness lack of priestly garments or the non dash washing of hands and feet this implies but if he burnt incense he is liable and Presumably his liability is to death no merely in respect of the prohibition, but if so the Zerath mentioned is likewise merely in respect of the prohibition, surely it is written, and the strangers are that cometh nigh shall be put to death, each has its own ruling. Now it follows that not even a negative precept is transgressed for pouring and mingling under the conditions enumerated, but it has been taught once do we derive a negative precept for the pouring and mingling of the oil by an unclean priest from the verse they shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. The prohibition is rabbinical only the verse being a mere support and objection was raised the following are liable to death at the hands of heaven. An unclean priest who performed the temple service, etc. This definitely refutes his Arshesh is ruling to turn to the main barrier the following are liable to death at the hands of heaven, one who ate people, an unclean priest who ate. Undefiled Teramazar or an unclean priest who performed the temple service or one who performed it on the day of his ritual bath or lacking the proper priestly garments or lacking the sacrificial atonement one who did not wash his hands and feet or drank wine or a priest with overgrown locks but the performance of the service by an uncircumcised priest and one and or by one who officiated whilst sitting is not liable to death but merely prohibited if a priest with a blemish. Officiated rabbi said he is liable to death the sages maintained he is merely prohibited if he deliberately transgressed in respect of a trespass offering rabbi said he is liable to death and the sages say he transgressed a
Ma Sanhedrin be excluding this unclean terima which already stands profaned as Arhuay terima Rab said as Arhuay terima is flagellated Arkahana and R.C. said to him why does not the master say is liable to death since it is written there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing I the Lord do sanctify them breaks across the subject an objection is raised the following are liable to death as Arhuay terima do you oppose a bury the Rab's ruling Rab is a tana and may dispute. The ruling of Barith Azar who performed the temple service for it is written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death or an unclean priest who performed the temple service even as our high Aben inquired of our Joseph once do we know that an unclean priest who performed the temple service is punished by death because it is written speak unto Aaron and to his sons that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel and that they profane not my holy name and identity of law is derived from the use of profanation here and in the case of Terima just as there the penalty is death so here too but should not the deduction rather be made from that just as there the penalty is extinction so here too it is reasonable to make the deduction from Terima because they have the following in common I bodily unfitness to uncleanliness three mequay four plural form on the contrary should not the deduction rather be made from that since they share the following in common I sanctity to within the temple court three pickle and four nuthar even so the fact that in both cases is terima and the sacrificial service profanation is spoken of as an act of many unlike nuthar outweighs the points which sacrificial service and nuthar have in common or one who performed it on the day of his ritual bath whence do we know this even as has been taught our semi said where is the illusion that one who officiated in the temple on the day of his ritual bath has committed an act of profanation from the verse they shall be holy unto their god and not profane the name of their god since this cannot refer to the ministration of an unclean priest the prohibition of which is derived from that they separate themselves apply it to a priest officiating on the day of his ritual bath then an analogy is drawn from the use of profanation both here and in the case of terima just as there the penalty is death so here too or Lacking the proper priestly garments, whence do we know it? Our Abba said in our Yohanan's name, and the teaching is ultimately derived from our Eliezer, son of our Simeon, the Ritzeth, and thou shalt put coats upon them, and thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual state when wearing the appointed garments they are invested in their priesthood, when not they lack their priesthood, and are considered Zareem. And the master hath said, as our who performs the temple service is liable to death, or one lacking the sacrificial atonement, whence do we know this? Our who said, the Ritzeth, and the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean, and she shall be clean implies that hitherto she was unclean, and the master hath said, an unclean priest who officiated is liable to death, one who did not wash his hands or feet, whence do we know this from the verse when they go into the tabernacle of it? Congregation they shall wash with water that they die not or drank wine because it is written do not drink wine or strong drink thou nor thy sons with thee when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation lest ye die or a priest with overgrown locks as it is written neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to remain unshorn and this is followed by neither shall they drink wine hence the former is likened to the latter just as the latter is liable to death so the former. Two but the performance of the service by an uncircumcised priest and one and or by one who officiated whilst sitting is not liable to death but merely prohibited whence do we know it of the uncircumcised artist said we did not learn this from the Torah of Moses our teacher until Ezekiel the son of Buzah came and taught it to us no stranger uncircumcised in heart Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and or uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary whence do we know it of an one and because it is. Written neither shall he see the one in high priest go out of the sanctuary yet shall he not profane the sanctuary of his god hence if any other priest does not go out he profanes the sanctuary our Abba said to Rabba then let us derive identity of law from the use of profanation here and in the case of Terima just as there the punishment is death so here too is then the prohibition of an one and explicitly stated in that verse it is only inferred from the high priest hence it is a law. Derived from a general proposition and such cannot be further subjected to deduction by Gizurisha whence do we know it of one who officiates whilst sitting Rabba said in Arnaman's name the Ritzeth for the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister implying I have chosen him for standing but not for sitting if a priest with a blemish officiated Rabbi said he is liable to death at the hands of heaven the sages maintained he is merely prohibited what is. Rabbi's reason because it is written only he shall not go in unto the veil nor come nigh unto the altar because he hath a blemish that he profane not my sanctuaries then the law is derived from the use of profanation here and in the case of Terima just as there the penalty is death so here too but let it rather be derived from Nahar just as there the penalty is extinction so here too it is more reasonable to make the deduction from Terima for thus bodily unfitness is derived from bodily. Unfitness on the contrary is it not preferable to base the analogy on Nahar since they share the following in common I sanctity two within the temple precincts three pickle and four Nahar but the analogy is drawn from an unclean priest who officiated thus bodily unfitness is derived from bodily unfitness and a case distinguished by sanctity the inner precincts of the temple pickle and Nahar derived from another so distinguished but the rabbis the writ and die therefore implying. But not for the sin of being blemished if he deliberately transgressed in respect of a trespass offering Rabbi said he is liable to death and the sages maintain he is merely prohibited what is Rabbi's reason Rabbi said he derives identity of law from the fact that sin is used here and in the case of Terima just as there the penalty is death so here too but the Rabbis they maintain the writ and die therefore implying but not for trespass Azar who officiated in the temple it has been. Taught our Ishmael said it is here written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death whilst it is elsewhere said whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die just as their death was at the hands of heaven so here too our Akiva said it is here written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death whilst it is elsewhere said and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death just as there it is by stoning so here too our Yohan and Binuri. Said just as there it is by strangling so here too wherein do our Ishmael and our Akiva differ our Akiva maintains shall be put to death must be compared with shall be put to death but not with shall die whilst our Ishmael maintains a layman must be compared to a layman but not to a prophet but our Akiva ever since he seduced no man is more of a layman than he wherein do our Akiva and our Yohan and Binuri differ in the dispute of our Simeon and the rabbis for it has been taught if a prophet seduced he is. Stoned our Simeon said he is strangled but we learned our Akiva said he the Tsar is strangled too Tanaim differ as to our Akiva's ruling our Mishnah is taught on our Simeon's view as to our Akiva's ruling whilst the Barith is stating that the Tsar is stoned and that this is derived from the false prophet gives the Rabbi's view as to our Akiva's ruling Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin BCHAPTERX Mishnah the following are strangled he who strikes his father or mother or kidnaps a Jew to sell as a slave. Elder rebelling against the ruling of Beth Din a false prophet one who prophesies in the name of an idol one who commits adultery witnesses who testify falsely to the adultery of a priest's daughter and her paramour tomorrow whence do we know it of him who strikes his father or mother from the verse and he that smites his father or mother shall surely be put to death and by every unspecified death sentence decreed in the Torah strangulation is meant but say perhaps it is only if he kills. Not merely strikes them you surely cannot think so for killing any other person he is decapitated whilst for his father's murder he is only strangled now this answer is correct on the view that strangulation is more lenient but on the view that the sword is more lenient what canst thou say but since it is written he that smite the man so that he dies shall surely be put to death and also or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die it follows that whenever an unqualified smiting is mentioned it does not mean slaying now it is necessary that both he that smite the man and whoso killeth any soul etc be written for had the divine law written only he that smite the man that he die I should have thought that it applies to the slaying of an adultish only since such is himself bound by law but not to the slaying of a minor therefore the divine law writes whoso killeth any soul whilst had the divine law written only who killeth any soul I should have thought that it applies. Even to an fell or an eight months child, therefore the former verse is necessary too to exclude these. Now reverting to
Father Armath Narul, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, or deem me behind an ascent, or it set, and he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it, and he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death, just as one who strikes an animal to heal it is not liable for damage. So if one wounds a man as see his parent to heal him, he is not liable. Rab would not permit his son to extract a thorn from his flesh, since in drawing it out he would make a slight wound mar the son of Rabbanu would not permit. His son to lance a fester for him lest he wound him thereby unintentionally transgressing a prohibition. If so, even a stranger should be forbidden. In the case of a stranger, the unintentional transgression is in respect of a mere negative precept, but high sons involve strangulation. But one of that which we learned a small needle lit hand needle may be moved on the Sabbath for the purpose of extracting a thorn, but should we then not fear that a wound might be made in extracting it and thus a prohibition involving stoning be unintentionally transgressed thereby so doing he affects damage. Now this agrees with the view that one who does damage on the Sabbath is not liable to punishment, but on the view that he is what can you say whom have you heard maintaining that one who inflicts damage by means of a wound is liable for the desecration of the Sabbath are Simeon Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, but our Simeon also maintains that any mode of work not required for itself is not punishable. A problem was propounded to our sheesh hate may one be appointed an agent by Beth to flagellate and curse his father he replied who then permitted even a stranger to do this but that the divine honor overrides other prohibitions so here too the divine honor overrides the prohibition against smiting and cursing one's parents an objection was raised if one whom it is a positive command to smite may nevertheless not be smitten how much more so may one whom it is not a positive command to smite not be smitten now do not both clauses relate to smiting as a precept but that one treats of a son the other of a stranger no in both clauses no distinction is drawn between a son and a stranger yet there is no difficulty the one treats of smiting as a precept the other one not and it is thus to be interpreted if when a precept is involved i.e. when it is a positive command to smite as see a person under sentence of flagellation it is nevertheless a command not to smite unnecessarily i.e. With more than the prescribed number of lashes bis 40 then when no positive command is involved bis when one is not to be flagellated one is surely commanded not to smite unnecessarily come and here if one was going forth to execution and his son came and smote him and cursed him he is liable if a stranger did this he is exempt now we pondered thereon what is the difference between a son and a stranger and our hista answered this refers to one who is being impelled forth but holds back our she's hate maintains that it refers to one who is not urged to go forth if so a stranger too should be punished for beating him as far as a stranger is concerned he is already a dead man but did not our she's hate say if one insulted a sleeping person and he died in his sleep he is nevertheless liable to punishment for saying the reference here is to a blow which inflicted an injury less than a paratot in value but did not our MI say in our Yohanan's name even if one smote his neighbor with a Blow inflicting less than a paratis worth of damage he is punished with lashes by exempt non-liability to monetary compensation is meant it follows then that a son is liable to monetary compensation but it must therefore mean he is liable according to the law pertaining to him if so a stranger too is exempt from the law pertaining to him for smiting his neighbor of his lashes but this is the reason why a stranger is exempt because the writ saith thou shalt not curse a prince among thy people meaning only when he acts as is fitting for that people this is well as far as cursing is concerned but whence do we know the same of smiting because we compare smiting with cursing if so should not the same apply to his son even as our said elsewhere this refers to one who had repented if so even a stranger should be liable our Mari answered among that people implies abiding among that people if so should not the same apply to his son Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B it is the same. As after death what is our final decision Rabbi son of Arhuna said and Atana of the school Arishmael taught likewise for no offense may a son be appointed an agent to smite or curse his father excepting if he be a since it is written neither shalt thou spare nor conceal him Mishnah he who strikes his father or his mother is liable only if he wounds them in this respect cursing is more stringent than smiting for he who curses his parents after death is liable whilst he who smites them after death is not Gemara our rabbis taught his father or his mother he hath cursed his blood shall be upon him this means even after death for I would think since he is liable for smiting and for cursing so also for cursing moreover an admagus reasoning would seem to prove the contrary if for smiting where a parent not of that people is assimilated to one of that people there is nevertheless no punishment for doing so after his death than cursing where one not of that people is Assimilated to of that people is surely not punishable if done after death therefore the writ saith he hath cursed his father or his mother now this accords with our Jonathan to whom the verse his father or his mother he hath cursed is superfluous but on our Joshua's view what can be said for it has been taught for ishish any man that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death now scripture could have said a manish what is taught by any man ishish the inclusion of a daughter a tumtum and a hermaphrodite as being subject to this law that curseth his father and his mother from this I know only that he is punished for cursing his father and his mother once do I know the same if he cursed his father without his mother or his mother without his father from the passage his father and his mother he hath cursed implying a man that cursed his father a man that cursed his mother this is our Joshua's opinion our Jonathan said the beginning of the verse alone implies either the two together or each separately unless the verse had explicitly stated together once then does he or Joshua learn the law under discussion he derives it from the verse and he that curses his father or his mother shall surely put to death and the other he utilizes it to include a daughter a tumtum and a hermaphrodite but why not derive this from any man ishish the Torah employed human speech now reverting to the Mishnah should it not also teach smiting is a greater offense than cursing since with respect to the smiting not of that people is as of that people which is not the case with respect to cursing the tana of the Mishnah maintains that smiting is assimilated to cursing shall we say that these ten aim differ on the same lines as the following is one berry that was taught as for a and you are enjoined against smiting him but not against cursing him but another berry that taught you are enjoined neither against smiting nor cursing him now the hypothesis is that all agree that the Kutians were true proselytes hence presumably the grounds of their dispute are these one master holds that smiting is likened to cursing and the other master that it is not no all agree that smiting is not likened to cursing but this is the cause of their dispute the one master maintains Kutians are true proselytes the other master holds that they are sham proselytes driven to conversion through fear of lions if so how can the bury the further state but his ox is as one belonging to an Israelite hence this proves that the dispute is in respect of the analogy this proves that Mishnah he who kidnaps a Jew incurs no liability unless he brings him into his own domain Arjuna said unless he brings him into his own domain and puts him to service for it is written if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and put him to service and sell him if he abducts his own son or Ishmael the son of Arjuna be Baraka. Declared him liable, but the sages exempted him if he kidnapped a semi slave and semi freeman. Our Judah declares him liable, but the sages acquit him. Gemara, but does not the first ten require putting to service as a condition of punishment? Our Abba, the son of Rabbah, said they differ in respect of service worth less than a paratah. Our Jeremiah propounded what if one kidnapped and sold a person asleep? What if one sold a pregnant woman for the expected child? Is this a sort of service or not? But surely can this not be solved from the fact that there is no service at all? It is necessary to propound this only if he the kidnapper leaned upon the sleeper or in the case of a pregnant woman if she was placed in front of a wind. Now, does this constitute service or not? This problem remains unsolved. Our rabbis taught if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel from this, I know the law only if a man abducted once do I know it of a woman from the verse end. One that stealeth a man from these verses I know the law only if a man kidnapped a man or a woman and of a woman who abducted a man whence do I know it if a woman abducted a woman from the verse then that thief shall die implying in all cases of theft another very the taught if a man be found stealing any of his brethren whether a man woman pros like monument slave or minor be abducted he is liable if he stole him but did not sell him or if he sold him but he is still in his SC the victim's own house he is exempt if he sold him to his SC the victim's father brother or to one of his relations he is liable he who steals slaves is exempt Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and now Atana recited this very the before
Rabbah said therefore the instructors of children and teachers of students are regarded as having their charges ready to hand and hence are not punished for abducting them if he kidnapped a semi-slave and semi-freeman etc. We learned elsewhere our Judah said slaves have no claim for shame what is our Judah's reason to rid Seth when men strive together a man with his brother teaching that this applies only to one who has fraternal relationship thus excluding a slave who has no fraternal relationship but the rabbis maintained he the slave is his brother in obligation to fulfill the divine precepts now in this case abduction how is the verse interpreted our judah maintains if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of israel of his brethren excludes slaves the children of israel excludes a semi-slave and a semi-freeman of the children of israel likewise excludes one who is a semi-slave and semi-freeman thus one limitation follows another which always indicates extension but the rabbis do not agree that of his brethren excludes slaves since they are his brethren in obligation to fulfill the divine precepts whilst as for the double limitation implied in the children of israel and of the children of israel one excludes a slave and the other excludes a semi-slave and semi-freeman once do we learn a formal prohibition against abduction our Josiah said from thou shalt not steal our Yohan and said from they shall not be sold as bondsmen now there is no dispute one master states the prohibition for stealing i.e. abduction the other master for selling the kidnapped person our rabbis taught thou shalt not steal scripture refers to the stealing of human beings you say scripture refers to the stealing of human beings but perhaps it is not so the theft of property let money being meant i will tell you go forth and learn from the 13 principles whereby the torah is interpreted one of which is that a law is interpreted by its general context of what does the text speak of crimes involving capital punishment hence this too refers to a crime involving capital punishment another very the taught ye shall not steal the writ refers to theft of property you say thus but perhaps it is not so scripture referring to the theft of human beings i will tell you go forth and learn from the 13 principles whereby the torah is interpreted one of which is that a law is interpreted by its general context of what does it Text speak of money matters therefore this to refuse to a money theft it has been stated if the witnesses of the abduction or those of the sale of human being were proved so memem Hezekiah said they are not executed are Yohan and maintained that they are now Hezekiah's ruling agrees with the view of our Akibov is at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established the whole matter but not half of the matter whilst our Yohanan's view agrees with that of the rabbis is the matter implies even half the matter yet Hezekiah admits in the case of a stubborn and rebellious son that if the last witnesses were contradicted they are executed since the first could say Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B we came merely to have him flogged and therefore these last witnesses attest the whole offense involving execution are pop objected if so the witnesses of the sale of the abducted person should likewise be executed since those of abduction can say we came merely to have him flogged nor could you answer that Hezekiah is of the opinion that the abductor is not flogged since it has been stated if the witnesses of abduction were proved so Memamar Yohanan and Hezekiah differ one maintains that they are flagellated the other that they are not Moran we observed it may be shown that it was Hezekiah who ruled that they are flagellated since he said that they are not executed for worried or Yohanan since however he maintains that they are executed their injunction is one for which a warning of death at the hands of Beth Din may be given and for such there is no flagellation but if he the accused is not to another their testimony is invalid here also the abduction is only half an offense likewise the sale in itself proves nothing as the vendor might have sold his own slave therefore their testimony cannot convict the accused and consequently they themselves if proved so Memamar not executed flagellated how can they the false Witnesses be but our Papa said thus all agree that the witnesses of the sale who were proved so memem are slain they differ only with respect to the witnesses of abduction Hezekiah maintains that they are not executed abduction being one offense and selling another whilst our Yohanan holds that they are executed abduction being the first step towards selling but our Yohanan admits that if the first witnesses of a stubborn and rebellious son are proved so memem they are not executed since they can say we came to have him flogged Abbe said all agree in one matter relating to a stubborn and rebellious son and all agree in a second relating to a stubborn and rebellious son and there is a dispute in the case of a stubborn and rebellious son thus all agree in one matter relating to a stubborn and rebellious son is with respect to the first witnesses proved so memem that they are not slain since they can plead we came to have him flagellated and all agree in a second matter Relating to a stubborn and rebellious son is with respect to the last witnesses that they are executed for since the first witnesses could plead we came to have him flogged these attest the entire offense involving death and there is a dispute in the case of a stubborn and rebellious son is when two testify that he stole and two that he ate R.C. said if the witnesses of the sale of an abducted person are proved so memem they are not executed since the vendor could plead else sold my slave R. Joseph said with whom does the stigma of R.C. agree with our Akiba who ruled the whole matter but not half the matter Abbe said to him for on the view of the rabbis they would be executed but he gives his reason since etc. hence it may agree even with the rabbis providing there were no witnesses of abduction if so why stated it is necessary to state this only if witnesses of abduction subsequently appeared but even so why stated this is necessary only when they made signs to each other I might think that signaling is of consequence therefore here RC informs us that it is of no consequence mission and elder rebelling against the ruling of Beth Din is strangled for it is written if there arise a matter too hard for thee for judgment etc. Three courts of law were there one situated at the entrance to the temple mount another at the door of the temple court and the third in the hall of hewn stones they first went to the Beth Din which is at the entrance to the temple mount and he the rebellious elder stated thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught if this first Beth Din had heard a ruling on the matter they stated if not they go to the second Beth Din which is at the entrance of the temple court and he declares thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught if the second Beth Din had heard a Ruling on the matter they stated if not they all proceed to the great Beth Din of the Hall of Hewn Stones whence instruction issued to all Israel for it is written which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall shoot thee if he return to his town and taught again as heretofore he is not liable but if he gave a practical decision he is guilty for it is written and the man that will do presumptuously showing that he is liable only for a practical ruling but if a disciple gave a practical decision opposed to the Beth Din he is exempt thus the very stringency of his ordination is a source of leniency for him Gemara or rabbis taught if a thing be outstandingly difficult people for the Talmud Ma Sanhedrin of the Rid refers to an outstanding member Mufla Beth Din he refers to a matter needing a counselor and thus it is said there is one come out from me that imagineth evil against the Lord a wicked counselor a thing refers to a Traditional halacha in judgment this means a law deduced by a din between blood and blood the blood of an it childbirth and gonorrhea between ruling and ruling whether capital or civil cases or cases involving flagellation between lepers plague spots and plague spots embracing leprosy in man houses and garments matters refers to haram evaluations and sanctifications contentions refers to the water or deal of a soda the beheading of the heifer and the purification of a leper within the gates this refers to the gleanings forgotten sheep and the corner of the field and thou shalt arise that is from the sitting of Beth Din and ascend this teaches that the temple was higher than the rest of Palestine and Palestine is geographically higher than all other countries into the place this teaches that the place is the cause now it is correct to say that the temple was higher than the rest of Palestine since it is written and thou shalt ascend but once does he Learn that Palestine is more elevated than all other countries from the passage therefore behold the days come saith the Lord that they shall no more say the Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land our rabbis taught a rebellious elder is liable only for a matter the deliberate transgression of which is punished by extinction whilst the unwitting offense involves a sin offering this is our Meir's view our Judah said for a matter of which the fundamental principle is biblical whilst its interpretation is by the scribes our Simeon said even for a single detail arising out of the subtle interpretations of the rabbis what is our Meir's reason he draws an analogy from the use of Dabar matter in two places here it is written if there arise a Dabar
Needing a counselor who knows how to determine the intercalation of years and fixation of months now the rebelliousness of the elder may be in respect of what we learned they testified that a leap year may be proclaimed during the whole month of Adartha's testimony was necessary because the i.e. the other sages maintained only until Purim hence if the elder flouted the ruling of the great Beth in either direction he permitted leaven to be eaten on the Passover a thing refers to a traditional halacha by this is meant the traditional halachas of the eleventh day for it has been stated as for the tenth day are Yohan and maintained that it is as the ninth whilst our Simeon Belakish ruled that it is as the eleventh are Yohan and maintained that it is as the ninth just as a blood discharge on the ninth necessitates observation so for an issue on the tenth two observation is required but Rush Lakish ruled that the tenth day is as the eleventh just as a blood discharge on the Eleventh does not necessitate observation so on the tenth to no observation is required in judgment this means a law deduced by Adin Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Bibas incest with one's daughter by an outraged woman for Rabbah said our Isaac Biabudimi said unto me we learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages and likewise similar wickedness between blood and blood the blood of Anita childbirth and Gonorrhoe the blood of Anita this enters into the dispute of Akhibi Abimahalil and the rabbis for we learn the greenish discharge of blood Akhibi Abimahalil declares it unclean and the sages declare it clean the blood of childbirth this depends on the dispute between Rab and Levi for it has been stated Rab said it all issues from one and the same source the Torah declaring it unclean during the first fourteen days and clean the following sixty six days Levi said it proceeds from two different sources at the end of fourteen Days the unclean source is closed and the clean one opened at the end of eighty days the source of clean blood is closed and that of unclean blood opened and the blood of God are easy but this enters into the dispute of our Eliezer and our Joshua for we learned if a woman was in labor for three days within the eleventh and ceased for twenty-four hours live from time to time from an hour on one day to the same on the next end and gave birth she is regarded as a woman bearing with a God are discharge this is our Eliezer's opinion our Joshua said the cessation must be a night and a day as the night and day of the Sabbath the cessation referred to a cessation from labor not from blood discharge between ruling and ruling whether they be capital or civil cases or cases involving flagellation civil cases depend on the dispute between Samuel and our for Samuel said if two judges gave a civil ruling their action is valid but that they are dubbed an impudent Court whilst Arabah maintained all agree that their decision is invalid capital cases in this the dispute of Rabbi and the Rabbis is involved for it has been taught Rabbi said and thou shalt give life for life this refers to monetary compensation you say monetary compensation but perhaps this is not so life being literally meant giving is stated below it is also stated above just as the latter refers to money so the former two cases involving flagellation this is dependent on the dispute of our Ishmael and the Rabbis for we learned flagellation is imposed by a court of three on the authority of our Ishmael it was said by 23 between leprous plague spots and plague spots including leprosy in man houses and garments leprosy in man depends on the dispute of our Joshua and the Rabbis for we learned if the bright spot preceded the white hair he is unclean if the reverse he is clean if the order is in doubt he is unclean our Joshua said it is as though darkened what does this Mean Rabbah said when the spot is darkened he is clean leprosy and houses this enters into the dispute of our Eliezer son of our Simeon and the rabbis for we learned our Eliezer son of our Simeon said a house never becomes unclean unless a plague spot appears the size of two beans on two stones in two walls and at the angle of the walls it must be two beans in length and one in breadth why so because the Bible refers to the walls of the house and also to the wall where is one wall as two at its angle. Leprosy in garments this depends on the dispute of our Nathan B. of Ptolemos and the rabbis for it has been taught our Nathan B. of Ptolemos said once do we know Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin that a spreading outbreak of leprosy in garments covering the whole is clean baldness of the back of the head Karahath and baldness of the front Gabahath are mentioned in connection with human leprosy and also in connection with leprosy of garments just as in the former if the plague spread over the whole. Skin he is clean so here too if it spread over the whole garment it is clean matters this refers to valuations haramim and sanctifications valuations is dependent on the dispute of our mayor and the rabbis for we learned if one dedicates the value of an infant less than a month old our mayor rules he must render its value the sages maintain his declaration is null haramim is involved in the dispute of our judah but there and the rabbis for we learned our judah but there is said unspecified haramim are for the temple use as it is written every haram devoted thing is most holy unto the lord but the sages say unspecified haramim belong to the priest as it is written but the field when it goeth out in jubilee shall be holy unto the lord as a field of haram the possession thereof shall be the priest if so what is taught by every haram is most holy unto the lord that it see the vow of haram is legally binding in respect of objects of the highest or of ordinary sanctity sanctifications this Depends on the dispute of our Eliezer B. Jacob and the rabbis for it has been taught our Eliezer B. Jacob said even a hook of hitish requires ten men for its redemption contentions refers to the water ordeal of a soda the beheading of the heifer and the purification of a leper the water ordeal of a soda is involved in the dispute of our Eliezer and our Joshua for we learned he who warns his wife against infidelity our Eliezer said he must warn her in the presence of two witnesses and can subject her to the water ordeal on the testimony of one witness or on his own our Joshua said he must warn her in the presence of two and cause her to drink on the testimony of two the beheading of the heifer this is dependent on the dispute of our Eliezer and our Akiva for we learned once was the measurement taken our Eliezer said from his SC the victim's navel our Akiva said from his nose our Eliezer B. Jacob said from the place where he becomes a murdered corpse is the neck and the purification of a leper this Depends on the dispute of our Simeon and the rabbis for we learned if he the leper lacks the thumb of the right hand the big toe of his right foot and the right ear he can never become clean our Eliezer said it see the blood and oil is put upon the place thereof and he thus fulfills the requirements of purification our Simeon said it is placed upon his corresponding left limbs and he is acquitted of his obligations within the gates this refers to the gleanings forgotten sheep and it corner of the field the gleanings even as we learned two ears that fell down are gleanings to be left for the poor three are not as to forgotten sheep two forgotten sheep are treated as forgotten i.e. must be left for the poor three are not and concerning all these bet I rule three belong to the poor four to the landowner the corner of the field this is dependent on the dispute of our Ishmael and the rabbis for it has been taught the precept of PEI the corner applies in the first instance to the standing corn if this was not done a portion of the harvest the chiefs should be given if this was omitted a part of the stack should be separated providing it has not yet been even but once even it must first be tithed and then the poor man's portion given to him on the authority of our Ishmael it was said it must be separated even from the dough three courts of law etc. Our Kahana said if he says I base my ruling on tradition and they say likewise he is not executed if he says thus it appears to use and they say thus it appears to us he is not executed how much more so if he says I base it on tradition and they say thus it appears to us he is executed only when he says thus it appears to me whilst they say we base our ruling on tradition the proof being that Akhibi of was not executed our Eliezer said even if he says I base my ruling on tradition and they say thus it appears to us he is executed that strife may not spread in Israel. And if thou arguest why was Akhibi of not executed because he did not give a rule for practical guidance we learned he stated thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught does it not mean that he said I base it on tradition and they said thus it appears to us no he said thus it appears to me and they said we base it on tradition come and hear our Josiah said three things to Zeira an inhabitant of Jerusalem tell me if the husband renounced his warnings they are null Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be two if the father and mother wish to pardon a stubborn and rebellious son they may do so and three the local Beth Din may pardon a rebellious elder if they desire it but when I went to my colleagues of the south they agreed to the first two but not to the rebellious elder that contention might not increase in Israel this is all unanswerable refutation it has been taught our Jose said originally there were not many disputes in Israel but one Beth Din of 71 members sat in the
All Israel appointing men of wisdom and humility and who were esteemed by their fellow men as local judges from their SC the local Bethdin they were promoted to the Bethdin of the Temple Mount thence to the court and thence to the Hall of Hewn Stones they sent word from there who is destined for the world to come he who is meek humble stooping on entering and on going out and a constant student of the Torah without claiming merit therefore thereupon the rabbis cast their eyes upon Arola. B. Abba is endowed with all these qualities if he returned to his town and taught again etc. Our rabbis taught he is not liable unless he himself acts upon his ruling or states his ruling to others who act thereon. Now as for stating his ruling to others who act upon it, it is well before receiving the decision of the great Beth Din he was not liable to death since he personally committed no wrong whilst now he is forflouting its authority but as for the proviso that he himself must act upon his ruling even before the decision was rendered in the hall of hewn stones he was liable to death. Now there is no difficulty if his ruling referred to forbidden fat and blood since before he was not liable to whilst now he is but if he ruled on a matter involving the death penalty at the hands of Beth Din he would have been liable to death even before before he needed a formal warning now he does not but what of a for whom no warning is required before had he stated a reason excusing or justifying his action it might have been accepted but now even if he stated a reason it would not be accepted Mishnah there is greater stringency in respect to the teachings of the scribes than in respect to the Torah thus if one rebellious elder says there is no precept of Tefillin so that a biblical law may be transgressed he is exempt but if he rules that the Tefillin must contain five compartments thus adding to the words of the scribes he is liable Gemara R. Eliezer said in our Ashai's name he is liable only for a matter of which the fundamental law is biblical whilst its interpretation is of the scribes and in which there is room for addition which addition however is the equivalent of subtraction now the only precept fulfilling these conditions is that of Tefillin now the statement was made according to our Judah but is there not the Lulab the fundamental law of which is biblical the interpretation rabbinical there being room for addition which Addition amounts to subtraction. Now, what is our opinion if we hold that the lulav need not be bound with the other two species? Each stands apart. Whilst if we maintain that the lulav needs binding, it is defective from the very outset. But is there not the law of fringes, the basic precept of which is biblical? The interpretation rabbinical. There is room for addition. Whilst such addition amounts to subtraction, what is our opinion if we maintain that the upper knot is not required by biblical law? They are separate from each other. Whilst if we hold Talmud, Mas and Hedron, it necessary it is defective from the very outset. If so, in the case of Tefillin, too, if one first made four compartments for the four inscriptions and then a fifth was placed at their side, each stands separately. Whilst if one made five compartments, it is defective from the very outset. For our Zara said, if one compartment is open to the next, it is unfit. This must be taught only in the case of one who made a frontlet. Of four compartments and then added a fifth thereto and joined it by this addition, the original is impaired, even as Rabbah said, if the outer compartment does not look upon space, it is invalid. Mishnah, he the rebellious elder was executed neither by his local Bethdin nor by the Bethdin at Jabna, but was taken to the great Bethdin in Jerusalem and kept there until the next festival and executed thereon, for it is written, and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. This is our Akiva's opinion, our Judah said his judgment must not be delayed, but he is executed immediately whilst proclamations are indicted and sent by messengers to all place so and so has been sentenced to death at Bethdin Gamara. Our rabbis taught he was executed neither by his local Bethdin nor by the Bethdin at Jabna, but taken to the great Bethdin in Jerusalem and kept there until the next festival and executed thereon, for it is written, and all the people shall hear and fear. This is our Akiba's opinion, but our Judah said to him, Is it then stated, shall see and fear only shall hear and fear is stated, why then delay his sentence? But he is executed immediately, and a proclamation is written and sent to all places, so and so has been sentenced to death at Beth Din. Our rabbis taught public announcements must be made for four malefactors, a the stubborn and rebellious son, a rebellious elder, and witnesses who were proved so memem. In the case of all others, it is written, and all the people or and all Israel, but in the case of witnesses proved so memem, it is written, and those which remain shall hear and fear, since not all are eligible to be witnesses. Mission of false prophet, he who prophesies what he has not heard or what was not told to him is executed by man, but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet or a prophet who transgresses his own word, his death is at the hands of heaven, for it is written, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will. Not hearken unto my words which the prophet shall speak in my name I will require it of him he who prophesies in the name of an idol saying thus hath the idol declared even if he chanced upon the right halacha declaring the unclean unclean or the clean clean or he who was intimate with a married woman after her entry into her husband's home for any su and though the marriage was not consummated he is strangled likewise witnesses proved Zomemim in a charge of adultery against the priests. Daughter and her paramour are strangled for all Zomemim are led forth to meet the self-same death which they sought to impose save Zomemim in a charge against the priests. Daughter and her paramour Gemara are rabbis taught three are slain by man and three by heaven he who prophesies what he has not heard or what has not been told him and he who prophesies in the name of an idol are slain by man but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet and a prophet who Transgresses his own words are slain by heaven. Whence do we know all this? Rab Judah said in Rab's name from the verse, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, this applies to one who prophesies what he has not heard, which I have not commanded him to speak, implying, but which I did command his neighbor. Hence means one who prophesies what was not told to him personally, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. This connotes prophesying in the name of idols, and then it is written, even that prophet shall die, and by every unspecified death sentence decreed in the Torah, strangulation is meant, but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet, or a prophet who transgresses his own words is slain by heaven, for it is written, all it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken Yishma. Now this may be understood as implying to proclaim and hear kenning himself unto my words, and the verse concludes, I will require it of him, i.e. he shall be. Slain by heaven, he who prophesies what he has not heard, e.g. Zedekiah the son of Chinana, as it is written, and Zedekiah the son of Chinana had made him horns of iron. But what else could he have done, seeing that the spirit of Naboth had deceived him? It is written, and the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramathilead? And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And he, the Lord said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Also go forth and do so. Rab Judah said, What is meant by go forth? Go forth from my precincts. What spirit is meant? Are you said the spirit of Naboth the Jezreelite? He should have scrutinized the forecasts of the assembled prophets, even as our Isaac said, Is the same communication is revealed to many prophets, yet no two prophets prophecy in the identical phraseology. Thus Obadiah said, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, whilst Jeremiah said, Thy terribleness hath deceived thee. And the pride of thine heart, but since all these prophets employed exactly the same expression, it proved that they had nothing really divinely inspired. But perhaps he did not know of this criterion laid down by our Isaac. Jehoshaphat was there and warned them thereof, as it is written. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? Thereupon he have exclaimed, But behold, all these I have a tradition from my grandfather's house that the same communication is revealed to many prophets, but no two prophesy in the identical phraseology. Replied Jehoshaphat, He who prophesies what was not told him, e.g. Hanani the son of Ezra. Now Jeremiah stood in the upper marketplace and said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam. Thereupon Hanani the son of Ezra drew in a minority conclusion of Elam, which only came to assist Babylon. Yet the Holy One blessed be. He said, Behold, I will break the law of Elam. Then how much more so? The Chaldeans, i.e., Babylonians themselves, so he went to the lower marketplace and proclaimed, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the kingdom of Babylon, our Papa asked Abbe, but this was not told even to his colleagues, Viz Jeremiah. He answered, Since the minority reasoning has been given for biblical exegesis, it is as though it had been told to him, Jeremiah, hence only to Hanani was it not revealed, he who
repented thereof had they repented all prophets would have been informed but in the case of Jonah they did repent yet Jonah himself was not informed Jonah was originally told that Nineveh would be turned but did not know whether for good or for evil he who disregards the words of a prophet but how does he know that he is a true prophet that he should be punished if he gives him a sign but Micah did not give a sign yet he i.e. his colleague was punished if he was well established as a prophet it is different for should you not admit this how could Isaac listen to Abraham at Mount Moriah or the people hearken to Elijah at Mount Carmel and sacrifice without the temple hence the case where the prophet is well established is different and it came to pass after these words that God did tempt Abraham what is meant by after Aryohan and said on the authority of Arhose Bezimmer after the words of Satan as it is written and the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great Feast the same day that Isaac was weaned thereupon Satan said to the Almighty Sovereign of the universe to this old man thou didst graciously vouchsafe the fruit of the womb at the age of a hundred yet of all that banquet which he prepared he did not have one turtle dove or pigeon to sacrifice before thee hath he done up but in honor of his son replied he and were I to say to him sacrifice thy son before me he would do so without hesitation straightway God did tempt Abraham and he said take I pray thee and a thy son are Simeon be Abba said and a can only denote entreaty this may be compared to a king of flesh and blood who was confronted by many wars which he won by the aid of a great warrior subsequently he was faced with a severe battle thereupon he said to him I pray thee assist me in battle that people may not say there was no reality in the earlier one so also did the Holy One bless be he say unto Abraham I have tested thee with many trials and thou didst withstand all. Now be firm for my sake in this trial that men may not say there was no reality in the earlier ones thy son but I have two sons thy only one each is the only one of his mother whom thou lovest I love them both Isaac and why all this circumlocution that his mind should not reel under the sudden shock on the way Satan came towards him and said to him if we assay to commune with thee wilt thou be grieved behold thou hast instructed many and thou hast strengthened the weak hands thy words have upholden him that was falling and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees but now it is come upon thee and thou faintest he replied I will walk in mine integrity but said Satan to him should not thy fear be thy confidence remember he retorted I pray thee whoever perished being innocent seeing that he would not listen to him he said to him now a thing was secretly brought to me thus have I heard from behind the curtain the lamb for a burnt offering but not Isaac for a burnt Offering he replied it is the penalty of a liar that should he even tell the truth he is not listened to our Levi said in explanation of after these words after Ishmael's words to Isaac Ishmael said to Isaac I am more virtuous than thee in good deeds for thou wast circumcised at eight days and so couldst not prevent it but I had thirteen years on account of one lamutes thou incense me he replied were the holy one blessed be he to say unto me sacrifice thyself before me I would obey. Straightway God did tempt Abraham a rabbis taught a prophet who seduced people to idolatry is stoned our Simeon said he is strangled the seducers of a seduced city are stoned our Simeon said they are strangled the prophet who seduced is stoned what is the reason of the rabbi's similarity of law is learned from the employment of seduction here and in the case of a just as their execution is by stoning so here too but our Simeon maintained simple death is provided for in this case and by Every unspecified death sentence in the Torah strangulation is meant the seducers of a seduced city are executed by stoning what is the reason of the rabbi's similarity of laws learned from the employment of seduction here and in the case of either a or a prophet who seduced but our Simeon maintained similarity of laws learned from the employment of seduction here and in the case of a prophet who seduced but let us rather deduce it from a an analogy is drawn between two who incite a multitude and not between one who incites a multitude and another who seduces an individual on the contrary should not an analogy be drawn between two laymen rather than between a layman and a prophet our Simeon maintained since he seduced no man is more of a layman than he or his das Talmud, ma Sanhedrin they differ only in respect of one who uproots the fundamental prohibition of idolatry or who partially confirms and partially annuls the prohibition of idolatry since the divine law said to seduce thee from in the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in implying even part of the way but if one a false prophet fundamentally uproots any other precept all agree that he is strangled whilst if he partially annuls and partially confirms any other precept all agree that he is exempt our ham objected it has been taught because he hath spoken to seduce thee from the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk this refers to positive commands there in botan negative commands but should you say that this refers to idolatry how is a positive command conceivable in respect of idolatry are his da explained it as referring to and ye shall overthrow their altars our ham said they differ in respect of one who uproots the fundamental injunction whether of idolatry or other precepts or who partially annuls and partially confirms the prohibition of idolatry since the Torah said from the way implying even part of the way but if he Partly confirms and partly annuls any other precept all agree that he is exempt our rabbis taught if one prophesies so as to eradicate a law of the Torah he is liable to death partially to confirm and partially to annul it our Simeon exempts him but as for idolatry even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow all declare him liable now Abbe agrees with our Hista and reconciles this with him Rabbah holds with our Hamna and explains it according to his views Abbe agrees with our Hista and reconciles it with him thus if one prophesies so as to uproot a law of the Torah all agree that he is strangled partially to confirm and partially to annul it our Simeon exempts him and the rabbis likewise but as for idolatry even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow he is liable each according to his views Rabbah holds with our Hamna and explains it according to his opinion if one prophesies to uproot an injunction of the Torah whether idolatry or any other precept he is Liable each according to his views partially to confirm and partially to annul it our Simeon declares him exempt and also the rabbis but as for idolatry even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow he is liable each according to his views our said in our Yohanan's name in every matter if a prophet tells you to transgress the commands of the Torah obey him with the exception of idolatry should he even cause the sun to stand still in the middle of the heavens for you as proof of divine inspiration do not hearken to him it has been taught our Jose the Galilean said the Torah understood the extreme depths of depravity inherent in idolatry therefore the Torah gave him the false prophet power therein that should he even cause the sun to stand still in the middle of the heavens thou must not hearken to him or Akiba said God forbid that the Almighty should cause the sun to stand still at the behest of those who transgressed his will but the Torah refers to one as Hanani the son of Ezra who was originally a true prophet and only subsequently became a false prophet likewise witnesses proved Zomemim in an accusation of adultery against the priest's daughter and her paramour whence do we know this Arab the son of Araka said for it has been taught our Jose said why does scripture state then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother for all falsified witnesses spoken of in the Torah the Zomemim and the paramours are assimilated to them but in the case of a priest's daughter she profaneth teaches she is executed by burning but not her paramour hence I do not know whether the Zomemim are likened to him or to her but when the writ says to have done unto his brother it teaches to his brother but not to his sister chapter 11 mission all Israel have a portion in the world to come for it is written that people are all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified but the following have no portion therein he who maintains that resurrection is not a biblical doctrine the Torah was not divinely revealed and in Epicoros are added one who reads uncanonical books also one who whispers a charm over a wound and says I will bring none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that he left the Abyssal says also one who pronounces the divine name as it is spelled three kings and four commoners have no portion in the world to come the three kings are Jeroboam Ahab and Manasseh are Judah said Manasseh hath a portion therein for it is written and he prayed unto him and was entreated of him and he hearkened to his supplication and they restored him to Jerusalem to his kingdom they the sages answered him they restored him to his kingdom but not to his portion in the world to come four commoners viz Balaam Doe Jehadavel and Gehazi Gamara and why such severity attended taught since he denied the resurrection of the dead therefore he shall not share in that resurrection for in all the measures of punishment or reward taken by the holy one blessed be he the divine act befits a human deed as
means to one like Aaron just as Aaron was a Haber so his sons must be Habramar Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name whence do we know that Teramah must not be given to a priest and Amhiras from the verse moreover he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the Levites that they might hold fast to the law of the Lord thus whoever holds fast to the law of the Lord has a portion whoever does not has no portion Arahabi Ada said in Rab Judah's name one who gives Teramah to an ignorant priest is as though he had placed it before a lion just as a lion may possibly tear his prey and eat it and possibly not so is an ignorant priest he may possibly eat it undefiled and possibly defiled are Yohanan said he even causes his SC the ignorant priest's death for it is written and die therefore if they profane at the school of our Eliezer be Jacob taught he also embroils him in a sin of general trespass for it is written or suffer them to bear the iniquity of Trespass when they eat their holy things it has been taught our semi said whence do we learn resurrection from the Torah from the verse and I also have established my covenant with them as see the patriarchs to give them the land of Canaan to give you is not said but to give them personally thus resurrection is proved from the Torah Nemon exedek gambishem cam sectarians minim asked Rabban Gamaliel whence do we know that the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect the dead he answered them from the Torah the prophets and the hagiographer yet they did not accept it as conclusive proof from the Torah for it is written and the Lord said unto Moses behold thou shalt sleep with thy fathers and rise up again but perhaps said they to him the verse reads and the people will rise up from the prophets as it is written thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise awake and sing yet dwell in the dust for thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out its dead, but perhaps this refers to the dead whom Ezekiel resurrected from the hagiographer as it is written, and the roof of thy mouth like the best wine of my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. But perhaps it means merely that their lips will move, even as our Yohanan said, if a is said in any person's name in this world, his lips speak in the grave, as it is written, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. Thus he did not satisfy them until he quoted this verse, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give to them, not to you, but to them. Is said, hence resurrection is derived from the Torah. Others say that he proved it from this verse, but yet it did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive. Every one of you this day, just as you are all alive today, so shall you all live again in the world to come. The Romans ask our Joshua Behan and I, whence do we know that the Holy One blessed he will resurrect the dead and Knows the future, he replied, both are deduced from this verse, and the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers and rise up again, and this people shall go a whoring, etc. But perhaps will rise up and go a whoring. He replied, Then at least you have the answer to half is that he knows the future. It has been stated likewise, or you had and said on the authority of our Simeon Bioh, whence do we know that the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect the dead and know the future from? Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers and rise again, etc. It has been taught our Eliezer, son of our Jose, said in this matter, I refuted the books of the sectarians who maintain that resurrection is not deducible from the Torah. I said to them, You have falsified your Torah, yet it has availed you nothing for you maintain that resurrection is not a biblical doctrine, but it is written because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment that soul shall utterly be cut off. And Hikrath Tikrath his iniquity shall be upon him now seeing that he shall utterly be cut off in this world when shall his iniquity be upon him surely in the next world our Papa said to Abbe could he not have deduced both this world and the next from he shall be utterly cut off they would have replied the Torah employed human phraseology this is disputed by Tanaim that soul shall utterly be cut off Hikrath he shall be cut off in this world and Tikrath in the next this is our Akibah's view our Ishmael said but the verse has previously stated he reproached the Lord and that soul shall be cut off are there than three worlds but interpret thus and that soul shall be cut off in this world Hikrath he is to be cut off in the next whilst as for the repetition Tikrath that is because the Torah employs human phraseology how do both our Ishmael and our Akibah utilize his iniquity shall be upon him for that which has been taught I might think that this is so even if he Repented therefore scripture saith his iniquity is upon him I decreed that he shall be cut off only if his iniquity is still in him Queen Cleopatra asked our mayor I know that the dead will revive for it is written and they see the righteous shall in the distant future blossom forth out of the city Jerusalem like the grass of the earth but when they arise shall they arise nude or in their garments he replied thou mayest deduce by an afortiori argument the answer from a weak grain of a grain of wheat which is buried naked sprout forth in many robes how much more so the righteous who are buried in their raiment an emperor said to Rabbi Gamaliel you maintain that the dead will revive but they turn to dust and can dust come to life Talmud Moss and Hedron thereupon his the emperor's daughter said to him the rabbi let me answer him in our town there are two potters one fashions his products from water and the other from clay who is the more praiseworthy he who fashions them from water he replied if he can fashion man from water surely he can do so from clay the school of our Ishmael taught it can be deduced from glassware if glassware which though made by the breath of human beings can yet be repaired when broken then how much more so man created by the breath of the holy one blessed be he a sectarian men said to our I maintain that the dead will revive but they turn to dust and can dust come to life he replied I will tell thee a parable this may be compared to a human king who commanded his servants to build him a great palace in a place where there was no water or earth for making bricks so they went and built it but after some time it collapsed so he commanded them to rebuild it in a place where water and earth was to be found but they replied we cannot thereupon he became angry with them and said if you could build in a place containing no water or earth surely yet and where there is yet continued RMI if thou dost not believe go forth into the field and see a mouse which today is but part flesh and part dust and yet by tomorrow has developed and become all flesh and shoots thou say that takes a long time go up to the mountains where thou wilt see but one snail whilst by tomorrow the rain has descended and it is covered with snails a sectarian men said to give habib assis woe to you ye wicked who maintain that the dead will revive if even the living die shall the dead live he replied woe to you ye wicked who maintain that the dead will not revive if what was not now live surely what has lived will live again thou hast called me wicked said he if i stood up i could kick thee and strip thee of thy hump if thou couldst do that he retorted thou wouldst be called a great doctor and command large fees our rabbis taught on the 24th of nisan the revenue farmers were removed from judah and jerusalem for when the africans came to plead against the jews before alexander of macedon they said Canaan. Belongs to us as it is written the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof and Canaan was the ancestor of these people i.e. ourselves thereupon Gabi Habibis is said to the sages authorize me to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedon should they defeat me then say ye have defeated but an ignorant man of us whilst if I defeat them then say to them thus the law of Moses has defeated you so they authorized him and he went and pleaded against them whence do ye this your proof? Asked he from the Torah they replied I too said he will bring you proof only from the Torah for it is written and he said curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren now if a slave acquires property to whom does he belong and whose is the property moreover it is now many years that ye have not served us then Alexander said to them answer him give us three days time they pleaded so he gave them a respite they sought but found no answer immediately thereon they fled leaving behind their sown fields and their planted vineyards and that year was a sabbatical year on another occasion the Egyptians came in a lawsuit against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon they pleaded thus is it not written and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and they lent them gold and precious stones etc then returned us the gold and silver which ye took thereupon Gabi Habibis is said to the sages give me permission to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedon should they defeat me then say ye have merely defeated an ignorant man amongst us whilst if I defeat them then say the law of Moses has defeated you so they gave him permission and he went and pleaded against them once do ye have this your proof asked he from the Torah they replied then I too said he will bring you proof only from the Torah for it is written now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years pay us for the Toil of six hundred thousand men whom he enslaved for four hundred thirty years. Then King Alexander said to them, Answer him, give us three days time. They begged
On hallowed arts Anton Inu said to Rabbi the body and the soul can both free themselves from judgment thus the body can plead the soul has sinned the proof being that from the day it left me I lie like a dumb stone in the grave powerless to do what whilst the soul can say the body has sinned the proof being that from the day I departed from it I fly about in the air like a bird and commit no sin he replied I will tell thee a parable to what may this be compared to a human king who owned a beautiful orchard which contained Talmud, Moss and Hedron be splendid figs now he appointed two watchmen therein one lame and the other blind one day the lame man said to the blind I see beautiful figs in the orchard come and take me upon thy shoulder that we may procure and eat them so the lame best rode the blind procured and ate them some time after the owner of the orchard came and inquired of them where are those beautiful figs the lame man replied have I then feet to walk with thee blind man replied have I then eyes to see with what did he do he placed the lame upon the blind and judged them together so will the holy one blessed be he bring the soul replace it in the body and judge them together as it is written he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people he shall call to the heavens from above this refers to the soul and to the earth that he may judge his people to the body Anthony knew said to rabbi why does the sun rise in it East and set in the west he replied where it reversed thou wouldst ask the same question this is my question said he why set in the west he answered in order to salute its maker as it is written and the host of the heavens make obeisance to thee then said he to him it should go only as far as mid heaven pay homage and then reascend on account of the workers and wayfarers Antony news also said to rabbi when is the soul placed in man as soon as it is decreed that the sperm shall be male or female etc or when the embryo is actually formed he replied from the moment of formation he objected can a piece of meat be unsalted for three days without becoming putrid but it must be from the moment that god decrees its destiny rabbi said this thing Antony news taught me and scripture supports him for it is written and thy decree hath preserved my spirit i.e my soul Antony news also inquired of rabbi from what time does the evil tempter hold sway over man from the formation of the embryo or from its issuing forth into the light of the world from the formation he replied if so he objected it would rebel in its mother's womb and go forth but it is from when it issues rabbi said this thing Antony news taught me and scripture supports him for it is said at the door where the babe emerges in in wait rush like it should two verses to each other it is written i will gather them with the blind and the lame the woman with child and her that traveleth with child together whilst it is also written then shall the lame man leap as in heart and the tongue of the dumb sing for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert how so they shall rise with their defects and then be healed Allah opposed two verses it is written he will destroy death forever and the lord god will wipe away tears from all faces whilst elsewhere it is written for the child shall die in hundred years old there shall be no more than an infant of days it is no difficulty the one refers to Jews the other to heathens but what business have heathens there the references to those of whom it is written and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the alien shall be your plumbing and your vine dressers are his dog post two verses it is written and the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the lord of hosts shall reign whilst elsewhere it is written moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days it is no difficulty the latter refers to the messianic era the former to the world to come and according to Samuel who maintained this world differs from the messianic era only in respect of the servitude of the diaspora it is still no difficulty the latter refers to the camp of the righteous the former to the camp of the divine presence Rabbah post two verses it is written I kill and I make alive whilst it is also written I Wound and I heal the Holy One, blessed be he said what I slay I resurrect I in the same state and then what I wound I heal after their revival our rabbis taught I kill and I make alive I might interpret I kill one person and give life to another as the world goes on therefore the writ states I wound and I heal just as the wounding and healing obviously refer to the same person so putting to death and bringing to life refer to the same person this refutes those who maintain that resurrection is not intimated in the Torah it has been taught our Meir said once do we know resurrection from the Torah from the verse then shall Moses and the children of Israel sing the song unto the Lord not saying but shall sing is written thus resurrection is taught in the Torah likewise thou readest then shall Joshua build an altar unto the Lord God of Israel not built but shall build is written thus resurrection is intimated in the Torah if so then did Solomon build an high place for Kemosh the abomination of Moab does that to mean that he shall build but there the writ regards him as though he had built our Joshua believe I said whence is resurrection derived from the Torah from the verse blessed are they that dwell in thy house they shall ever praise thee seal and not praise thee but they shall praise thee as stated thus resurrection is taught in the Torah our Joshua believe I also said whoever utter a song of praise to God in this world shall be privileged to do so in the next world too as it is written blessed are they that dwell in thy house they shall ever praise thee seal our high be Abba said in our Yohanan's name whence do we learn resurrection from the Torah from the verse thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing not sang but shall sing is written thus resurrection is derived from the Torah Rab Judah said in Rab's name whoever withhold the halacha from his disciple is as though he had robbed him of his ancestral heritage. As it is written Moses commanded us a law even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob it is an inheritance destined for all Israel from the six days of creation our hand of be business said in the name of our Simeon the pious whoever withholds a halacha from a disciple even the embryo in its mother's womb curses him as it is written he that withholdeth bar corn yakabo leom talmud mas and hedron leom can only mean embryo as it is written and one leom shall be stronger than the other people and yakabo can only denote cursing as it is written how shall I curse a whom God hath not cursed and bar can refer to nothing but the Torah as it is written nourish yourselves bar on the Torah lest he be angry will be Ishmael said he is riddled with holes like a sieve here is written the people yakabo whilst elsewhere is written wa yakab and he bored a hole in the lid of it Abbe said like a fuller's trough but if he teaches him what is his reward Rabbi said in the name. Of our sheets, he will receive blessings like Joseph says it is written, but blessing shall be upon the head of Mishpur him who selleth it. Mishpur can only refer to Joseph as it is said, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and it was he Hamishpur that sold to all the people of the land. Our sheets hate said, Whoever teaches the Torah in this world will be privileged to teach it in the next, as it is written, and he that watereth shall water again to Rabbah said whence is resurrection derived from. The Torah from the verse let Reuben live and not die, meaning let Reuben live in this world and not die in the next Rabbah said it is derived from this verse, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Our Ashi said from this verse, but go thou thy way till the end before thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Our Eliezer said, Every leader who leads the community with mildness will be. Privileged to lead them in the next world too as it is written for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them our Eliezer also said great is knowledge since it was placed between two letters as it is written for a God of knowledge is the Lord our Eliezer also said great is the sanctuary since it was placed between two letters as it is written thou hast made for the O Lord a sanctuary O Lord thy hands have established it our Adekarina demurred if so then great is vengeance since it was placed between two letters as it is written O God of vengeance O Lord O God of vengeance manifest thyself he replied for its purposes it is so indeed even as Ola said why these two manifestations one as a measure of reward for the righteous and the other as a measure of punishment for the wicked our Eliezer also said whenever one has knowledge it is as though the temple was built in his days since each sc knowledge and the temple was placed between Two letters are Eliezer also said whoever has knowledge will eventually be wealthy as it is written and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches are Eliezer also said whosoever lacks knowledge one may have no mercy upon him as it is written for it is a people of no understanding therefore he that made them will not have mercy upon them and he that formed them will show them no favor are Eliezer also said whoever gives of his bread to one who lacks knowledge will be assailed by suffering as it is written they that eat thy bread have laid Mazur a wound under thee there is no understanding in him Mazur can refer only to suffering as it is written when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his Mazur is suffering are Eliezer
Meaning it is no difficulty in the latter case a whole loaf is left there with i.e. with the pieces but in the former there is no whole loaf left there with Rla's are also said whoever dissembles in his speeches as though he had engaged in idolatry here it is written and I shall seem to him as a deceiver and elsewhere it is said they are vanity and the work of deceivers Rla's are also said whoever gazes upon one shame his virility shall be empty for it is written shame shall empty thy body. Strength Rla's are also said be always humble so shalt thou endure our Zara said we have learned likewise the windows of a dark house may not be open to examine its leprosy this proves it our Tavi said in our Josia's name what is meant by the grave and the barren womb and the earth that is not filled by water now what connection has the grave with the womb but it is to teach thee just as the womb receives and brings forth so does the grave to receive and bring forth now does this not furnish us. Within a fortiori argument if the womb which receives in silence yet brings forth amid great cries of jubilation and the grave which receives the dead amid cries of grief will much more so bring them forth amid great cries of joy this refutes those who maintain that resurrection is not intimated in the Torah the Tanah Debeliah who states the righteous whom the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect will not revert to dust for it is said and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem just as the Holy One endures forever so shall they endure forever Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be and should you ask in those years during which the Almighty will renew his world as it is written and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day what will the righteous do the Lord will make them wings like eagles and they will fly above the water as it is written therefore we will not fear when the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea and should you imagine that they will suffer pain therefore scripture saith but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint but should we not deduce the reverse from the dead whom Ezekiel resurrected he accepts the view that in the truth the story of the resurrection of the dry bones was but a parable for it was taught our Eliezer said the dead whom Ezekiel resurrected stood up uttered song and immediately died what song did they utter the Lord slayeth in righteousness and reviveth in mercy our Joshua said they sang us the Lord killeth and make the live he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up our Judah said it was truth it was a parable our Nehemiah said to him if truth why a parable and if a parable why truth but save us in the truth there was but a parable our Eliezer the son of our Jose the Galilean said the dead whom Ezekiel revived went up to Palestine married wives and begot sons and daughters are Judah be but there arose up and said I am one of their descendants and these are the Tephilim which my grandfather left me as an heirloom from them now who were they whom Ezekiel revived Rab said they were the Ephraimites who counted the years to the end of the Egyptian bondage but heard therein as it is written and the sons of Ephraim shall the end. Bared his son and Tahad his son and Elad his son and Tahad his son and Zabad his son and Shabbat his son and Ezra and Elid whom the men of Gath that were born in that land slew and it is written and Ephraim their father mourned many days and his brethren came to comfort him Samuel said they were those who denied resurrection as it is written and he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel behold they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off. For our parts are Jeremiah B. Abba said they were the men who lacked the vitalizing sap of good deeds as it is written O ye dry bones had the word of the Lord our Isaac Napaha said they were the men who covered the whole temple with abominations and creeping things as it is written so I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about whilst there in the case of the dry bones it is written and caused me to pass by them round about Aryohanan said they were the dead of the plain of Dura Aryohanan also said the plain of Dura extends from the river Eshel to Rabbath amongst the Israelites whom Nebuchadnezzar drove into exile there were young men who shamed the sun by their beauty the Chaldean women looking upon them were inflamed with passion their husbands being informed thereof reported it to the king who ordered the execution of these exiles yet they still burned with Desired so by royal command they were trampled out of recognition our rabbis taught when the wicked Nebuchadnezzar threw Hanani missile and Ezariah into the fiery furnace the Holy One blessed be he said to Ezekiel go and resurrect the dead in the plain of Dura this being done the bones came and smote the wicked man upon his face what kind of bones are these he exclaimed they his courtiers answered him their companion is resurrecting the dead in the plain of Dura thereupon he broke into utterance how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation our Isaac said may molten gold be poured into the mouth of that wicked man as seen Nebuchadnezzar had not an angel come and struck him upon his mouth he would have eclipsed all the songs and praises uttered by David in the book of Psalms our rabbis taught six miracles were wrought on that day as the furnace floated upward to its walls partly fell in three its foundations crumbled with the heat for the image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up to be worshipped was overthrown upon its face before royal sweets were burned six Ezekiel resurrected the dead in the valley of Dura all these are known by tradition but that pertaining to the four royal sweets is scriptural for it is written then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes the governors and the captains the judges the treasurers the counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image etc and it is further written there are certain Jews served not thy God etc also and the princes governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whom the fire had no power the school of our Eliezer B. Jacob taught even in times of danger one should not lay aside his insignia of office for it is written then these men were bound in their coats their hosen and their Hats and their other garments, etc. Are you said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the righteous are greater than the ministering angels, for it is said he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God, our Tanham Behanala said when Hanani Missal and Ezra emerged unscathed from the fiery furnace, all the nations of the world came and smote the enemies of Israel upon their faces, saying to them, Ye have such a God, yet ye worship an image immediately that the apostate Jews opened their mouths and confessed, O Lord righteousness, spelling death unto thee, but unto us shamefacedness as at this day our Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name, What is meant by I said I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the boughs thereof, I said I will go up to the palm tree, etc. This refers to Israel, but now I grasp but the one bow of Hanani Missal and Ezra are Yohanan said, What is meant by I saw? By night and behold a man riding upon a red horse and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom etc. What means I saw by night the Holy One blessed be he wished to turn the whole world into night but behold a man riding man can refer to none but the Holy One blessed be he as it is written the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name upon a red horse the Holy One blessed be he wished to turn the whole world to blood but as soon as he looked upon Hanani Missal and Ezra his anger was appeased for it is written and he stood among Hadassim the myrtle trees that were in the deep now Hadassim refers but to the righteous as it is written and he brought up Hadassah and deep refers to Babylon as it is said that saith to the deep be dry and I will dry up thy river straightway he who was filled with wrath was partially calmed and then completely pacified our Papa said this shows that a white horse is a favorable omen in a dream whither did the rabbis go rap said they Died through an evil eye Samuel said they drowned in the spittle Aryohan and said they went up to Palestine married and begot sons and daughters this is as a dispute of Tanaim our Eliezer said they died through an evil eye our Joshua said they drowned in the spittle the sages said they went up to Palestine married and begot sons and daughters as it is written here now O Joshua the high priest and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wondered and now for which men was a wonder. Rod Hanani missile and Ezra whither had Daniel gone rap said to dig a great spring at Tiberias Samuel said to procure animal fodder Aryohan and said to obtain pigs from Alexandria of Egypt but that is not so for we learned that the others the doctor said no cow or pig leaves Alexandria of Egypt without its uterus being cut out to prevent reproduction she procured small ones to which they paid no attention our rabbis taught three were involved in that conspiracy to keep Daniel out of it. Furnace the Holy One blessed be he Daniel and Nebuchadn
referred them to him who told this to you, asked he of them the Holy One, blessed be he replied, they, but I have inquired of Hanani Missal and Ezra, who informed me that it is forbidden, they answered we to our prophets, just as he to him, he did not say it, but to us, then I desire that ye be tested, just as Hanani Missal and Ezra were he retorted, but they are three, whilst we are only two, they protested, then choose whom ye wish to accompany you, said he, Joshua the high priest, they answered. Thinking let Joshua be brought for his merit is great that he may protect us, so he was brought and they were all thrown into the furnace, they were burned, but as to Joshua the high priest, only his garments were singed for it is said, and he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and it is written, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, etc. Thus said he to him, I know that thou art righteous, but why should the fire have affected thee even? Slightly Hanan I and Ezra were not affected at all, they were three, said he, but I am only one, but he remonstrated Abraham, who was only one, no wicked were with him, so the fire was not empowered to do any harm, but here I had wicked men with me, so the fire was unable to do its work, he rejoined us, people say, if there are two dry billets and one wet one, the former burned the latter, now why was he thus punished, our papa said, because his sons married wives unfit for the priesthood. And he did not protest as it is said now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments now surely it was not his want to wear filthy garments but this intimates that his sons married women unfit for the priesthood and he did not forbid them or tenham said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris what is meant by these six of barley gave he to me what are six of barley shall we say it is meant literally but was it Boaz's practice to give only six barley grains Talmud, Moss and Hedron be but if it means six. Seahs can a woman take six Seahs but he symbolically intimated to her by giving her six barley grains that six sons were destined to come forth from her who should each be blessed with six blessings with David Messiah Daniel Hanani Missal and Ezra David for it is written and answered one of the servants and said behold I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and understanding in matters and a comely person and it. Lord is with him and Rab Judah said in Rab's name this whole verse was said by Dog with nothing but evil intent thus that is cunning in playing skillful in asking questions of law mighty valiant men and adept in answering them a man of war well versed in the battle of the Torah understanding in matters understanding how to deduce one thing from another and a comely person who sustains his ruling by weighty reasons and the Lord is with him everywhere the Halacha is determined in accordance with his views with respect to all he replied my son Jonathan is equally so but when he said and the Lord is with him a privilege which even he himself did not enjoy he felt humiliated and envied him for in the case of Saul it is written and whithersoever he turned about he vexed them whereas of David it is said and whithersoever he turned about he prospered whence do we know that this was Dog here is written and answered one of the servants implying one distinguished from it. Other young men, whilst elsewhere it is written, now a man of the servants of Saul was there that they detained before the Lord, and his name was Dogan Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul the Messiah, as it is written, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding. W. A. Harriho, in the fear of the Lord, our Alexandria said. This teaches that he loaded him with good deeds and suffering as a mill is laden. Rabbah said, He smells a man and judges as it is written, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, yet with righteousness shall he judge the poor barcos of a rain two and a half years, and then said to the rabbis, I am the Messiah, the answer of Messiah, it is written that he smells and judges, let us see whether he barcos of a can do so when they saw that he was unable to judge by the scent they slew him Daniel had an eye missile and Ezra as it is written of them in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans what is meant by in whom there was no blemish Arhamba Behanada said they did not even bear the scar made by bleeding what is the meaning of and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace Arhamba Behanada said this teaches that they restrained themselves from levity conversation and sleep and suppressed the call of nature out of royal respect now among these were of the children of Judah Daniel had an eye missile and Ezra R. Eliezer said they were all of the children of Judah but our Samuel bin Amani said Daniel was of the tribe of Judah whilst had an eye missile and Ezra were of the other tribes and of thy sons which Shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget shall they take away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon what is meant by eunuchs Rab said literally eunuchs are Hanan said in their days the idols were sterilized now according to the opinion that the idols were sterilized in their days it is well to state and there is no hurt in them but on the view that eunuchs is literally meant what is meant by and there is no hurt in them no hurt of fire but is it not written nor the smell of fire had passed on them they were neither hurt by the fire nor even smell thereof now according to the opinion that the idols were sterilized in their days it is well to write for thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my sabbaths but on the view that eunuchs is literally meant would scripture recount the shame of the righteous there were both among them now the literal rendering is in conformity with the verse even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls. A place and a name better than of sons and of daughters, but on the view that the idols were sterilized in their days, why state better than of sons and of daughters are nom and be Isaac answered better than the children whom they had formerly possessed, but had died what is meant by I shall give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off our tenham said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris this alludes to the book of Daniel which was named after him. Now let us consider the whole subject. The matter of the book of Ezra was narrated by Nehemiah the son of Hashali. Why then was the book not called by his name our Jeremiah B. Abba said because he claimed merit for himself as it is written, Think upon me, my God, for good, but did not David say likewise, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, O visit me with thy salvation. David merely supplicated in prayer our Joseph said because he spoke disparagingly of his predecessors as it is written, but the former. Governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver etc. Moreover he spoke thus even of Daniel who was greater than he and whence do we know that Daniel was greater than he from the verse and I Daniel alone saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves for the men that were with me saw not the vision now who were these men are. Jeremiah others say are high Abbas said Haggai Isaac Arya and Malachi Talmud, Moss and Hedron that they were greater than he in one respect and he was superior to them in another thus they were greater than he since they were prophets whilst he was not he on the other hand was superior to them since he saw the vision which they did not but since they did not see it why were they terrified though they themselves saw nothing their guardian angel did see it Robin said this proves that when one is terrified and knows not why though he has not seen anything his guardian angel has what shall he do to dissipate his fears let him leap four cubits from his place alternatively let him read the Shema but if he is standing in an unclean place where the Shema may not be recited let him say thus the butcher's goat is fatter than I of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end our tenham said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris why is every mem in the middle of a word open whilst this is closed the Holy One blessed be he wished to appoint Hezekiah as the Messiah and Sennacherib as Gog and Magog whereupon the attribute of justice said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe if thou didst not make David the Messiah who uttered so many hymns and psalms before thee wilt thou appoint Hezekiah as such who did not him thee in spite of all these miracles which thou wroughtest for him therefore it the mem was closed straightway the earth Exclaimed Sovereign of the Universe, let me utter song before thee instead of this righteous man Hezekiah and make him the Messiah. So it broke into song before him as it is written from the uttermost part of the earth. Have we heard songs even glory to the righteous? Then the Prince of the Universe said to him, Sovereign of the Universe, if the earth hath fulfilled thy desire for songs of praise on behalf of this righteous man, but a heavenly voice cried out, It is my secret, it is my secret too. Which the prophet rejoined, Woe is me, woe is me, how long must we wait? The heavenly voice again cried out, The treacherous d
Unto the tenth generation insult not an Aramean therefore shall the Lord the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness what is meant by among his fat ones be of leanness the Holy One blessed be he said let Hezekiah who hath eight Shemina names come and mete out punishment to send a cherub who hath likewise eight Hezekiah as it is written for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called I wonderful. Two counselor three mighty four judge be everlasting six father seven prince and eight peace but is there not Hezekiah two that means whom God hath strengthened alternatively Hezekiah denotes who strengthened Israel in their devotion to their father in heaven send a cherub of whom it is written I tie glath piles or two till gath dash pilnizer three shall manies or four pool be sargon six a snapper seven rabba and eight yakra but is there not send a cherub two that means that is very Conversation with strife alternatively that he prayed with inflammatory speech against the Most High Yohanan said why did that evil man merit the titles of the great and noblest snapper because he did not speak slightingly of the land of Israel as it is written until I come and take you away to a land like your own land Rab and Samuel dispute the matter one maintained that he was a wise king the other that he was foolish the view that he was a wise king is because had he said a land that is better than your own they would have replied thou liest whilst the opinion that he was foolish is because if so i.e. that the land of exile would be no better than their own what inducement did he offer whither did he deport them Marzitra said to Africa our Hannah maintained to the mountains of Salug but Israel spoke with contempt about Palestine for when they came to Shush they said this is as good as our land to Alman they said this is like the house of eternities i.e. Jerusalem or the Temple on arriving at Cheshire, they said, This is twice as good as our land, and beneath his glory shall he kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Our Yohanan said that which was beneath his glory would be burnt, but glory is not literal, even as our Yohanan called his garments by honor. Our Eliezer said, Beneath his glory is literal as the burning of the sons of Aaron, just as there the burning of the soul is meant, the body remaining intact. So here too attended taught in the name of our Joshua B. Karha Pharaoh, who personally blasphemed, was punished by the Holy One. Blessed be he in person, Sanat Cherub, who blasphemed Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be through an agent, was punished by the Holy One. Blessed be he through an agent, thus Pharaoh, of whom it is written, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice, was punished by the Holy One. Blessed be he in person, as it is written, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and it is also written, Thou didst. Walk through the sea with thine horses, but Sennacherib, of whom it is written by thy messengers, hast thou reproached the Lord, was punished by the Holy One. Blessed be he through an angel, as it is said, and the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. Our Hannah, be Papa, opposed two verses, it is written, I will enter the height of his border, but elsewhere it is written, I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, that wicked man said. First will I destroy his nether abode, see the temple on earth, and then the upper our Joshua believe I said, What is meant by him? I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. How so he had heard the prophet declare, For as much as this people refused the waters of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in Rezin and Ramaliah's son, our Joseph said, But for the Targum of this verse, I would not know its meaning because this people have. Wearied of the Davidic dynasty which rules them with gentleness like the waters of Shiloh which flow tranquilly and have set their desire upon Rezin and the son of Ramali are Yohanan said what is meant by the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked but he blesseth the habitation of the just the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked refers to Pekka the son of Ramali who ate forty seahs of young birds as a mere dessert but he blesseth the habitation of the just applies to Hezekiah king of Judah who ate but a litter of vegetables for his entire meal now therefore behold the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river strong and many even the king of Assyria and all his glory and it is further written and he shall pass through Judah he shall overflow and go over he shall reach even to the neck and if so why was he sent Asherah punished the prophet prophesied with respect to the ten tribes whereas he set his face against the whole of Jerusalem Thereupon the prophet came and said to him, For the wearied is not for the oppressor. Our Eliezer B. Barakia said, This means the people that is tired out by intensive study of the Torah will not be delivered into the hands of her oppressor. What is meant by when aforetime the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali did lighten its burden, but in later times it was made heavy by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. It is not as the early generations who rejected the yoke of the Torah, but as for the latter generations who strengthened the yoke of the Torah upon themselves and are therefore worthy of having a miracle wrought for them, like those who passed over the Red Sea and the Jordan. Should he send Asherah repent of his attack upon Jerusalem, tis well, but if not, I will render him the butt of the nations scorn after these things. And the truth thereof, Sennacherib king of Assyria came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and Thought to win them for himself is such a reward me for such a gift, but what is meant by after these things and the truth thereof? Robin said after the Holy One, blessed be he had anticipated events by an oath, for he reasoned thus if I say to Hezekiah, I will bring Sennacherib and deliver him into thy hands, he will reply, I require neither the ultimate victory over him nor the preceding terror. Therefore, the Holy One, blessed be he, forestalled him by swearing that he would bring him as it is written, the Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, and shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Or Yohanan said, The Holy One, blessed be he, said thus, Let Sennacherib and his army come and be equipped for Hezekiah and his army, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall. Be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the oil. Our Isaac the smith said this means the yoke of Sennacherib shall be destroyed on account of the oil of Hezekiah which burnt in the synagogues and schools. What did he do? He planted a sword by the door of the schoolhouse and proclaimed he who will not study the Torah will be pierced with the sword. Search was made from Dan unto Beersheba and no ignoramus was found from Gabbath. Unto Antipri and no boy or girl man or woman was found who was not thoroughly versed in the laws of cleanliness and uncleanliness and concerning that generation it is said and it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep and it is further said and it shall come to pass on that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines and a thousand silverlings it shall even be for briars and thorns though a thousand vines be worth a thousand. Silverlings yet shall it be for briars and thorns, and your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of a caterpillar. The prophet said unto Israel, Gather your spoil thereupon. They questioned him to take it as our own booty or to divide it like the gathering of a caterpillar. Replied he, Just as caterpillars gather each one for itself, so take your spoil each one for himself. But objected they, the wealth of the ten tribes is mixed up therein. He answered, As the watering of pools doth he water it. Just as pools purify the unclean, so are the possessions of Israel, which having fallen into the hands of heathens become clean. I illegitimate are who not said that wicked man made ten marches on that day, as it is written, I he is come to Ayat two, he is passed at Migrant three at Mike Mash, he hath laid up his carriages for they are gone over the passage, be they have taken up their lodgings at Gabba six. Rama is afraid seven Jagia of Saul is fled eight, lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim nine. Cause it to be heard unto Lash X O poor and at Hoth eleven Madmanad is removed twelve the inhabitants of Gibbon gather themselves to flee but these are more than ten lift up thy voice O daughter of Galim was said by the prophet to the people of Israel lift up thy voice O daughter of Galim thou daughter of Abraham Isaac and Jacob who performed good deeds as the waves of the sea in multitude cause it to be heard unto Lash fear not this man but be in dread of the wicked Nebuchadnezzar who is likened to a lion as it is written the lion S C Nebuchadnezzar is come up from his thicket what is meant by Talmud Ma Sanhedrin A O poor and at Hoth Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah from Anad Hoth is destined to prophesy thereon S C concerning Jerusalem as it is written the words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah of the priests that were in Anad Ho
To not Antish Babinab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. What is meant by Antish Babinab, Rab Judah said in Rab's name, a man who came on account of Nab for the Holy One, blessed be he, had said to David, How long will this crime be hidden in thy hand, i.e., unpunished through thee? Nab, the city of priests, was massacred through thee, Dog the Edomite was banished, and through thee, Saul and his three sons were slain. Wouldst thou rather thy line to end or be delivered unto the enemy's hand? He replied, Sovereign of the universe, I would rather be delivered into the enemy's hand than that my line should end. One day, when he David ventured forth to seek, poor busy Satan appeared before him in the guise of a deer, he shot arrows at him, but did not reach him, and was thus led on until impeeled into the land of the Philistines. When Ish Babinab espied him, he Exclaimed it is he who slew my brother Goliath, so he bound him, doubled him up, and cast him under an olive press, but a miracle was wrought, and the ground softened under him, hence it is written, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip now that day was Sabbath Eve, and Abishai the son of Zeruiah washing his head in four grivers of water remarked some blood stains there, and others say a dove came and beat its wings before him, thereupon he reasoned Israel is likened to a dove. As it is written, Yer as the wings of a dove covered with silver, this must be an intimation that David is in trouble, so he went to his house, but did not find him, now said he, We learned one may not ride upon his sea a king's horse, nor sit upon his seat, nor use his scepter, but how is it in a time of danger? So he went and propounded the question in the schoolhouse, and was answered, In time of danger it is permitted, he then mounted his sea David's mule, and rode off, and the earth contracted under. And whilst riding he saw Orpah's S.C. Ishbibanab's mother spinning on desking him she broke off the thread of the spindle and threw at the spindle at him intending to kill him and she said young man bring me the spindle but he threw it on the top of her head instead and killed her when Ishbibanab beheld him he said to himself now that there are two they will slay me so he threw David up in the air and stuck his spear into the earth saying let him fall upon it and perish but Abishai pronounced the divine name by means of which David was held suspended between heaven and earth why did not David pronounce it himself because a prisoner cannot free himself from prison Abishai then inquired of him what dost thou hear thus did God speak unto me and thus did I answer him replied he reversed that prayer said he let thy grandson sell wax rather than that thou shouldst suffer if so said he do thou aid me to reverse it hence it is written but Abishai the son of Zeruiah. Succored him upon which Rab Judah commented in Rab's name, he succored him in prayer. Abishai then again pronounced the divine name and brought him down from Adair where he was still suspended. Now Ishbibanab was pursuing them when they reached Kilby. They said to each other, Let us stand and fight against him, but they were still afraid and proceeded further. When they reached Bethra, they said, Can two whelps kill a lion? So they taunted him, Go and find thy mother Orpah in the grave on. They're mentioning his mother's name to him, his strength failed, and they slew him. Hence it is written, And the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt no more go out with us unto battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Our rabbis taught for three did the earth shrink Eliza Abraham's servant, our father Jacob, and Abishai the son of Zeruiah. Abishai the son of Zeruiah has just been narrated Eliza Abraham's servant, as it is written, And I came this day unto the well, implying that. He had set out on that day our father Jacob Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be as it is written and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went to Haran which is followed by and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set for when he reached Haran he said to himself shall I have passed through a place in which my fathers prayed without doing so likewise he wished therefore to return but no sooner had he thought of this than the earth contracted and immediately he lighted upon a place the objective of his journey and alternative exegesis is this pity I can only mean prayer as it is written therefore pray thou not for this people neither lift up cry nor pray for them neither make intercession to me and tarried there all night because the sun was set having prayed he wished to proceed there upon the holy one blessed be he said this righteous man has come to my habitation shall he depart without a night's rest immediately the sun set before its time, hence it is written, and as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose for him. Now had the sun risen for him alone, surely it had risen for the whole world. But said our Isaac, the sun which had prematurely set on his account, now rose prematurely on his account too. Now whence do we know that David's seed ceased from the verse? And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal, but was not Joash left there too. Abiathar was left, as it is written, and one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, had not Abiathar been left of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, not the slightest remnant would have remained of David's seed. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, the wicked Sennacherib advanced against them with a force consisting of 45,000 princes, each enthroned in a golden chariot, and accompanied by his ladies and harlots, 80,000 warriors in coat of. Male and sixty thousand swordsmen of the front line, the rest cavalrymen, a similar host attacked Abraham, and a like force will accompany Gog and Magog in the very day. It was taught the length of his army was four hundred parsangs. The horses standing neck to neck formed a line forty parsangs long, and the grand total of his army two million six hundred thousand. Less one Abbe inquired, less one Rebo ten thousand, one thousand one hundred, or one. The question stands over a ten and taught the first. Company swam across as it is written, he shall overflow and go over the second. Walked across as it is written, he shall reach even to the neck. The third cast up the dust of the river bed with their feet and found no water in the river to drink until it was brought from elsewhere. And they drank as it is written, I have digged and drunk water, but is it not written? Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred and fourscore and five thousand and one day. Arose early in the mornings, behold, they were all dead corpses. Arabah replied, These were the army captains. Arashi said, This may be deduced too, for it is written, Therefore shall the Lord send among his fat ones leanness, meaning amongst the cream, i.e., the leaders of them. Rabbanah said, This may be also deduced, for it is written, And the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the men of Balor and the leaders and the princes in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shamefacedness to his own land, and when he entered into the house of his god, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. This proves it wherewith did he the angel smite them. Arabah said, He smote them with his hand, as it is written, and Israel saw the great hand implying the hand that was destined to exact vengeance of Sennacherib. Bar Joshua said, He smote them with his finger, as it is written, and the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God, implying this is the finger. Destined to punish Sennacherib, our Eliezer, the son of Arhose, said the Holy One, blessed be he said to Gabriel, is thy sickle sharpened to mow down the Assyrians? He replied, Sovereign of the universe, it has been sharpened since the six days of creation, as it is written, for they fled from the swords, from the sharpened sword, etc. Our Simeon Beo, he said it was the time for the ripening of fruits, so the Holy One, blessed be he said to Gabriel, when thou goest forth to ripen the fruits, attack them as it is. Written as he passeth, he shall take you for morning by morning, shall he pass by by day and by night, and it shall be a sheer terror to understand the report. Our Papa said, Thus people say in passing, reveal thyself to thine enemy. Others say, He Gabriel breathed into their nostrils, and they died as it is written, and he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. Our Jeremiah B. Abba said, He smote his hands at them, and they died as it is written, I will also smite mine hands together, and I will cause. My fury to rest our Isaac the smith said he unsealed their ears for them so that they heard the Hayyoth sing praises to God and they died as it is written at thine exaltation the people were scattered now how many were left of them see the Assyrians host rap said ten as it is written and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few that a child may write them what figure can a child write ten Samuel said nine were left as it is written yet leaning grapes shall be left in it as the shaking of an olive tree two and three berries in the top of the uppermost bough four and five in the utmost fruitful branches thereof are Joshua B. Levi said fourteen as it is written two three four five are Yohanan said five Bisan Asherab and his two sons Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar that Nebuchadnezzar survived is a tradition Nebuchadnezzar as it is written and the form of the fourth
The scholars said that is what is meant by the phrase and it shall also consume the beard. Our Papa said thus men say if thou art singeing the hair of an Aramean and he is pleased there with said light to his beard so will thou not suffer his mockery. He then went away and found the plank of Noah's ark. They said he must be the great God who saved Noah from the flood. If I go to battle and am successful I will sacrifice my two sons to thee. He doubt but his sons heard this so they killed him as it is. Written and it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch his God that a Dramalek and Sharezer his son smote him with the sword etc. And he fought against them he and his servants by night Lila and smote them or Yohan and said the angel who was appointed to aid Abraham was named Lila night as it is written let the day perish wherein I was born and the Lila which said there is a man child conceived our Isaac the smith said he the angel set into motion the activities. Of the night is the stars on his behalf as it is written they fought from heaven the stars in their courses fought against Tisira Resh Lakish said the smith's interpretation is better than the son of the smiths and he pursued them unto Dan or Yohan and said as soon as that righteous man came unto Dan his strength failed him for he prophetically saw his descendants who would practice idolatry in Dan as it is written and he set the one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan that wicked man. Nebuchadnezzar too did not prevail until he reached Dan as it is written the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan Arzara said O oh, Arjuna be but there is sent a message from Nisibus saying observe the respect due to a scholar who has forgotten his learning through a misfortune e.g. illness and be careful to cut the jugular veins in accordance with Arjuna's ruling and be heedful of the honor due to the children of the ignorant for from them proceed at the Torah yet such a thing as this is made known to them his righteous art thou O Lord when I plead with thee yet let me talk to thee of thy judgments wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper wherefore are all the happy that deal very treacherously thou hast planted them yet they have taken root they grow yet they bring forth fruit what was he answered if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee then how canst thou contend with the horses and if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest they Weary thee then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan this may be compared to a man who boasted I can run three parasangs in front of horses on marshy land but happening to meet a pedestrian he ran three mills before him on dry land and was exhausted thereupon he said to him if thou art thus before a pedestrian how much more so before horses and if three mills have so tired thee how much more so three parasangs and if on dry land it is thus how much more so on marshy swamps it is. Even so with thee if thou art thus astonished at the reward wherewith requited that wicked man for the four steps which he ran in my honor how much more when I give their due reward to Abraham Isaac and Jacob who ran before me like horses i.e. eagerly and swiftly hence it is written my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake I am like a drunken man and like a man whom one hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness to what does it? Four steps refer as it is written at that time where Dash Baladon the son of Baladon king of Babylon sent letters and a present to Hezekiah for he had heard that he had been sick and was recovered but just because Hezekiah had fallen sick and was recovered he sent him letters and a present indeed to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land for Aryohan and said the day on which Ahaz died consisted of but two hours and when Hezekiah sickened and recovered the holy one blessed be he restored. Those ten hours as it is written behold I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz ten degrees backwards so the sun returned ten degrees by which degrees it was gone down thereupon he or Dash Baladon inquired of them his courtiers what is this they replied Hezekiah has sickened and recovered there is such a great man exclaimed he and shall I not send him a greeting right thus to him peace to king Hezekiah peace to the city of Jerusalem and Peace to the great God now Nebuchadnezzar was Baladon's scribe but just then he was not present when he came he asked them how did you write and they told him we wrote thus and thus he called him the great God said he yet you mentioned him last thus said he should ye have written peace to the great God peace to the city of Jerusalem and peace to King Hezekiah let the reader of the letter said they to him become the messenger so he ran after him but when he had taken four steps Gabriel came and made him halt our Yohanan observed had not Gabriel come and stopped him nothing could have saved the enemies of Israel why was he called Merodach dash Baladon the son of Baladon it is told Baladon was a king whose face turned into that of a dog so that his son sat upon his throne instead in his documents he wrote his own name and the name of his father King Baladon Aimer dash Baladon this is the meaning of the verse a son Hanurath his father and a servant his master now his son Hanurath his Father refers to what has just been said and a servant his master as it is written now in the fifth month in the tenth day of the month which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came Nebuchadnezzar captain of the guard and stood before the king of Babylon in Jerusalem and burned the house of the Lord and the king's house Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be but had Nebuchadnezzar gone up to Jerusalem surely it is written they carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Ribble and R. Abou said that this was Antioch Arhista and Ar Isaac be Abudimi replied as follows one answered his Nebuchadnezzar's portrait was engraved on his Nebuchadnezzar's chariot and the other explained he stood in such awe before him that it is as though he were in his presence Rabbah said Nebuchadnezzar sent Nebuchadnezzar three hundred mules laden with iron axes that could break iron but they were all shattered on a single gate of Jerusalem for it is written and now they attack its gate Lator. Together with axes and hammers they smite he desired to return but said I am afraid lest I meet the same fate which befell Sennacherib thereupon a voice cried out thou leaper son of a leaper leave Nebuchadnezzar for the time has come for the sanctuary to be destroyed and the temple burnt he had but one axe left so he went and smote the gate with the head thereof and it opened as it is written a man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees he hewed down the Jews as he proceeded until he reached the temple upon his setting fire thereto it sought to rise up but was trodden down from heaven as it is written the Lord hath trodden down the virgin daughter of Judah the temple as in a wine press his mind was now elated with his triumph when a voice came forth from heaven saying to him thou hast slain a dead people thou hast burned a temple already burned thou hast ground flour already ground as it is written take the millstones and grind meal uncover thy locks. Make bare the lake, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers, not weep. But meal is said after that he saw the blood of Zechariah seething. What is this cry? He it is the blood of sacrifices which has been spilled. They answered and said, He brings some animal blood, and I will compare them to see whether they are alike. So he slaughtered animals and compared them, but they were dissimilar. Disclose the secret to me, or if not, I will tear your flesh with iron combs. He threatened, they replied, This is the blood of a priest and a prophet who foretold the destruction of Jerusalem to the Israelites, and they killed him. I said, He will appease him. So he brought the scholars and slew them over him, yet it did not cease to boil. He brought school children and slew them over him, still it did not rest. He brought the young priests and slew them over him, and still it did not rest until he had slain ninety four thousand, and still it did not rest. Whereupon he approached him and cried out, Zechariah. Zechariah, I have destroyed the flower of them. Dost thou desire me to massacre them all straightway? It rested thoughts of repentance came into his mind. If they who killed one person only have been so severely punished, what will be my fate? So he fled, sent his testament to his house, and became a proselyte. Our rabbis taught Naaman was a resident alien. Nebuchadnezzar was a righteous proselyte. The descendants of Sisera studied Torah in Jerusalem. The descendants of Sennacherib taught Torah to the multitude who were the Shimei and Abtali. And the descendants of Haman studied Torah in Benabirak. The Holy One blessed be he purposed to lead the descendants of that wicked man to under the wings of the Shechinah. But the ministering angels protested before him, Sovereign of the universe, shalt thou bring him under the wings of the Shechinah who laid thy house in ruins and burnt thy temple? That is meant by the verse we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. said this refers to. Nebuchadnezzar our Samuel be Naaman he said by this are meant the rivers of Babylon which run along the palm trees of Babylonia Ola said Ammon and Moab were evil neighbors of Jerusalem as soon as they heard the prophets predicting the destruction of Jerusalem they sent to Nebuchadnezzar leave thy country and come hither he replied I am afraid lest I be treated as my predecessors thereupon they sent word for the man is not at home and man refers only to the Holy One blessed be he as it is written
and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked are not and said to our Isaac have you heard when Barnabal will come who is Barnabal he asked Messiah he answered do you call Messiah Barnabal and so he rejoined as it is written in that day I will raise up Talmud Ma Sanhedrin of the tabernacle of David Hanoflet that is fallen he replied thus hath our Yohanan said in the generation when the son of David i.e. Messiah will come scholars will be few in number and as for the rest their eyes will fail through sorrow and grief multitudes of trouble and evil decrees will be promulgated and each new evil coming with haste before the other has ended our rabbis taught in the seven year cycle at the end of which the son of David will come in the first year this verse will be fulfilled and I will cause it to rain upon one city and cause it not to rain upon another city in the second the arrows of hunger will be sent forth in the third a great famine in the course of which men women and children pious men and saints will die and the Torah will be forgotten by its students in the fourth partial plenty in the fifth great plenty when men will eat drink and rejoice and the Torah will return to its disciples in the sixth heavenly sounds in the seventh wars and at the conclusion of the septenate the son of David will come our Joseph the murdered but so many septenates have passed yet has he not come have they retorted were there then Heavenly sounds in the sixth and wars in the seventh. Moreover, have they see the troubles been in this order wherewith thine enemies have reproached the Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed? It has been taught our Judah said in the generation when the son of David comes, the house of assembly will be for harlots, Galilee, and ruins, Gabal, and lie desolate. The border inhabitants wander about from city to city, receiving no hospitality. The wisdom of scribes in disfav our God. Fearing men despise people, be dog faced, and truth entirely lacking, as it is written, Yet truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil make himself a prey. What is meant by a truth faileth, and he adoreth the scholars of the school of Rab said this teaches that it will split up into separate groups and depart. What is the meaning of any that departeth from evil make himself a prey? Mish to allow the school of Arshila said he who departs from evil will be dubbed a fool by his fellow men. Rabbi said, I used to think at first that there is no truth in the world whereupon one of the rabbis by name of Artabuth, others say by name of Artabiomi, who even if he were given all the treasures of the world would not lie, told me that he once came to a place called Kushta in which no one ever told lies and where no man ever died before his time. Now he married one of their women by whom he had two sons. One day his wife was sitting and washing her hair when a neighbor came and knocked at the door, thinking to himself that it would not be etiquette to tell her that his wife was washing herself. He called out, She is not here as a punishment for this. His two sons died. Then people of that town came to him and questioned him, What is the cause of this? So he related to them what had happened. We pray thee, they answered, Quit this town and do not incite death against us. It has been taught, Arnir, he said, In the generation when Messiah comes, young men will insult the old and old men will. Stand before the young to give them honor. Daughters will rise up against their mothers and daughters in law against their mothers in law. The people shall be dog faced and a son will not be abashed in his father's presence. It has been taught. Our Nehemiah said in the generation of Messiah's coming, impudence will increase esteem, be perverted. The vine yield its fruit, yet shall wine be dear, and the kingdom will be converted to heresy with none to rebuke them. This supports our Isaac, who said, The son of David will not come until the whole world is converted to the belief of the heretics. Rabbi said, What verse proves this? It is all turned white. He is clean. Our rabbis taught for the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself of his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. The son of David will not come until denunciators are in abundance. Another interpretation of their power is gone until scholars are few. Another interpretation until the last. Herita has gone from the purse yet another interpretation until the redemption is despaired of for it is written there is none shut up or left as were it possible to say so Israel had neither supporter nor helper even as Arzari who whenever he chanced upon scholars engaged thereon i.e. in calculating the time of the Messiah's coming would say to them I beg of you do not postpone it for it has been taught three come unawares Messiah found article and a scorpion are at six thousand years shall the world exist and one thousand the seventh it shall be desolate as it is written and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day of a said it will be desolate two thousand as it is said after two days will he revive us in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight it has been taught in accordance with our just as the seventh year is one year of release in seven so is the world one thousand years out of seven shall be fellow as it is written and it Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and it is further said a psalm and song for the Sabbath day, meaning the day that is altogether Sabbath, and it is also said for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past the tenet of Eliyahu teaches the world is to exist six thousand years in the first two thousand there was desolation, two thousand years the Torah flourished, and the next two thousand years is the Messianic era Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be but through our many. Iniquities all these years have been lost. Elijah said to Rab Judah the brother of Arsali the pious, the world shall exist not less than eighty five jubilees, and in the last jubilee the son of David will come. He asked him at the beginning or at the end, he replied, I do not know shall this period be completed or not. I do not know he answered Arashi said he spoke thus to him before that do not expect him afterwards thou mayest await him Arhin and be Talifa sent word to our Joseph I once met a. Man who possessed a scroll written in Hebrew and Assyrian characters, I said to him, Whence has this come to thee? He replied, I hired myself as a mercenary in the Roman army and found it amongst the Roman archives, and it is stated that 4,230 1 years after the creation, the world will be orphaned as to the years following. Some of them will be spent in the war of the great sea monsters, and some in the war of Gog and Magog, and the remaining period will be the Messianic era. Whilst the Holy One blessed be, he will renew his world only after 7,000 years. Our Abba, the son of Rabba, said the statement was after 5,000 years. It has been taught, our Nathan said this verse pierces and descends to the very abyss, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though he tarry, wait for him, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, not as our masters who interpreted the verse until a time and times and it. Dividing of time, nor as our Simlay who expounded, thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them tears to drink a third time, nor as our Akiba who expounded, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth. But the first dynasty, S.C. the Hasmonean, shall last seventy years, the second, the Herodian, fifty two, and the reign of Barcoza, two and a half years, what is meant by, but at the end it shall speak, we Yaka and not lie, our Samuel will be Naman, he said in the name of our Jonathan, blessed be the bones of those who calculate the end, for they would say, since the predetermined time has arrived, and yet he has not come, he will never come, but even so, wait for him, as it is written, though he tarry, wait for him, should you say, we look forward to his coming, but he does not, therefore, scripture saith, and therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you, but since we look forward to it, and he does likewise what delays his coming the attribute of justice delays it but since the attribute of justice delays it why do we wait it to be rewarded for hoping as it is written blessed are all they that wait for him have they said the world must contain not less than 36 righteous men in each generation who are vouchsafed the sight of the Sheshanah's countenance for it is written blessed are all they that wait low for him the numerical value of low is 36 but that is not so for did not Rabbi say the row of righteous men immediately before the holy one blessed be he consists of 18,000 for it is written it shall be 18,000 round about that is no difficulty the former number 36 refers to those who see him through a bright speculum the latter to those who contemplate him through a dim one but are there as many did not Hezekiah say in the name of our Jeremiah on the authority of our Simeon Beohe I have seen the sons of heaven and they are but few if there are a thousand I and my son are included if a hundred I and my son are included and if only two there are myself and my son there is no difficulty the former number 36 refers to those who enter within the barrier to contemplate the Shechinah with permission the latter uncertain number to those who may enter without permission Rab said all the predestined dates for redemption have passed and the matter now depends only on repentance and good deeds but Samuel maintained it is sufficient for a mourner to keep his period of mourning this matter is disputed by Tanamar Eliezer said if Israel repent they will be redeemed if not they will not be redeemed our Joshua said
Thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, or Joshua answered, but it is elsewhere written, and I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swore by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished, that this our Eliza remain silent. Our Abba also said there can be no more manifest sign of redemption than this is what is said, but ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. Our Eliezer said, and this too, as it is written, for before these days there was no hire for man nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. What is meant by neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of it. Affliction Rab said even for scholars who are promised peace as it is written great peace have they which love thy law there shall be no peace on account of the affliction Samuel said until all prices are equal our Hannah said the son of David will not come until a fish is sought for an invalid and cannot be procured as it is written then will I make their waters deep and cause their rivers to run like oil whilst it is written in that day will I cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud. Fourth our Hamabi Hannah said the son of David will not come until even the pettiest kingdom ceases to have power over Israel as it is written he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches and this is followed by in that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people that is scattered and peeled Zeiri said in our Hannah's name the son of David will not come until there are no conceited men in Israel as it is written for then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride which is followed by I will also leave in the midst of the afflicted and poor people and they shall take refuge in the name of the Lord our simile said in the name of our Eliezer son of our Simeon the son of David will not come until all judges and officers are gone from Israel as it is written and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin and I will restore thy judges as at first. Well said Jerusalem shall be redeemed only by righteousness as it is written Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness our Papa said when the haughty cease to exist in Israel the Magi shall cease among the Persians when the judges cease to exist in Israel the Kiliarchy shall cease likewise now when the haughty cease to exist the Magi shall also cease as it is written and I will purely purge away thy haughty ones and take away all that in when the judges cease. To exist the Kiliarchy shall cease likewise as it is written the Lord hath taken away thy judgments he hath cast out thine enemy are Yohanan said when you see a generation ever dwindling hope for him the Messiah as it is written and the afflicted people thou wilt save are Yohanan said when thou seest a generation overwhelmed by many troubles as by a river await him as it is written when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him which is followed by and the Redeemer shall come to Zion are Yohanan also said the son of David will come only in a generation that is either altogether righteous or altogether wicked in a generation that is altogether righteous as it is written that people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever or altogether wicked as it is written and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor and it is elsewhere written for my own sake even for my own sake. Will I do it? Our Alexandri said, Our Joshua B. Levi pointed out a contradiction. It is written in its time, Will the Messiah come? Whilst it is also written, I the Lord will hasten it. If they are worthy, I will hasten it. If not, he will come at the due time. Our Alexandri said, Our Joshua opposed two verses. It is written, And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Whilst elsewhere it is written, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee lowly and riding upon an ass. If they are meritorious, he will come with the clouds of heaven. If not lowly and riding upon an ass, King Shipper, I said to Samuel, Will you maintain that the Messiah will come upon an ass? I will rather send him a white horse of mine. He replied, Have you a hundred huge feet? Our Joshua B. Levi met Elijah standing by the entrance of our Simeon. Behold, whom he asked him, Have I a portion in the world to come? He replied, If this master desires it, our Joshua B. Levi said, I saw two, but heard the voice of a third. He then asked. And when will the Messiah come go and ask him himself was his reply where is he sitting at the entrance and by what sign may I recognize him he is sitting among the poor lepers all of them untie them all at once and rebindage them together whereas he unties and rebindages each separately before treating the next thinking should I be wanted it being time for my appearance as the Messiah I must not be delayed through having to bandage a number of sores so he went to him and greeted him saying peace upon thee master and teacher peace upon thee O son of Levi he replied when wilt thou come master asked he today was his answer on his returning to Elijah the latter inquired what did he say to thee peace upon thee O son of Levi he answered thereupon he Elijah observed he thereby assured thee and thy father of a portion in the world to come he spoke falsely to me he rejoined stating that he would come today but has not he Elijah answered him this is what he said to thee too. Day if ye will hear his voice the disciples of our Jose Bikisma asked him when will the Messiah come he answered I fear lest ye demand a sign of me that my answer is correct they assured him we will demand no sign of you so he answered them when this gate falls down is rebuilt falls again and is again rebuilt and then falls a third time before it can be rebuilt the son of David will come they said to him master give us a sign he protested did ye not assure me that ye would not demand a sign. They replied even so we desire one he said to them if so let the waters of the grotto of Panias turn into blood and they turned into blood when he lay dying he said to them place my coffin deep in the earth Talmud, Moss and Hedron be for there is not one palm tree in Babylon to which a Persian horse will not be tethered nor one coffin in Palestine out of which a median horse will not eat straw said the son of David will not come until the Roman power enfolds Israel for nine months is it? Is written therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth and the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Ola said let him the Messiah come but let me not see him. Rabbi said likewise let him come but let me not see him. Or Joseph said let him come and may I be worthy of sitting in the shadow of his ass's saddle. Abbe inquired of Rabbi what is your reason for not wishing to see him shall we say because of the birth pangs. Preceding the advent of the Messiah but it has been taught our Eliezer's disciples asked him what must a man do to be spared the pangs of the Messiah. He answered let him engage in study and benevolence and you master do both. He replied I fear lest sin cause it in accordance with the teaching of our Jacob B.E.D. who opposed two verses visit is written and behold I am with thee and will guard thee in all places whither thou goest but it is written and Jacob was greatly afraid and Distressed he was afraid that sin might cause the nullification of God's promise even as it was taught till that people pass over O Lord this refers to the first entry into Palestine till that people pass over which thou hast purchased this refers to their second entry hence you may reason the Israelites were as worthy of a miracle being wrought for them at the second entry as at the first but that sin caused it not to happen our Yohanan said likewise let him come and let me not see him rush. Lakish said to him why so shall we say because it is written as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him but come and I will show you it's like even in this world when one goes out into the field and meets a bailiff it is as though he had met a lion when he enters the town and is accosted by a tax collector it is as though he had met a bear on entering his house and finding his sons and daughters in the throes. Of hunger it is as though he were bitten by a serpent but his unwillingness to see the Messiah is because it is written ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child wherefore do I see every man jeeper with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness what is meant by wherefore do I see every jeeper Rabbi B. Isaac said in Rab's name it refers to him to whom all the bearer's strength belongs and what is the meaning of and all faces are turned into paleness are Yohanan said this refers to God's heavenly family i.e. the angels and his earthly family i.e. Israel when God says these the Gentiles are my handiwork and so are these the Jews how shall I destroy the former on account of the latter our Papa said thus men say when the ox runs and falls the horse is put into his stall Argidal said in Rab's name the Jews are destined to eat their fill in the days of the Messiah our Joseph the is this not obvious who else then should eat? Hilak and Bilak this was said in opposition to our
Unto them not I raised up, but I will raise up his set. Our Papa said to Abbe, but it is written, and my servant David shall be their prince. Nasi for every G and emperor and viceroy are similarly expounded. What is meant by woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord? To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness, and not light. This may be compared to a cock and a bat who were hopefully waiting for the light. I.e. Don the cock said to the bat, I look forward to the light because I have sight. But of what use is the light to the Talmud? Mas and Hedrane and Dasamin said to Arabah, When will the Messiah come? He replied, When darkness covers those people, you curse me. He exclaimed, He retorted, It is but a verse, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall shine upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. It has been taught, Our Eliezer said, The days of the Messiah will last forty years, as it is written, Forty years long shall I take. Hold of the generation, Our Eliezer B. Ezra said, Seventy years, as it is written, and it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten. Seventy years according to the days of one king now, who is the one uniquely distinguished king, the Messiah. Of course, Rabbi said, Three generations, for it is written, They shall fear thee with the sun, and before the moon they shall fear thee. A generation and generations are Hillel said, There shall be no Messiah for Israel because they have already. Enjoyed him in the days of Hezekiah. Our Joseph said, May God forgive him for saying so. Now, when did Hezekiah flourish during the first temple? Yet Zechariah prophesying in the days of the second proclaimed, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Another buried the taught our Eliezer said, The days of the Messiah will be forty years. Here it is written, and he afflicted thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna. Whilst elsewhere it is written, Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Our Joseph said, Four hundred years it is here written, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Whilst elsewhere it is written, Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. Rabbi said, Three hundred and sixty-five years, even as the days of the solar year, as it is written for. The day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redemption is come. What is meant by the day of vengeance is in my heart? Our Yohanan said, I have so to speak revealed it to my heart, but not to my utterlings. Abami the son of Arabah learned the days of Israel's Messiah shall be seven thousand years, as it is written, and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over the Rab Judah said in Samuel's name, the days of the Messiah shall endure as long as from the creation until now, as it is written, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give to them as the days of heaven upon the earth are and B. Isaac said, As long as from Noah's days until our own, as it is written, for this is as the waters of Noah which are mine, so I have sworn, etc. Our high B. Abba said in our Yohanan's name, all the prophets prophesied all the good things only in respect of the messianic era, but as for the world to come, the eye hath not seen, O Lord, beside thee what he hath prepared for him that wait for him. Now he disagrees with Samuel, who said, This world differs from that of the days of the Messiah only in respect of servitude to foreign powers. Our high Abba also said in our Yohanan's name, All the prophets prophesied only for repentant sinners, but as for the perfectly righteous who had never sinned at all, the eye hath not seen, O God, beside thee what he hath prepared for him that wait for him. Now he differs from Arabah, who said, The place occupied by repentant sinners cannot be attained even by the completely righteous, for it is written, Peace, peace to him that is far off, and to him that is near, thus first he that is far off, and he that is near. Now what is meant by far off, originally far off, and what is meant by near, originally near, and still so, but our Yohanan interprets him that is far off, that is, and has been far from sin, him that is near, that was near to. Sin but is now far off our high B. Abba also said in our Yohanan's name all the prophets prophesied only in respect of him who marries his daughter to a scholar or engages in business on behalf of a scholar or benefits a scholar with his possessions but as for scholars themselves the eye hath not seen O God beside thee etc. What does the eye hath not seen refer to our Joshua believe I said to the wine that has been kept maturing with its grapes since the six days of creation Reshle said to Eden. Which no eye has ever seen and should you demur where then did Adam live in the garden and should you object the garden and Eden are one therefore scripture teaches and a river issued from Eden to water the garden and he who maintains that the Torah was not divinely revealed our rabbis taught because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment that soul shall utterly be cut off this refers to him who maintains that the Torah is not from heaven another rendering because he hath despised the word of the Lord refers to an epicoros another rendering because he hath despised the word of the Lord refers to one who gives an interpretation of the Torah not according to the Halachai and hath broken his commandment this means one who abolishes the covenant of flesh that soul shall utterly be cut off hikrat 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 to be cut off implies in this world hikrat it shall be cut off in the next hence our Eliezer of Modi I am taught he who defiles it. Sacred food despises the festivals abolishes the covenant of our father Abraham gives an interpretation of the Torah not according to the Halachai and publicly shames his neighbor even if he hath learning and good deeds to his credit hath no portion in the future world another bury the top because he hath despised the word of the Lord this refers to him who maintains that the Torah is not from heaven and even if he asserts that the whole Torah is from heaven excepting a particular verse. Which he maintains was not uttered by God but by Moses himself he is included in because he hath despised the word of the Lord and even if he admits that the whole Torah is from heaven excepting a single point of particular and major deduction or a certain desirish why he is still included in because he hath despised the word of the Lord it has been taught our Meir used to say he who studies the Torah but does not teach it is alluded to and he hath despised the word of the Lord our Nathan said. It refers to whoever pays no heed to the mission our Nehri said whosoever can engage in the study of the Torah but fails to do so our Ishmael said this refers to heathens how is this implied even as the school of Ishmael taught because he hath despised the word of the Lord this applies to one who despises the word spoken to Moses at Sinai as I am the Lord thy God thou shalt have no other gods before me or Joshua B. Karha said whosoever studies the Torah and does not revise it is likened. Unto one who sows without reaping, our Joshua said, He who studies the Torah and then forgets it is like a woman who bears a child and buries it. Our Akiva said, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be chanted every day, chanted every day, said, Our Isaac, be abudimi, what verse supports this? He that labureth, labureth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him, he toils in one place, the Torah toils for him, in another. Our Eliezer said, Every man is born for toil, as it is written, yet man is born for toil. Now I do not know whether for toil by mouth or by hand, but when it is said, For his mouth craveth it of him, I may deduce that toil by mouth is meant, yet I still do not know whether for toil in the Torah or in secular conversation, but when it is said, This book of the Torah shall not depart out of thy mouth, I conclude that one was created to labor in the Torah, and this coincides with Robustictum, is all human bodies are carriers, happy are they who are worthy of being receptacles of the Torah, whoso. Commentate adultery with a woman lacketh understanding Rush Lakish said this alludes to one who studies the Torah at irregular intervals as it is written for it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee they shall with all be fitted in thy lips our rabbis taught but the soul that doth thought presumptuously this refers to Manasseh the son of Hezekiah who examined biblical narratives to prove them worthless thus he jeered had Moses nothing to write but and Lot's sister was Tim and Timba was concubine to Eliphaz and Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field thereupon a heavenly voice cried out thou sittest and speakest against thy brother thou slanderest thy own mother son these things hast thou done and I kept silence thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes and of him it is explicitly stated in the post mosaic scriptures woe unto them that draw Iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope what is meant by and sin as it were with a cart rope R.C. said temptation at first is like a spider's thread but eventually like a cart rope a propo what is the purpose of writing and Lot and sister was Timna Timba was a royal princess as it is written a love duke
They had made inherent our Eliezer said as though he himself had created the words of the Torah as it is written keep therefore the words of this covenant and make them Rabbah said as though he had made himself for it is written and make them render nothing but yourselves are about said he who causes his neighbor to fulfill a precept is regarded by scripture as though he had done it himself for it is written the Lord said unto Moses take thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river did Moses. Then smite it Aaron smote it but he who causes his neighbor to fulfill a precept is regarded by scripture as though he had done it himself and Epicoros Rab and Arhanan both taught that this means one who insults a scholar are Yohanan and Arjashu will be Levi maintained that it is one who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar now on the view that he who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar is an Epicoros it is well for then he who insults a scholar himself will be included in. The expression he who acts impudently against the Torah but on the view that he who insults a scholar himself is an Epicoros who is meant by she who acts impudently against the Torah e.g. Manasseh v. Hezekiah others taught this dispute with reference to the second clause he who acts impudently against the Torah Rab and Arhanan both maintained that this means one who insults a scholar himself whilst are Yohanan and Arjashu will be Levi held that it is one who insults his neighbor in the presence of a Scholar now on the view that he who insults a scholar himself is denoted by the expression he who acts impudently against the Torah it is well for then he who insults his neighbor in a scholar's presence is dubbed an epicoros but on the view that he who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar is considered to have acted impudently against the Torah who then is meant by epicoros are Joseph said e.g. those who give up what use are the rabbis to us for their own benefit they read the scripture and for their own benefit they study post scriptural learning particularly the Mishnah Abbe said to him but this too denotes acting impudently against the Torah as it is written thus saith the Lord but for my covenant study day and night I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth are and B. Isaac said it is also deduced from the verse that I will spare all the place for their sakes but it means one e.g. who was sitting before his teacher when the discussion turned to some other subject and the disciple remarked we said so and so on that matter instead of thou master hast said rabbi said e.g. the family of benjamin the doctor who say of what use are the rabbis to us they have never talmud ma sanhedrin permitted us the raven nor forbidden us the duck whenever a suspected trifle of the family benjamin was brought before rabbi if he saw reason for permitting it he would remark to them see i permit you the raven if there were grounds for forbidding it he would observe see i forbid you the duck our papa forgot himself and exclaimed oh these rabbis thereupon he kept a fast levi b samuel and arhuna behi were repairing the mantles of the scrolls of our judas college on coming to the scroll of esther they remarked oh the scroll of esther does not require a mantle thereupon he reproved them as two savers of the reverence are and said and epicoros is one who calls his teacher by name for Arjuna and said why was Gehazi punished because he called his Master by name as it is written and Gehazi said my lord O king this is a woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life our Jeremiah sat before our Zerah and declared the holy one blessed be he will bring forth a stream from the holy of holies at the side of which shall be all kinds of delicious fruits as it is written and by the river upon that bank thereof on the side and on that side shall grow all trees for me whose leaf shall not fade neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed it shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for me and the leaf thereof for medicine whereupon a certain old man said to him well spoken and are Yohanan taught likewise our Jeremiah said to our Zerah such an attitude savors of the reverence he replied but he merely supported you but if you have heard of something which may be dubbed the reverend it is this Yohanan was sitting and teaching the holy one Blessed be he will bring jewels and precious stones each thirty cubits long and thirty cubits high and make an engraving in them ten by twenty cubits and set them up as the gates of Jerusalem for it is written and I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles a certain disciple derided him saying we do not find a jewel even as large as a dove's egg yet such huge ones are to exist some time later he took a sea journey and saw the ministering angels cutting precious stones and pearls he said unto them for what are these they replied the holy one blessed be he will set them up as the gates of Jerusalem on his return he found our Yohanan sitting and teaching he said to him expound O master and it is indeed fitting for you to expound for even as you did say so did I myself see wretch he exclaimed had you not seen you would not have believed you deride the words of the sages he set his eyes upon him and he turned into a heap of bones and objection was raised and I will Make you go coma yath upright armor said it means with a height of two hundred cubits twice the height of Adam Judah said a hundred cubits corresponding to the length of the temple and its walls as it is written that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth that our daughters may be as cornerstones fashioned after the similitude of the temple our Yohanan referred only to the ventilation windows what is meant by and the leaf thereof leaf the four medicine our Isaac be a good and are his daughter for therein one maintained to unlock the upper mouth the other to unseal the lower mouth it has been said likewise Hezekiah said to free the mouth of the dumb barkeeper said to open the mouth of barren women our Yohanan said literally for a medicine what does this mean our Samuel be he said to give a comely countenance to scholars our Judah son of our Simeon expounded he who emaciates his face for the sake of the study of the Torah in this world the holy one blessed be he will. Make his luster shine in the next as it is written his countenance shall be as the Lebanon excellent as the cedars are ten hum be our hand last said he who starves himself for the sake of the study of the Torah in this world the holy one blessed be he will fully satisfy him in the next as it is written they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures when our demi came he said the holy one blessed be he will give every righteous man his full hand of reward for it is written blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits even the God of our salvation seal have but is it possible to save us is it not written who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span he replied why are you not found familiar with the Agata for it was said in the west i.e. Palestine in the name of Rabbi Bimari the holy one blessed be he will give to every righteous man three hundred Ten worlds as it is written that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance yesh and I will fill their treasures now the numerical value of yesh is three hundred ten it has been taught our measure said in the measure which one measure so will there be measured out to him as it is written in measure when it should forth thou will contend with it our Judah said but can we say thus if one gives a handful of charity to a poor man in this world shall the holy one blessed be he give him his handful in the next surely it is written and meted out heaven with the span he replied do you not admit this now consider which measure is greater that of goodness i.e. reward or a punishment Talmud ma sanhedrin be surely the measure of reward is greater than that of punishment for with respect to the measure of goodness it is written and he commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat whilst of the measure of punishment it is written and the windows of heaven were opened yet in respect of the measure even of punishment it is written and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh but if one puts his fingers into the fire in this world it is immediately burnt but just as the holy one blessed be he gives the wicked the strength to receive punishment so does he give the righteous the capacity to receive reward our Akiva said also he who reads uncanonical books etc a tan taught this means the books of the Sadducees our Joseph said it is also forbidden to read the book of Ben Sarabbe said to him why so shall we say because there is written therein do not strip the skin of a fish even from its ear lest thou spoil it but roast it all the fish with the skin in the fire and eat there with two twisted loaves now if you object to it in its Literal sense the Torah two states thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof whilst in a metaphorical sense this teaches good taste that one should not cohabit unnaturally but if you take exception to the passage a daughter is a vain treasure to her father through anxiety on her account he cannot sleep at night as a minor lest she be seduced in her majority lest she play the harlot as an adult lest she be not married if she marries lest she bear no children if she grows old lest she engage in witchcraft but the rabbis have said the same the world cannot exist without males and females happy is he whose children are males and woe to him whose children are females again if because of
Thou be caught in her snare, turn not into her husband to drink wine with him, for many have been slain by the countenance of a beautiful woman, and numerous are those slain by her, and many are the blows sustained by itinerant peddlers. Those who seduce to adultery are as the spark that kindles the ember, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Restrain the multitude from entering into thine house, and bring not everyone therein to let there be many to inquire after thy well. Being yet revealed thy secret to but one in a thousand, guard the openings of thy mouth from her who lieth in thy bosom, fret not over tomorrow's trouble, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, and peradventure tomorrow he is no more, thus he shall be found grieving over a world that is not his. All the days of the poor are evil bents, or is set his nights to the lowest roof is his roof, and on the highest mountain is his vineyard, the rain of other roofs strip onto his whilst the earth of his vineyard is born onto other vineyards. Nemonic Zerah Rabba Meshashia Hanan Atopia Janay easily suited Yohan and Raham Joshua Mikazar Arzera said in Rab's name what is meant by all the days of the afflicted are evil. This refers to the students of the Talmud, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast. This refers to students of the Mishnah Rabba reversed the interpretation and this is what our Meshashia said in Rabba's name what is meant by whoso removeth stones shall be. Her therewith this refers to the students of the Mishnah, but he that cleaveth wood shall be warm thereby. This refers to students of the Talmud. Our Hanan said all the days of the afflicted are evil alludes to one who has a bad wife whilst but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to him who possesses a good wife. Our Janay said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to one who is over fastidious but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to a person who is. Easily suited are Yohanan said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to the compassionate but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to the cruel are Joshua believe I said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to him Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin who is of a petty nature but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to a contented mind are Joshua believe I also said all the days of the poor are evil but are there not the Sabbaths and festivals it is as Samuel said this. Change of diet is the first step to indigestion our rabbis taught he who recites a verse of the Song of Songs and treats it as a secular ear and one who recites a verse at the banqueting table unseasonably brings evil upon the world because the Torah girds itself in sackcloth and stands before the Holy One blessed be he and laments before him sovereign of the universe thy children have made me as a harp upon which they frivolously play he replies my daughter when they are eating and drinking. Wherewith shall they occupy themselves to which she rejoins sovereign of the universe if they possess scriptural knowledge let them occupy themselves with the Torah of the prophets and the writings if they are students of the Mishnah with Mishnah Halashah and Haggadah if students of the Talmud let them engage in the laws of Passover Pentecost and Tabernacles on the respective festivals our Simeon B. Eliezer testified on the authority of our Simeon B. Hanani who reads a verse in season is just defined brings good to the world as it is written and a word spoken in season how good is it also one who whispers over a wound etc. Our Yohanan said but only if he expectorates in doing so because the divine name may not be expressed in conjunction with expectoration it has been said Rab declared even the verse when the plague of leprosy etc. Our Hanan said even and he called unto Moses our rabbis taught one may oil and massage the bowels of an invalid on the Sabbath and snakes and serpents. May be charmed to render them tame and harmless on the Sabbath, and an article may be placed over the eye on the Sabbath to protect it. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said this applies only to articles which may be handled, but those which may not be handled are forbidden, nor may demons be consulted on the Sabbath. Our Jose said this is forbidden even on weekdays. Our Huna said the Halasha is not as our Jose, and even he said it only on account of its danger, as in the case of our Isaac B. Joseph, who was swallowed up in a cedar tree, but a miracle was wrought for him. The cedar splitting and casting him forth, our rabbis taught the bowels may be oiled and massaged on the Sabbath, providing this is not done as on weekdays. How then shall it be done? Our Hamasan of our Hanan said they must first be oiled and then massaged. Our Yohanan said the oiling and massaging must be done simultaneously. Our rabbis taught it is permitted to consult by a charm the spirits of oil or eggs, but that they give false answers. Incantations are made over oil contained in a vessel but not in the hand therefore one may anoint with the latter but not with the former our Isaac B. Samuel B. Martha chanced upon a certain in some oil was brought to him in a vessel with which he rubbed himself whereupon blisters broke out on his face he then went out to the marketplace and was seen by a woman who observed I see here the blast of Hamath our Abba said to Rabbi B. Mari it is written I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that he left thee but since he hath brought no disease what need is there of a cure he replied thus hath our Yohanan said this verse is self-explanatory because the whole reads and he said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God thus if thou wilt hearken I will not bring disease upon thee but if thou wilt not I will yet even so I am the Lord that he left thee Rabbi B. Barhana said when our Eliezer fell sick his Disciples entered his house to visit him. He said to them, There is a fierce wrath in the world. They broke into tears, but our Akiba laughed. Why dost thou laugh? They inquired of him, Why do ye weep? He retorted, They answered, Shall the scroll of the Torah lie in pain? And we not weep. He replied, For that very reason I rejoice as long as I saw that my master's wine did not turn sour, nor was his flax smitten, nor his oil putrefied, nor his honey become rancid. I thought, God forbid, that he may have received all his reward in this world, leaving nothing for the next. But now that I see him lying in pain, I rejoice, knowing that his reward has been treasured up for him. In the next year, Eliezer said to him, Akiba, have I neglected anything of the whole Torah? He replied, Thou, O master, hast taught us, for there is not a just man upon earth that doth good and sinneth not. Our rabbis taught when our Eliezer fell sick, four elders went to visit him. Viz Tarfan, our Joshua, our Eliezer, B. Ezra, and our Akiba, our Tarfan observed thou art more valuable to Israel than rain for rain is precious in this world whereas thou art so for this world and the next our Joshua observed thou art more valuable to Israel than the sun's disc the sun's disc is but for this world whilst my master is for this world and the next our Eliezer B. Ezra observed thou art better to Israel than a father and a mother these are for this world whereas my master is for this world and the next but our Akiba observed suffering is precious thereupon he the sick man said to them support me that I may hear the words of Akiba my disciple who said suffering is precious Akiba queried he once dost thou know this he replied I interpret a verse Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem etc and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord now it is elsewhere written Talmud Mas and Hedron, be these are also the proverbs of Solomon which the men of Hezekiah King of Judah copied out now would Hezekiah king of Judah have taught the Torah to the whole world yet not to his own son Manasseh but all the pains he spent upon him and all the labors he lavished upon him did not bring him back to the right path save suffering alone as it is written and the Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people but they would not hearken unto him wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon and it is further written and when he was in affliction he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem unto his kingdom and Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God thus thou learnest how precious his suffering our rabbis taught three came with a circuitous plea this came he saw and Manasseh came for it. Is written and Cain said unto the Lord is my sin too great to be forgiven he pleaded thus before him sovereign of the universe is my sin greater than that of the six hundred thousand Israelites who are destined to sin before the end wilt thou pardon them Esau for it is written and Esau said unto his father hast thou but one blessing my father Manasseh he first called upon many deities and only eventually called upon the God of his fathers Abbas said also he who pronounces the divine name as it is spelled etc it has been taught this holds good only in the country and in the sense of the Samaritan Aga blaspheming three kings and four commoners etc our rabbis taught the name Jeroboam denotes that he debased the nation another meaning is that he fomented strife amongst the nation another expl
of his hand against the king Solomon built Millo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father he said thus to him thy father David made breaches in the wall that Israel might come up to Jerusalem on the festivals whilst thou hast closed them in order to exact toll for the benefit of Pharaoh's daughter what is meant by and this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king Arnaman said he took off his phylacteries in front of him Arnaman said the conceit which possessed Jeroboam drove him out of the world as it is written now Jeroboam said in his heart now shall the kingdom return to the house of David if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem then shall the heart of this people turn unto their Lord even unto Rehoboam king of Judah and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah he reasoned thus it is a tradition that none but the kings of the house of Judah may sit in the temple court now when they People see Rehoboam sitting and me standing they will say the former is the king and the latter his subject whilst if I sit too I am guilty of treason and they will slay me and follow him straightway wherefore the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem behold thy gods O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt how did he take counsel our Judah said he set a wicked man by the side of the righteous in the council chamber and said to him will ye sign your approval of all that I may do they replied yes I wish to be king he went on and they again said yes will ye execute all my commands he asked again they replied yes even for the worship of idols whereupon the righteous man rejoined God forbid but urged the wicked upon the righteous dost thou really think that a man like Jeroboam would serve idols he only wishes to test us to see whether we will give full acceptance to his orders Talmud Moss and Hedron. A and even Ahijah the Shilamite heard and signed for Jehu was a very righteous man as it is written and the Lord said unto Jehu because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart thy children of the fourth generation shall sit upon the throne of Israel yet it is written but Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam which made Israel to sin now what caused this Abay said a covenant is made for the lips as it is written and Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them Ahab served Baal a little but Jehu shall serve him much Rabbah said he saw the signature of Ahijah the Shilamite and was thus led into error it is written and the revolters are profound to make slaughter though I have been a rebuke of them all are Yohan and explained this the Holy One blessed be he said they have gone deeper i.e. are more stringent than I, I said whoever does not go up to Jerusalem for the festival violates a positive injunction whereas they proclaimed whoever does go up for the festival will be pierced with the sword and it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way and he had clad himself with a new garment attended taught in the name of our Jose that time was a time predestined for punishment in the time of their visitation they shall perish attended taught in the name of our Jose in a time predestined for punishment in an acceptable time have I heard the attended taught in our Jose's name in a time predestined for good nevertheless in the day when I visit I will visit their sin upon them attended taught in our Jose's name in a time predestined for punishment and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren attended taught in our Jose's name in a time predestined for punishment and Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king attended taught in our Jose's name it was a place predestined for evil in Shechem Dino was ravished in Shechem his brethren sold Joseph and in Shechem the kingdom of the house of David was divided now it came to pass at that time that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem our Hanabi Papa said he went out of the destiny of Jerusalem and the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way and he clad himself with a new garment and they two were alone in the field what is meant by with a new garment Arnaman said as a new garment just as a new garment has no defect so was Jeroboam's scholarship without defect another explanation a new garment intimates that they expounded new teaching such as no ear had ever heard before what is taught by and they two were alone in the field Rab Judah said in Rab's name all other scholars were as the herbs of the field before them others say that all the reasons of it Torah were as manifest to them as a field, therefore shalt thou give parting gifts to Moshe Gath. The houses of Exab shall be allied to the kings of Israel. Our Hanabi be Papa said, A heavenly voice cried out and said, He who slew the Philistine and thereby gave you possession of Gath shall ye give parting gifts to his sons. Therefore the houses of Exab shall be allied to the kings of Israel. Our Hanabi be Papa said, He who enjoys out of his world without uttering a blessing is as though he robbed. The Holy One blessed be he and the can Seth Israel, for it is written, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and Seth, it is no transgression the same as the companion of a destroyer. Now his father can refer only to the Holy One blessed be he as it is written, Is not he as see God thy father that hath bought thee, whilst his mother can mean nothing but can Seth Israel as it is written, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. What is meant by the same is it? Companion of a destroyer, he is the companion of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who destroyed the allegiance of Israel to their father in heaven. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. Our Yohanan said, As two sticks which cause each other to rebound, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel in the wilderness. And does I have the school of our Janae expounded? Moses said before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, it was because of the silver and gold I have which thou didst lavish upon them until they said enough die that they were led to make a god of gold. A parable the lion does not tear and roar out of a basket of straw, but out of a basket of meat. Our Ashai said, Until Jeroboam Israel imbibed the sinful disposition from one calf, but from him onwards, from two or three calves, our Isaac said, No retribution whatsoever comes upon the world which does not contain a slight fraction of the first calf, i.e., the molten calf in it. Wilderness as it is written nevertheless in the day when I visit I will visit their sin upon them our Hannah said after twenty four generations the doom foretold in this verse was exacted as it is written he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying cause the visitations of the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand after this thing Jeroboam turned not from his evil way what is meant by after this thing our Abba said after the Holy One blessed be he had seized Jeroboam by his garment and urged him repent then I thou and the son of Jesse i.e. David will walk in the garden of Eden and who shall be at the head inquired he the son of Jesse shall be at the head if so he replied I do not desire it or Abba used to make a practice of lecturing on the three kings falling sick he undertook not to lecture thereon anymore yet no sooner Talmud Moss and Hedron be had he recovered than he lectured upon this again they his disciples remonstrated with him did you not undertake not to lecture on them he replied did they abandon their evil course that I should abandon my habit of lecturing upon them in the college of Arashi the lecture one day terminated at three kings tomorrow said he we will commence with our colleagues that night Manasseh came and appeared to him in a dream thou hast called us thy colleagues and the colleagues of thy father now from what part of the bread is the peace for reciting the Hamazi to be taken I do not know he answered thou hast not learned this he jived yet thou kayest us thy colleagues teach it me he begged and tomorrow I will teach it in thy name at the session he answered from the part that is baked into a crust he then questioned him since thou art so wise why didst thou worship idols he replied wert thou there thou wouldst have caught up the skirt of thy garment and sped after me the next day he observed to the students we will commence with our teachers so referring to the Three kings Ahab denotes that he was an odd brother to heaven and of a father to idolatry and odd to heaven as it is written a brother is born for trouble and a father to idolatry as it is written as a father loveth his children and it came to pass that it were a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat Yohanan said the light minor transgressions which Ahab committed were equal to the gravest committed by Jeroboam why then does scripture make Jeroboam the exemplar of sin because he was the first to corrupt yet altars are as heaps in the furrows of the fields Yohanan said this teaches that there is no furrow in Palestine upon which Ahab did not plant an idol and worship it whence do we know that he will not enter the future world from the verse and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall him that is shut up and forsaken in Israel shut up implies in this world forsaken in the next Yohanan said why did Omri merit sovereignty because he added a region to Palestine
and all the people, and it is impossible that there were no righteous among them, for it is written, Yet I have left one seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him, or not, and said Ahab was equally balanced, since it is written, and the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at the Ramoth Gilead? And one said in this manner, and one said in that manner, Are Joseph objected he of whom it is written, but there was none. Like unto Ahab which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord whom Jezebel his wife stirred up whereon it was taught every day she used to weigh out gold shekels for idols yet thou sayest that he was equally balanced but Ahab was generous with his money and because he used to benefit scholars with his wealth half his sins were forgiven and there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and the Lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so which spirit is meant are Yohanan said the spirit of Naboth the Jezreelite what is meant by go forth Robin said go forth from within my barrier as it is written he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight our papa observed thus men say he who takes his vengeance destroys his own house and Ahab made a grove and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him or Yohanan said this means that he wrote upon the gates of Samaria Ahab denies the God of Israel therefore he has no portion in the God of Israel and he sought Ahaziah and they caught him for he was hid in Samaria our Levi said he was engaged in erasing the divine names from the Torah and substituting the names of idols in their stead Manasseh denotes that he forgot God another explanation Manasseh denotes that he caused Israel to forget their father in heaven and how do we know that he will not enter the future world because it is written Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem and he made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel just as Ahab has no portion in the world to come so as Manasseh neither are Judah said Manasseh hath a portion therein for it is written and he prayed unto him and was entreated of him etc our Yohanan said both of them in support of their views expounded the same verse for it is written and I will cause to be removed unto all kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh the son of Hezekiah king of Judah one master maintains because of Manasseh who repented whilst they did not whilst the other master maintains Talmud, Mos and Hedron because of Manasseh who did not repent our Yohanan said he who asserts that Manasseh has no portion in the world to come weakens the hands of penitent sinners for a tanner recited. Before our Yohanan Manasseh was penitent for thirty three years as it is written Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem and he made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel how long did Ahab reign twenty two years how long did Manasseh reign fifty five years subtract there from twenty two which leaves thirty three our Yohanan said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe what is meant by and he prayed unto him and an opening was made for him should. Not and was entreated of him rather have been written this teaches that the Holy One blessed be he made him a kind of opening in the heavens in order to accept him with his repentance on account of the attribute of justice or Yohanan also said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe why is it written in the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah and in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah were there then no kings until then but it teaches that the Holy One blessed be he wished to hurl the world back into chaos on account of Jehoiakim but that he gazed at the rest of his generation and his mind was appeased the Holy One blessed be he also desired to hurl the world back into chaos because of Zedekiah's generation but that he gazed at Zedekiah himself and his mind was appeased but in the case of Zedekiah too it is written and he did that which was evil in the sight of God that denotes that he could have stemmed the evil of others and did not are. Yohanan also said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe what is meant by if a wise man contend with a foolish man whether he rage or laugh there is no rest the Holy One blessed be he said I was wrath with Ahaz and delivered him into the hands of the kings of Damascus whereupon he sacrificed burnt incense to their gods as it is written for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus which smote him and he said because the gods of the kings of Syria help them therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel I smiled upon Amaziah and delivered the kings of Edom into his hands so he brought their gods and prostrated himself before them as it is written now it came to pass that after Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burnt incense unto them our papa commented thus men say we for him who knows not his Fortune laugh for him who knows not his fortune woe to him who knows not the difference between good and bad and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate our Yohanan said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe it was the place where Halachot are decided upon our papa observed thus men say where the master hangs up his weapons there the mean shepherd hangs up his pitcher mnemonic by the field houses not shall befall our said in the name of our Jeremiah's B. Abba. What is meant by the verse I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding and lo it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down I went by the field of the slothful this refers to us and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding this denotes Manasseh and lo it was all grown over with thorns to Amon and nettles had covered the face thereof to Jehoiakim and the stone wall. There was broken down this alludes to Zedekiah in whose days the temple was destroyed Arista also said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba four classes will not appear before the presence of the Shechinah the class of scoffers the class of liars the class of hypocrites and the class of slanderers the class of scoffers as it is written he withdrew his hand from the scoffers the class of liars as it is written he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight the class of hypocrites as it is written for an hypocrite shall not come before him the class of slanderers as it is written for thou art not a god that hath pleasure in wickedness neither shall evil dwell with thee which means thou art righteous and hence there will not be evil in thy boat Arista also said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba what is meant by the verse there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling there shall no evil befall thee the evil impulse shall have no power over thee Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, thou wilt not find thy wife a doubtful nido when thou returnest from a journey. Another interpretation there shall no evil befall thee, thou wilt not be affrighted by nightmares and dread thoughts. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, thou wilt not have a son or a disciple who publicly burns his food. Thus far his father blessed him beyond this, his mother blessed him, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, etc. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Thus far his mother blessed him beyond this heaven, blessed him, Talmud, Moss and Hedron, be because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, will set him on high, because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him with long life, will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Our Simeon Belakish said what is. Meant by the verse and from the wicked their light is withholden and the high arm shall be broken now why is the iron of Rishad iron wicked suspended once a man becomes poor in friends below on earth he becomes poor above in heaven then let the iron not be written at all our Yohanan and our Eliezer differ in their answer one said because of David's honor the other said because of the honor of Nehemiah the son of Hashali our rabbis taught Manasseh interpreted Leviticus in 55. Different ways corresponding to the years of his reign Ahab in 85 and Jeroboam in 103 ways it has been taught our Meir said Absalom has no portion in the world to come for it is written and they smote Absalom and slew him they smote him in this world and slew him in the next it has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said on the authority of our Meir Hazahazia and all the kings of Israel of whom it is written and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Will neither live in the future world nor be judged there. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Here in Babylon, it is interpreted as meaning that he slew Isaiah in the West Palestine. They said it means that he made an image as heavy as a thousand men, and every day it slew all of them with whom does
Cease and seal the Torah as it is written. Bind up the testimony sealed along among my disciples. Manasseh cut out the divine name from the Torah and broke down the altar. Amon burnt the Torah and allowed spider webs to cover the altar through complete disuse. Ahas permitted consanguineous relations. Manasseh violated his sister Amon, his mother, as it is written. For he Amon sinned very much. Our Yohanan and our Eliezer dispute therein. One maintained he burnt the Torah, the other he disanured his mother. His mother remonstrated with him. Hast thou done any pleasure in the place whence thou didst issue? He replied, Do I do this for any other purpose than to provoke my creator? When Jehoiakim came, he said, My predecessors knew not how to anger him. Do we need him for aught but his light? But we have parving gold which we use for light. Let him take his light, said his courtiers to him. But silver and gold are his two, as it is written. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. A host he has long since given them to us, he replied, as it is written, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Rabbah said to Rabbah Bimari, why did they not count Jehoiakim amongst those who have no portion in the world to come, seeing that it is written of him and the remaining words of Jehoiakim and the abomination which he wrought and that which was found upon him, etc. What is meant by that which was found upon him are Yohanan and are Elizer. Differ one maintained that he engraved the name of an idol upon his person and the other held that he engraved the name of heaven thereon as a gesture of contempt. He answered, I have heard no explanation concerning the kings why Jehoiakim was not included, but I have heard one concerning the commoners. Thus why did they not include Micah because his bread was available to travelers as it is written, every traveler turned to the Levites and he shall pass through the sea with affliction. And shall smite the waves in the sea. Our Yohanan observed this refers to Micah's graven image and has been taught. Our Nathan said from Gareb to Shiloh is a distance of three mils and the smoke of the altar and that of Micah's image intermingled the ministering angels wished to thrust Micah away. But the Holy One blessed be he said to them, Let him alone because his bread is available for wayfarers. And it was on this account that the people involved in the matter of the concubine at Jabi were punished for the Holy One blessed be he said to them, Ye did not protest for my honor, yet ye protest for the honor of a woman. Our Yohanan said on the authority of our Jose B. Kisma of great importance is a mouthful of food given to wayfarers since it alienated two families from Israel as it is written, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord because they met you not with bread and water in the way when ye come forth out of Egypt. Our Yohanan stating his own. View said it alienates those who are near and draws near those who are distant. It causes God's eyes to be averted from the wicked and made the Sheshanah to rest even on the prophets of Baal and an unwitting offense in connection therewith is accounted as deliberate. It alienates those who are near Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin is deduced from Ammon and Moab and brings near those who are distant from Jethro for our Yohanan said as a reward for Jethro saying call him that he may eat bread. His descendants were privileged to sit in the hall of hewn stones as scribes as it is written and the family of the scribes which dwell at Jabez the Tirahites, the Shemithites and such Hathites these are the Kenites that came of Hemoth the father of the house of Rechab whilst elsewhere it is written and the children of the Kenite Moses father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah which lieth in the south of Arad and they went and Dwelt among the people, it causes God's eyes to be averted from the wicked. This is learned from Micah and made the Sheshanah to rest upon the prophets of Baal from the companion of it of the prophet. For it is written, and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back, and an unwitting offense in connection therewith is accounted as deliberate. For Rab Judah said in Rab's name had but Jonathan given David two loaves of bread for his travels. Not the city of priests would not have been massacred, Dog the Edomite would not have been destroyed, and Saul and his three sons would not have been slain. Now why did they not include Hazar Jeremiah B. Abba said because he was placed between two righteous men, Jotham and Hezekiah. Or Joseph said because he was abashed before Isaiah as it is written, and said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Hazal and Shir Jashab thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in it. Highway of the field of the copes, what is the meaning of copes? Some say he hid his face in shame and fled, others say he dragged the fuller's trough upon his head, reversed to hide his face in shame and fled, and why was Ammon not included because of Josiah's honor? Then Manasseh Hezekiah's son too should not be included because of Hezekiah's honor. A son confers privileges on his father, but a father confers no privilege on a son, for it is written, Neither is there anyone that can deliver. Out of my hand Abraham cannot deliver Ishmael, and Isaac cannot deliver Esau. Now having arrived at this answer, Ahastu was omitted because of Hezekiah's honor, and why was Jehoiakim omitted on account of what our high son of Arabia said? For our high son of Arabia said, Upon Jehoiakim's skull was written this, and yet another. Now our paradise grandfather found his skull lying about at the gates of Jerusalem, and upon it was written this, and yet another, so he buried it, but it refused to be buried. I.e. it reemerged again, he buried it, and again it would not remain buried thereupon. He said, This must be Jehoiakim's skull, of whom it is written, He shall be buried with the burial of an astron and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Yet reflected he, he was a king, and it is not meet to disgrace him. So he wrapped it up in silk and placed it in a chest on his wife, seeing it. She thought that it must be the skull of his first wife, whom he could not forget, so she fired the oven and burnt it. This is the meaning of the inscription, this and yet another it has been taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said, On account of Hezekiah's boasting, and I have done that which was good in thy sight, he was led to inquire what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me on account of what shall be the sign Heathens ate at his table, and on account of Heathens eating at his table, he caused his children to go into exile. This supports Hezekiah's dictum, he who invites a heathen into his house and attends. To him causes his children to go into exile, as it is written, and of thy sons that shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. And Hezekiah was glad of them, and shewed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment, etc. Rab said what is meant by the house of his precious things, his wife who makes the drinks for them. Samuel said he shewed them his treasury. Are Yohanan said he shewed them weapons which could destroy other weapons. How it conduct the city sit solitary. Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, why was Israel smitten with it? Because they transgressed the thirty-six injunctions of the Torah, which are punished by extinction. Our Yohanan said, why were they smitten with an alphabetical dirge? Because they violated the Torah, which was given by means of the alphabet. Sit bad solitary. Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, the Holy One, blessed be he exclaimed. I said Israel then shall dwell in safety alone bad the fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine also his heavens shall drop down dew but now they shall sit solitary the city that was full of people Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name they used to marry off a young girl to an adult and a minor to a full-grown woman that they might bear many children she is become as a widow Rab Judah said in Rab's name as a widow yet not a widow in fact as a woman whose husband had gone overseas but intends returning to her she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name wherever they went they became princes of their masters our rabbis taught it once happened that two men Jews were taken captive on Mount Carmel and their captor was walking behind them Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be one of them said to the other the camel walking in front of us is blind in one eye and is laden with two barrels one of wine and the other of oil and of it. Two men leading it, one is a Jew and the other a heathen. Their captor said to them, Yes, if neck people, whence do you know this? They replied, Because the camel is eating of the herbs before it, only on the side where it can see, but not on the other where it cannot see. It is laden with two barrels, one of wine and the other of oil, because wine drips and is absorbed into the earth, whilst oil drips and rests on the surface. And of the two men leading it, one is a Jew and the other a heathen, because the heathen obeys the call of nature in the roadway, whilst the Jew turns aside. He hastened after them and found that it was as they had said. So he went and kissed them on the head, brought them into his house, and prepared a great feast for them. He danced with joy before them and exclaimed, Blessed be he who made choice of Abraham's seed and imparted to them of his wisdom. And wherever they go, they become princes to their masters.
Hath he made it glorious by way of the sea beyond Jordan the circuit of the nations whereupon Rabbi said in Aryohanan's name whoever oppresses Israel does not weary not to you all yet that pass by Rabbi said in Aryohanan's name this gives biblical support to the custom of saying not to you all yet that pass by Aram Rome said in Rab's name they have made me as those who transgress the law for in the case of Sodom it is written and the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire. Whilst in the case of Jerusalem it is written from above hath he sent fire into my bones and it prevaileth against them for the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of Sodom is there than favoritism in the matter Rabbi answered in Aryohanan's name there was an extra measure of punishment in Jerusalem which Sodom was spared for in the case of Sodom it is written behold this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom pridefulness of bread and abundance of idleness was in. Her and in her daughters neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy whereas in the case of Jerusalem it is written the hands of the pitiful women have sodden their children the Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me as one says to his neighbor this coin has lost its currency all thine enemies have opened their mouths against the Rabbi said in Aryohanan's name why did he place the P.E. before the iron because of the spies who spoke with their mouths. What they had not seen with their eyes they eat my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord Rabbi said in Aryohanan's name whoever eats the bread of Israel enjoys the taste of bread whoever does not eat the bread of Israel does not enjoy the taste of bread they call not upon the Lord Rabbi said this refers to the judges Samuel said to teachers of children now who enumerated them are as she said the men of the great assembly enumerated them Rabbi Judah said in Rabbi's name they wish to. Include another S.C. Solomon but an apparition of his father's likeness came and prostrated itself in supplication before them which however they disregarded a heavenly fire descended and its flames licked their seats yet they still disregarded it whereupon a heavenly voice cried out to them cease thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men he who gave precedence to my house over his and moreover built my house in seven years but his own. In thirteen he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men yet they paid no attention even to this whereupon the heavenly voice cried out should it be according to thy mind he will recompense it whether thou refuse or whether thou choose and not I etc. The door she maintained all of them will enter the world to come as it is written Gilead is mine Manasseh is mine Ephraim also is the strength of mine head Judah is my lawgiver Moab is my washpot over Edom will I cast out. My shoe Philistia triumphed thou because of me thus Gilead is mine this refers to Ahab who fell at Ramoth Gilead Manasseh is literally meant Ephraim also is the strength of mine head this alludes to Jeroboam a descendant of Ephraim Judah is my lawgiver this refers to Ahidah fell Talmud, Moss and Hedron who is descended from Judah Moab is my washpot to Gehazi who was smitten on account of matters connected with bathing over Edom will I cast out my shoe to Dog the Edomite Philistia triumph. Thou because of me the ministering angels exclaimed before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe if David comes who slew the Philistine and gave possession of Gath to thy children and complains at thy giving a share in the world to come to Dog and Ahidah fell what wilt thou do with him he replied it is my duty to make them friends with each other why is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding Rab said the Seth Israel gave the prophet a victorious. Answer for the prophet said to Israel return and repent your fathers who sinned where are they they replied and your prophets who did not sin where are they as it is written your fathers where are they and the prophets do they live forever he answered them yet your fathers repented and admitted the justice of their punishment as it is written but my words and my statutes which I commanded my servants the prophets did they not take hold of your fathers and they returned and said like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doing so hath he dealt with us Samuel said ten men came and sat down before him as see the prophet said he to them return and repent they answered if a master sells his slave or a husband divorces his wife has one claim upon the other thereupon the holy one blessed be he said to the prophet go and say to them thus saith the Lord where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom I have put away or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you behold for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves and for your transgressions is your mother put away this agrees with Rush Lakish who said why does scripture write David my servant Nebuchadnezzar my servant because it was revealed and known to him who spoke and the world was created that Israel would argue thus therefore the Holy One blessed be he forestalled them by calling him his servant and when a servant acquires property to whom does it servant belong and to whom the property and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that yes say we will be as the heathen as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone as I live saith the Lord God surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you or not and said even with such fury let the merciful rage against us but that he redeem us for he doth chastise him to discretion and his God doth teach him Rabbi Barhanna said. The prophet urged Israel return and repent they replied we cannot the tempter rules over us he said to them curb your evil desires they replied let his God teach us four commoners his Balaam doeg Ahedafel and Gehazi Balaam denotes without the people another explanation Balaam denotes that he corrupted a people the son of Beer denotes that he committed bestiality Atan taught Beer Kishan Rashadim and Laban the Syrian are identical Beer denotes that he committed bestiality Kishan Rashadim that he perpetrated two evils upon Israel one in the days of Jacob and the other in the days of the judges but what was his real name Laban the Syrian scripture writes the son of Beer but also his son was Beer Yohanan said his father Beer was as his son in the matter of prophecy now only Balaam will not enter the future world but other heathens will enter on whose authority is the mission taught on our Joshua's for it has been taught our Eliezer said the wicked shall be Turned into hell and all the nations that forget God the wicked shall be turned into hell this refers to transgressors among Israel and all the nations that forget God to transgressors among the heathen this is our Eliezer's view but our Joshua said to him as it stated and those among all the nations surely all the nations that forget God is written but interpret thus the wicked shall be turned into hell and who are they all the nations that forget God now that wicked man Balaam to gave a sign for himself that he would not enter the future world by saying let me die the death of the righteous meaning if I die the death of the righteous i.e. a natural death my last end will be like his but if not i.e. if I die a violent death then behold I go unto my people and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed and taught there was never peace between Midian and Moab the matter may be compared to two dogs in one kernel which were always enraged at each other than a wolf. Attack one whereupon the other said if I do not help him he will kill him today and attack me tomorrow so they both went and killed the wolf our papa observed thus people say the weasel and cat went at peace with each other had a feast on the fat of the luckless and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam but whither had the princes of Midian gone as soon as he said to them lodge here this night and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me the reason does any father hate his son Arnam and said impudence even against heaven is of avail at first it is written thou shalt not go with them yet subsequently it is said rise up and go with them Arshis hate said impudence is sovereignty without a crown for it is written and I am this day weak though anointed king and these men the sons of Syria be too hard for me or you had and said Balaam limped on one foot as it is written and he walked haltingly Samson was lame in both feet as it is written Dan shall be a serpent by. The way an adder in the path that bite the horse's heels Balaam was blind in one eye as it is said and the man whose eyes open he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum for here it is written falling but having his eyes open whilst elsewhere is written and Haman was fallen on the bed whereon Esther was it was stated Marzitra said he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum Mar the son of Rubin is said he committed bestiality with his ass the view that he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum is as was stated the view that he committed bestiality with his asses because here it is written he bowed he lay down as a lion and as a great lion whilst elsewhere it is written at her feet Talmud Mas and Hedron be he bowed he fell and knoweth the mind of the most high now seeing that he did not even know the mind of his ass could he know the mind of the most high what is this about the mind of his ass for the elder said to him why didst thou not right upon thy horse he replied I have put it to graze in the dewy pastures but the ass said to him am I not thine ass merely for
Deduce it from this verse come by people enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed now when is he angry in the first three hours of the day when the comb of the cock is white but at all times it is white at all other times it has red streaks but at that moment of God's anger there are no red streaks in it a sectarian lived in the neighborhood of our Joshua B. Levi who used to vex him one day he took a foul tied it to the foot of his bed and sat down saying when that moment comes I will curse him but when that moment came he dozed off this proof said he that it is not fitting to do this for it is written also to punish is not meet good for the righteous even of a sectarian one should not speak thus it taught in the name of our Mayor when the sun shines and kings place their crowns upon their heads and adore the sun immediately the Almighty becomes wroth and Balaam rose up in the Morning and settled his assay tended taught on the authority of our Simeon B. Eliezer love disregards the rule of dignified conduct this is deduced from Abraham for it is written and Abraham rose up early in the morning and settled his assay likewise disregards the rule of dignified conduct this is deduced from Balaam for it is written and Balaam rose up in the morning and settled his ass Rab Judah said in Rab's name one should always occupy himself with Torah and good deeds though it be not for their own sake for out of good work misapplied in purpose there comes the desire to do it for its own sake for as a reward for the forty-two sacrifices offered up by Balak he was privileged that Ruth should be his descendant as our Hosea B. Huna said Ruth was the daughter of Eglon the grandson of Balak king of Moab Rabbah said to Rabbah B. Mari it is written and moreover the king's servants came to bless our Lord King David saying God make the name of Solomon better than thy name and make his throne greater than thy throne is it mannerly to speak thus to a king? You replied, They meant according to the nature of thy throne, etc. For should you not say, Thus consider blessed above women, shall jail the wife of Heber the Canite be blessed, shall she be above women in the tent? Now who are the women in the tent? Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, is it then meet to say thus? But it means according to the nature of their blessedness. So here too it bears the same meaning. Now this conflicts with our Jose Bihoni, for our Jose Bihoni said, Of everyone a man is jealous except his son and disciple. His son, this is deduced from Solomon, his disciple is deduced. If you like, say from, Let a double quantity of thy spirit be upon me, or if you like, say from, And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge, and the Lord put a thing in the mouth of Balaam. Our Eliezer said, An angel, our Jonathan said, Hook our Yohan, and said, From the blessings of that wicked man you may learn his intentions, thus he. Wish to curse them that the Israelites should possess no synagogues or schoolhouses. This is deduced from how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, that the Shechinah should not rest upon them, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, that their kingdom should not endure as the valleys are they spread forth, that they might have no olive trees and vineyards as gardens by the riverside, that their odor might not be fragrant as the trees of lime aloes which the Lord hath planted, that their kings might not be tall and as cedar trees beside the waters, that they might not have a king, the son of a king, he shall pour the water out of his buckets, that their kingdom might not rule over other nations, and his seed shall be in many waters, that their kingdom might not be strong, and his king shall be higher than a gag, that their kingdom might not be awe-inspiring, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Our Abubikahana said all of them reverted to a curse excepting the synagogues and schoolhouses for it is written, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing for thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. The curse, but not the curses, are Samuel B. Naaman. He said in our Jonathan's name, what is meant by the verse, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Better is the curse wherewith the Hajj the Shilonite cursed Israel, than the blessing wherewith the wicked Balaam blessed the Hajj the Shilonite cursed Israel by reed, as it is said, for the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, just as a reed grows in well watered soil, and its stem tall wood. Ma Sanhedrin is renewed, and its roots are numerous, and even if all the winds of the world come and blow upon it, they cannot dislodge it from its place, but it sways in unison with them, and as soon as the winds subside, the reed still stands in its place, so may Israel be, but the wicked Balaam blessed them by the cedar, just as the cedar does not stand in a watery place, and its roots are few. And its stock is not renewed, and even if all the winds of the world come and blow upon it, they cannot stir it from its place. But immediately the south wind blows upon it, it uproots and overturns it on its face. So may Israel be named more. It was the reed's privilege that a quill thereof should be taken for the writing of the scroll of the Torah prophets and Hagiographa. And he looked on the Canaanite and took up his parable. Balaam said to Jethro, Thou Canaanite, wast thou not with us in that scheme? Who then placed thee among the strong ones of the world? And that is what our high Abba said in our Semai's name. Three were involved in that scheme. Bis Balaam, Job, and Jethro. Balaam, who advised it, was slain. Job, who was silent, was punished through suffering. And Jethro, who fled his descendants, were privileged to sit in the hall of hewn stones, as it is written. And the families of the scribes which dwell at Job, as the Tyrathites, the Shemithites, and Sechathites, these are the Canaanites that came of Hemoth. The father of the house of Rechab, whilst elsewhere it is written, and the children of the Canaanite Moses' father in law went up out of the city of palm trees, and he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doth this? Our Simeon Belakish said, Woe unto him who make himself alive by the name of God, our Yohan, and said, Woe to the nation that may be found attempting to hinder when the Holy One blessed be, he accomplishes the redemption of his children who would throw his garment between a lion and a lioness when these are copulating, and ships shall come from the coast of Chittim. Rab said, This refers to the white legion, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict ever until Asher they shall slay, after that they shall throw into subjection, and now behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to that people in the latter days, but he should have said, What that people shall do to this people, our Abubikahana said, It is as one who cursing. Himself refers his male diction to others. He Balaam said thus to him, Balak, the god of these hates lewdness, and they are very partial to linen come, and I will advise thee erect for them tents enclosed by hangings in which place harlots old women without young women within to sell them linen garments. So he erected curtain tents from the snowy mountain Hermon as far as Beth Hayashimoth, i.e. right from north to south, and placed harlots in them old women without young women within. And when an Israelite ate, drank, and was merry, and issued forth for a stroll in the marketplace, the old woman would say to him, Dost thou not desire linen garments? The old woman offered it at its current value, but the young one, for less this happened two or three times after that, she would say to him, Thou art now like one of the family, sit down and choose for thyself gourds of Ammonite wine lay near her, and at that time Ammonite and even wine had not yet been forbidden, said she to him, Wouldst thou? Like to drink a glass of wine, having drunk his passion was inflamed, and he exclaimed to her, Yield to me. Thereupon she brought forth an idol from her bosom and said to him, Worship this, but I am a Jew. He protested, What does that concern thee? She rejoined, Nothing is required, but that thou should uncover thyself, whilst he did not know that such was its worship. Nay, said she, I will not leave thee ere thou hast denied the Torah of Moses, thy teacher, as it is written. They went into Baal Pier and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. And Israel abode in Shittim. Our Eliezer said its name was Shittim. Our Joshua said they engaged in ways of folly, she and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Our Eliezer said they met them naked. Our Joshua said they were all excited to pollution. What is the meaning of Revitim? Our Eliezer said Revitim was its name. Our Joshua said it was so called because there they slackened in there. Loyalty to the Torah as it is written the fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands or Yohanan said wherever scripture writes and he abode or dwelt it denotes trouble thus and Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab and Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And the time drew near that Israel must die in Judah and Israel dwelt safely every man under his vine and under his fig tree and the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon had of the Edomite he was the king's seed in Edom and they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain Balaam also the son of Beor they slew with the sword what business had Balaam there are
Blessed be he sits and is anxious lest one go out on an evil course but when he has done so he exclaims woe that he has entered on an evil path Nemonic the mighty wicked righteous richest scribe R. Isaac said what is meant by the verse why boastest thou thyself in mischief O mighty man the goodness of God endureth continually the holy one blessed be he said to dog art thou not a mighty man in Torah why then boastest thou thyself in mischief is not the love of God continually spread over thee. R. Isaac also said what is meant by the verse but unto the wicked God saith what hast thou to do to declare my statutes the holy one blessed be he said to the wicked dog what hast thou to do to declare i.e. study my statutes when thou comest to the sections dealing with murderers and slanderers how dost thou expound them or that thou shouldst take my covenant in thy mouth R. M. I said dog's learning was only from the lips without R. Isaac also said what is meant by the verse the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him at first they shall fear the wicked person but subsequently laugh at him R. Isaac also said what is meant by the verse he hath swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again God shall cast them out of his belly David pleaded before the holy one blessed be he sovereign of the universe let dog die he replied he hath swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again he rejoined let God cast them out of his belly R. Isaac also said what is Meant by God shall likewise destroy thee forever the Holy One blessed be he said to David let us bring Dog to the future world he replied to him God shall likewise destroy thee forever what is meant by the verse he shall take thee away and pluck thee out of the tent and root thee out of the land of the living seal of the Holy One blessed be he urged let a law be stated in his name in the schoolhouse but he David replied to him he shall take thee away and pluck thee out of the tent and let his children be rabbis and thy root shall be torn out of the land of the living seal. R. Isaac also said what is meant by the verse where is the enumerator where is the way where is he that counted the towers where is he who enumerated all the letters of the Torah where is he who weighed all the like comparatively unimportant and heavy important precepts of the Torah where is he that counted the towers who counted three hundred fixed laws on a tower flying in the air R. M. I said. Dog and Ahitophel propounded four hundred problems with respect to a tower flying in the air and not one was solved. Rob observed is there any greatness in propounding problems in the years of Rab Judah? The whole study was confined to Nezikin whilst we study a great deal even of oxen and when Rab Judah came to the law of a woman preserves vegetables in a pot or as others say olives which were preserved with their leaves are clean he observed I see here the discussion of Rab and Samuel. Whilst we on the other hand have studied oxen at thirteen sessions yet Rab Judah merely took off his shoes and the rain came down whilst we cry out in supplication but there is none to heed us but it is because the Holy One blessed be he requires the heart as it is written but the Lord looped on the heart our measure she has said Dog and Ahitophel did not comprehend legal discussions Marzitra objected those of whom it is written where is the enumerator where is the way where is he that? Counted the towers yet you say that they did not comprehend legal discussions but their views were not in accordance with the Halisha final ruling as it is written the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him RM I said Dog did not die until he forgot his learning as it is written he shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray R. Ashi said he was smitten with leprosy for it is said thou hast destroyed all them that go a from thee whilst elsewhere it is written and if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year then the house shall be established Lazimuth to him that hath bought it which we translate Lahali and I.e. absolutely and definitely the purchasers and we learned the only difference between him who is a Mazaramalat definitely a leper and one who is locked up for observation is in respect of letting the hair grow wild and tearing the garments Nemonic three saw and half and called Aryuhan and said Three destroying angels appeared before Dog. One caused him to forget his learning. One burnt his soul, and the third scattered his ashes in the synagogues and schoolhouses. Or Yohanan also said Dog and Ahitophel did not see each other. I.e., were not contemporaries. Dog living in Saul's reign. Ahitophel and David's. Or Yohanan also said Dog and Ahitophel did not live out half their days. It has been taught likewise. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Dog's entire lifetime amounted only to thirty-four years. And Ahitophel's to thirty-three. Or Yohanan also said at first David called Ahitophel his teacher, then his companion, colleague, and finally his disciple. At first he called him his teacher, as it is written. But it was thou a man mine equal, my guide and mine acquaintance, then his companions, as it is written. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Finally his disciple, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, Talmud, Moss. Sanhedrin, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, one should never intentionally bring himself to the test, since David, king of Israel, did so and fell. He said unto him, Sovereign of the universe, why do we say in prayer the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, but not the God of David? He replied, They were tried by me, but thou wast not. Then replied, He, Sovereign of the universe, examine and try me, as it is written, Examine me, O Lord, and try me. He answered, I will test thee, and yet grant thee a special privilege, for I did not inform them of the nature of their trial beforehand. Yet I informed thee that I will try thee in a matter of adultery straightway. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed, etc. Are you said he changed his night couch to a day couch, but he forgot the hollow child. There is a small organ in man which satisfies him in his hunger, but makes him hunger when satisfied, and he walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon now Bathsheba was cleansing her hair behind a screen when Satan came to him appearing in the shape of a bird he shot an arrow at him which broke the screen thus she stood revealed and he saw her immediately and David sent and inquired after the woman and one said is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam the wife of Uriah the Hittite and David sent messengers and took her and she came unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanliness and she returned unto her house thus it is written thou hast proved mine heart thou hast visited me in the night thou hast tried me and shall find nothing I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress he said thus would that a bridle had fallen into the mouth of mine enemy i.e. himself that I had not spoken thus Rabbi expounded what is meant by the verse to the chief musician Asam. Of David and the Lord put I my trust, how say it my soul flee as a bird to your mountain. David pleaded before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, forgive me that sin that men may not say your mountain as see the king has been put to flight by a bird. Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David pleaded before the Holy One. Blessed be he, thou knowest full well that had I wished to suppress my lust, I could have done so, but thought I let them the people not say the servant triumphed against his master. Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse where I am ready to halt and my sorrow is continually before me. Bat she, but the daughter of Iliam was predestined for David from the six days of creation, but that she came to him with sorrow and the school of Arishmael taught likewise she was worthy, i.e., predestined for David. From the six days of creation, but that he enjoyed her before she was ripe. Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse, but in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yet the objects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. David exclaimed before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe. Thou knowest full well that had they torn my flesh, my blood would not have flown. Moreover, when they are engaged in studying the four deaths inflicted by Beth, then they interrupt their studies and taught me, saying, David, what is the death penalty of him who seduces a married woman? I replied to them, He who commits adultery with a married woman is executed by strangulation. Yet has he a portion in the world to come? But he who publicly puts his neighbor to shame has no portion in the world to come. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, even during David's illness, he fulfilled the conjugal rights of his eighteen wives, as it is written. I and weary with my groaning all the night, make I my bed to swim my water, my couch with my tears. Rab Judah also said in Rab's name, David wished to worship idols as it is written, and it came to pass that when David was come to the head where he worshipped God, now Rosh head can only refer to idols as it is written, this image's head was of fine gold, but behold, Hushai the Archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. He demonstrated with David, shall
never been committed, he replied, It is already ordained that thy son Solomon should say in his wisdom, Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. He lamented, Must I suffer so much? He replied, Accept thy chastisement, and he accepted it. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, Six months was David smitten with leprosy, the Shechinah deserted him, and the Sanhedrin held aloof from him. He was smitten with leprosy, as it is written, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. The Shechinah deserted him, as it is written, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And the Sanhedrin kept aloof from him, as it is written, Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. How do we know that it was for six months? Because it is written, and the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Whilst elsewhere it is written, in Hebron reigned he over Judah seven years and six months. Thus these six months are not counted in the first passage quoted, proving that he was smitten with leprosy. He prayed to him, Sovereign of the universe, forgive me that sin it is forgiven thee. Then shew me a token for good that they which hate me. May see it and be ashamed because thou Lord hast helped me and comforted me. He replied, In thy lifetime I will not make it known that I have forgiven thee, but in the lifetime of thy son Solomon. Thus when Solomon built the temple, he wished to take the ark into the Holy of Holies, but the gates thereof cleaved to each other and would not open. He uttered twenty-four psalms, but was not answered. He then further supplicated, Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in, who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And it is further said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Still he was not answered, but on praying, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. He was immediately answered in that hour. The faces of David's enemies turned black as the bottom of a pot in their discomfiture, and all Israel knew that. The Holy One blessed be he had forgiven him that sin Gehazi as it is written and Elisha came to Damascus whither did he go or Yohanan said he went to bring Gehazi back to repentance but he would not repent repent he urged he replied I have thus learned from thee he who sins and causes the multitude to sin is not afforded the means of repentance what had he done some say he hung a lodestone above Jeroboam sin i.e. the golden calf and thus suspended it between heaven and earth by its magnetism others maintained he engraved the divine name in its see the calf's mouth whereupon it continually proclaimed I am the Lord thy God and thou shalt have no other gods before me others say he drove the rabbis away from him see Elisha as it is written and the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us proving that till then it was not too narrow our rabbis taught let the left hand repulse but the right hand always. Invite back not as Elisha who thrust Gehazi away with both hands as it is written and Naaman said be content take two talents and he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags and Elisha said unto him whence comest thou Gehazi and he said thy servant went no whither and he said unto him went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants but had he taken so much he had only taken silver and garments our Isaac said just then Elisha was sitting and lecturing on the eight unclean reptiles now Naaman the chief captain of the king of Syria was a leper a maiden who had been captured from the land of Israel said to him if thou wilt go to Elisha he will heal thee when he came there he said to him go and dip thyself in the Jordan thou dost but ridicule me he exclaimed but his companions urged him what does it mattered to thee go and test it so he went dipped himself in the Jordan and was healed he returned and offered him all he had but he Elisha refused to accept it thereupon Gehazi left Elisha's presence went and took whatever he did and put it away when he returned Elisha saw a leprous eruption on his head thou wicked man he cried the time has come for thee to receive thy reward for studying the laws of the eight reptiles so the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow and there were four lepers men at the entering in of the gate our Yohanan said they were Gehazi and his three sons it was taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said human nature a child and a woman the left hand should repulse them but the right hand bring them back our rabbis taught Elisha was ill on three occasions once when he incited the bears against the children once when he repulsed Gehazi with both hands and the third was the illness of which he died as it is written now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness whereof he died until Abraham there was no old age whoever saw Abraham said this is Isaac and whoever saw Isaac said this is Abraham therefore Abraham prayed that there should be old age as it is written and Abraham was old and well stricken in age until Jacob there was no illness so he prayed and illness came into existence as it is written and one told Joseph behold thy father is sick until Elisha no sick man ever recovered but Elisha came and prayed and he recovered as it is written now Elisha was fallen sick of sickness whereof he died mission of the generation of the flood has no portion in the future world nor will they stand at the last judgment as it is written and the Lord said my spirit will not always enter into judgment with man there will be neither judgment nor my spirit for them the generation of the dispersion have no portion in the future world as it is written so the Lord Scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, so the Lord scattered them abroad refers to this world, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad to the world to come. The men of Sodom have no portion in the future world as it is written, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord, exceedingly wicked in this world, and sinners in the world to come, yet will they stand at judgment. Our Nehemiah said, Neither the generation of the flood nor the men of Sodom will stand at judgment as it is written, therefore Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment refers to the generation of the flood, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous to the men of Sodom. They the sages answered him, They will not stand in the congregation of the righteous, but they will stand in the congregation of the wicked, the spies have no portion in it. World to come as it is written even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord they died in this world by the plague in the world to come the generation of the wilderness have no share in the future world and will not stand at the last judgment as it is written in this wilderness they shall be consumed and there they shall die this is our Akiva's view our Eliezer said concerning them it is said gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice the congregation of Korah is not destined to ascend from the earth as it is written and the earth closed upon them in this world and they perished from among the congregation in the next this is our Akiva's opinion our Eliezer said of them it is written the Lord killeth and make the live he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up tomorrow our rabbis taught the generation of the flood have no portion in the world to come as it is written and every living Substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground and every living substance was destroyed refers to this world which was upon the face of the ground to the next this is our Akiva's view our Judah be but they are maintained they will neither revive nor be judged as it is written my spirit will not always enter into judgment with man teaching neither judgment nor spirit another meaning of my spirit will not enter etc their soul shall not return to its sheath our menahem son of our Jose said even when the Holy One blessed be he restores the souls to the dead bodies their soul shall grieve them in the Gehenna as it is written ye shall conceive chaff ye shall bring forth stubble your soul as fire shall devour you our rabbis taught the generation of the flood waxed haughty only because of the good which the Holy One blessed be he lavished upon them behold what is written of them their houses are safe from fear neither is the rod of God upon them it is also written their bulge and Faileth not their cow calveth and casteth not her calf further they send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance further they take the timbrel and the harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ and it is also written they spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures and it is also written and in a moment go down to the grave and tis that which caused them to say to God depart from us for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways what is the Almighty that we should serve him and what profit should we have if we pray unto him they said thus do we need
Kind accepting the Tushlami and God said unto Noah the end of all flesh is come before me or Yohanan said come and see how great is the power of robbery for lo though the generation of the flood transgressed all laws their decree of punishment was sealed only because they stretched out their hands to rob as it is written for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth and it is also written violence i.e. robbery is risen up into a rod of wickedness none of them shall remain nor of their multitude nor any of theirs neither shall there be wailing for them or Eliezer said this teaches that it violence personified directed itself like a staff stood before the Holy One blessed be he and said sovereign of the universe there is no good in out of them or out of their multitude or of theirs neither shall there be wailing for them the school of our Ishmael taught the doom of destruction was decreed against Noah too but that he Found favor in the eyes of God as it is written, it repenteth me that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and the Lord was comforted that he had made man in the earth. When Ardimi came, he said, The Holy One, blessed be he, exclaimed, I did well in preparing graves for them in the earth. How is this signified by the verse here is written, and the Lord was comforted, whilst elsewhere it is stated, and he comforted them and spake kindly to them. Others say, He exclaimed, I did not do well in establishing graves for them in the earth. Here it is written, and it repented the Lord, whilst elsewhere it is written, and the Lord repented of the evil which he had thought to do unto his people. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Are Yohanan said in his generations, but not in other generations. Reshlakish maintained even in his generations. How much more so in other generations are Hanan said as an illustration of our Yohanan's view. To what may this be compared to a barrel of one lying in a vault of acid in its place its odor is fragrant by comparison with the acid elsewhere its odor will not be fragrant Arashai said as an illustration of Reshlakish's view to what may this be compared to a file of spikenard oil lying amidst refuse if it is fragrant where it is how much more so amidst spices and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle if man sinned how did the beasts in Eitan taught on the authority of our Joshua Bikarha this may be compared to a man who set up a bridal canopy for his son and prepared a banquet with every variety of food subsequently his son died whereupon he arose and broke up the feast saying have I prepared all this for any but my son now that he is dead what need have I of the banquet thus the holy one blessed be he said to did I create the animals and beasts for aught but man now that man has sinned what need have I of the animals and beasts all that was in the dry land died but not the fish in the sea are Hosea of Caesarea taught what is meant by the verse he is swift as the waters their portion is cursed in the earth he beholdeth not the way of the vineyards this teaches that the righteous no rebuke them urging repent for if not the holy one blessed be he will bring a deluge upon you and cause your bodies to float upon the water like gourds as it is written he is light i.e. floats upon the waters moreover ye shall be taken as a curse for all future generations as it is written their portion is cursed in the earth he beholdeth not the way of the vineyards this teaches that they look by the way of the vineyards they said to him who then prevents him he replied i have one dear one to draw out from you Talmud, Moss and Hedron, B. if so they retorted we will not turn aside from the way of the vineyards Robert taught what is meant by the verse he that is ready to slip with his feet is as a stone Despised in the thought of him that is at ease, this teaches that when no rebuked them and spoke words to them that were as hard as fiery flints, they derided him, said they to him, Old man, what is this ark for? He replied, The Holy One, blessed be he, will bring a flood upon you, a flood of what they jeered. If a flood of fire, we have a substance called Eli the Walsh. Should he bring a flood of water, if he brings it up from the earth, we have iron plates with which we can cover the earth to prevent the water from coming up. If from heaven, we have a substance called Echop. Others say, Echosh, which can ward it off. He replied, He will bring it from between the heels of your feet. As it is written, He is ready for the steps of your feet. It has been taught the waters of the flood were as severe as semen. As it is written, It is ready for the steps of the feet. Are his ta said with hot passion, they sent and by hot water they were punished for here. It is written, and the water cooled whilst elsewhere. It is said then the king's wrath cooled down and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. What was the nature of these seven days? Rab said these were the days of mourning for Methuselah, thus teaching that the lamenting for the righteous postpones retribution. Another meaning is after the seven days during which the Holy One blessed be he reversed the order of nature, the sun rising in the west and setting in the east. Another meaning the Holy One blessed be he first appointed a long time for them and then a short time. Another meaning after the seven days during which he gave a foretaste of the future world that they might know what good they had withheld from themselves of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven's man and wife have and beast marital relationship. Our Samuel be nom and said in our Jonathan's name it means of those with which no sin had been committed. Once did he know no Arhista said he led them past the arthos. Which the ark accepted had certainly not been the object of sin, whilst those which it rejected had certainly been the object of sin. Arabab said he took only those which came of their own accord, make the an ark of gopher wood. What is gopher? Arada said the scholars of Arshila said it is like Others maintain golem a window shalt thou make to the ark. Arjohan and said the holy one blessed be he instructed Noah set therein precious stones and jewels so that they may give thee light bright. As the noon and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above for thus would it stand firm with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it a tenant taught the bottom story was for the dung the middle for the animals and the top for man and he sent forth the raven Reshlake said the raven gave Noah a triumphant retort it said to him thy master hate me and thou hatest me thy master hate me since he commanded seven pairs to be taken of the clean creatures but only two of the unclean thou. Hatest me seeing that thou leavest the species of which there are seven and sentest one of which there are only two should the angel of heat or a cold smite me would not the world be short of one kind or perhaps thou desirest my mate thou evil one he exclaimed even that which is usually permitted me has now been forbidden how much more so that which is always forbidden me and whence do we know that they were forbidden from the verse and thou shalt enter into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and the wives of thy sons with thee whilst further on it is written go forth from the ark thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee were on our Yohanan observed from this we deduce that cohabitation had been forbidden our rabbis taught three copulated in the ark and they were all punished the dog the raven and ham the dog was doomed to be tied the raven expectorates his seed into his mate's mouth and ham was smitten in his skin also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abetted, our Jeremiah said this proves that the clean fowl dwelt with the righteous and low in her mouth was an olive leaf tariff as food. Our Eliezer said the dove prayed to the Holy One, blessed be he sovereign of the universe, let my sustenance be as bitter as the olive, but in thy charge rather than sweet as honey and in the charge of flesh and blood. Whence do we know that tariff connotes food from the verse feed me with food convenient for me after their kinds they went. Forth from the ark, our Yohanan said after their kinds, but not they alone, our Hanabi business said Eliezer Abraham's servant remarked to Shem Noah's eldest son, it is written after their kinds they went forth from the ark. Now how were you situated? He replied, In truth, we had much trouble in the ark. The animals which are usually fed by day, we fed by day, and those normally fed by night, we fed by night, but my father did not know what was the food of the chameleon. One day he was sitting and cutting. Up a pomegranate when a worm dropped out of it which it the chameleon consumed from then onward he mashed up bran for it and when it became wormy it devoured it the lion was nourished by a fever for rap said fever sustains for not less than six days nor more than thirteen as for the phoenix my father discovered it lying in the hold of the ark dost thou require no food he asked it I saw that thou wast busy it replied so I said to myself I will give thee no trouble may it be God's will that thou shouldst not perish he exclaimed as it is written then I said I shall die in the nest but I shall multiply my days as the phoenix are Hanabila I said Shem Noah's eldest son said to Eliza Abraham servant when the kings of the east and the west attack you what did you do he replied the holy one blessed be he took Abraham and placed him at his right hand and they got and Abraham threw dust which turned to swords and chaff which turned to arrows as it is written a psalm of David the Lord said unto my master sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool and it is also written who raised up the righteous man as see Abraham from the east
have built it on a mountain. Our Jeremiah B. Eliezer said they split up into three parties. One said, Let us ascend and dwell there. The second, Let us ascend and serve idols. And the third said, Let us ascend and wage war with God. The party which proposed, Let us ascend and dwell there. The Lord scattered them. The one that said, Let us ascend and wage war returned to ape spirits, devils, and night demons. Whilst as for the party which said, Let us ascend and serve idols, for there the Lord did confound. The language of all the earth it has been taught. Our Nathan said they were all bent on idolatry. For here it is written, Let us make us a name. Whilst elsewhere it is written, And make no mention of the name of other gods, just as their idolatry is meant. So here too, our Jonathan said a third of the tower was burnt. A third sunk into the earth, and a third is still standing. Rab said the atmosphere of the tower causes forgetfulness. Our Joseph said Babylon and Borsifar evil omens for the Torah. What is? The meaning of Borsifar is he said an empty shafi pit for the men of Sodom have no portion in the world to come, etc. Our rabbis taught the men of Sodom have no portion in the future world as it is written, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord, exceedingly wicked in this world and sinners in respect of the world to come. Rab Judah said they were wicked with their bodies, i.e., immoral and sinners with their money, i.e., uncharitable, wicked with their bodies, as it is. Written how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God and sinners with their money as it is written and it be sin unto thee before the Lord refers to blasphemy exceedingly that they intentionally sin to tend to talk wicked with their money and sinners with their bodies wicked with their money as it is written and I, I be wicked against thy poor brother and sinners with their bodies as it is written and I will sin against God before the Lord this refers to blasphemy. Exceedingly this refers to bloodshed as it is written moreover Manasseh shed innocent blood exceedingly our rabbis taught the men of Sodom waxed haughty only on account of the good which the Holy One blessed be he had lavished upon them what is written concerning them as for the earth out of it cometh bread and under it it is burned up as it were with fire the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it hath dust of gold there is a path which no fowl know it and which the vultures eye. Hath not seen the lions' whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lions pass by it. They said, Since there cometh forth bread out of our earth and it hath the dust of gold, why should we suffer wayfarers who come to us only to deplete our wealth? Come, let us abolish the practice of traveling in our land as it is written. The flood break out from the inhabitants. They are forgotten of the foot. They are dried up. They are gone away from men. Rabbi gave the following exposition. What is meant by the verse? How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain all of you. Ye are all as a bowing wall and as a tottering fence. This teaches that they used to cast envious eyes at wealthy men. Place them by a leaning wall, thrust it upon them, and go and take their wealth. Rabbi expounded what is meant by the verse in the dark. They dig through houses which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light. This teaches that they used to cast envious eyes at. Wealthy men and entrust balsam into their keeping which they placed in their storerooms in the evening they would come and smell it out like dogs as it is written they return at evening they make a noise like a dog and go round about the city then they would go burrow in and steal the money and as for their victim they cause him to go naked without clothing that they have no covering in the cold they lead away the ass of the fatherless they take the widow's ox for a pledge they remove it. Landmarks they violently take away flocks and feed them and he the victim shall be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. Our Jose taught this in Sephoris that night after his lecture three hundred houses were broken into in Sephoris so they came and harassed him said they to him thou hast shown a way to thieves he replied could I have known that thieves would come when our Jose died the gutters of Sephoris ran with blood reverting to the misdeeds of the Sodomites they ruled. He who has only one ox must tend all the oxen of the town for one day, but he who has none must tend them two days. Now a certain orphan, the son of a widow, was given oxen to tend. He went and killed them, and then said to them, The Sodomites Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be he who has an ox, let him take one hide. He who has none, let him take two hides. What is the meaning of this? They explained, said he, The final usage, i.e., the disposal of the ox when dead, must be as the initial one, just as the initial usage is that he who possesses one ox must tend for one day, and he who has none must tend two days. So should be the final usage. He who has one ox should take one hide, and he who has none should take two. Likewise, they rule he who crosses with the ferry must pay one zeus for the privilege, but he who does not entering by another way must give two. If one had rows of bricks, every person came and took one, saying, I have taken only one. If one spread out garlic or onions to dry them. Every person came and took one, saying, I have taken only one. There were four judges in Sodom named Chakra, Shakra, Zayafi, and Mazaldina. Now, if a man assaulted his neighbor's wife and bruised her, they would say to the husband, Give her to him that she may become pregnant for thee. If one cut off the ear of his neighbor's ass, they would order, Give it to him until it grows again. If one wounded his neighbor, they would say to him, The victim, Give him a fee for bleeding thee who crossed. Over with the ferry had to pay four Zuzim, whilst he who crossed through the water had to pay eight. On one occasion, a certain fuller happened to come there, said they to him, Give us four Zuzim for the use of the ferry, but protested he, I crossed through the water. If so, said they, Thou must give eight Zuzim for passing through the water. He refused to give it, so they assaulted him. He went before the judge who ordered, Give them a fee for bleeding and eight Zuzim for crossing through the water. Now. Elizar Abraham's servant happened to be there and was attacked when he went before the judge. He said, Give them a fee for bleeding thee. Thereupon he took a stone and smote the judge. What is this? He exclaimed, He replied, The fee that thou owest me give to this man who attacked me whilst my money will remain in statu quo. Now they had beds upon which travelers slept. If he the guest was too long, they shortened him by lopping off his feet. If too short, they stretched him out. Elizar Abraham's servant happened to go there, said they to him, Arise and sleep on this bed. He replied, I have vowed since the day of my mother's death not to sleep in a bed. If a poor man happened to come there, every resident gave him a dinar upon which he wrote his name, but no bread was given him when he died. Each came and took back as they made this agreement amongst themselves. Whoever invites a man a stranger to a feast shall be stripped of his garment. Now a banquet was in progress when Elizar chanced. There, but they gave him no bread, wishing to dine. He went and sat down at the end of them. All said they to him who invited thee here. He replied to the one sitting near him, Thou didst invite me. The latter said to himself, For adventure, they will hear that I invited him and stripped me of my garment. So he took up his raiment and fled without thus. He Elizar did to all until they had all gone. Whereupon he consumed the entire repast. A certain maiden gave some bread to a poor man hiding it in a pitcher on the matter becoming known. They dogged her with honey and placed her on the parapet of the wall. And the beast came and consumed her. Thus it is written, and the Lord said, The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, because it is great, whereon Rab Judah commented in Rab's name on account of the maiden. Rib the spies have no portion in the world to come, as it is said, Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord died implies in this world by the Played in the next the assembly of Korah have no portion in the world to come as it is written and the earth closed upon them implying in this world and they perished from among the congregation in the next this is our Akibah's view our Elizar said of them the writ set the Lord killeth and make the life he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up our rabbis taught the assembly of Korah have no portion in the world to come for it is said and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation this is our Akibah's view our Judah be but there is said they are as a lost article which is sought for it is said I have gone astray like a lost sheep seek thy servant for I do not forget thy commandments now Korah took Reshlake said he took a bad bargain for himself being plucked out of Israel the son of Izar a son who incensed the whole world with himself as the heat of noon the son of Kohat a son who set the teeth of his progenitors on edge the son of Levi a son who Became an inmate of Gehenna, then why not stay to the son of Jacob, implying a son who marched himself into Gehenna? Our Samuel B. Our Isaac answered Jacob supplicated for himself not to be enumerated amongst Korah's ancestors, as it is written, O my son, come not into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united, O my soul, come not unto their secret. This refers to the spies, unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united to the assembly of Korah. David denotes that he violated God's law of Iram, that he stoutly refused to repent on that he sat in lamentations.
Distinguished men of the community chosen for the appointed times, meaning they were skilled in intercalating the year and fixing new moons, men of renown famous throughout the whole world. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. What news did he hear? Our Samuel B. Namani said in our Jonathan's name that he was suspected of adultery with the married women, as it is written, they were jealous of Moses in the camp, which teaches that every person warned his wife on Moses' account, as it is written. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, and Moses rose up and went into David. And Abi Ram Reshlakish said, This teaches that one must not be obdurate in a quarrel, for Rab said he who is unyielding in a dispute violates a negative command, as it is written, and let him not be as Korah and as his company are. As he said, he deserves to be smitten with leprosy. Here it is written, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses, whilst elsewhere it is said, and the Lord said, Furthermore, Unto him put now thine hand into thy bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Our Joseph said, Whoever contends against the sovereignty of the house of David deserves to be bitten by a snake. Here it is written, and it unages sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Soheleth, whilst elsewhere it is written with the poison of serpents. Sohel of the dust are his da said, Whoever contends against the ruling of his teacher is as though he contended against the Shechina, as it says, when they strove against the Lord Arhamah, son of Arhanim, said, Whoever quarrels with his teacher is as though he quarreled with the Shechina, as it is said, This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord Arhanim. Be Papa said, Whoever expresses resentment against his teacher is as though he expressed it against the Shechina, as it is said, Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord Arhamah, said he who imputes evil to his teacher. Is as though he imputed it to the Sheshana as it says, and the people spake against God and against Moses, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. Reshlakish said, This refers to Korah's wealth and all the substance that was at their feet. Our Eliezer said, This refers to a man's wealth which puts him on his feet. Our Levi said, The keys of Korah's treasure house were a load for 300 white mules, though all the keys and locks were of leather. Our Hamas son of Arhanan said, Three treasures. Did Joseph hide in Egypt? One was revealed to Korah, one to Anton, he knew the son of Sabiris, and the third is stored up for the righteous for the future time. Our Yohanan also said, Korah was neither of those who were swallowed up, nor of those who were burnt, neither of those who were swallowed up, as it is written, and the earth swallowed them up, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, implying, but not Korah himself, nor of those who were burnt, for it is written, what time the fire devoured. Two hundred and fifty men, but not Korah, attended taught in Abari. The Korah was one of those who were swallowed up and burnt of those who were swallowed up, as it is written, and swallowed them up together with Korah of those who were burnt, since it is written, and there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense, which includes Korah. Rabba said, What is meant by the verse? The sun and the moon stood still in their zibel at the light of thine. Arrows they went, this teaches that the sun and the moon ascended from the Rakia to the zibel and exclaimed before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, if thou wilt execute justice for a Rome's son by punishing Korah and his assembly, we will go forth to give light. If not, we will not go forth. Thereupon he shot arrows at them, saying, For my honor, ye did not protest, yet ye protest for the honor of flesh and blood, so now they do not go forth until they are driven to it. Rabba gave. The following exposition what is meant by the verse but if the Lord make a new thing and the earth opened her mouth Moses said to the Holy One blessed be he if the Gehenna has already been created tis well if not let the Lord create it now in respect of what if actually to create it but there is no new thing under the sun but he prayed that its mouth might be brought up to the spot where they were standing notwithstanding the children of Korah died not attended taught it has been said on the authority of Moses our master a place was set apart for them in the Gehenna where they sat and sang praises to God Rabbi Barhanna said I was proceeding on my travels when an Arab said to me come and I will show thee where the men of Korah were swallowed up I went and saw two cracks whence issued smoke thereupon he took a piece of clipped wool soaked it in water attached it to the point of his spear and passed it over there and it was cinched said I to him listen to what you are about to here and I heard them saying thus Moses and his Torah are true but they Korah's company are liars Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be the Arabian then said to me every thirty days Gehenna causes them to turn back here like meat in a pot and they say thus Moses and his Torah are true but they are liars the generation of the wilderness hath no portion in the world to come etc. Our rabbis taught the generation of the wilderness hath no portion in the world to come as it is written in this wilderness. They shall be consumed and there they shall die they shall be consumed refers to this world and there they shall die to the world to come and it is also said forty years long was I grieved with his generation SC of the wilderness unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest this is our Akibas view our Eliezer maintained they will enter into the future world for it is written gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice how? Then do I interpret unto whom I swear in my wrath, etc. Only in my wrath I swear, but repented thereof. Our Joshua B. Karha said this verse was spoken only in reference to future generations. Thus gather my saints together unto me. This refers to the righteous of every generation that have made a covenant with me. Johanan, I, Missal, and Ezariah, who submitted to the fiery furnace by sacrifice to our Akiba and his companions, who gave themselves up to immolation for the sake of the Torah, our Simeon B. Manasseh said they will enter the future world as it is said, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs. Rabbi B. Barhanna said in our Johanan's name, here our Akiba abandoned his love for it is written, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. If others will enter the future world in their merit, surely they. Themselves most certainly will mission the ten tribes will not return to Palestine for it is said and cast them into another land as is the stage just as the day goes and does not return so they too went and will not return this is our Akiba's view our Eliezer said as the stage just as the day darkens and then becomes light again so the ten tribes even as it went dark for them so will it become light for them tomorrow our rabbis taught the ten tribes have no portion in the world to come as it says and the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and the Lord rooted them out of their land refers to this world and cast them into another land to the world to come this is our Akiba's view our Simeon be Judah of the far of Akko said on our Simeon's authority if their deeds are as the stage they will not return otherwise they shall rabbi said they will enter the future world as it is said and it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcast in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem rabbi Chapterbii Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B Mishnah four deaths have been entrusted to Beth in stoning burning slaying by the sword and strangulation. Our Simeon enumerated them thus burning stoning strangulation and slaying that is the matter of stoning. Gemara Rabbah said in the name of our seer in the name of Rab whatever the sages taught by number is in no particular order excepting the mission of the seven substances for we learn seven substances are applied to the stain this tasteless. Saliva the liquid exuded by crushed beans urine natron lichemal and earth and ash like now the latter clause of that mission states if they were not applied in this order or if they were all applied simultaneously the test is inconclusive. Our Papa the elder said in Rab's name the same exception applies to four deaths etc. For since our Simeon disputes the order it is to be inferred that it is exact but the other he does not refer to cases where the order is disputed. Our Papa said the order of Service on the Day of Atonement is also exactly taught for we learned all the rites of the Day of Atonement which are prescribed in a particular order if one was performed out of its turn it is invalid but the other that law is merely one of added stringency are who not the son of our Joshua said the order of the Tamed is also exact for in connection therewith we have learned this is the order of the Tamed but the other that Mishnah merely teaches that the precept of the Tamed is best carried out in this order now reverting to Rabba's statement this whatever etc is intended to exclude the precept of Eliza from the need of a particular order in its procedure for we have learned the precept of Eliza is thus carried out he the deceased man's brother and his sister in law come before
This enumeration to the tunic because it is given precedence in scripture and why does scripture do this because it prefers to state first that which covers the whole body stoning burning etc stoning is severer than burning since thus the blasphemer and the idol worshipper are executed wherein lies the particular enormity of these offenses because they constitute an attack upon the fundamental belief of Judaism on the contrary is not burning more severe since that is the punishment of a priest adulterous daughter and wherein lies the greater enormity of her offense in that she profanes her father Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and the rabbis maintain that a priest's daughter only if a Nisua is accepted from the usual punishment by strangulation meted out for adultery and is executed by burning but an Arusa who of an Israelite's daughter is stoned as if a priest's daughter not accepted from the usual punishment i.e. she is stoned likewise now since. In the case of a priest's daughter and Arusa is singled out by the divine law and punished by stoning instead of burning we may conclude that stoning is more severe than burning stoning is severer than slaying by the sword since it is the punishment of a blasphemer and an idol worshipper the greater enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not death by the sword more severe since that is a penalty for the inhabitants of a seduced city the greater character of whose sin is proved by the fact that their property is destroyed now let us consider whose crime is greater that of a seducer or of the seduced surely that of a seducer and it has been taught the seducers of a seduced city are executed by stoning stoning is severer than strangulation since it is the penalty of the blasphemer and the idol worshipper the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer since it is the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater seriousness of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is assimilated to that of the omnipresent since the divine law excluded and arose the daughter of an Israelite from the general penalty of an Esau the daughter of an Israelite altering her punishment from strangulation to stoning it follows that stoning is severe burning is severer than slaying by the sword since it is the penalty of a priest's adulterous daughter the greater enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that she thereby profanes her father on the contrary is not the sword severe since this is the penalty of the inhabitants of a seduced city the enormity of whose crime is shown by the fact that their property is destroyed her father is mentioned in connection with stoning her father is also mentioned in reference to burning just as when her father is mentioned in connection with stoning stoning is severer than the sword so her father when mentioned in connection with Burning shoes that burning is severer than slaying by the sword burning is severer than strangulation since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer since it is the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is assimilated to that of the omnipresent since the divine law varied the penalty of an Esau if a priest's daughter from that of an Esau if an Israelite's daughter from strangling to burning we may conclude that burning is severer slaying is severer than strangling since thereby the inhabitants of a seduced city are punished the severity of whose punishment is attested by the fact that their property is destroyed on the contrary is not strangulation severer being the punishment of one who smites his father or mother the greater enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that their Honor is assimilated to that of the Almighty, even so the offense against the fundamental tenet of Judaism, which is the crime of the seduced city, is greater. Our Simeon enumerated them thus, etc. In his view, burning is severer than stoning, since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter, the enormity of whose offense lies in the fact that she profanes her father. On the contrary, is not stoning severer, being the punishment of a blasphemer and idol worshipper, the gravity of whose offense lies in that they reject the fundamental tenet of Judaism. Our Simeon's view here is in accordance with his other opinion, is that a priest's adulterous daughter, whether an Arusa or an Esau, is accepted from the punishment meted out to an Israelite's daughter, and that her penalty is burning. Now, since the divine law varied the punishment of an Arusa, if a priest's daughter from that of an Israelite's daughter from stoning to burning, it follows that burning is a severe penalty. Burning is Severer than strangulation since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter the gravity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer than burning being the punishment of one who strikes his father or mother the enormity of whose offense is constituted by the fact that their honor is compared to that of the omnipresent since the divine law excluded an Esau the daughter of a priest from the penalty of an Esau if an Israelite's daughter by changing her death from strangling to burning it follows that burning is severe burning is severer than slaying since it is the punishment of a priest's adulterous daughter the enormity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not the sword more severe since it is the penalty of the inhabitants of a seduced city the gravity of whose offense is shown by the fact that their property is destroyed now consider whose offense is greater that of a seducer or of a seduced Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin be surely that of a seducer this affords an argument from a major to a minor premise if burning is severer than strangulation as has already been shown though the latter is severer than the sword if burning is surely severer than slaying which is a lesser penalty stoning is severer than strangulation being the penalty of a blasphemer and idol worshipper the extreme gravity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not strangulation severer since it is the penalty of one who smites his father or mother the gravity of whose offense lies in the fact that their honor is likened etc since the divine law excluded an Arusa the daughter of an Israelite from the penalty of an Esau the daughter of an Israelite changing it from strangling to stoning it follows that stoning is severer stoning is severer than slaying being the penalty of a blasphemer etc on the contrary is not slaying severer than stoning since it is the penalty of the inhabitants of a Seduced city the gravity of whose offense is proved by the fact that their property is destroyed now consider whose offense is greater the seducers or the seduced surely that of a seducer hence you may argue from a major to a minor premise if stoning is severer than strangulation though the latter be severer than slaying surely it is severer than slaying itself strangulation is severer than slaying since it is the penalty of one who smites his father or mother the gravity of whose offense has already been stated on the contrary is not slaying severer since it is the penalty of the inhabitants of a seduced city the enormity of whose crime is attested by the fact that their property is destroyed now consider whose offense is greater the seducers or the seduced surely the seducers and it has been taught the seducers of a seduced city are punished by stoning our simian maintained by strangulation are you had and used to teach if a betrothed i.e. and or a maiden committed adultery her Punishment is stoning. Our Simeon said it is burning if she committed incestuous adultery with her father. Her punishment is stoning. Our Simeon said it is burning. What does this shoe that according to the rabbis only an Esau if a priest's daughter was excluded from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter by being burnt instead of strangled, but not so an Arusa. But according to our Simeon, both an Arusa and an Esau if a priest's daughter were thus accepted by being burnt instead of strangled. Why so? Because the rabbis consider stoning to be severe, but our Simeon holds burning to be severe, and from this is inferred that if a person incurred two death penalties, he is punished by the more severe. What statement of our Simeon shows that he holds that the priest's daughter, whether an Arusa or an Esau, is punished by burning? It has been taught. Our Simeon said two general principles have been stated in respect of a priest's daughter. Do these principles apply only to a priest's daughter? And not to an Israelite's daughter, surely not say thus in respect of a priest's daughter too, but then scripture excluded a priest's daughter and Esau from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter and Esau and an Arusa from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter and Arusa. Now just as when the scripture excluded the priest's daughter and Esau from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter and Esau, it was in order to decree a severe punishment, so also when excluding the priest's daughter and Arusa from the penalty of an Israelite's daughter and Arusa, it must have been in order to impose a greater punishment, but false witnesses in respect of an Esau, the daughter of a priest, are treated as though they had testified against an Israelite's daughter. Likewise, if in respect of an Arusa who is a priest's daughter, they are punished just as though they had testified against an Israelite's daughter, our rabbis taught, and the daughter of any priest, if she profaned herself, I might think that this. Applies even to the profanation of the Sabbath, but the writ states by playing the whore, the scripture speaks only of profanation through whoredom. I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman, but her father is mentioned in
A man who is a priest which teaches that even if she is married to one who is not a priest the same applies further she profaneth her father she shall be burnt in fire teaches that only she is punished by fire but not her paramour nor those who testify falsely against her are Eliezer said if with her father she is burnt if with her father in law she is stoned the master said I might think that this applies even to the profanation of the Sabbath but if she profane the Sabbath must she not be. Stoned robber replied this is taught according to our Simeon who regards burning a severe penalty I might think that since the divine law has in general been stricter with the priests than with the Israelites giving them an additional number of precepts therefore the priest's daughter if she profane the Sabbath should be burnt hence we are taught that this verse applies only to profanation by whoredom but why should she differ from a priest himself I would think that a priest is punished. More leniently because he is permitted to work on the Sabbath in the sacrificial service, but since a priest's daughter is not so permitted, her punishment should be stoning. We are therefore taught otherwise. I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman, but does not the writ state by playing the whore. This is taught on the view of our Eliezer who maintained if an unmarried man cohabits with an unmarried woman without conjugal intent, he renders her a harlot, but perhaps her father is stated in order to exclude others. How then would you explain the verse that she committed adulterous incest with her father? If so, why only a priest's daughter does not the same apply to an Israelite's daughter? For did not Rabbi say our Isaac be a good? He said unto me, We learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages, and likewise some wickedness into the verse she profaneth is necessary for El would think that this whole passage treats of incest with. One's father and the penalty of burning is prescribed here intentionally to obviate Rabba's deduction hence the deduction from she profaneth the daughter of any priest from this phrase I know the law only if she was married to a priest if she was married to a Levite Israelite even a profane person bastard or a Nathan whence do I know that the same applies from the verse and the daughter of a man who is a priest which teaches that even if she is married to one who is not a priest the same applies but because she is married to one of these is she no longer considered a priest's daughter moreover does scripture state a priest's daughter married to a priest I might think that since scripture states if she profaned herself by playing the whore the law deals only with one who now profanes herself for the first time but in these other cases where she was already profaned before this law should not apply for a master stated the verse if the priest's daughter also be married. Unto a stranger she may not eat of an offering of the holy things teaches that if she cohabits with one who is unfit for her he disqualifies her to eat of the holy food and similarly if she was married to a Levite or an Israelite since scripture also states but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's her house as in her youth she shall eat of father's meat i.e. of the holy food it shows that as long as her husband a Levite or Israelite is alive she must not eat of the holy food hence El would think that she should not be burnt therefore the verse teaches otherwise now this ruling that even if married to a bastard etc she is burnt does not agree with our mayor's view for it has been taught if a priest's daughter married to an Israelite aid of Terima, she must repay the principles but not the additional fifth if she committed adultery her penalty is burning but if she was married to one unfit for her e.g. a bastard etc she must repay the principal and the added fifth and her penalty is strangulation this is the ruling of Armadir but the sages hold that in both cases she must pay the principal but not the fifth and her penalty is burning our Eliezer said if with her father she is burnt if with her father-in-law she is stoned what is meant by her father and her father-in-law if we say her father means that she committed whoredom with her father and her father-in-law that she did so with her father-in-law why? Speak particularly of a priest's daughter and Israelite's daughter too is thus punished a daughter for incest with her father by burning and a daughter-in-law by stoning but her father means under her father's authority and her father-in-law indicates under her father-in-law's authority whose view is this if the rabbis do they not maintain that Anisua is excluded from strangulation and punished by burning but not so an Arusa who is stoned if our Simeons does he not maintain that both and Aruzah and Anisua are burnt and if our Ishmaels does he not maintain that only an Aruzah is burnt but not Anisua and accordingly when under the authority of her father-in-law she is strangled Rabin sent a message in the name of our Jose son of our Hannah this is the explanation of the teaching indeed it is in accordance with the rabbi's views and this is its meaning where an adulterous woman's death is more lenient than that of her father for incest with his daughter that is in the case of an Israelite's daughter who is Aruzah her punishment being strangulation and in the case of a priest's daughter her punishment is the same as her father's is burning but where an adulterous woman's penalty is greater than her father's that is in the case of an Israelite's daughter who is an Aruzah her punishment being stoning and in the case of a priest's daughter her punishment is as that of her father-in-law for incest with her bisbee stoning our Jeremiah objected to this explanation does then the bury the state greater or lesser but our Jeremiah explained it thus Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B in truth this is in accordance with our Ishmael's views and this is its meaning with her father i.e. whilst under her parental roof i.e. and Aruzah her punishment is burning with her father-in-law i.e. for incest with her father-in-law she is stoned but if she committed adultery with any other person she is strangled Rabbah objected to this why this difference in the meaning attached to the two phrases. Either each is to be understood literally or to refer to the authority under which she is hence Rabbah explained it thus this is in agreement with our Simeon who holds burning to be the severest penalty our Eliezer who taught this maintaining that an Isuah is as an Aruzah just as with an Aruzah the penalty of a priest's daughter is raised in stringency by one degree more than that of an Israelite's daughter is from stoning to burning so also with an Isuah the penalty is raised in. Stringency by one degree is from strangulation to stoning our Hannah objected but our Simeon maintains that in both cases the penalty is burning hence Rabbin explained it thus this is really according to the rabbis but you must reverse the text thus if with her father i.e. and Aruzah she is stoned if with her father-in-law i.e. and Isua, she is burnt and as to the phrase with her father your Eliezer is influenced by the general phraseology our said in the name of Rabbi Biabah in the name of Rabbi Halacha is in accordance with the message sent by Rabbi in the name of our Jose Bihan and our Joseph Quirid do we need to fix a Halacha for the days of the Messiah they answered if so we should not study the laws of sacrifices as they are also only for the Messianic era but we say study and receive reward so in this case to study and receive reward he replied this is what I mean why state a Halacha in the course of the discussion was there given a ruling at all now what? Statement of our Ishmael was referred to it has been taught and the daughter of any priest if she profanes herself by playing the whore scripture here speaks of a maiden nar who is an Aruzah you say so but perhaps it also refers to an Isuah the Ritzayeth and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death now all are included in the terms adulterer and adulteress. But the writ excluded the daughter of an Israelite teaching that she is stoned and the daughter of a priest teaching that she is burnt just as the exception made for an Israelite's daughter refers to an Aruzah but not an Isuah so also when a priest's daughter was accepted an Aruzah was so accepted but not an Isuah further false witnesses in respect of the charge of adultery and the paramour of an adulterous woman were originally included in the verse if a false witness rise up against. Any man to testify against him that which is wrong then ye shall do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother now how can the words as he had thought apply to a paramour but say thus the punishment of her false witnesses is included in the text referring to the death of her paramour because scripture states then ye shall do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother implying but not unto his sister this is our Ishmael's opinion our Akiva said a priest's daughter. Whether an Aruzah or an Isuah he's accepted from the punishment of strangulation but is punished with fire I might think that this applies even to an unmarried woman but her father is mentioned in this passage and her father is also mentioned elsewhere just as elsewhere the reference is to whoredom by one who is bound to a husband so here too thereupon our Ishmael said unto him if so just as the second passage refers to a maiden nar who is an Aruzah so this verse treating of a priest's daughter should be taken to refer to a maiden who is an Aruzah but if an Isuah her punishment should be different our Akiva replied my brother I interpret thee and the daughter etc when it would have been sufficient to say the daughter etc as teaching the inclusion of
physically blemished priest and our Akiva, he deduces this from the verse for the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God, the i.e. the priests do offer therefore they shall be holy and our Ishmael, he maintains that that verse could apply only to priests themselves but not to their daughters, hence the necessity of the pleonastic bob. Now how does our Ishmael interpret Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the verse she profaneth her father, he employs it in accordance with our Meir's dictum. As it has been taught, our Meir used to say what is meant by the verse she profaneth her father, if he the father was regarded as holy, he is now regarded as profane, if he was treated with respect, he is now treated with contempt, and men say curse be he who begot her, cursed be he who brought her up, curse be he from whose loins she sprung, or as she said in accordance with whose view is a wicked man called the son of a wicked man, even if he is actually the son of a righteous man, it is in accordance. With this tannistictum that is a matter of stoning to what does this refer to the statement in the preceding mission when the verdict of guilty was finally announced he the accused was let out to be stoned now the scaffolding for stoning was twice a man's height etc and because the tana is about to teach the matter of death by fire he sums up the foregoing with the words that is a matter of stoning etc mission of the matter in which burning is executed is as follows he who had been thus condemned was lowered into dung up to his armpits and a hard cloth was placed within a soft one wound round his neck and the two loose ends pulled in opposite directions forcing him to open his mouth a wick was then lit and thrown into his mouth so that it descended into his body and burnt his bowels our judah said should he however have died at their hands being strangled by the bandage before the wick was thrown into his mouth or before it could act he would not have been executed by fire as prescribed hence it was done thus his month was forced open with pincers against his wish the wicklet and thrown into his mouth so that it descended into his body and burnt his bowels. Our Eliezer Bizotic said it once happened that a priest's daughter committed adultery whereupon bundles of faggots were placed round about her and she was burnt. The sages replied that was because the Beth Din at that time was not well learned in law tomorrow what is meant by wick our mathness said Bar whence do we know this it is inferred from the fact that burning is decreed here and was also the fate of the assembly of Korah just as there the reference is to the burning of the soul the body remaining intact so here too our Eliezer said it is deduced from the employment of the word burning here and in the case of Aaron's sons just as there the burning of the soul is meant while the body remained intact so here too now he who deduces it from the assembly of Korah whence does he know that? They were thus burnt because it is written speak unto Eliezer that he take up the censers out of the burning the censers of these sinners against their own souls implying that their souls were burned but their bodies were unharmed and the other he maintains that they were literally burnt i.e. their bodies and what is the meaning of against their own souls that they incurred the punishment of fire because of the pollution of their souls as Resh Lakish taught for our Simeon B. Lakish. Said what is the meaning of the verse with hypocritical mockers in feast they gnashed upon me with their teeth because they hypocritically i.e. polluting their own sincerity flattered Korah in return for the feast he set before them the prince of Gehenna gnashed his teeth against them for their destruction now here Eliezer who infers it from the sons of Aaron whence does he know that their bodies were not burnt because it is written and they died before the Lord teaching that it was. Like normal death from within and the other he maintains that they were actually burnt whilst the verse and the died before the Lord choose that the fire commenced from within as in normal death for it has been taught Abba Jose B. Dostai said two streams of fire issued from the Holy of Holies branching off into four and two entered into each of their nostrils and burned them but it is written and the fire devoured them this implies them but not their garments but why should we not learn the matter of death by fire from the bullocks that were burnt just as there they were actually burnt so here too it is logical to learn this from men because these have the following points in common I man two sin three soul and four pickle on the country should we not compare it rather to the burnt bullocks since they have in common either carrying out of God's command and two permanency even so the others have more in common now he who deduces it from the assembly of Korah why did he not learned it from Aaron's sons because they were actually burnt this being his opinion then why not deduce from them that this shall be the method of burning Arnaman answered in the name of Rabbi Abba the verse but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself which implies choose an easy death for him now since we have Arnaman's dictum what need is there of the Gezerishawa but for the Gezerishawa I would think that burning of the soul the body remaining intact is not deemed burning at all whilst as for the implication of the verse thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself this can be fulfilled by piling up an abundance of faggots to cause a speedy death hence the teaching of the Gezerishawa Moses and Aaron once walked along with Nadab and Abihu behind them and all Israel following in the rear then Nadab said to Abihu that these old men might die so that you and I should be the leaders of our generation but the Holy One blessed be he said unto them we Shall see who will bury whom our papa said thus men say many an old camel is laden with the hides of younger ones our Eliezer said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be how is the scholar regarded by the ignorant at first like a golden little if he converses with him like a silver little if he the scholar derives benefit from him like an earthen little which once broken cannot be mended Marta the daughter of Tali a priest committed adultery thereupon our Hamma Betopia had her surrounded by faggots and burnt our Joseph said he our Hamma was ignorant of two laws he was ignorant of our mathness dictum and of the following barrier and thou shalt come unto the priest to love it and unto the judge that shall be in those days this teaches that when the priesthood is functioning in the temple the judge functions in respect of capital punishment but when the priesthood is not functioning the judge may not function our Eliezer Bezotic said it once happened that a priest's daughter committed adultery etc. Our Joseph said it was a Sadducee Beth Din that did this now is this what our Eliezer Bezotic said and did the sages answer him so has it not been taught our Eliezer Bezotic said I remember when I was a child riding on my father's shoulder that a priest's adulterous daughter was brought to the place of execution surrounded by faggots and burnt the sages answered him you were then a minor whose testimony is inadmissible there were two such incidents now which incident did he first relate to them? Shall we say that he first told them of the incident first mentioned here which happened in his majority but if he told them what happened in his majority and they paid no attention to him surely he would not proceed to tell them what occurred in his minority but he must have related this one of the very the first to which they replied you were a minor then he told them of the case that occurred in his majority and they replied that was done because the Beth Din at that time was not. Learned in the law mission execution by the sword was performed thus the condemned man was decapitated by the sword as is done by the civil authorities Arjuna said this is a hideous disfigurement but his head was laid on a block and severed with an axe they replied no death is more disfiguring than this Amara it had been taught Arjuna said to the sages I too know that this is a death of repulsive disfigurement but what can I do seeing that the Torah hath said neither shall ye walk in there ordinances but the rabbis maintain since scripture decreed the sword we do not imitate them when using their method for if you will not agree to this then how about that which was taught pyres may be lit in honor of deceased kings and this is not forbidden as being of the ways of the Amorites but why so is it not written neither shall ye walk in their ordinances but because this burning is referred to in the Bible as it is written but thou shalt die in peace and with the burnings of thy Father, so shall they burn for thee. It is not from them the heathens that we derive the practice. So here too, since the Torah decreed the sword, it is not from them the Romans that we derive the practice. Now we have learned in another chapter the following are decapitated a murderer and the inhabitants of a seduced city. We know this to be true of the inhabitants of a seduced city because it is written, Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. But whence do we know it of a murderer? It has been taught, and if a man smite his servant and he die under his hand, he shall surely be avenged. Now I do not know what form this vengeance is to take, but when the writ and I will bring a sword upon you that shall execute the vengeance of the covenant. I learned that vengeance is by the sword, but perhaps it means that he must be pierced through the writ with the edge of the sword, then perhaps it means that he must be cut into. Lengthwise our said in the name of Rabbi Abba scripture teaches but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself choose an easy death for him now we find this law of execution by the sword when one murdered a slave once do we know that this law holds good if he murdered a free man surely this can be deduced by reasoning from the minor to the major if the murderer of a slave is decapitated shall he who slays a free man be only strangled
Unspecified death penalty you may not interpret it stringently but leniently this is our Josiah's view our Jonathan said not because strangulation is the most lenient death but because by every unspecified death in the Torah strangulation is meant rabbi proceeding to demonstrate the said death by God is mentioned in scripture and death by man is also decreed just as the death by God leaves no mark of violence on the body so also death by man must leave no mark of violence a condition which only strangling fulfills but may it not apply to burning since the divine law explicitly decreed burning for a priest's adulterous daughter it follows that the adulterous married Israelite woman is not put to death by burning Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and now our Jonathan's view raises no difficulty its reason being explained by rabbi but on our Josiah's view how do we know that there is death by strangulation at all perhaps the sword is meant rabbi replied it is a tradition that there are four deaths. Why does our Jonathan say not because strangulation is the most lenient death because his dispute with our Josiah is on the same lines as that of our Simeon and the rabbis are asked of Abbe those who are stoned but in whose case scripture does not explicitly decree stoning so that we derive the penalty by analogy of a necromancer or a wizard from which phrase do we deduce it from they shall surely be put to death or from their blood shall be upon them he replied it is deduced from the phrase their blood shall be upon them for if it is inferred from the passage they shall surely be put to death what need is there of the words their blood shall be upon them but do you say that it is deduced from their blood shall be upon them what need is there then of the phrase they shall surely be put to death even as it has been taught he that smote him shall surely be put to death for he is a murderer I only know that he may be executed with the death that is decreed for him once do I know that if you cannot execute him with that death you may execute him with any other death from the verse he that smote him shall surely be put to death implying in any manner possible our ahav difty questioned Robin and now had the deduction been from the phrase they shall surely be put to death what would be our zera's difficulty shall we say that his difficulty would be in respect of adultery with a married woman namely that we ought to learn the matter of death from the law of a necromancer or a wizard just as there it is stoning so here too but since the divine law ordains stoning for an arusa it follows that a nisuah is not stoned if again the difficulty would arise in respect of one who smites his father or mother namely that we ought to learn by analogy of a necromancer or a wizard that he is stoned but instead of deducing it from the necromancer etc deduce it rather from adultery with a married woman who is strangled since you may not make a deduction in favor of a Stringent penalty in preference to a lenient one he replied his difficulty would be in respect of all others who are stoned for if the punishment of them by stoning is deduced from the phrase they shall surely be put to death why deduce it from a necromancer and a wizard deduce it rather from the adultery of a married woman mission of the following are stoned he who commits incest with his mother his father's wife or his daughter-in-law he who sexually abuses a male or beast a woman who commits bestiality with a beast a blasphemer an idolater he who gives of his seed to Molech a necromancer or a wizard one who desecrates the sabbath he who curses his father or mother he who commits adultery with a betrothed maiden he who incites individuals to idolatry he who seduces a whole town to idolatry a sorcerer and a wayward and rebellious son one who unwittingly commits incest with his mother incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his mother and as his father's wife are Judah. Said he is liable in respect of her as his mother only one who commits incest with his father's wife incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his father's wife and as a married woman he is guilty in respect of the former both during his father's lifetime and after his death whether she was widowed from Arison or from NESU and he who commits incest with his daughter-in-law incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his daughter-in-law and as a married woman he is guilty in respect of it. Former both during his son's lifetime and after his death whether she was widowed from Arison or from NESU and Gamar it has been taught our Judah said if his mother was unfit for his father he is guilty only in respect of her maternal relationship to him what is meant by unfit for him shall we say forbidden to him on pain of extermination or death inflicted by the Beth this would prove that the rabbis hold that even for such he incurs a twofold penalty but how so seeing that his father Cannot be legally married to her at all hence it must refer to a woman who is forbidden to him in virtue of a negative precept Arjuna agreeing with our Akiba who holds that kiddushin is not valid between those who are interdicted to each other by a negative command Arashai objected we have learned a woman who is forbidden to her deceased husband's brother by a positive precept or on the score of sanctity must perform the halisa ceremony but may not marry her brother-in-law Talmud, Mas. Sanhedrin be now forbidden by a positive precept means the prohibitions in the second degree imposed by the Sofrim and why is it thus designated because it is a positive precept to obey the sages forbidden on the score of sanctity refers to the prohibition of a widow to marry a high priest and of a divorcee or a halyza to marry an ordinary priest and why is it so called because it is written the SC the priest shall be holy unto their God and it has been taught there on Arjuna reversed. The definition now though reversing the definition he agreed on the fundamental law that these required Eliza before being free to marry others but if you maintain that Arjuna agreed with Arakiba on the invalidity of Kiddushin between those who are forbidden by a negative command and consider Arakiba places those who are forbidden by a negative command in the same category as those who are forbidden on pain of extermination but are not the latter exempt from both Eliza and Levi right. Marriage Arjuna reverses the definition according to the ruling of the first Tana with which however he disagrees when Arisa came he taught as we have learned in our mission Arjuna said he incurs guilt only on account of her maternal relationship to him now why is this Abbe said scripture saith the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover she is thy mother this teaches you must punish him for maternal incest but not for incest with his fathers. Wife, if so, what of the verse the nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover it is thy father's nakedness? Does it not imply you may penalize him for incest with his father's wife, but not for maternal incest? In that case, if she is both his mother and his father's wife, one verse implies the exclusion of maternal incest as the incriminating offense, and the other excludes incest with his father's wife as punishable. Now, if he is punished for incest with his mother, even when not his father's wife, and with his father's wife, though not his mother, shall we say that when she is both his mother and his father's wife, he incurs no penalty at all? A further difficulty is this: do not the rabbis admit the existence of this verse? She is thy mother, but they interpret it as teaching the law deduced by our Shisha, the son of Aridi. In that case, our Judah must also utilize it for the same purpose. But our Aha, the son of Ikea, said thus: the writ saith, she is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her. Nakedness this teaches you may penalize him f a one degree of nakedness but not for two degrees if so what of the verse thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law she is thy son's wife thou shalt not uncover her nakedness does this too teach you may penalize him for one degree of nakedness but not for two but we have learned he who commits incest with his daughter-in-law incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his daughter-in-law and as a married woman he has guilty in respect of her both during his son's lifetime and after h's death and arjuna does not dispute this but since she is but one person though forbidden in a double capacity the writ saith her nakedness singular here too then in the cae of one's mother who is also the father's wife since sh hashtag is one person even if she were doubly forbidden the writ saith her nakedness but rabba answered thus and arjuna maintains that the nakedness of thy father thou shalt not uncover means thy father's wife deducing this by Gazerisha why and it applies to her whether she is his mother or not once do we know then that one's mother who is not his father's wife is likewise forbidden from the verse the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover hence the phrase she is thy mother teaches that he is guilty only on account of her maternal relationship but not because she is his father's wife Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin it has been taught in support of Rabbah and the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness both of them shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them the man excludes a minor that lieth with his father's wife implies whether she is his mother or not once do I know that his mother who is not his father's wife is also thus forbidden from the verse he hath uncovered his father's nakedness for this is redundant in order that an analogy may be drawn therefrom and identity of meaning based on Gazerisha why deduce they shall Surely be put to death by stoning you say by stoning but perhaps it means by one of the other deaths decreed in the
Respect of punishment, she is thy mother. This teaches you must punish him in respect of her as a mother, but not as his father's wife. But the rabbis contend the nakedness of thy father is literally meant, but is this not taught by the verse, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind? This teaches that a double penalty is incurred, and as Rajuda said, if he even committed pederasty with his father or with his paternal uncle, he incurs a double penalty. Rabbi said this dictum of Rabjuda. Presumably refers to a Jew, the offense having been committed unwittingly, and the penalty mentioned being a sacrifice, whilst the designation even is a euphemism, for if you will say that he meant even literally what is his penalty, death will you slay him twice. It has been taught likewise, he who commits pederasty with his father or with his paternal uncle incurs a twofold penalty. Some say that this does not agree with Arjuda of the Mishnah, but others maintain that this may agree even. With Arjuna and he deduces a twofold penalty by reasoning from the minor to the major basing his argument upon the law pertaining to a paternal uncle thus if for a paternal uncle who is but a relation of one's father a twofold penalty is incurred how much more so is a double penalty incurred for pederasty with one's father these two conflicting views are involved in the dispute of Rabba and Abbe one maintaining that punishment is imposed as a result of a minor to a major conclusion the other maintaining that it is not now once do the rabbis derive a formal prohibition against a father's wife from the verse the nakedness of thy father's wife thou shalt not uncover and Arjuna he maintains that this verse interdicts her after his father's death and the rabbis they maintain that this is derived from it is thy father's nakedness and Arjuna he utilizes it to teach that he is punished in respect of her as his father's wife but not as a married woman but we have learned one who commits incest with his father's wife incurs a penalty in respect of her both as his father's wife and as a married woman he is guilty in respect of the former both during his father's lifetime and after his death and Arjuna does not dispute it Abbe answered he does dispute it in the very then now whence do the rabbis derive punishment for incest with one's father's wife after the former's death it is all well according to Arjuna for he derives it by means of the Gezer Shalwa but whence do the rabbis derive it the answer thus he hath uncovered his father's nakedness which Arjuna utilizes for a Gezer Shalwa is rather to be employed as teaching punishment for incest with one's father's wife after his death now whence do the rabbis derive punishment for incest with one's mother who is not his father's wife Arshisha the son of Arad he said the Ritzeth she is thy mother thereby teaching that one's mother even if not his father's wife is exactly as his father's wife he who Commits incest with his daughter-in-law, etc. Why is he not also guilty in respect of her as his son's wife? Abbe answered the writ commences with his daughter-in-law and concludes with his son's wife, teaching that they are identical Mishnah he who commits sodomy with a male or a beast and a woman that commits bestiality are stoned if the man has sinned wherein has an animal offended, but because man was enticed to sin there by scripture ordered that it should be stoned. Another reason is that the animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is an animal on account of which so and so was stoned. Tomorrow once do I know that Peterasti is punished by stoning our rabbis taught if a man leath also with mankind as the lyings of a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. A man excludes a minor that leath also with mankind denotes whether an adult or a minor as the lyings of a woman this. Teaches that there are two modes of intimacy, both of which are punished when committed incestuously. Our Ishmael said this verse comes to throw light upon pederasty but receives illumination itself. They shall surely be put to death by stoning, you say by stoning, but perhaps some other death decreed in the Torah is meant. Their blood shall be upon them, is stated here, and also in the case of one who has a familiar spirit or is a wizard, just as there the reference is to stoning, so it is here too. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. This teaches the punishment whence do we derive the formal prohibition from the verse, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination from this. We learn the formal prohibition for him who lies with a male, whence do we know a formal prohibition for the person who permits himself thus to be abused? Scripture said, There shall be no Sodomite of the sons of Israel, and it is further said, and there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did. According to the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel, this is our Ishmael's view. Our Akiva said, This is unnecessary. The writ said, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, read, Thou shalt not be lame with whence do we learn the formal prohibition against bestiality. Our rabbis taught, And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. A man excludes a minor that lieth with a beast, whether it be young or old, he shall surely be put to death by stoning you by stoning. But perhaps one of the other deaths decreed in the Torah is meant, it is here said, And ye shall kill the beast, and it is stated elsewhere, but thou shalt surely kill him, and thou shalt stone in him with stones, just as their stoning is meant. So here too we have learned from this the punishment for him who commits bestiality, whence do we derive punishment for him who allows himself to be thus abused, the writ said, whosoever. Leath with a beast shall surely be put to death since this is redundant in respect of the person committing bestiality you must regard it as applying to the person permitting himself to be thus abused from the writ we know that there is punishment both for him who commits bestiality and for him who permits himself to be thus abused once do we know the formal prohibition scripture saith neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith from this verse we learn the formal prohibition for him who commits bestiality once do we derive the formal prohibition for him who allows himself to be thus abused scripture saith there shall be no sodomite of the sons of Israel and it is elsewhere said and there were also sodomites in the land etc our Akiva said this is unnecessary the writ saith thou shalt not lie with any beast which means thou shalt not permit thy lying with any beast whether actively or passively now he who actively commits pederasty and also Passively permits himself to be thus abused. Our Abbas said on our Ishmael's view he is liable to two penalties, one for the injunction derived from thou shalt not lie with mankind and the other for violating the prohibition there shall not be a sodomite of the sons of Israel but on our Akiva's view he incurs only one penalty since thou shalt not lie and thou shalt not be lame with his but one statement he who commits bestiality and also causes himself to be thus abused. Our Abbas said on our Ishmael's view he incurs two penalties, one for the injunction thou shalt not lie with any beast and one for the prohibition there shall be no sodomite of the sons of Israel but on our Akiva's view he incurs but one penalty since thou lying actively and thy lying passively is but one injunction Abbas said even on our Ishmael's view he incurs one penalty only for there shall be no sodomite applies to sodomy with mankind if so once does our Ishmael derive a formal prohibition against permitting oneself to be bestially abused from the verse whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death now this being redundant in respect of him who actively lies with a beast apply it to him who passively permits himself to be abused this and the divine law designates the passive offender as the active offender this teaches that the punishment for and the formal prohibition against active bestiality apply to passive submission to he who submits both to pederasty and to bestiality are above said on our Akiva's view he incurs two penalties one for thou shalt not lie with mankind and the other for thou shalt not lie with any beast but on our Ishmael's view he incurs only one punishment both offenses being derived from a single verse there shall be no sodomite Abbe said even on our Ishmael's view he incurs two penalties because it is written whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death this being redundant in respect of active bestiality it must be applied to Passive submission and the divine law thus designated passive submission as an active offense just as for the active offense there is punishment and prohibition so for the passive offense too but he who commits pederasty and causes himself to be abused thus and also commits bestiality and causes himself to be abused too both our Abba and Abbe maintain that on our Ishmael's view he is trebly guilty and on our Akiva's view he is doubly guilty our rabbis taught in the case of a male child a young one is not regarded as on a par with an old one but a young beast is treated as an old one what is meant by this rap said pederasty with a child below nine years of age is not deemed as pederasty with a child above that Samuel said pederasty with a child below three years is not treated as with a child above that what is the basis of their dispute rab maintains that only he who is able to engage in sexual intercourse may as the passive subject of pederasty throw guilt upon the active Offender whilst he who is unable to engage in sexual
Culpability of the first stage of incest which is explicitly stated with reference to one's paternal or maternal aunt is redundant therefore it is likened to the first stage of intercourse within it apply its teaching to the first stage of bestiality as being punishable now consider bestiality is a capital offense punishable by Beth Din why then does the scripture teach the capability of its first stage in a law relating to a sin punishable by extinction should it not rather have been indicated in a verse dealing with sexual intercourse as a capital offense too so that one capital offense might be deduced from another since this entire verse is written for the sake of new interpretations whereby additional laws are deduced another statement for the same purpose is inserted our autoboy bmi propounded a problem to Arshi's hate what if one excited himself to the first stage of masturbation he replied you annoy us Arshi said what is your problem this is impossible in self stimulation but it is possible in the case of coercion with a member more to him on the view that such an incest is not punishable in masturbation too it is not punishable but on the view that it is punishable a twofold penalty is incurred here since he is simultaneously the active and passive partner of the deed it was asked of Arshi's hate what if a heathen committed bestiality is the animal killed or not must it have been both a stumbling block and a cause of degradation in order for it to be Stoned, but here it was only a stumbling block, but not a cause of degradation, or perhaps even if it was only a stumbling block without having led to degradation, it is still stoned. Arshi's hate replied, We have learned that if in the case of trees which neither eat nor drink nor smell, the Torah decreed that they should be burnt and destroyed because they had proved a stumbling block, how much more so must thou destroy him who seduces his neighbor from the path of life to that of death? If so, where a heathen worships his cow, should it not be forbidden and killed? Is there anything which is not forbidden to an Israelite yet forbidden to a heathen? But why should it not be forbidden if an Israelite worshipped it? Is it not analogous to bestiality? Abay answered, In the latter case, bestiality, the degradation is great, whilst in the former animal worship, the disgrace is little, but in the case of trees, the degradation is not great, yet did not the Torah order them to be burnt, destroyed, and Annihilated we are speaking of living creatures for which the all-merciful one shoot pity Rabbah said the Torah ordered that the animal should be destroyed because it too derived pleasure from sin but trees derive no pleasure yet the Torah commanded that they should be destroyed burnt and annihilated we are speaking of living creatures for which the all-merciful one shoot pity come and here another reason is that the animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is it. Animal on account of which so and so was stoned. Now surely Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be since the latter reason embraces both the reason of a stumbling block and of human degradation. The former reason is that of stumbling block alone. E.g., when a heathen commits bestiality, no. The second reason is that of stumbling block and of degradation. But the first teaches that even if there is degradation without a stumbling block, the animal is stoned. E.g., if a Jew committed bestiality in ignorance of the fact that it is forbidden, even as our Hamdan propounded, what if a Jew committed bestiality in ignorance? Must there have been both a stumbling block and degradation for the animal to be stoned? And in this case, there is only degradation, but no sin, or perhaps for degradation alone, without there having been a stumbling block, the animal is stoned. Our Joseph said, Come and here a maiden aged three years and a day may be acquired in marriage by coition, and if her deceased husband's brother cohabits with. Her she becomes his the penalty of adultery may be incurred through her even it as she defiles him who has connection with her so that he in turn defiled that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon the person afflicted with conroe if she married a priest she may eat of terima if any unfit person has a connection with her he disqualifies her from the priesthood if any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her they are executed on her account but she is exempt now. Any of the forbidden degrees implies even a beast in this case there is degradation but no stumbling block yet it is taught that they including a beast are slain on her account no this is not conclusive as it can be argued that since she deliberately offended there is a stumbling block though she is a minor but the all merciful one had mercy upon her now he shewed mercy to her but not to the animal Rabbah said come and here a male aged nine years and a day who cohabits with his deceased. Brother's wife, the former having left no issue, acquires her as wife, but he cannot divorce her until he attains his majority. He is defiled through coition within it, so that he in turn defiled that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon a person afflicted with conroe. He disqualifies a woman from the priesthood, but cannot enable a woman to eat of terima. He renders an animal unfit for the altar, and it is stoned on his account. And if he had intercourse with one of the degrees forbidden in the Torah, the latter is executed. Now here there is degradation, but no stumbling block yet. It is taught it is stoned on his account, since it was a deliberate offense. There is a stumbling block, but the all merciful one had mercy upon him. Now he showed mercy to him, but not to the animal. Come and here another reason is that the animal should not pass through the streets whilst people say this is the animal on account of which so and so was stoned. Now surely since the latter. Reason embraces both stumbling block and degradation. The former reason refers to degradation only that is when a Jew committed bestiality and ignorance. No, the second reason is one of stumbling block and degradation. But the first teaches that even if there is a stumbling block without degradation, the animal is stoned. E.g., if a heathen committed bestiality, even as it was asked of Arshi's hate mission, the blasphemer is punished only if he utters the divine name. Our Joshua B. Karha said Talmud, Mas. Sanhedrin of the whole day of the trial, the witnesses are examined by means of a substitute for the divine name. Thus may Jose smite Jose when the trial was finished. The accused was not executed on this evidence, but all persons were removed from court, and the chief witness was told, State literally what you heard thereupon. He did so using the divine name. The judges then arose and rent their garments, which rent was not to be resown. The second witness stated, I too have heard thus, but not. Uttering the divine name and the third says I too heard thus Gemara it has been taught the blasphemer is not punished unless he blesses the name by the name whence do we know the Samuel said the Ritz saith and he that blasphemeth no the name of the Lord when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall be put to death how do you know that the word no used in the Hebrew means a blessing from the verse how shall I curse a whom God hath not cursed whilst the formal prohibition is contained in the verse thou shalt not revile God but perhaps it means to pierce as it is written so Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bore W A Yakab a hole in the lid of it the formal injunction against this being the verses ye shall destroy the names of the idols out of that place ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God the name must be blessed by the name which is absent here but perhaps the text refers to the putting of two slips of parchment each bearing the Divine name together and piercing them both in that case one name is pierced after the other but perhaps it prohibits the engraving of the divine name on the point of a knife and piercing there with the divine name written on a slip of parchment in that case the point of the knife pierces not the divine name but perhaps it refers to the pronunciation of the ineffable name as it is written and Moses and Aaron took these men which are expressed Nicobu by their names the formal prohibition being contained in the verse thou shalt fear the Lord thy God firstly the name must be blessed by the name which is absent here and secondly it is a prohibition in the form of a positive command which is not deemed to be a prohibition at all an alternative answer is this the writ Seth and the Israelitish woman son blaspheme W A Yacob and curse proving that blasphemy no kept denotes cursing but perhaps it teaches that both offenses must be perpetrated you cannot think so because it is Written bring forth him that hath cursed and not him that hath blasphemed and cursed proving that one offense only is alluded to our rabbis taught any man that curseth his God shall bear his sin it would have been sufficient to say amen etc what is taught by the expression any man the inclusion of heathens to whom blasphemy is prohibited just as to Israelites and they are executed by decapitation for every death penalty decree for the sons of Noah is only by decapitation now is the prohibition of blasphemy to heathens deduced from this verse but it is deduced from another is the Lord referring to the blessing of the divine name our Isaac the Smith replied this phrase any man is necessary only as teaching the inclusion of substitutes of God's name and the very that is taught in accordance with our Meir's views for it has been taught any man that curseth his God shall bear his sin why is this written has it not already been stated and he that blasphemeth the name of it Lord, he shall surely be put to death because it is stated, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. I might think that death is meted out only when the ineffable name is employed. Once do I know that all substitutes of the ineffable name are included in this
Included in the manner of execution too hence we are taught otherwise now how does our Isaac the smith interpret the verse as well the stranger as he that is born in the land on the view of the rabbis it teaches that only a stranger and a native must revile the name by the name but for a heathen this is unnecessary why does the Torah state any man the Torah employed normal human speech our rabbis taught seven precepts where the sons of Noah commanded social laws to refrain from blasphemy. Idolatry, adultery, bloodshed, robbery, and eating flesh cut from a living animal. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, B. R. Hanania, B. Gamaliel said also not to partake of the blood drawn from a living animal. Arhidka added emasculation. Ar Simeon added sorcery. Ar Jose said the heathens were prohibited. Everything that is mentioned in the section on sorcery is there shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them as see the heathens in Canaan out from before thee now the Almighty does not punish without first prohibiting our Eliezer added the forbidden mixture in plants and animals now they are permitted to wear garments of mixed fabrics of wool and linen and so diverse seeds. Together they are forbidden only to hybridize heterogeneous animals and graft trees of different kinds whence do we know this are Yohan and answered the writ set and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat and he commanded refers to the observance of social laws and thus it is written for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment the Lord is a prohibition against blasphemy and thus it is written and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord he shall surely be put to death God is an injunction against idolatry and thus it is written thou shalt have no other gods before me the man refers to bloodshed murder and thus it is written whoso shed of man's blood by man shall his blood be shed saying refers to adultery and thus it is written they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and became another man's of every tree of the garden but not of robbery thou mayest freely eat but not flesh cut from a living animal when our Isaac came he taught a reversed interpretation and he commanded refers to idolatry God have Elohim to social law now God may rightly refer to social laws as it is written and the master of the house shall be brought unto Elohim i.e. the judges but how can and he commanded connote a prohibition of idolatry are his and our Isaac be of demi one sided the verse they have turned aside quickly out of it way which I commanded them they have made them a molten calf etc and the other side Ephraim is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked after the commandment wherein do they differ in respect of a heathen who made an idol but did not worship it on the view that the prohibition of idolatry is derived from they have made them a molten calf guilt is incurred as soon as the idol is made even before it is worshipped but according to the opinion that it is from because he Willingly walked after the commandment, there is no liability until the heathen actually follows and worships it. Rob objected, Does any scholar maintain that a heathen is liable to punishment for making an idol even if he did not worship it? Surely it has been taught with respect to idolatry. Such acts for which a Jewish court decrees sentence of death on Jewish delinquents are forbidden to the heathen, but those for which a Jewish court inflicts no capital penalty on Jewish delinquents are not forbidden to him. Now, what does this exclude? Presumably, the case of a heathen who made an idol without worshiping it. Our Papa answered, No, it excludes the embracing and kissing of idols, of which idols do you say this is it of those whose normal worship is in this matter? But in that case, he is surely liable to death. Hence, it excludes the embracing and kissing of idols, which are not usually worshipped. The social laws were then the children of Noah bidden to observe these. Surely it has been taught. The Israelites were given ten precepts at Mara seven of which had already been accepted by the children of Noah to which were added at Mara social laws the Sabbath and honoring one's parents social laws for it is written there see at Mara he made for them a statute and an ordinance the Sabbath and honoring one's parents for it is written as the Lord thy God commanded the Aaronam and replied in the name of Rabbi Abu the addition at Mara was only in respect of an assembly witnesses and formal admonition if so why say to which were added social laws but Rabbi replied thus the addition was only in respect of the laws of fines but even so should it not have been said additions were made in the social laws but our Ahabi Jacob answered thus the Beretha informs us that they were commanded to set up law courts in every district and town but were not the sons of Noah likewise commanded to do this surely it has been taught just as the Israelites were ordered to set up law courts. In every district and town, so were the sons of Noah likewise enjoined to set up law courts in every district and town. But Rabba answered thus the author of this Beretha, which states that social laws were added at Mara, is a tana of the school of Manasseh, who omitted social laws and blasphemy from the list of Noahian precepts and substituted emasculation and the forbidden mixture in plants, plowing, etc. For a tana of the school of Manasseh taught the sons of Noah were given seven precepts. This prohibition of idolatry, adultery, murder, robbery, flesh cut from a living animal, emasculation, and forbidden mixtures are Judah said Adam was prohibited idolatry only for it is written, and the Lord God commanded Adam our Judah be, but there maintained he was forbidden blasphemy to some add social laws with whom does the following statement of Rab Judah in the name of Rab grieve God said to Adam, I am God, do not curse me, I am God, do not exchange me for another, I am God, let my fear be. Upon you this agrees with the last mentioned who adds social laws to the list now what is the standpoint of the Tana of the school of Manasseh if he interprets the verse and the Lord God commanded etc as interpreted above he should include these two social laws and blasphemy also and if he does not once does he derive the prohibition of the rest in truth he does not accept the interpretation of the verse and the Lord God commanded etc but maintains that each of these which he includes is separately stated idolatry and adultery Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin for it is written the earth also was corrupt before God and the Tana of the school of Arishmael taught wherever corruption is mentioned it must refer to immorality and idolatry immorality as it is written for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth idolatry for it is written lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image etc and the other teacher who deduces this from the verse and the Lord God Commanded, etc. He maintains that this verse, see the earth also, etc., merely describes their way of living bloodshed, as it is written, whoso shed of man's blood, etc., and the other, this verse he will maintain, merely teaches the manner of execution robbery, for it is written, as the wild herbs have I given you all things upon which are Levi commented, as the wild herbs, but not as the cultivated herbs, and the other, he will hold that this verse is written to permit animal flesh, but not to prohibit robbery flesh cut from a living animal, as it is written, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat, and the other, he may hold that this verse teaches that flesh cut from live reptiles is permitted emasculation, for it is written, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein, and the other, he may regard this merely as a blessing forbidden mixture, as it is said of fowls after their kind, and the other, he will maintain that this was merely for the sake. Of mating our Joseph said the scholar stated a heathen is executed for the violation of three precepts Nemonic GSHR is adultery bloodshed and blasphemy are she's hate objected now bloodshed is rightly included since it is written whoso sheddeth the blood of man by man shall his blood be shed but once do we know the others if they are derived from bloodshed the other four should also be included whilst if their inclusion is taught by the extending phrase any man should not idolatry to be included but our she's hate said thus the scholar stated a heathen is executed for the violation of four precepts including idolatry but is a heathen executed for idolatry surely it has been taught with respect to idolatry such acts for which a Jewish court decrees sentence of death on Jewish delinquents are forbidden to the heathen this implies that they are merely forbidden but their violation is not punished by death our nomin B Isaac answered their prohibition is their death sentence are whom Arab Judah and all the disciples of Rab maintained a heathen is executed for the violation of the seven Noachian laws the divine law having revealed this of one murder it applies to all now is a heathen executed for robbery has it not been taught with respect to robbery if one stole or robbed or seized a beautiful woman or committed similar offenses if these were perpetrated by one Kutian against another the theft etc must not be kept and likewise the theft of an Israelite by a Kutian but that of a Kutian by an Israelite may be retained but if
Forgive is it not actual theft, but Araha the son of Araka answered it applies to the withholding of a laborer's wage. One Kutian from another or a Kutian from an Israelite is forbidden, but an Israelite from a Kutian is permitted to what can a similar act apply in the case of a beautiful woman when Ardimi came, he said in the name of our Eliezer, in the name of our Hannah to a heathen who allotted a bond woman to his slave for concubinage and then took her for himself for this he is executed. A similar act, however, is not taught with reference to murder. Abbe said if it should be, however, that it is so taught it would be in accordance with our Jonathan B. Saul, for it has been taught if one was pursuing his neighbor to slay him and the latter could have saved himself by maiming a limb of the pursuer, e.g. his foot and did not thus save himself but killed him instead Talmud, Mas and Hedron B. He is executed for his death, our Jacob B. Aha found it written in the scholar's book of Agate. Even is executed on the ruling of one judge on the testimony of one witness without a formal warning on the evidence of a man but not of a woman even if he the witness be a relation on the authority of our Ishmael it was said he is executed even for the murder of an embryo once do we know all this Rab Judah answered the Bible saith and surely your blood of your lives will I require this shows that even one judge may try even at the hand of every living thing will I require it. Even without an admonition having been given and at the hand of man even on the testimony of one witness at the hand of man but not at the hand i.e. on the testimony of a woman his brother teaching that even a relation may testify on the authority of our Ishmael it was said he is executed even for the murder of an embryo what is our Ishmael's reason because it is written who so sheddeth the blood of man within another man shall his blood be shed what is a man within another man an embryo in his. Mother's womb, but the first Tana who excludes the murder of an embryo from capital punishment is a Tana of the school of Manasseh who maintains that every death penalty decreed for the heathens is by strangulation. He connects the second man with the latter half of the sentence and interprets thus who so shed man's blood within man, i.e., within him shall his blood be shed. Now, how can man's blood be shed and yet be retained within him by strangulation? Our Hamnon objected now is not a heathen woman commanded to keep the social law. Surely it is written, for I know him that he will command his sons and his household, which includes the women folk after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to exercise charity and judgment. He raised the objection and he answered it himself. He would command his sons to exercise judgment, his daughters to perform charity. Are we the elder said to our Papa, let us say that a heathen woman who committed murder must not be executed since it is. Written at the hand of every man who committed murder, etc., implying but not at the hand of woman, he replied, Thus did Rab Judah say, Whoso shed man's blood implies whosoever it be, even a woman, let us say that a heathen woman who committed adultery is not executed, since it is written, Therefore shall a man forsake his father and mother and cleave to his wife, implying that a man must cleave but not a woman, he replied, Thus did Rab Judah say, The verse, and they shall be as one flesh. Reassimilated them to each other, making the law of fidelity applicable to both our rabbis taught a man, a man shall not approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness, it would have been sufficient to state a man shall not approach, etc. What is taught by the repetition, Amen, a man, the extension of the law to heathens that they too are forbidden, incest, including adultery, now is this deduced from this verse, is it rather not deduced from a different text, visit it. Lord God commanded saying which refers to adultery the latter text refers to adultery with a woman of their own i.e. with a heathen married woman the former to adultery with one of ours i.e. a Jewish married woman for the second clause teaches if he committed incest with a Jewess he is judged according to Jewish law with regard to what is this our nom and said in the name of Rabbi Biabo with regard to an assembly witnesses and formal admonition is a Jewess then of less account but are Yohanan. Answered thus it is with regard to a betrothed Jewish maiden whose violation by heathen law is not a capital offense hence they are judged by Jewish law but if their offense was against a fully married woman are they judged according to their law surely it has been taught if a heathen committed adultery with a Jewish betrothed maiden he is stoned with a fully married woman he is strangled now if we judge them according to the law pertaining to them should he not be decapitated our nom and be. Isaac answered by a married woman this barita means one whose hafa ceremony has been performed but without the marriage being consummated since by their law her violation is not a capital offense they are judged by ours for our hand and taught they recognize the inviolability of a woman whose union has been consummated but not if she merely entered the hafa without the union having been consummated it has been taught in agreement with our Yohan and all prohibited sexual relationships for which a Jewish beth imposes capital punishment are forbidden to heathens but those for which a Jewish beth does not impose death are permitted to heathens this is our mayor's view but the sages maintain there are many relationships for which a Jewish beth does not impose death which are nevertheless forbidden to a gentile if a heathen committed incest with a Jewess he is judged according to Jewish law if with a heathen woman he is judged according to heathen law the only difference that this Makes is with respect to a betrothed maiden, but should not the Tana include a woman whose hafa ceremony has been performed without the marriage being consummated. The teacher of this Beritha is the Tana of the College of Manasseh, who maintains that every death penalty decreed for the heathens is by strangulation, and by both codes Jewish and heathen, this last mentioned offense is punished by strangulation. Now is our mayor of the opinion that all relationships for which a Jewish beth din imposes capital punishment are forbidden to heathens. Surely it has been taught a proselyte Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, a born but not conceived in sanctity, possesses kin on his mother's side, but not on his father's side. E.g., if he married his sister by his mother born before his mother's conversion, and who subsequently became converted to, he must divorce her by his father, he may keep her his father's sister by his father's mother, he must divorce her by his father's father, he may keep her his. Mother, sister, by her mother, he must renounce her by her father. Our mayor ruled that he must divorce her, but the sages maintain that he may keep her. For our mayor held that all forbidden degrees of consanguinity on the mother's side must be divorced. On the father's side may be kept. He may marry his brother's wife, his paternal uncle's wife, and all other relations by marriage are permitted to him. This including his father's wife. If he married a woman and her daughter, he retains one and must divorce the other. But in the first place, he must not marry them. If his wife died, he may marry his mother-in-law. Others say that he may not. Rab Judah said there is no difficulty. One dictum is by our mayor according to our Eliezer, and one is by our mayor according to our Akiva. For it has been taught. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother? Our Eliezer said his father means his father's sister. His mother, his mother's sister. Our Akiva said his father means his father's wife. His mother is literally meant. And he shall cleave but not to a male to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife and they shall be as one flesh applying to those that can become one flesh thus excluding cattle and beasts which cannot become one flesh with man the master stated our Eliezer said his father means his father's sister but may it not mean his father literally this is forbidden by and he shall cleave but not to a male but perhaps it means his father's wife that is taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife which includes his father's but perhaps it forbids her even after his father's death it must be similar to his mother just as his mother is not his relation by marriage so his father must refer to a non-marriage relationship his mother means his mother's sister but may it not be literally meant that is taught by to his wife but not to his neighbor's wife but perhaps it forbids her even after his father's death it must be similar to his father just as his father is not literally meant. So his mother is not literally meant. Our Akiva said his father means his father's wife, but perhaps it is literally meant that is taught by and he shall cleave, but not to a male. If so, is not his father's wife taught by to his wife, but not to his neighbor's wife? That teaches that she is forbidden even after his father's death. His mother is literally meant, but is this not taught by to his wife, but not to his neighbor's wife? This refers to his mother who was violated by his father. What are the grounds of their dispute? Our Eliezer is of the opinion Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be that only by referring to collateral relations can his father and his mother bear similar interpretations. But our Akiva prefers to interpret his father as his father's wife, who is designated as the nakedness of his father, rather than his father's sister, who is designated as his father's kin. Not his father's nakedness. Come and here and in Rome took him. Judge his father's sister to wife. Does it? Not presumably mean his father's sister on her mother's side to know it means his father's paternal sister come in here and yet indeed she is my
The name of our Eliezer in the name of our Hanada heathen who allotted the bond woman to his slave for concubinage and then took her for himself is executed under account from when is she regarded as the particular concubine of that slave Arnaman said when she is referred to as so and so's mistress when is she free again to others Arhuna said from the time that she goes bareheaded in the streets our Eliezer said in our Hanada's name if a heathen had an unnatural connection with his wife he incurs guilt for it is written and he shall cleave which excludes unnatural intercourse Rabba objected is there anything for which a Jew is not punishable and a heathen is but Rabba said thus a heathen who violates his neighbor's wife unnaturally is free from punishment why so scripture said to his wife but not to his neighbors and he shall cleave which excludes unnatural intercourse our Hanada said if a heathen smites a Jew he is worthy of death for it is written and he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man he slew the Egyptian Arhanna also said he who smites an Israelite on the jaw is as though he had thus assaulted the divine presence for it is written one who smites man i.e. an Israelite attacketh the holy one Nemonic lifts his servant Sabbath Resh said he who lifts his hand against his neighbor even if he did not smite him is called a wicked man as it is written and he said unto the wicked man wherefore wouldst thou smite thy fellow wherefore hast thou smite is not said but wherefore wouldst thou smite chewing that though he had not smitten him yet he was termed a wicked man Zeir I said in Arhanna's name he is called a sinner for it is written but if not I will take it by force and it is further written wherefore the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord Arhuna said his hand should be cut off as it is written let the uplifted arm be broken Arhuna had the hand cut off of one who was accustomed to strike other people, our Eliezer said, the only thing to be done with him is to bury him as it is written, and a man of uplifted arm for him is the earth. Our Eliezer also said, the earth was given only to the strong as it is said, but as for the mighty man for him is the earth. Resh Lakish said also, what is the meaning of the verse? He that serveth his land shall be satisfied with bread. If one enslaves himself to his land continually toiling thereon, he shall be satisfied with bread. If not, he shall not be satisfied with bread. Resh Lakish also said, he who keeps a day of rest deserves death, for it is written, and a day and a night they shall not rest. And the master has said, their prohibition is their death sentence. Rabbin has said, even if he rested on a Monday, now why is this not included in the seven Noachian laws? Only negative injunctions are enumerated, not positive ones. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, but the precept of observing social laws is a positive one, yet it is reckoned it is both positive. And negative are Yohanan said, even who studies the Torah deserves death, for it is written, Moses commanded us a law for an inheritance, it is our inheritance, not theirs. Then why is this not included in the Noachian laws on the reading Rosh and inheritance? He steals it on the reading or is a betrothed. He is guilty as one who violates a betrothed maiden who is stoned. An objection is raised. Our mayor used to say, Whence do we know that even a heathen who studies the Torah is as a high priest? From the verse, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if man do, he shall live in them. Priests, Levites, and Israelites are not mentioned, but men hence thou mayest learn that even a heathen who studies the Torah is as a high priest that refers to their own seven laws. Our Hanani Abigamaliel said they were also commanded not to partake of the blood drawn from a living animal. Our rabbis taught but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat this. Prohibits flesh cut from the living animal. Our Hanan of Gamaliel said it also prohibits blood drawn from a living animal. What is his reason? He reads the verse thus flesh with the life thereof shall ye not eat, blood with the life thereof shall ye not eat. But the rabbis maintain that this reading teaches that flesh cut from live reptiles is permitted. Similarly, it is said only be sure that thou eat not the blood for the blood is the life and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. But the rabbis maintain that the verse teaches that the blood of arteries with which life goes out is also forbidden as blood. Why was it first enjoined upon the sons of Noah and then repeated at Sinai as the dictum of our Hosea Behanan? For our Hosea Behanan said every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai was meant for both heathens and Israelites. That which was given to the sons of Noah but not repeated at Sinai was meant for the Israelites but not for the heathens. Now the only law thus commanded to the children of Noah and not repeated at Sinai was the prohibition of the sinew that shrank nervous ischiaticus and in accordance with our Judas view the master said every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai was meant for both Noahites and Israelites on the contrary since it was repeated at Sinai should we not assume it to be meant for Israel only since idolatry was repeated at Sinai and we find that the Noahites were punished for practicing it we must conclude that it was meant for both that which was given to the sons of Noah but not repeated at Sinai was meant for the Israelites but not for the heathens on the contrary since it was not repeated at Sinai should we not assume that it was meant for the Noahites and not for Israel there is nothing permitted to an Israelite yet forbidden to a heathen is there not but what of a beautiful woman there it is because the heathens were not authorized to conquer but what of a Thing worth less than a paratah there it is because the heathens do not forgive every precept which was given to the sons of Noah and repeated at Sinai was meant for both Noahites and Israelites Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be but circumcision which was given to the sons of Noah for it is written thou shalt keep my covenant and repeated at Sinai and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised yet was meant for Israel and not for the Noahites that repetition was inserted to permit circumcision on the Sabbath by interpreting on the day whichever it is and even on the Sabbath but procreation which was enjoined upon the Noahites for it is written and you be a fruitful and multiply and repeat at Sinai as it is written go say to them get you into your tents again was nevertheless commanded to Israel but not to the heathens that repetition was to teach that whatever has been constitutionally forbidden by a majority vote requires another majority vote to abrogate. It if so may we not say of each of the Noachian laws that it was repeated for a definite purpose he this why should the prohibition be repeated now the only law thus commanded to the children of Israel and not repeated at Sinai was the prohibition of the sinew that shrank nervous ischiaticus and in accordance with our Judah's view but these two were not repeated these two were repeated though for a purpose but this was not repeated at all an alternative answer is the circumcision was from the very first commanded to Abraham only and not to the Noachites in general thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation meaning thou and thy seed are to keep it but no others if so should it not be incumbent upon the children of Ishmael Abraham so for in Isaac shall thy seed be called then should not the children of Esau be bound to practice it in Isaac but not all Isaac are Ashai objective so the children of Keturah should have been Exempted not our Jose B. Abin or as say our Jose B. Hanan estate and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broke oe my covenant this extends the precept of circumcision to the children of Cherorab Judah said in Rab's name Adam was not permitted to eat flesh for it is written behold I have given you all the herbs etc to you it shall be for food and to all the beasts of the earth implying but the beasts of the earth shall not be for you but w i and h the advent of the sons of Noah it was permitted for it is said every moving thing that liveth shall be me for you even as the green have, have I given you all things now one might think that the prohibition of flesh cut from the living animal does not apply to the messy the Noahites therefore the retiak hate but flesh with life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat one might think that this prohibition applies even to Reptiles therefore it is stated but how is this implied Arhuna said but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof is choose that the prohibition applies only to those creatures whose flesh is distinct from their blood in its prohibition excluding reptiles whose flesh is not distinct from their blood an objection is raised and rule over the fish of the sea surely that means that they should serve as food no it refers to toil but can fish be made to work yes even as Rehoboth propounded what if one drove a wagon with a goat and a ship you to come in here and over the fowl of the heaven surely this is in respect of food no it refers to toil but can thou be made to work yes even as Rabban of Arhuna propounded according to the ruling of Arhuse B. Arjuda what if one thresh corn with geese or cocks come in here and over every living creature that moveth upon the earth that refers to the serpent for it has been tugged high Arsimian B. Manassia said woe for the loss of a great servant for had not the serpent been cursed every
who are included in the second prohibition are included in the first are Eliezer said they were also enjoined against the forbidden mixtures whence do we derive the Samuel replied because scripture saith my statutes ye shall keep implying the statutes which I have already decreed is thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed this teaches just as in the case of animal life the prohibition is against hybridization so in plant life it Injunction is against grafting, and just as the former holds good both within the land, SC Palestine, and without so the latter holds good both within and without Palestine. But if so, does the verse, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, also imply the statutes which I imposed long ago. There, the verse reads, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, which I now command you. But here it reads, My statutes, Ye shall keep implying the statutes decreed from of old, shall ye keep our Joshua B. Karha said, etc. Araha. B. Jacob said, He is not guilty unless he curse the tetragrammaton, excluding of a literal name, the blaspheming of which is not punishable. Is this not obvious? The mission is stating, May Jose smite Jose. I might think that the name is used as a mere illustration. He therefore teaches otherwise. Others give this version. Araha. B. Jacob said, This proves that the tetragrammaton is also a divine name, but is it not obvious? Since the mission states, Jose smite Jose using a four lettered name, I might think. That the great name must be employed whilst Jose is merely an illustration of the mode of testifying, therefore he teaches otherwise when the trial was finished, etc. Whence do we know that they arose? Our Isaac B. Ami said, Because the writ saith, and Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor which he had for himself alone, and Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee, and he arose out of his seat. Now does this not afford an admagious conclusion if a long king of Moab who was only a heathen and knew but an attribute of God's name nevertheless arose? How much more so must an Israelite arise when he hears the Shem Hamphorish? Whence do we know that they rent their garments from the verse? Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household engine, and the scribe and Joe, the son of Azath, the recorder to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rab which rent was not to be resown. Whence do we derive this? Arab said, Deduced from the word rent this verse states with their clothes rent whilst elsewhere is written and Elisha saw it, S.C. Elijah's ascension and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into rents now do we not understand from any rent them into that the cognate object is rents why then does the writ expressly state rents to teach that they were always to remain thus our rabbis. Taught he who hears the name blasphemed and he who hears it from the person who first heard it i.e. from the witness who testifies are both bound to rent their garments but the witnesses are not obliged to rent their clothes when they hear themselves repeating the blasphemy in the course of their testimony because they had already done so on first hearing it but what does this matter do they not hear it now too you cannot think so because it is written and it came to pass when king. Hezekiah heard it as see the report of Rab Shekhe's blasphemy that he rent his clothes thus Hezekiah rent his clothes but they did not Rab Judah said in Samuel's name he who hears the divine name blasphemed by a Gentile need not rent his clothes but if you will object what of Rab Shekhe he was an apostate Israelite Rab Judah also said in Samuel's name one must rent his clothes only on hearing the Shem Hamehu had blasphemed but not for an attribute of the divine name now both of these statements. Conflict with our highest views for our highest said he who hears the divine name blasphemed nowadays need not rent his garments for otherwise one's garments would be reduced to tatters from whom does he hear it if from an Israelite are they so unbridled as to send us so frequently but it is obvious that he refers to a Gentile now if the Shem Hamehu is meant are the Gentiles so well acquainted with it as to make such frequency possible hence it must refer to an attribute and concerning that. He says that only nowadays is one exempt, but formerly one had to rent his clothes. This proof is conclusive. The second witness stated, I too have heard, thus Reshlakish said, This proves that I too have heard, thus is valid evidence in civil and capital cases, but that the rabbis imposed a greater degree of stringency, insisting that each witness should explicitly testify here. However, since this is impossible on account of the desire to avoid unnecessary blasphemy, they reverted to biblical law. For should you maintain that such testimony is biblically invalid, can we execute a person when it is impossible for the evidence to be validly given? And the third did likewise. This anonymous statement agrees with our Akiba, who likens three witnesses to two Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, Bimishnahi, who engages in idol worship, is executed, it is all one whether he serve it, sacrifice, offer incense, make libations, prostrate himself, accept it as a god, or say to it, thou art by God, but he who embraces. Kisses it sweeps or sprinkles the ground before it washes it anoints it clothes it or puts on its shoes he transgresses a negative precept but is not executed he who vows or swears lit confirms a thing by its name violates a negative precept he who uncovers himself before Baal peoris guilty for this is the mode of worshipping him he who casts a stone on Mercules thereby worships it tomorrow what is meant by whether he serve it or Jeremiah said this is what is meant whether he serve it in its normal way or sacrifice make libations offer incense or prostrate himself even if these acts are not the normal mode of worshipping that particular deity why is blood sprinkling not included Abbe said because sprinkling is the same as offering libations as it is written there drink libations of blood will I not offer once do we derive all these are rabbis taught had scripture written he that sacrifice that shall be utterly destroyed I would have thought that the writ refers to sacrificing. Without the temple precincts, therefore, scripture adds to any god showing that it refers to sacrificing to idols. From this, I know only that sacrificing is an abnormal act or worship is punishable. Whence do I learn the same of offering incense and making libations from the additional word save unto the Lord alone, whereby the writ restricted all these services to the worship of the divine name? Now, since sacrificing was singled out from the general statement teaching that the latter applies to all services performed within the temple precincts, whence can it be extended to include prostration from the verse, and he hath gone and served other gods and prostrate himself before them, which is followed by thou shalt bring forth that man or that woman and shalt stone them with stones from this? We learn the punishment. Whence do we derive the formal prohibition from the verse, for thou shalt prostrate thyself to no other god? I might think that I may also include embracing, kissing, and Putting on its shoes as punishable by death, but the writ saith he hath sacrificeth. Now sacrificing was included in the general statement, wherefore was it singled out that a comparison therewith might be drawn and to teach you just as sacrificing is distinguished in that it is a service within the temple precincts and the death penalty is incurred through it. So for all services performed in the temple precincts in lawful worship, one is liable to death when performing them idolatrously. Hence prostration was singled out to eliminate itself alone, whilst sacrificing was singled out to throw light upon the general proposition. The master stated, I would have thought that the writ refers to sacrificing without the temple precincts, but is that not punishable by extinction? I might have thought if he was warned, he is executed. If not, he is punished by extinction. It is therefore taught otherwise. Rabbi son of Arhin and ask Abbe, let us say that prostration was singled out in order to throw. Light upon the general law, and if you answer in that case, why was sacrificing singled out to to throw light upon itself? Is that the intention to perform one act in the service of idolatry, even if made during the performance of another non-idolatrous act, renders one liable to punishment? For it has been taught if one slaughtered a cow with the intention of sprinkling its blood and burning its fat idolatrously, are Yohanan said Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the animal is forbidden for any use, but Reshlakish ruled that it is permitted. Now this difficulty is disposed of on our Yohanan's view, but on the view of Reshlakish, why not say that the verse is required for this purpose? Our Papa demurred with the verse singling out sacrificing be superfluous on our Yohanan's view. Surely he merely rules that the animal is forbidden as a result of the analogy from pickle, but the person may not be liable to death. Hence the verse teaches by singling out sacrificing that he is so liable. Arahavi. Son of Rik demurred with the verse singling out sacrificing not be superfluous on the view of Reshlakish surely he merely rules that the animal is permitted yet the person may be punishable by death just as in the case of one who prostrates himself before a mountain the mountain remaining free for use though the person thereby renders himself liable to decapitation Araha of Dipti said to Rabbin according to Rabbi son of Arhanan's question to
learned he who engages in idol worship is executed implying only if he actually worshipped it but he merely said that he would serve it he is not punished but we have learned if he the seduced person says I will worship or I will go and worship or we will go and worship the seducer is executed he replied the first mission refers to one who said I will not accept it as a god before I serve it or Joseph said you have chosen Tanaim at random this is a conflict of Tanaim for it has been taught if a man said come and worship me or Meir declared him liable to death as any other seducer but our Judah ruled that he is not now if they, his listeners did actually worship him all agree that he is executed for it is written thou shalt not make unto thee any idol their dispute is only if they merely affirmed that they would worship him or Meir maintaining that a mere affirmation is of consequence whilst our Judah holds that a mere affirmation is of no consequence subsequently our Joseph said my answer is groundless for even our Judah maintains that guilt is inc red for a mere assertion as it has been taught our Judah said he the seducer is anti liable to execution unless the seduced person declares I will worship it or I will go and worship or let us go and worship but the dispute of our Meir and our Judah applies to a case where he incited others to worship him and they replied yes our Meir maintaining that when a man incites others to worship him he is paid he to and the yes was Said in earnest whilst our Judah holds that no heed is paid to him for they say Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be wherein does he differ from us and in saying yes they were but mocking him the two Mishnahs however are to be reconciled thus the first mission refers to a multitude who were seduced the second to an individual for an individual will not reconsider his resolve hence he will surely go astray after the seducer but a multitude do reconsider because they discuss it with each other and will therefore not go astray after the seducer our Joseph said once do I know it that the seducer is liable in the case of an individual from the verse if thy brother entice thee thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him hence if he consented and hearkened unto him declaring that he would do as the seducer urged guilt is incurred abatemur to this is there any difference whether the one or the many are seduced surely it has been taught if thy brother the son of thy Mother entice thee it is all one whether the one or the many are seduced scripture however excludes an individual from the law pertaining to a multitude and a multitude from the provisions of an individual is an individual is excluded from the law pertaining to a multitude and that his person is punished with greater severity whilst his property is treated with greater leniency whilst a multitude are excluded from the law of an individual being personally punished with greater leniency but their property is treated with greater severity hence the distinction is only in this respect but in all other matters they are alike obey therefore answered thus the first mission refers to one who is self-persuaded the second to enticement by others if he is self-persuaded he may reconsider the matter therefore he is punished only if he actually engages in worship but if he is enticed by others he will be dragged after them therefore for his mere assertion the penalty is merited obey. Said once do I know this from the verse thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him hence if he consented and hearkened unto the seducer by affirmation he is liable Rabbah said both Mishnahs deal with one who was seduced by others the second mission refers to a seducer who described the idols might saying it eats thus it drinks thus it does so much good and so much harm but the first mission treats of a seducer who did not thus descant upon the idols greatness Rabbah said once do I learn this from the verse if thy brother entice thee saying let us go and serve other gods namely of the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee or far from thee now what does it matter whether they are far or near but the root means this from the character of the near idols you can learn the nature of the distant one surely that it means that the seducer had said to the seduced it eats thus it drinks thus it does so much good and so much harm this proof is Conclusive Arashi said the second mission refers to a non-conforming Israelite Rabbanah said the two Mishnahs teach not only this but even that it has been taught if one engages in idolatry through love or fear of man but does not actually accept the divinity of the idol Abbe said he is liable to punishment but Rabbanah said he is free from a penalty Abbe ruled that he is liable since he worshipped it but Rabbanah said that he is free only if he accepts it as a god is he liable but not otherwise. Nimanaki Gish Tahabi Lamashia Abbe said how do I know it because we have learned he who engages in idol worship it is all one whether he serve it etc surely it means whether he serve it through love or fear or whether he sacrifice to it as a god but Rabbanah answers you that is not so but as our Jeremiah resolved the difficulty Abbe further said once do I know it for it has been taught thou shalt not bow down thyself to them thou mayest not bow down to them but thou mayest bow down to it. Human being like thyself, I might think that this applies even to one who is worshipped like Haman, but the writ adds not serve them, but Haman was thus served through fear. Rabbah, however, explains it thus like Haman, but not altogether so to bow down to one like Haman is forbidden since he set himself up as a divinity, but not altogether so for Haman was worshipped through fear. Whilst the prohibition of this verse applies only to a voluntary action, Abbe said, Whence do I know it for it has been taught as for an anointed high priest's liability to a sacrifice for unwitting idol worship? Rabbi said it holds good even if his inadvertence it was in respect of the action only, but the sages say there must have been forgetfulness of the principal law itself. They agree, however, that his sacrifice is a she goat as that of a private individual who committed idolatry inadvertently. They also agree that he is not bound to bring the guilt offering of doubt. Now, how can the act of idol worship? He committed unwittingly if he saw an idolatrous shrine thought it to be a synagogue and bowed down to it surely his heart was to heaven but it must mean that he saw a royal statue and bowed down to it now if he accepted it as a god he is a deliberate sinner Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin a whilst if not his action was not idolatrous at all hence it surely must mean that he worshipped it idolatrously through love or fear but Rabbah answers you thus his inadvertency arose through his declaring that idolatry is permissible but if he declares it permissible is it not forgetfulness of the law it refers to a declaration that it is entirely permissible whilst forgetfulness consists of partial confirmation and partial annulment our Zakai recited to our Yohanan if one sacrifice offered incense made libations and prostrate himself before an idol in one state of unawareness he is bound to bring only one sacrifice thereupon our Yohanan retorted go teach this outside but our Abba said this teaching. Of our Zakai is the subject of a dispute between our Jose and our Nathan, for it has been taught the prohibition of kindling on the Sabbath was singled out from the general prohibition of work to teach that it is merely the object of a negative precept. This is our Jose's view. Our Nathan maintained it was particularly specified to indicate separation. Now, on the view that kindling was specified to teach that it is merely the object of a negative precept, prostration too was singled out for that purpose. Whilst if kindling was singled out to indicate separation, prostration was likewise singled out for the same reason. Our Joseph objected. Perhaps our Jose maintains that kindling was singled out to teach that it is the object of a negative precept only because he derives separation of different acts of labor from the phrase of one of them. For it has been taught our Jose said, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done. And shall do of one of them this teaches that sometimes one sacrifice is incurred for all of them transgressions whilst at others for each one of the transgressions a separate sacrifice must be brought whereon our Jonathan remarked what is the reason of our Jose i.e. how does he deduce this from the verse because it is written and shall do of one of them this teaches that liability is incurred for one complete act of violation i.e. one and for one which is but a part of one i.e. of one and for transgressing actions forbidden in themselves i.e. them and for actions the prohibited nature of which is derived from others i.e. of them further that one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices i.e. one equals them whilst many offenses may involve but one sacrifice i.e. them equals one thus one complete act of violation the writing on the Sabbath of Simeon one which is but a part of one the writing of Shem is part of Simeon actions forbidden in themselves i.e. them it Principal acts of labor forbidden on the Sabbath actions the prohibited nature of which is derived from others i.e. of them the derivatives one transgression may involve liability for a number of sacrifices i.e. one equals them e.g. if one knew that it was the Sabbath and that some work is forbidden on the Sabbath but was unaware that these particular acts are forbidden many offenses may involve but one sacrifice i.e. them equals one e.g. if he was unaware that it was the Sabbath but knew that his actions are forbidden on the Sabbath but here in idol worship since separation of actions is not derived from elsewhere may we not say that all ag
This interpretation of the phrase of one of them is possible on Abbe's view that a penalty is incurred for this, but on Rabbe's view that there is no liability, what can you say? Hence, he will have to explain it that his inadvertence arose through his declaring that idolatry is permissible, but on that assumption, you may solve the problem which Rabbe propounded to Arnaman Viz. What if one forgot both now? On that assumption, you may deduce that he is liable only for one sacrifice that causes no difficulty, then solve it. But canst thou apply this verse to idolatry in this chapter for the sin of an anointed high priest? The bullock is prescribed of a chief, a he goat, and of a private individual, a she goat, or a lamb. Whilst with respect to idolatry, we have learned they agree that his sacrifice is a she goat, as that of a private individual. There is nothing more to be said about the matter when our Samuel B. Judah came, he said, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. This is the teaching. Which here is Akai recited to him or Yohanan in one respect the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in another it is the reverse now the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one did two acts of work in one state of unawareness he must make atonement for each separately this is not so in the case of other precepts other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath for in their case if an injunction was unwittingly and unintentionally violated atonement must be made this is not so with respect to the Sabbath the Aster said the Sabbath is more stringent than other precepts in that if one did two acts of work etc how so shall we say that he reaped and ground corn that an analogous violation of other precepts would be the partaking of forbidden fat and blood but in both cases two penalties are incurred but how is it possible in the case of other precepts that only one liability is incurred e.g. if one ate forbidden fat twice then by analogy the Sabbath was desecrated by reaping twice but in each case only one liability is incurred therefore our Yohanan said to him go teach it outside but what is the difficulty perhaps it can be explained after all as referring to reaping and grinding whilst this is not so in the case of other precepts refers to idolatry and in accordance with the dictum of RMI who said if one sacrificed burnt incense and made libations to an idol in one state of unawareness only one penalty is incurred though a number of services were performed this cannot be explained as referring to idolatry because the second clause states other precepts are more stringent than the Sabbath for in their case if an injunction was unwittingly and unintentionally violated atonement must be made now how is an unwitting and unintentional transgression of idolatry possible if one thought it sc an idolatry was trying to be a synagogue and bowed down to it but his heart was to heaven but it must mean that he saw royal Statue and bowed down to it now if he accepted it as a god he is a deliberate sinner whilst if he did not accept it as a god he has not committed idolatry at all hence it must mean that he worshipped idolatrously through love or fear now this agrees with Abbe's view that a penalty is incurred but on Rabbe's view that there is no liability what can you say you will therefore explain that his inadvertence arose through his declaring that idolatry is permissible then this is not so in the case of the Sabbath will mean that there is no liability at all but this cannot be so for when Rabbe propounded to Arnaman what if one is unaware of both i.e. that it is the Sabbath and that labor on the Sabbath is forbidden his problem was whether one sacrifice is incurred or two one for each act of work but none maintain that he is entirely exempt what difficulty is this perhaps after all it ought be said the first clause dealing with the greater severity of the Sabbath refers to idolatry Whilst the second treats of other precepts the unwitting and unintentional transgression of which consisted of thinking that melted forbidden fat was spittle which he swallowed for this liability is incurred which is not so with regard to the Sabbath there being no liability in an analogous case e.g. if one intended lifting something detached from the soil but accidentally tore out a plant from the earth he is exempt from a penalty now this is in accordance with Arnaman's dictum in Samuel's name this he who violates the injunction of forbidden fat or consanguineous relationship whilst intending to do something else is liable to a penalty since he derived pleasure thereby but he who mistakenly did a forbidden act on the Sabbath whilst intending to do another is free from penalty because the Torah prohibited only a calculated action but our Yohanan who said go teach it outside was consistent with his attitude elsewhere that two clauses of omission must not be interpreted as Referring each to different circumstances for our Yohanan said he who will explain to me the mission of a barrel to agree with one tana entirely I shall carry his clothes for him to the baths to revert to the main text Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin ARMI said if one sacrifice burnt incense and made libations to an idol in one state of unawareness only one penalty is incurred Abbe said what is RMI's reason scripture said thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them thereby. The writ declares that all idolatrous deeds constitute one act of service but did Abbe say thus did he not say why is prostration forbidden three times once to prohibit it when it is a normal mode of service the second even if abnormal and the third teaches separation he explains RMI's ruling but disagrees with it himself to revert to the main text Abbe said why is prostration forbidden three times once to prohibit it when it is a normal mode of service the second even if abnormal and the third teaches separation but is not the normal mode of worship derived from take heed that thou inquire not after their gods saying how did these nations serve their gods even so will I do likewise but amend us one teaches that prostration is forbidden when it is the appropriate but unusual mode of worshipping that deity the second forbids it even if it is not the normal mode of service and the third teaches separation whether he accepts it as a god or says to it thou art my god our said in the name of Rabbi Abba in Rab's name as soon as he said thou art my god he is liable liable to what if to execution this is stated already in the Mishnah hence it means liable to a sacrifice now is this so even in the view of the rabbis but it has been taught he the idolater is liable to a sacrifice only for that which entails an action e.g. sacrificing burning incense making libations and prostration were on Resh Lakish observed which Tana maintains that a Sacrifices due for prostration are Akiva who rules that a deed entailing much action is unnecessary does this not prove that the rabbis maintain that much action is necessary consequently in their opinion the declaration thou art my god made unwittingly does not involve a sacrifice rabbis dictum is only in accordance with our Akiva but if so is it not obvious for it is just like blasphemy I might think that only for blasphemy does our Akiva rule that a sacrifice is incurred since extinction is prescribed for it if committed deliberately but not in this case since extinction is not prescribed therefore rab teaches that a sacrifice is due because they see the sacrificing to an idol and the declaring thou art my god are equalized for it is written they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and have said these be thy gods O Israel which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt are Yohanan said but for the Bavin who have brought the out the wicked of Israel would have deserved extermination. This is disputed by Tanaim, but has been taught others say, but for the Lawan who have brought the out the wicked of Israel would have deserved extermination. Thereupon our Simeon Biohe remarked, but whoever associates the heavenly name with anything else, Eskotiades is utterly destroyed, lit eradicated from the world, for it is written, He that sacrificeth unto any god save unto the Lord alone, he shall be utterly destroyed. What? Then is intimated by the plural and who have brought the up that they lusted after many deities, but he who embraces kisses it sweeps or sprinkles the ground before it, etc. When Ardimi came, he said in our Eliezer's name for all these offenses, he is flagellated except for bowing or swearing by its name. Now why for bowing or swearing by its name? Because it is a negative precept, the transgression of which involves no action, but those others two are only forbidden by a negative precept stated in. General terms and for such one is not flagellated for it has been taught once do we know that the eating of the flesh of an animal before it has expired is forbidden by a negative precept from the verse ye shall not eat anything with the blood another meaning of ye shall not eat anything with the blood is ye shall not eat the flesh of sacrifices whilst the blood is in the sprinkling bowl Ardosa said once do we know that the meal of comfort is not eaten for criminals executed by Beth Din. From the verse ye shall not eat i.e. observe the funeral meal for one whose blood has been shed Arakiba said once do we know that a Sanhedrin which executed a person must not eat anything on the day of the execution from the verse ye shall not eat anything with the shedding of blood our Jonathan said once do we derive a formal prohibition against the wayward and rebellious son from the verse ye shall not do anything to cause bloodshed now Arabin Bihai or as other state Arabin Bihana said. For none of these offenses is the offender flagellated because it is a negative prec
Interpretation and neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. This is a formal prohibition against Amasith and Madia, but Amasith is explicitly forbidden, and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. But it is a formal prohibition against Amadia, nor cause others. Sc. Heathens to bow or swear by its name. This supports the dictum of Samuel's father, for the father of Samuel said one may not enter into a business partnership with a heathen. Lest the latter be obliged to take an oath in connection with a business dispute, and he swear by his idol, whilst the Torah hath said, Neither let it be heard out through thy mouth when Willa came to Babylonia, he lodged in Calnabo. Subsequently, Rabbah asked him, Where did you stay the night? He replied, In Calnabo, but said, He is it not written, and make no mention of the name of other gods. He answered, Thus did our Yohan and say, The name of every idol written in the Torah may be mentioned. Now, where is this name written? Bell bowed down, Nebo stupeth, but if the name is not written, may it then not be mentioned to this. Our measure she objected, We have learned if one had a protracted issue of matter from his body lasting as long as three normal issues, which is equivalent to the time of walking from Gadia into Shiloh, namely as long as it takes to perform two ritual immersions and dry oneself twice, he is a Zav in all respects. Rabbah answered, Also, Gad is written in the Bible, is that prepare. Table for Gad Arnam and said all scoffing is forbidden except scoffing at idols which is permitted as it is written Bell bowed down Nebo stood but they stooped they bowed down together they could not deliver the burden and it is also written they have spoken the inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven for the people thereof shall mourn over it and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it for the glory thereof which is departed from it read not Kabato its glory but Kabito his weight our Isaac said what is meant by and now they sin more and more and have made the molten images of their silver and idols in their image this teaches that each made a small image of his idol put it in his pocket and whenever he thought of it withdrew it from his bosom and embraced and kissed it what is meant by let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves our Isaac of the school of RMI said whenever the idols priests became envious of any wealthy men they starved the calves which were worshipped made images of these men and placed them at the side of the cribs then they loosed the calves who recognizing these men from the images set before them ran after them and pawed them thereupon the priest said the idol desires thee come and sacrifice thyself to them Rabbah said if so the verse should not be they sacrifice men and kiss the calves but the calves kiss them i.e. paw and fawn upon them that they should sacrifice themselves but Rabbah explained it thus if one sacrificed his son to the idol the priest said to him you have offered a most precious gift to it come and kiss it Rab Judah said in Rab's name and the men of Babylon made Sukhabanoth what is this a fowl and the men of Kuth made Nurgle what is it a cock and the men of Hamath made Ashima what is that a bald buck and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak what are these a dog and an ass and the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to a like an animal like the gods of Sepharvim what are these the mule and the horse Adramalek meaning that if the mule honors its master the king with its load and Amalek meaning that the horse responds to its master in battle the father of Hezekiah king of Judah wished to do likewise to him i.e. burn him in fire but that his mother anointed him with the blood of the salamander Rab Judah said in Rab's name the Israelites knew that the idols were non-entities but they engaged in idolatry only that they might openly satisfy their incestuous lusts are measured she objected as those who remember their children so they longed for their altars and their graves by the green trees etc which are Eliezer interpreted as one who yearns for his son so they yearned that was after they became addicted there to come and here and I will cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols it was related of Elijah the righteous that whilst searching for those who were languishing with hunger in Jerusalem he once found a child faint with hunger lying. Upon the dung heap on questioning him as to the family to which he belonged, he replied, I belong to such and such a family. He asked, Are any of that family left? And he answered, None excepting myself. Thereupon he asked, If I teach thee something by which thou wilt lie, wilt thou learn? He replied, Yes, then said he, Recite every day here, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. But the child retorted, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be silent, for one must not make mention of the name of the Lord. He said this. Because his father and mother had not taught him to serve the Lord, and straightway he brought forth an idol from his bosom, embracing and kissing it until his stomach burst, his idol fell to the earth, and he upon it, thus fulfilling the verse, And I shall cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols that too was after they became addicted there to come and here, and they cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Now what did they say, Rab Judah, or as others maintain, our Jonathan said? They cried this woe woe it is that sc idolatry which destroyed the sanctuary burned the temple slew the righteous and exiled Israel from their land and still it sports amongst us hast thou not said it before us that we might be rewarded for withstanding its allurements but we desire neither temptation nor reward that too was after they were seduced by it continuing Rab Judah's statement they fasted for three days and reading for mercy thereafter their sentence fell from heaven the word Emeth truth written upon it our Hannah said this proves that the seal of the Holy One blessed be he is Emeth the shape of a fiery lion's well issued from the Holy of Holies and the prophet said to Israel that is the tempter of idolatry whilst they held it fast a hair of its body fell out and his roar of pain was heard for four hundred parasangs in perplexity they cried what shall we do maybe heaven will pity him the prophet answered cast him into a lead cauldron and cover it with lead too. Absorbed his voice as it is written, and he said, This is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of the Eva, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then they said, Since the time is propitious, let us pray that the tempter of sin may likewise be delivered into our hands. So they prayed, and it was delivered into their hands. They imprisoned it for three days after that they sought a new laid egg for an invalid in the whole of Palestine, and could not find one. Then they said, What shall we do? Shall we pray that his power be but partially destroyed? Heaven will not grant it. So they blinded it with rouge. This was so far effective that one does not lust for his forbidden relations. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, A gentile woman once fell sick. She vowed, If I recover, I will go and serve every idol in the world. She recovered and proceeded to serve all idols on reaching Pier. She asked its priest, How is this worship? They replied, People eat, beat, drink, strong drink, and then uncover. Themselves before it, she replied, I would rather fall sick again than serve an idol in such a manner. But ye, O house of Israel, were not so as it is written, Slay everyone is men that were joined unto Baal Pier, ye were attached to it like an air tightlid, whereas whilst ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God implies merely like two dates sticking to each other in the very day it has been taught that were joined unto Baal Pier loosely like a bracelet on the hands of a woman, whereas whilst ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God indicates that they were firmly attached. Our rabbis taught Sapta, a townsman of the class once hired and asked to a Gentile woman when she came to Pier, she said to him, Wait till I enter and come out again under issuing. He said to her, Now do you wait for me too until I go in and come out again? But said she, Are you not a Jew? He replied, What does it concern thee? He then entered, uncovered himself before it, and wiped himself on the idol's nose whilst the acolytes. Praise him, saying, No man has ever served this idol, thus he that uncovers himself before Baal Pier thereby serves it, even if his intention was to degrade it, he who cast a stone at Merulis thereby serves it, even if his intention was to bruise it, or Manasseh was going to be torted on the way he was told an idol stands here, he took up a stone and threw it at the idol statue thereupon they said to him, It is Merulis, he said to them, But we have learned he who cast a stone for Merulis thereby serves it, so he went and inquired at the Beth Hamid Rash whether he had done wrong since his action was a gesture of contempt, they informed him, We have learned he who cast a stone at Merulis thereby serves it, that is to say, even if it is merely to bruise it, he said to them, Then I will go and remove it, but they replied, Whether one cast a stone or removes it, he incurs guilt, because every stone thus removed leaves room for another mission, he who gives of his seed to Molech incurs no. Punishment unless he delivers it to Molech and causes it to pass through the fire. If he gave it to Molech but did not cause it to pass through the fire or the reverse, he incurs no penalty unless he does both. Imara the Mishnah teaches idolatry and giving to Molech. Aravin said, Our Mishnah is in accordance with the view that Molech worship is not idolatry, for it has been
that make this son or his daughter to pass through the fire just as there the references to fire so here too and just as here the references to Molech so there too are Aha the son of Rabba said if one caused all his seed to pass through the fire to Molech he is exempt from punishment because it is written of thy seed implying but not all thy seed are ashy propounded what if one caused his blind or sleeping son to pass through or if he caused his grandson by his son or daughter to pass through one at least of these you may solve for it has been taught any man that giveth any of his seed unto Molech he shall he put to death and I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given of his seed unto Molech why is this stated because it is said there shall not be found among you anyone that make this son or his daughter to pass through the fire from this I know it only of his son or daughter whence do I know that it applies to his Son, son, or daughter, son, too, from the verse, and if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not, then I will cut him off. Now the Tanna commences with the verse because he hath given of his seed, but concludes with when he giveth of his seed. This is to intimate another deduction, thus because he hath given of his seed from this, I know only that the law applies to legitimate seed, that being the normal meaning of the word whence do I know that it also applies to illegitimate seed from the verse when he giveth of his seed. Rab Judah said he is only liable to punishment if he causes his seed to pass through in the normal way. How is that Abay said there was a loose pile of bricks in the middle and fire on either side of it? Rabba said it was like the children sleeping about on Purim. It has been taught in support of Rabba punishment is incurred only for causing one seed to pass in the normal fashion if he caused him to pass through on foot he is exempt he is liable only for his own issue e.g. for his son and daughter he is punished but for his father or mother brother or sister he is not if he passed through himself he is free from punishment our Eliezer son of Arsimian ruled that he is liable further whether to Molech or to any other idol he is liable our Eliezer son of Arsimian said if to Molech he is liable if to another idol he is not Allah said what is our Eliezer son of Arsimian as reason scripture said there shall not be found among the among the means in thyself and the rabbis do they not interpret among thee thus surely we have learned if one must search for a lost article of his own and of his father's priority is given to his own and we observe thereon why so to which Rab Judah replied scripture said save that there shall be no poor among the teaching that one's own loss has priority over that of any other man there the deduction follows from save that our Jose son of our Hanada said why is extinction thrice threatened for idolatry one teaches extinction for the normal worship of idols one for abnormal and one for the service of Molech but on the view that Molech worship is included in general idolatry why is extinction mentioned in its case to amply to one who causes his son to pass through to an idol not Molech where such is not the normal mode of worship now on the view that a Megadeth is a worshipper of idols why is extinction stated for it even as it has been taught that soul shall surely be cut off from among his people he shall be cut off in this world and in the next this is our Akiva's view our Ishmael said but the verse has previously stated that soul shall be cut off are there than three worlds but interpret this and that soul shall be cut off in this world he is to he cut off of the following verse and denoted by the infinitive in the next whilst as for the repetition the finite form of the verb that is because the Torah Employs human phraseology Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Amishna Abalob is the Pitham who speaks from his armpit, the Yiddo and I wizard is one who speaks from his mouth, these two are stoned whilst he who inquires of them transgresses a formal prohibition tomorrow. Why are both Abalob and Yiddo and I mentioned here as being executed whilst in the list of those who are punished by extinction only Balob is included but Yiddo and I is omitted are you said because both are stated in one. Negative precept Reshlaik said Yiddo and I is omitted in Kiratah because it involves no action now according to our Yohanan why is Balob mentioned rather than Yiddo and I because it is written first in the scripture now why does Reshlaik reject our Yohanan's answer our Papa said they are stated separately in the verse decreeing death but our Yohanan maintains offenses which are distinct in their injunctions there being a different one for each are held to be separate in there. Atonement, but if only in the decree of death they are not regarded as separate now, why does our Yohanan reject Reshlakish's answer? He can tell you the mission of Kiratah is taught in accordance with our Akiva's views that action is unnecessary for a sin offering to be incurred, but Reshlakish maintains granted that our Akiva does not require a great action, but he requires at least a small one. But what action is there in blasphemy which is included in the enumeration of the movement of the lips? But what action is done by Balob the knocking of his arms now is this so even in the view of the rabbis, but it has been taught the idolater is liable to a sacrifice only for that which entails an action, e.g., sacrificing burning incense, making libations, and prostration, whereon Reshlakish observed which Tana maintains that a sacrifice is due for prostration. Our Akiva who rules that a deed entailing much action is unnecessary, but our Yohanan said it even agrees with the rabbis for in. Bending his body, he performs an action. Now, since Reshlakish maintains that in the view of the rabbis, bending one's body is not regarded as an action, surely the knocking of the arms is not one. Well, then Reshlakish's statement that the Balob performs an action is made on the view only of our Akiva, but not of the rabbis. If so, should not the mission of their state, but the rabbis maintain that the blasphemer and Balob are excluded. But Allah answered the mission of their refers to a Balob who burnt incense to a demon. Rabbi asked him, but is not burning incense to a demon idolatry? But Rabbi said, i.e., the Balob in Kirithoth refers to one who burns incense as a charm. Abay said to him, but burning incense as a charm is to act as a charmer, which is merely prohibited by a negative precept that is so. But the Torah decreed that such a charmer is stoned. Our rabbis taught there shall not be found among you anyone that make the son or daughter pass through to the fire or a charmer. This applies to one who charms large objects and to one who charms small ones, even snakes and scorpions. Abay said, therefore, even to imprison wasps or scorpions by charms, though the intention is to prevent them from doing harm, is forbidden. Now, as for our Yohanan, why does he maintain that in the view of the rabbis, the bending of one's body in prostration is an action, whilst the movement of the lips is not? Rabbi said, blasphemy is different since the offense lies in the intention. Talmud, Moss, Sanhedrin, Br. Zero, objected false witnesses are excluded from the necessity of a sin offering if they unwittingly offended, since their offense entails no action, but why so their offense does not depend on intention? Rabbi answered, false witnesses are different because their offense is caused by sound, but does not our Yohanan regard sound as a concrete action? Has it not been stated if one frightened lit muzzled off an animal by his voice or drove animals by his voice, our Yohanan ruled that he is liable to punishment because the movement of his lips is an action. Reshlakish ruled that he is not because this is not an action, but Rabbi answered thus false witnesses are different because their offense is caused through vision. Our rabbis taught Balob is one who speaks from between the joints of his body and his elbow joints. A Yiddo and I is one who places the bone of a Yiddo in his mouth and it speaks of itself. An objection is raised and thy voice shall be as of one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground. Surely that means that it speaks naturally, know it ascends and seats itself between his joints and speaks. Come and hear. And the woman said unto Saul, I saw a godlike form ascending out of the earth. And Samuel said to Saul, Surely that means that it spoke naturally, know it settled itself between her joints and spoke. Our rabbis taught Balob denotes both him who conjures up the dead by means of soothsaying and one who consults his skull. What is the difference? Between them the dead conjured up by soothsaying does not ascend naturally but feed first nor on the Sabbath whilst if consulted by its skull it ascends naturally and on the Sabbath too you say it ascends but whither does not the skull lie before him but say thus it answers naturally and on the Sabbath too and this question W.A. asked by Turnus Rufus of Arakiba wherein does the state of Sabbath differ from any other he replied wherein does one man differ from another because M. Lord the emperor which is at the Sabbath too Arakiba rejoined and is distinguished because the Lord W. She so he replied I ask this who tells you that this day is the Sabbath he answered let the river salvation prove it let the B.A.L.O.B. prove it let th hashtag father's grave once no smoke ascends on the Sabbath prove it he said to him you have shamed disgraced and reviled him by this proof he who inquired of an OB is that not the same as one that consultate the dead as has been taught or that Consultate the dead this means
the usual manner to save them from becoming worthy are rabbis taught him in Ashes, one who says so and so's bread has fallen out of his hand his staff has fallen out of his hand his son called after him a raven screamed after him a deer has crossed his path a serpent came at his right hand or a fox at his left talmud ma sanhedrin do not commence with me it is morning it is new moon it is the conclusion of the sabbath are rabbis taught ye shall not use enchantments nor observe times this refers to those who practice enchantment by means of weasels birds and fish mishahi who desecrates the sabbath is stone providing that it is an offense punished by extinction if deliberate and by a sin offering if unwitting gemara this proves that there is a matter of desecrating the sabbath for the deliberate committal of which there is no extinction nor is a sin offering to be brought for its unwitting transgression what is it the law of boundaries according to our Akiva and kindling a Fire according to our Jose Mishnah, one who curses his father or his mother is not punished unless he curses them by the divine name. If he cursed them by an attribute, our Meir held him liable, but the sages ruled that he is exempt. Gemara, who is meant here by the sages, our Menahem, son of our Jose, for it has been taught our Menahem, son of our Jose, said when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. Why is the name mentioned to teach that he who curses his father or his mother does not incur a penalty unless he employs the divine name? Our rabbis taught for any man that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. His father and his mother he hath cursed, his blood shall be upon him. Now the scripture could have said a manish what is taught by any manish the inclusion of a daughter, Tumtum, and other as being subject to this law that curses his father and his mother. From this I know only that he is punished for cursing his father and his. Mother once do I know the same if he cursed his father without his mother or his mother without his father from the passage his father and his mother he hath cursed his blood shall be upon him implying a man that cursed his father a man that cursed his mother this is our Joshua's opinion our Jonathan said the beginning of the verse alone implies either the two together or each separately unless the verse had explicitly stated together he shall surely be put to death by stoning you say by stoning but perhaps it means by one of the other deaths decreed in the Torah here it is written his blood shall be upon him and elsewhere it is written a man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones their blood shall be upon them just as their stoning is meant so here too from this we learn punishment once do we derive the prohibition from the verse thou shalt not revile the judges nor curse the ruler of that people now if his father is a judge he is included in the thou shalt not revile the judges if an Asai and nor curse the ruler of the people if neither a judge nor a ruler whence do we know it you may construct a syllogism with these two as premises the case of an Asai is not analogous to that of a judge nor of a judge to that of an Asai now the case of a judge is not analogous to that of an Asai for you are commanded to obey the ruling of a judge but not of an Asai whilst the case of an Asai is not analogous to that of a judge for you are enjoined not to rebel against the decree of an Asai but not of a judge now what is common to both is that they are of that people and you are forbidden to curse them so I extend the law to thy father who is of that people that thou art forbidden to curse him no their common characteristic is their greatness which is the decisive factor hence scripture writes thou shalt not curse the death thus applying the injunction even to the humblest of that people no in the case of the deaf his very deafness may be the cause of the prohibition then let the Nasai and the judge prove otherwise but in their case their greatness may be the cause then let the deaf prove the reverse and thus the argument proceeds in a circle the particular characteristic of one is lacking in the other and vice versa what is common to all is that they are of that people and you are forbidden to curse them so I include thy father who is of that people and you are forbidden to curse him know what they have in common is that they are distinguished from the average person but if so scripture should have written either the judge and the deaf or the Nasai and the deaf why then is the judge mentioned since this is superfluous for itself apply it to one's father now this agrees with the view that Elohim is profane but on the view that it is holy what canst thou say for it has been taught Elohim is profane that is our Ishmael's opinion our Akiva said it is sacred and it has been Taught thereon our Eliezer B. Jacob said once do we derive a formal prohibition against cursing God's name from the verse thou shalt not revile God on the view that Elohim is profane the sacred is derived from the profane hence contrary wise on the view that Elohim is sacred thou mayest derive the profane from the sacred now it is quite correct to say that on the view that Elohim is profane the sacred is derived from it but on the view that Elohim is holy how canst thou derive the profane from it perhaps the prohibition is only in respect of the sacred i.e. God but not of the profane at all if so scripture should have written Elohim lo tekel thou shalt not revile God Talmud ma sanhedrin by right lo tekel that both God and judge may be understood there from Mishnah he who has intimate connection with the betrothed maiden is not punished until she is a nara virgin betrothed and in her father's house if two men violated her the first is stoned but the second is Strangled Gemara, our rabbis taught if an ar damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, an ar excludes a bogareth virgin, excludes one who is no longer a virgin betrothed, excludes a nasua because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. This excludes one whom her father has given over to her husband's messengers to take to her new home. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, this our Mishnah is our Meir's view, but the sages maintain that by betrothed damsel even a minor is understood. Arahav Dipti said to Rabbin, once do we know that the Mishnah is as our Meir only the term an ar excluding a minor too? Perhaps it agrees even with the rabbis, whilst an ar is intended to exclude a bogareth, but none else. He replied, if so, instead of saying he is not punished until she is a nara a virgin and betrothed, the Mishnah should have said he is punished only for an ar a virgin and a betrothed. No further argument is possible. Our Jacob B. Ada asked of Rab what if one has intimate connection with a betrothed minor according to our Meir's view does he exclude a minor entirely or only from stoning he replied it is reasonable to assume that he excludes him only from stoning but is it not written if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband and they shall both of them die implying that they must both be equal Rab remained silent Samuel said why was Rab silent he should have answered him it is written but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man only that lay with her shall die this question is disputed by Tanaim then they shall both of them die this teaches that they must both be equal that is our Joshua's view our Jonathan said then the man only that lay with her shall die and the other our Jonathan what does he deduce from then they shall both die Rab answered it excludes a mere wedding of one's lust but the other he regards such excitation as of no consequence and the other are Joshua, how does he interpret alone even as it has been taught if ten men cohabited with her yet leaving her a virgin they are all stoned rabbi said the first is stoned but the others are strangled or rabbis taught and the daughter of any priest if she profaned herself to hell by playing a whore rabbi said it implies the first and thus it is also written and the man only that lieth with her shall die what does this mean Arhuna the son of our Joshua said rabbi agrees with our Ishmael viz that only in Aruzah the daughter of a priest is singled out for burning but not an Esau who is strangled just as an Israelite's daughter and this is what he says if her first coition is adulterous i.e. if she is in Aruzah at the time she is burnt otherwise she is stoned what is meant by and thus etc it is as their just as their scripture refers to her first coition so here too our BBB Abbe said to him the master has not said thus who is it our Joseph but that rabbi agreed with our Meir who Held that if a priest's daughter married one who was unfit for her and then committed adultery, she is strangled instead of burnt. And this is what Rabbi says: if her first profanation is through adultery, she is burnt. Otherwise, she is stoned. And what is meant by and thus etc. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, that is merely a mnemonical sign. Mishnah Amos is a seducing layman, and he who seduces an individual, saying there is an idol in such and such a place, it eats, thus it drinks, thus it does so much good and so much harm for all whom the Torah condemns to death. No witnesses are hidden to entrap them, excepting for this one. If he incited two to idolatry, they themselves are witnesses against him, and he is brought to Beth Din and stoned. But if he enticed one, he must reply, I have friends who wish to do so. Likewise, come and propose it to them too. But if he was cunning and declined to speak before them, witnesses are hidden behind a partition, whilst he who was incited says to him, make. Your proposal to me now in private when the Messiah does so the other
The rabbis rub in said both clauses are based on the rabbis ruling but proceed from the universally admitted to the disputed are papa said when the Mishnah states Amos is his head it is only in respect of hiding witnesses for it has been taught and for all others for whom the Torah decrees death witnesses are not hidden excepting for this one how is it done a light is lit in an inner chamber the witnesses are hidden in an outer one which is in darkness so that they can see and hear him. But he cannot see them and the person he wished to seduce says to him tell me privately what thou hast proposed to me and he does so then he remonstrates but how shall we forsake our God in heaven and serve idols if he retracts it as well but if he answers it is our duty and seemly for us the witnesses who were listening outside bring him to the Beth Din and have him stoned Mishnah Amadiyah is one who says let us go and serve idols a sorcerer if he actually performs magic is liable to death. But not if he merely creates illusions our Akiva said in our Joshua's name of two who gather cucumbers by magic one may be punished and the other exempt he who really gathers them is punished whilst he who produces an illusion is exempt Amar Rab Judah said in Rab's name this Mishnah teaches of those who lead astray a seduced city a sorcerer if he actually performs magic etc our rabbis taught thou shalt not suffer a wish to live this applies to both man and woman if so why is a female? Which stated because mostly women engage in witchcraft how are they executed our Jose the Galilean said here it is written thou shalt not suffer a wish to live whilst elsewhere is written thou shalt not suffer anything that breathed to live just as there the sword is meant so here is the sword meant to our Akiva said it is here stated thou shalt not suffer a wish to live whilst elsewhere it is said there shall not a hand touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be. Beast or man it shall not live just as their death by stoning is meant so here too our Jose said to him I have drawn an analogy between thou shalt not suffer to live written in two verses whilst you have made a comparison between thou shalt not suffer to live and it shall not lie our Akiva replied I have drawn an analogy between two verses referring to Israelites for whom the writ hath decreed many modes of execution whilst you have compared Israelites to heathens in whose case only Talmud, Moss. Sanhedrin be one death penalty is decreed Ben Aze said it is here written thou shalt not suffer a wish to live whilst immediately after it is said whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death now this is placed in proximity teaching that just as the latter is stoned so is the former thereupon our Judah said to him shall we because of this proximity exclude the former from the easier death implied by an unspecified death sentence changing it to stoning but reason this the OB. And Yido and I were included among other sorcerers why were they singled out that other sorcerers may be assimilated to them and to teach thee just as the OB and Yido and I are stoned so are all other sorcerers stoned but even according to our Judah are not OB and Yido and I two statements teaching the same thing and two statements teaching the same thing cannot throw light upon anything else our Zechariah answered for this very reason our Judah is generally said to maintain that even two statements singled out for the same purpose eliminate the proposition as a whole our Yohanan said why are they sorcerers called Kashafim because they lessen the power of the divine agencies there is none else besides him our Hanan said even by sorcery a woman once attempted to take earth from under our Hanan's feet he said to her if you succeed in your attempts go and practice it sc sorcery it is written however there is none else beside him but that is not so for did not our Yohanan say why are they Called me Kashifim because they lessen the power of the divine agencies. Our Hanna was in a different category owing to his abundant merit. Our Abbe Binadri said in the name of our high B Abba refers to magic through the agency of demons. Blah to sorcery without outside help. And thus it is also said in the flame of the sword that turns of itself. Abbe said the sorcerer who insists on exact paraphernalia works through demons. He who does not works by pure enchantment. Abbe said the laws of sorcerers are like those of the Sabbath. Certain actions are punished by stoning. Some are exempt from punishment yet forbidden. Whilst others are entirely permitted. Thus if one actually performs magic, he is stoned. If he merely creates an illusion, he is exempt. Yet it is forbidden. Whilst what is entirely permitted, such as was performed by our Hanna and our Ashai, who spent every Sabbath even studying the laws of creation by means of which they created a thergrown calf and. Aided Arashi said I saw Karna's father blow his nose violently and streamers of silk issued from his nostrils then the magician said unto Pharaoh this is the finger of God our Eliezer said this proves that a magician cannot produce a creature less than a barley corn in size our Papa said by God he cannot produce even something as large as a camel but these larger than a barley corn he can magically collect and so produce the illusion that he has magically created them the others he cannot. Rab said to our high I myself saw an Arabian traveler take a sword and cut up a camel then he rang a bell at which the camel arose he replied after that was there any blood or dung but that was merely an illusion Zeir I happened to go to Alexandria in Egypt and bought an ass when he was about to water it, it dissolved and there stood before him a landing board the vendors then said to him were you not Zeir we would not return you your money does anyone buy anything here without first testing. It by water Janet came to him and he said to them give me a drink of water and they offered him shadi for seeing the lips of the woman who brought him this moving he coveredly spilled a little thereof which turned to snakes then he said as I have drunk of yours now do you come and drink of mine so he gave her to drink and she was turned into an ass he then rode upon her into the market but her friend came and broke the charm changing her back into a human being and so he was seen riding upon a woman in public and the frog came up and covered the land of Egypt our Eliezer said it was one frog which bred prolifically and filled the land this is a matter disputed by Tanaim our Akiva said there was one frog which filled the whole of Egypt by breeding but our Eliezer B. Ezra said to him Akiva what hast thou to do with the goddess cease thy words and devote thyself to leprosies and tense one frog croaked for the others and they came our Akiva said etc Talmud Mas and Hedron, but did our Akiba learned this from our Joshua. Surely it has been taught when our Eliezer fell sick. Our Akiba and his companions went to visit him. He was seated in his canopy four poster whilst they sat in his salon that day was Sabbath Eve. And his son Harkness went into him to remove his phylacteries, but his father rebuked him and he retreated crestfallen. It seems to me, said he to them, that my father's mind is deranged. But our Akiba said to them, his mind is clear, but his mother's SC of Harkness is deranged. How can one neglect a prohibition which is punished by death and turn his attention to something which is merely forbidden as a Shabbat? The sages, seeing that his mind was clear, entered his chamber and sat down at a distance of four cubits. Why have you come? Said he to them to study the Torah. They replied, and why did you not come before now? He asked, they answered, we had no time. He then said, I will be surprised if these die a natural death. Our Akiba asked him, and what will my death be? And he answered. Yours will be more cruel than theirs. He then put his two arms over his heart and bewailed them, saying, Woe to you, two arms of mine that have been like two scrolls of the law that are wrapped up. Much Torah have I studied, and much have I taught. Much Torah have I learned, yet have I but schemed from the knowledge of my teachers, as much as a dog lapping from the sea. Much Torah have I taught, yet my disciples have only drawn from me as much as a painting stick from its tube. Moreover, I have studied three hundred laws on the subject of a deep bright spot, yet no man has ever asked me about them. Moreover, I have studied three hundred, or as others state, three thousand laws about the planting of cucumbers by magic, and no man excepting Akiba B. Joseph ever questioned me thereon. For it once happened that he and I were walking together on a road when he said to me, My master, teach me about the planting of cucumbers. I made one statement, and the whole field about us was filled with cucumbers. Then he Said Master, you have taught me how to plant them. Now teach me how to pluck them up. I said something, and all the cucumbers gathered in one place. His visitors then asked him, What is the law of all a shoemaker's last an amulet, a leather bag containing pearls, and a small weight? He replied, They can become unclean, and if unclean, they are restored to their uncleanliness, just as they are. Then they asked him, What of a shoe that is on the last? He replied, It is clean, and in pronouncing this word, his soul departed. Then our Joshua rose and exclaimed, The bow is annulled, the bow is annulled. On the conclusion of the Sabbath, our Akiva met his beer being carried from Caesarea to lit in his grief. He beat his flesh until the blood flowed down upon the earth. Then our Akiva commenced his funeral address, the mourners being lined up about the coffin, and said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the hor
That being so, even a minor should be executed. Moreover, the interpretation a son but not a man implies a minor. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, Scripture said, if a man have a son that is stubborn and rebellious, implying a son near to the strength of manhood until he grows a beard right round, etc., are high taught until he grows a beard round the corona. When Ardimi came, he explained it thus it means until the hair surrounds the membrane, but not until it grows round the testicles, are his da said if a minor begot a son, the latter does not come within the category of a stubborn and rebellious son, for it is written, if a man have a son, but not if a son, i.e., one who has not reached manhood have a son, but is not that verse needed for the deduction made by Rab Judah in Rab's name, if so, the verse should read, if there be a son to a man, why state if a man have a son to teach are his das dictum, then let us say that the entire verse teaches this, if so, scripture should have said, if there be the son of a man who has seen the son is stubborn, etc. Why state if a man have a son, etc. Hence both are deduced now are his das statement conflicts with Rabbis, for Rabbis said a minor cannot be get children, for it is written, but if the man hath no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto now, is there any man in Israel that has no kinsman? Hence the writ must refer to the robbery of the proselyte Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin A, and the divine law states, but if the man, etc. teaching that only in the case of a man must thou seek whether he has kinsman or not, but not in the case of a minor, for it is obvious that he can have none have they objected, it has been taught, and if any man lieth carnally with a woman that is a bond made a man from this, I know the law only with respect to a man whence do I know it of one age, nine years, and a day who is capable of intercourse from the verse, and if a man he replied, such a minor can produce semen, but cannot be get there with, for it is like the seat of cereals less than a third. Grown the school of Hezekiah taught, but if a man came presumptuously, yuzzed upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, a man can inflame his genital and emit semen, but not a minor. Or Mordecai asked of Arashi, whence do we know that Mazid denotes eating from the verse, and Jacob saw W A S pottage, but this is not so for the school of Ishmael taught, if a man have a son implying a son, but not a father, now how is this possible? Shall we say that he impregnated his wife after producing two hairs and begot before the hair was fully grown, but can there be such a long interval between these as to allow for complete gestation? Did not Archiruspide say the extreme limits of a stubborn and rebellious son are only three months, hence he must have caused conception before producing two hairs and begot the child before the hair was fully grown, and in that case he is excluded from the operation of the law, thus proving that a minor can beget children. No, in truth, this refers to one who impregnated his wife after the appearance of two hairs and begot the child after his hair was fully grown but as for the difficulty raised by Archiraspides dictum when Ardini came he said in the west i.e. Palestine they explained the deduction of the school of Ishmael thus a son but not one who is fit to be called a father to revert to the above text Archiraspides said in Arshabathai's name the extreme limit of a stubborn and rebellious son is only three months but did we not learn from the time that he produces two hairs until he grows a beard right round if he grew a beard even if three months have elapsed or if three months elapsed even if he did not grow a beard he is no longer liable our Jacob of Nihar Pekot sat before Rubina and said thus in the name of Arhuna the son of Arjashua from the dictum of Archiraspides in Arshabathai's name one may deduce that if a woman bears at seven months her pregnancy is not discernible at a third of its course for if it is why three Months two and a third are sufficient. He demurred in truth. It may be that her pregnancy becomes manifest at a third of its course, but we must regard the majority. Now this was repeated before Arhuna, the son of Arjashua, whereupon he remarked, "But can we consider the majority only disregarding the majority entirely in capital charges? Did not the Torah say then the congregation shall judge and the congregation shall deliver the slayer? Yet you say regard the majority. This was reported back to Rabbanah. He replied, Do we then not follow the majority in capital charges? But we learned if one witness testified that the crime was committed on the second day of the month and one on the third, their testimony is valid for one knew that the past month had been full and the other did not. But if you maintain that we do not follow the majority, should we not say that these witnesses testify exactly and thus contradict each other? Hence it surely must be that we follow the majority who are wont to err. With respect to the fullness of the month, our Jeremiah of Difti said, We also learned the following: A maiden aged three years and a day may be acquired in marriage by coition, and if her deceased husband's brother cohabited with her, she becomes his. The penalty of adultery may be incurred through her if in it as she defiles him who has connection with her, so that he in turn defiled that upon which he lies as a garment which has lain upon a person afflicted with gonorrhea. If she married a priest, she may eat of teramah. If any unfit person cohabits with her, he disqualifies her from the priesthood. If any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her, they are executed on her account. But she is exempt. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, but why? As may she not prove to be barren, her husband not having married her, and such a condition. Hence, it must be that we take into account only the majority, and the majority of women are not constitutionally barren. No, the penalty incurred on her account is a. Sacrifice but not death, but it is explicitly stated they are executed on her account that refers to incest by her father. But the statement is if any of the forbidden degrees had intercourse with her, hence this mission refers to a husband who explicitly accepted her under all conditions. Our rabbis taught if a woman sported lewdly with her young son a minor and he committed the first stage of cohabitation with her, Beth Shem, I say he thereby renders her unfit to the priesthood. Beth Hillel declare her fit, Arhai, the son of Rabbi Binaman, he said in Arhista's name, other state Arhista said in Zeir's name, all agree that the connection of a boy aged nine years and a day is a real connection, while that of one less than eight years is not their dispute refers only to one who is eight years old. Beth Shem, I maintaining we must base our ruling on the earlier generations, but Beth Hillel hold that we do not know whence do we know that in the earlier generations a boy of eight. Years could be get children, shall we say, since it is written, I and David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and it is written to Eliam, the son of Ahitophel the Jelonite, and it is written three, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah afterwards Solomon because of the Lord, and it is written four, and it came to pass after two full years after Solomon's birth that Absalom had sheep shearers, and it is written, Be so Absalom fled and went to Geshur, and was there three years, and it is written six, so Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, and saw not the king's face, and it is written seven, and it came to pass after forty years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron, and it is written eight, and when Ahitophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house to his city and put his household in order and hanged himself and it is written nine bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days and it has been taught Doglib but thirty-four years and Ahitophel thirty-three hence deduct seven years Solomon's age when Ahitophel committed suicide which leaves Ahitophel twenty-six years old at his birth now deduct two years for the three pregnancies leaving each eight years old when he begot a child but why so perhaps both Ahitophel and Eliam were nine years old at conception Bathsheba being only six years when she conceived because a woman has more generated vitality the proof being that she bore a child before Solomon but it is deduced from the following now these are the generations of Terah Terah begot Abram Nahar and Haran now Abraham must have been at least one year older than Nahar and Nahar one year older than Haran hence Abraham was two years older than Haran and it is written and Abram and Nahar took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Whereon our Isaac observed Iscah with Sarai, and why was she called Iscah? Because she foresaw the future by holy inspiration. Hence it is written in all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. Another reason is that all gazed at her beauty. It is also written, and Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Hence Abraham was ten years older than Sarah, and two years older than her father Haran. Therefore Sarah must have been born when Haran was eight years old. But why so? Perhaps Abram was the youngest of the brethren, the writ giving them in order of wisdom and proof of this contention. It is written, and Noah was five hundred years old
The second he erected it and sent out the spies and it is written V and Caleb said forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and now lo I am this day fourscore and five years old now how old was he when sent as a spy forty deduct fourteen Bezaliel's age at the time this leaves twenty six as Caleb's age at Bezaliel's birth now deduct two years for the three pregnancies hence each must have begotten at the age of eight. A son but not a daughter it has been taught our Simeon said logically a daughter should come within the scope of a stubborn and rebellious child Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin since many frequent her in sin but that it is a divine decree a son but not a daughter Mishnah when does he become liable when he eats a tartamar of meat and drinks half a log of Italian wine our Jose said Amina of flesh and a log of wine if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act or gathered for the purpose of intercalating the month if he ate the second tithe in Jerusalem if he ate the nibbleth or turfut abominable and creeping things or tebal or the first tithe from which Terima had not been separated or unredeemed second tithe or unredeemed sacred food if his eating involved a religious act or a transgression if he ate any food but meat or drank any drink but wine he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son thereby unless he eats meat and drinks wine for it is written this our son is Stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton, zolal, and a drunkard. We so, and though there is no absolute proof, there is a suggestion for this, as it is written, Be not among one bibbers, be so among gluttonous eaters of flesh. Be so, Lele Gamar, Arzara said, I do not know what is this tartamar, but since our Jose doubled the measure of wine, he must have doubled that of meat too. Hence the tartamar is half a mean Arhan and Bimolata said, In Arhuna's name, he is not liable. Unless he buys meat and wine cheaply and consumes them, for it is written, He is a zolal, Arhan and Bimolata also said, In Arhuna's name, he is not liable unless he eats raw meat and drinks undiluted wine, but that is not so, for did not Rabba and our Joseph both say, If he ate raw meat or drank undiluted wine, he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son. Robin answered by undiluted wine, insufficiently diluted wine is meant, and raw meat means only partially cooked like charred meat eaten by thieves. Rabbi and our Joseph both said if he eats pickled meat or drinks wine from the vat i.e. new wine before it has matured he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son we learned elsewhere on the eve of the ninth of one must not partake of two courses neither eat meat nor drink wine and attend a taught but he may eat pickled meat and drink new wine now what length of time must elapse before it is regarded as pickled meat as opposed to fresh meat our hand of Ikahana said as long as the flesh of the peace offering may be eaten and how long is it called new wine as long as it is in its first stage of fermentation and it has been taught wine in the first stage of fermentation does not come within the prohibition against uncovered liquid and how long is this first stage three days now what is the law here there the prohibition of eating meat on the eve on the month of it is on account of joy as long as it is as the flesh of a peace offering it yields the joy of meat eating here However, it is on account of its seductiveness, and when a short period has passed, it no longer attracts. Whilst wine is unattractive until it is forty days old, Arhanan said the only purpose for which wine was created was to comfort mourners and requite the wicked. For it is written, "Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, i.e., the wicked, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts." Our Isaac said, "What is meant by look not thou upon the wine when it is red? Look not upon the wine which reddens the faces of the wicked in this world and makes them pale with shame." In the next, Rabbah said, "Look not thou upon the wine, ki yadadam. Look not upon it, for it leads to bloodshed." Damar Kahana raised a difficulty. The Bible writes, "Tyrus for wine, but the word is red." Tyrus, if one has merit, he becomes a leader. If not, he becomes impoverished. Rabbah raised a difficulty. The Bible writes, "And wine yajama the heart of man, but it is red." Yesama, if one has merit, it gladdens him. If not it saddens him and thus Rabbah said wine and spices have made me wise Aramurum the son of Arsimian B. Abba said in Arhanna's name what is meant by who hath woe who hath sorrow who hath contentions who hath babbling who hath wounds without cause who hath redness of eyes they that tarry long at the wine they that go to seek mixed wine when Ardimi came he said in the west it is said in these verses the second may be interpreted as explanatory of the first or vice versa Yabar the Galilean gave it. Following exposition the letter of and occurs thirteen times in the passage dealing with wine and Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they Saw not their father's nakedness, and Noah woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him with respect to the last verse. Rab and Samuel differ one maintaining that he castrated him, whilst the other says that he sexually abused him. He who maintains that he castrated him reasons thus since he cursed him by his fourth son, he must have injured him with respect to a fourth son, but he who says that he sexually abused him draws an analogy between and he saw written twice here. It is written, and Ham the father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father, whilst elsewhere it is written, and when Shechem the son of Hammer saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. Now on the view that he emasculated him, it is right that he cursed him by his fourth son, but on the view that he abused him, why did he curse his fourth son? He should have cursed him himself. Both indignities were perpetrated, and Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. Ar his da said in Ar. Akbah's name and others stayed Marakbah said in Arzakai's name the Holy One blessed be he said unto Noah Noah shoots thou not have taken a warning from Adam whose transgression was caused by wine this agrees with the view that the forbidden tree from which Adam ate was a vine for it has been taught Armeir said that forbidden tree from which Adam ate was a vine Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be for nothing else but wine brings woe to man Arjuda said it was a wheat plant for an infant cannot say father and mother until it has tasted of wheat Arneemiah said it was a fig tree for whereby they transgressed they were taught to make amends as it is written and they sowed fig leaves together the words of King Lemuel the burden wherewith his mother admonished him or Yohanan said in the name of Arsimian Bio this teaches that his mother thrust him against the post and said to him what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows what my son all know that thy father was a God-fearing man and therefore they will say that thou inheritest thy sinfulness from thy mother and what the son of my womb all the women of thy father's harem as soon as they conceived no longer saw the king but I forced myself in so that my child might be vigorous and fair-skinned and what the son of my vows all the women of thy father's household made vows praying that they might bear a son fit for the throne but I vowed praying that I might bear a son zealous and filled with the knowledge of the Torah and fit for prophecy it is not for kings Olemuel it is not for kings to drink wine nor for princes to say where is strong drink she spoke thus to him what hast thou to do with kings who drink wine and say what need have we of God our Isaac said once do we know that Solomon repented and confessed to his mother the justice of her rebukes from the verse surely I am more brutish than man and have not the understanding of a man I am more brutish than a manish that is. Then Noah of whom it is written and Noah began to be an husband manish and have not the understanding of a man Adam of Adam if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act Arabab said he is not liable unless he eats in a company consisting entirely of good for nothings but did we not learn if he ate it in a company celebrating a religious act he does not become a rebellious son thereby hence it is only because they were celebrating a religious act but otherwise he becomes a rebellious son even if they are not all wasrels the Mishnah teaches that even if they were all wasrels yet if they were celebrating a precept he is not punished or gathered for the purpose of intercalating the month shall we say that they ate meat and wine on such occasions but it has been taught they ascended for it with a meal consisting only of wheat bread and beans the Mishnah teaches us though they normally ascended only with wheat and red and beans whilst he brought up meat and Wine and aid yet since they were engaged in a religious act he would not be led astray or rabbis taught not less than to ascend fr the purpose of proclaiming the month of full one nor do they ascend for it except with a meal consisting of wheat bread and beans they ascend only on tfa evening following the intercalated day and at night not by day but has it not been taught they may not ascend for it by night but only by day it is even as our high b abba said to
a drunkard, and though there is no absolute proof, there is a suggestion for this as it is written, be not among the wine bibbers, among gluttonous eaters of flesh, and it is also said for the drunkard, and glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Arzara said, Whoever sleeps in the Beth Hamid Rash's knowledge shall be reduced to tatters, for it is written, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Mishnah, if he stole of his father's and ate it in his father's domain, or of strangers and ate it in the domain of the strangers, or of strangers and ate in his father's domain, he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son until he steals of his father's and eats in the domain of strangers, or Jose, son of Arjuna said, Until he steals of his father's and mother's Gemara, if he stole of his father's and ate it in his father's domain, though this is easily within his reach, he is afraid, or of strangers and ate it in the domain of strangers, though he is not afraid, yet it is not easily within his reach, how much more so if he stole of strangers and ate in his father's domain, this not being easily attainable, and he in addition is afraid until he steals of his father's and eats it in the domain of strangers, which is easily within his reach and does not cause him fear, or Jose, son of Arjuna said, Until he steals of his father's and mother's, but how can his mother possess, seeing that whatever a woman acquires belongs to her husband, or Jose, son of Arhana? Answered it means that he steals from a meal prepared for his father and mother but did not Arhan and Bimalat say in Arhuna's name he is not liable unless he buys meat and wine cheaply and consumes them but say thus from the money set aside for a meal for his father and mother an alternative answer is this a stranger had given her something and said to her I stipulate that your husband shall have no rights there in Mishnah if his father desires to have him punished but not his mother or the reverse he is not treated as a stubborn a rebellious son unless they both desire it Arjuna said if his mother is not fit for his father he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son tomorrow what is meant by not fit shall we say that she is forbidden to him under penalty of extinction or capital punishment at the hand of Bethdin but after all his father is his father and his mother is his mother but he means not physically like his father it has been taught likewise Arjuna said if his Mother is not like his father in voice, appearance, and stature. He does not become a rebellious son. Why so the Ritzeth will not obey our voice? And since they must be alike in voice, they must be also in appearance and stature. With whom does the following Barita agree? There never has been a stubborn and rebellious son, and never will be. Why then was the Lord and that you may study it and receive reward disagrees with Arjuna? Alternatively, you may say it will agree with Arsimian for it. Has been taught Arsimian said because one eats a tartamar of meat and drinks half a log of Italian wine, shall his father and mother have him stoned, but it never happened and never will happen. Why then was this Lord and that you may study it and receive reward? Arjuna said, I saw him and sat on his grave. With whom does the following agree? Visit has been taught there never was a condemned city and never will be. It agrees with our Eliza for it has been taught our Eliza said no city. Containing even a single mezuzah can be condemned why so because the Bible saith in reference thereto and thou shalt gather all the spoil of it in the midst of the street thereof and shalt burn them but if it contains a single mezuzah this is impossible because it is written and ye shall destroy the names of the mighty the idols ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God our Jonathan said I saw it a condemned city and sat upon its ruins with whom does the following agree there never was a leper's house to need destruction and never will be then why was its Lord and that you may study it and receive reward with whom does it agree with our Eliezer son of our Simeon for we learned our Eliezer son of our Simeon said a house never becomes unclean unless a plague spot appears the size of two beans on two stones in two walls and at the angle of the walls it must be two beans in length and one in breadth why so because the Bible refers to the walls of the house and also to the wall Whereas one wall is two at its angle, it has been taught. Our Eliezer, son of Arzadok, said there was a place within a Sabbath's walk of Gaza which was called the Leper's Ruins. Our Simeon of Faraco said, I once went to Galilee and saw a place which was marked off and was told that leper stones were thrown there. Mishnah, if one of them, his father or his mother, had a hand or fingers cut off or was lame, dumb, blind, or deaf, he does not become a stubborn and rebellious son because it is written then. Shall his father and his mother lay hold on him? This excludes those with hands or fingers cut off and bring him out, excluding lame parents, and they shall say, excluding the dumb, this our son, excluding the blind, he will not obey our voice, excluding the deaf, he is admonished in the presence of three and flagellated. If he transgresses again after this, he is tried by a court of twenty three and cannot be sentenced to stoning unless the first three are present because it is written, this our son. Implying this one who was whipped in your presence, Gemara, this proves that the Bible must be taken literally as it is written. No, for here it is different. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be since the entire verse is superfluous, he is admonished in the presence of three. Why so are not two sufficient? Abay answered the Mishnah means this he is admonished in the presence of two and ordered lashes by a court of three, where our lashes stated for a stubborn and rebellious son as in Arabab's exegesis for. Arabab said we draw an analogy between and they shall chastise him written twice, and the meaning of and they shall chastise him is deduced from the fact that ben occurs in this passage, and then a further analogy is drawn between the word ben written here and in and it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten if he transgresses again after this he is tried by a court of twenty three, etc. But is not this verse SC this our son needed to teach this excluding blind parents if so. The Bible should have written he is our son why state this our son hence deduced there from both mission if he the rebellious son fled before his trial was completed and then his nether hair grew round he is free but if he fled after his trial was completed and then his nether hair grew round he remains liable Gemara Arhana said an Oikai who blasphemed the divine name and then became a proselyte escapes punishment since the judicial procedure and death are thereby changed shall we say that the mission supports him if he fled before his trial was completed and then his nether hair grew round he is free why so surely because since he has changed in age he has also changed in liability no here in the mission it is different for should he transgress now he is not liable at all come and here but if he fled after his trial was completed and then his nether hair grew round he remains liable you speak of one who is actually sentenced but one sentence he is already as did come and hear an Oikai who slew his neighbor likewise a Gentile or violated his wife and then became converted is exempt but if he did this to an Israelite he is punished but why so should we not say since he is changed in respect of judicial procedure he is changed in respect of liability too the change must be in respect of both the judicial procedure and the death penalty but this Noikai's status has altered only in respect of the former but not of the latter granted that this is true of a murderer before conversion his penalty was decapitation and it is so now too but the violation of a married woman was punishable before conversion by decapitation but now by strangulation this refers to the violation of a betrothed maiden for which stoning is decreed in both cases but if he did this to an Israelite is parallel to or violated his neighbor's wife the lesser punishment is included in the greater now this agrees with the view of the rabbis that Decapitation is severer than stoning, but on the view of Arsimian that stoning is the greater punishment. What can you say? Arsimian concurs with the Tana of the school of Manasseh, who says that wherever death is decreed for the Noahide, it is by strangulation. Now, this is true of adultery, the penalty for which both before and after conversion is strangulation, but murder was punishable before by strangulation. Now, by decapitation, the lesser is included in the greater. Shall we say that the following supports him? For it was taught if she has seen a betrothed maiden sinned by committing adultery and then attained puberty, becoming a bogar, but she is strangled. Now, why not stone? Surely, because since she is changed physiologically, she is likewise changed in respect of punishment. How much more so in this case where a complete change has taken place? This does not support him. For Aryohan and said to the Tana, she is stoned, Mishnah, stubborn and rebellious son is tried on. Account of his ultimate destiny, let him die innocent and let him not die guilty for the death of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world wine and sleep of the wicked benefit themselves and the world of the righteous injure themselves and the world the scattering of the wicked benefits themselves and the world of the righteous injures themselves and the world the assembling of the wicked injures themselves and the world of the righteous benefits themselves and the world the tranquility of the wicked injures themselves and the world of the righteous benefits themselves and the world Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Agamar it has been taught our
Inactive where his property is concerned, therefore this one the thief must have reasoned if I go there he the owner will oppose me and prevent me, but if he does I will kill him, hence the Torah decreed if he come to slay thee forestall by slaying him. Rab said if one broke into a house and stole some utensils and departed he is free from making restitution. Why? Because he has purchased them with his blood. Rabba said it would logically appear that Rab's dictum holds good only if he broke the utensils so that they are not in existence, but not if he merely took them and they are still intact. But in truth Rab's dictum applies even if he merely took them for even where there is blood guiltiness for him. If the utensils are injured, he is liable. This proves that they stand under his the thief's ownership. So here too they are under the thief's ownership, but it is not so the divine law placed it under the thief's control only in respect of injury, but as to ownership it remains it. Property of the first owner, just as in the case of the borrower, we learned if he broke through and broke a jug, should there be blood guiltiness for him, he must pay for the jug. But if there is no blood guiltiness for him, he is not liable. Thus, it is only because he broke it that he is exempt. When there is no blood guiltiness for him, but if he only took it, he is not exempt. The same law of exemption applies even if he merely took it. And the reason it states and broke a jug is to show that if there is blood guiltiness for him, he is liable even if he broke it. But is this not obvious? Since he damaged it, we are thereby informed that he is liable even if he broke it unintentionally. What does this teach us? That a man is always regarded as forewarned. But we have already learned this: a man is always regarded as forewarned, whether he did damage unwittingly or wittingly, accidentally or deliberately. This is a difficulty. R B B B B objected. We learned if one steals a purse on it. Sabbath he is bound to make restitution since the liability for theft arose before the desecration of the Sabbath but if he drags it out of the house he is exempt since they are simultaneous no this ruling holds good only if he threw it into the river Rabba was robbed of some rams through a thief breaking and subsequently the thieves returned them but he refused to accept them saying since Rab has thus ruled I abide by his decision our rabbis taught if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die there shall no blood be shed for him if the sun be risen upon him now did the sun rise upon him only but this is the meaning if it is as clear to thee as the sun that his intentions are not peaceable slay him if not do not slay him another bury the taught if the sun be risen upon him there shall be blood shed for him now did the sun rise upon him alone but if it is as clear to thee as the sun that his intentions are peaceable do not slay him otherwise slay him these two unnamed buried this contradict each other. This is no difficulty. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. He first buried the refers to Ather robbing his on the second to S.J. and Rabbi Hitch father Rabsad. Any man that broke into my house I would kill excepting Arhan of Why shall we say because he is righteous and therefore certain not to kill me? Surely he has broken in, but because I am assured that he would have pity upon me like a father for his son. Our rabbis taught if the son be recent upon him there shall be blood damn shed for him both on a weekday and on the Sabbath. If the thief be found breaking up there shall no blood damn be shed for him neither on weekdays nor on the Sabbath. Now granted that the exegesis of there shall no blood be shed for him as including both weekdays and the Abbot is necessary for I might think that this case is similar to that of those who are executed by Bethdin who may not be executed on the Sabbath. We are therefore told. That Tuesday thief I be slain even on the Sabbath, but why deduce there shall be blood as said for him neither on a weekday nor on the Sabbath. If he may not be slain on a weekday, he may surely not be slain on the Sabbath. Our she replied, This is necessary only to teach that a pile of debris must be removed for his sake. Our rabbis talk, if a thief be found breaking up and be smitten by any man that he die by any death, wherewith you can slay him now the exegesis and be smitten by any man is rightly necessary, for I might think that only the owner may be assumed not to remain passive whilst his money is being stolen, but not a stranger. It is therefore taught that H is regarded as a potential murderer whom even a stranger may kill in defense of the owner, but what may backslash of that he die by any death wherewith you can slay him can this not be deduced from a murderer, for it has been taught he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. I only know that he may. Be executed with the death that is decreed for him. Once do I know that if you cannot execute him with that death, that you may execute him with any other death from the verse he that smote him shall surely be put to death, implying in any manner possible there it is different because scripture writes he shall surely be put to death. Then why not derive this from it? Because the murderer and the avenging kinsman are two verses with the same object, and the teaching of such two verses does not extend to anything else. Our rabbis taught if a thief be found breaking in from this, I know that law only for breaking in through the wall. Once do we know it if he be found on the roof in the court or in an enclosure attached to the house from the verse if the thief be found implying wherever he is found as thief, if so why state breaking in? Because most thieves enter by breaking in another barrier that taught if a thief be found breaking in from this, I know the law only for breaking in. Whence do I know it if he be found on the roof in the court or an enclosure from the verse if the thief be found implying wherever he is found as thief if so why state breaking in because his breaking in constitutes a formal warning Arhuna said a minor in pursuit may be slain to save the pursuit thus he maintains that a pursuer whether an adult or a minor need not be formally warned Arhista asked Arhuna we learned once his head has come forth he may not be harmed because one life may not be taken to save another but why so is he not a pursuer there it is different for she is pursued by heaven shall we say that the following supports him visit a man was pursuing after his fellow to slay him he observer says to him see he is an Israelite and a son of the covenant whilst the Torah has said whosoever would shed the blood of a man to save that man shall his own blood be shed meaning save the blood of the pursued by the blood of the pursuer that is based on the ruling of our Jose. Son of Arjuda, for it has been taught our Jose, son of Arjuda, said Aber need not be warned because a warning is necessary only to distinguish between ignorance and presumption. Come and hear if a man was pursuing his neighbor to slay him, the observer says to him, See, he is an Israelite and a son of the covenant, whilst the Torah hath taught whosoever would shed the blood of a man to save that man shall his blood be shed. If he the pursuer replied, I know that it is so, he is not liable to be slain, but if he replied, I do it even on such a condition, he is liable. This is only if they are standing on two opposite sides of the river so that he cannot save him. Hence, what is to be done to bring him before Bethdin? But punishment by Bethdin must be preceded by a warning. An alternative answer, if he wishes this, are who not can tell you my ruling agrees with the Tana of breaking in who held that his breaking in constitutes a formal warning. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, a mission of the following. Must be saved from sinning even at the cost of their lives. He who pursues after his neighbor to slay him, or after a male for pederasty, or after a betrothed maiden to deceive her, but he who pursues after an animal to abuse it, or would desecrate the Sabbath, or commit idolatry, must not be saved from sinning at the cost of his life. Tomorrow, our rabbis taught once do we know that he who pursues after his neighbor to slay him must be saved from sin at the cost of his own life. From the verse, thou shalt not stand by the blood of thy neighbor. But does it come to teach this? Is it not employed for the following barrier that has been taught? Once do we know that if a man sees his fellow drowning mauled by beasts or attacked by robbers, he is bound to save him from the verse, thou shalt not stand by the blood of thy neighbor. That in truth is so. Then once do we know that the pursuer must be saved at the cost of his own life? It is inferred by an admagus reasoning from a Betrothed maiden of a betrothed maiden whom he wishes merely to deceive, yet the Torah decreed that she may be saved by the life of her ravisher. How much more so does this hold good for one who pursues his neighbor to slay him? But can punishment be inflicted as a result of an admagus conclusion? The school of rabbi taught it is derived by analogy. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so in this matter. But what do we learn from this analogy of a murderer? Thus, this comes to throw light and is itself illumined. The murderer is compared to a betrothed maiden, just as a betrothed maiden must be saved from the at the cost of his her violator's life. So in the case of a murderer, he the victim must be saved at the cost of his the attacker's life. And whence do we know this? A betrothed maiden, as was taught by the school of Arishmael, for the school of Arishmael taught the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. But if there was a Rescuer he must save her by all possible means including the death of her ravisher to revert to the above
Death NAAR refers to a male NAAR into a betrothed maiden sin to women forbidden on pain of extinction death to those forbidden on pain of death at the hands of Beth. Then why are all these needed? They are necessary for had the divine lord and NAAR youth. I would have thought that he must thus be saved because it is unnatural lust, but since connection with a maiden is natural, I would think that she may not be saved. Thus, whilst if NAAR damsel were written, I would think that the law applies only to her because he destroys her virginity, but not to a youth who is not thus injured and had these only been stated Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B. I would think that it is because the one is unnatural and the other is deprived of her virginity, but other consanguineous relations cohabitation with whom is both natural and does not inflict a great loss might not be thus saved. Therefore, the divine lord sin now had the divine lord written sin only. I would have thought it applies even. To those who are forbidden merely by a negative precept, therefore the divine law of death and had the divine law written death only, I would have thought the law applies only to those forbidden on pain of death by Bethdin, but not on pain of extinction, therefore the divine law writes sin, and why did the divine law not write merely there is no sin worthy of death? NAAR youth and NAAR a damsel being superfluous, that is so, but as for NAAR and NAAR one teaches the exclusion of an idolater and the other the exclusion of bestiality and the desecration of the Sabbath, but on the view of Arsimian Beohe that an idolater must be saved from sin at the cost of his life, why are these verses necessary? One excludes bestiality and the other excludes the desecration of the Sabbath, for I would otherwise think that the Sabbath is included through an analogy with idolatry since profanation is written in both, but on the view of our Eliezer, son of Arsimian, that he who Desecrates the Sabbath must be saved from sin by death because an analogy is drawn with idolatry on account of profanation being written in both. What can you say? One excludes bestiality and as for the other, since the divine law wrote NAAR, it also wrote NAAR. Judah said the same applies if she said to her rescuer, Let him be lest he slay her, in which case do they differ. Abba said when she objects to the sin, yet permits him so that he should not slay her. The rabbis maintained it. Divine law was insistent for her honor, and since she too is particular about it, her pursuer may be slain. But our Judah maintains that the reason that the divine law decreed that he should be slain is because she is prepared to give her own life rather than be violated. But this one is not prepared to do so. Our Papa said to Abba, but does not a high priest to or widow. He replied, The divine law sought to protect her from great to but not from little to Sin refers to women. Forbidden on pain of extinction, the scholars objected. We learned fine is imposed for the violation of the following maidens. He who outrages his sister, the rabbis explained this before Arista. Once he has committed the first stage, thereby disanuring her, he may no longer be slain, whereas monetary liability is not contracted until the completion of cohabitation. Now, this agrees with the view that the first stage which disanures her is contact with her sexual organ, but on the view that the first stage is the insertion of the membrane, what can you say? But Arista answered thus this refers to unnatural followed by natural cohabitation. Rabbis said this applies where she allows him to have his will so that he shall not slay her and is based on the ruling of Arjuna Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin A. Our Papa said this refers to seduction, not outrage, and therefore agrees with all Abbe said this applies where she could have been saved at the cost of one of the limbs of the violator and agrees. With our Jonathan B. Saul, for it has been taught if one was pursuing his fellow to slay him and he could have been saved by maiming a limb of the pursuer but did not thus save himself killing him instead he is executed on his account. What is our Jonathan B. Saul's reason because it is written if men strive and hurt a woman he shall be surely punished and pay as the judges determine and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life whereon our Eliezer said the verse refers to attempted murder for it is written and if any mischief follow then thou shalt give life for life and yet the divine law states if no mischief follows he shall surely be punished now this is correct if you say that where the pursuit can be saved at the cost of one limb of the pursuer the latter may not be slain hence it is conceivable that he shall be punished by paying monetary compensation but if you maintain that he may be slain how is it possible for him to be punished perhaps it is Different here because his liability to death is incurred on account of one person but his monetary obligation on account of another that makes no difference for Rabbi said if a man was pursuing after his fellow to slay him and broke some utensils whether of the pursuit or of some other person he is free from liability why so because he is liable to be killed if the pursuit broke some articles if they belong to the pursuer he is not liable for them if to someone else he is if they belong to the pursuer he is not liable because his property is not more precious than his own person but if to someone else he is because he saved himself at his neighbor's expense but if one pursuer was pursuing another pursuer to save him the latter's victim and broke some utensils whether of the pursuer or the pursuit or of any other person he is not liable for them this should not be so in equity but if thou wilt not rule thus no man will save his neighbor from the pursuer but he who pursues an animal to abuse it, it has been taught. Our Simeon Bio, he said, an idolater may be saved from sin at the cost of his own life. This is deduced by reasoning from the minor to the major. If the disanuring of a human being must be averted even at the cost of the violator's life, how much more so the disanuring of the all highest? But can we punish as a result of an ad major's conclusion? He maintains that we can. It has been taught. Our Eliezer, son of Our Simeon, said, he who desecrates the Sabbath may be saved from sin by his own life. He agrees with his father that punishment is imposed as a result of an ad major's conclusion, and then he deduces the Sabbath from idolatry by Gazerisha while based on the use of profanation in connection with the Sabbath and idolatry. Our Yohanan said, in the name of Our Simeon Bio, by a majority vote, it was resolved in the upper chambers of the house of Nitzah in Lita that in every other law of the Torah, if a man is commanded, transgress and suffer not. Death he may transgress and not suffer death excepting idolatry incest which includes adultery and murder now may not idolatry be practiced in these circumstances has it not been taught our Ishmael said once do we know that if a man was bidden engage in idolatry and save your life that he should do so and not be slain from the verse yes shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments which if a man do he shall live in them but not die by them I might think that it may even be openly practiced but scripture teaches neither shall ye profane my holy name but I will be hallowed they ruled as our Eliezer for it has been taught our Eliezer said and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might since with all thy soul is stated why is with all thy might stated or if with all thy might be written why also write with all thy soul for the man to whom life is more precious than wealth with all thy soul is written whilst he to whom Wealth is more precious than life is bidden with all thy might, i.e. substance, incest, and murder may not be practiced to save one's life, even as rabbis dictum, for it has been taught, rabbi said, for as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. But what do we learn from this analogy of a murderer? Thus this comes to throw light and is itself illumined. The murderer is compared to a betrothed maiden, just as a betrothed maiden must be saved from the sinner at the cost of his ravisher's life. So in the case of a murderer, he the victim must be saved at the cost of his the attacker's life. Conversely, a betrothed maiden is compared to a murderer, just as one must rather be slain than commit murder. So also must the betrothed maiden rather be slain than allow her violation. And how do we know this of murder itself? It is common sense, even as one who came before Rabbi and said to him, The governor of my town has ordered me go and kill so and so if not. I will slay thee, he answered him, let him rather slay you than that you should commit murder who knows that your blood is redder, perhaps his blood is redder. When Ardimi came, he said this was taught only if there is no royal decree, but if there is a royal decree, one must incur martyrdom rather than transgress even a minor precept. When Rabin came, he said in our Yohanan's name, even without a royal decree, it was only permitted in private, but in public one MST be martyred even for a minor precept. Rather than violated what is meant by a minor precept, Rabbi son of our Isaac said in Rab's name Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B even to change one's shoe strap and how many make it public our Jacob said in our Yohanan's name the minimum for publicity is ten. It is obvious that Jews are required for this publicity, for it is written, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. Our Jeremiah propounded what of non-Jews and one Gentile come and here for our Janay, the brother of our high B I will learn. An analogy is drawn from the use of talk
Myself in the house of Rimen and it is written and he said unto him go in peace Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and now if it be so that a Noahite is bidden to sanctify the divine name he should not have said this the one is private the other public Rab Judah said in Rab's name a man once conceived a passion for a certain woman and his heart was consumed by his burning desire his life being endangered thereby when the doctors were consulted they said his only cure is that she shall submit thereupon. The sages said let him die rather than that she should yield and said the doctors let her stand nude before him they answered sooner let him die and said the doctors let her converse with him from behind the fence let him die the sages replied rather than she should converse with him from behind the fence now our Jacob B E D and our Samuel B Naman he dispute there and one said that she was a married woman the other that she was unmarried now this is intelligible on the view that she was a married woman but on the latter that she was unmarried why such severity our papa said because of the disgrace to her family Araha the son of Rika said that the daughters of Israel may not be morally dissolute then why not marry her marriage would not assuage his passion even as our Isaac said since the destruction of the temple sexual pleasure has been taken from those who practice it lawfully and given to sinners as it is written stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant cha. PTERIX mission of the following are burnt he who commits incest with a woman and her daughter and a priest's adulterous daughter there is included in a woman and her daughter his own daughter his daughter his, daughter, his son's daughter his wife's daughter and the daughter of her daughter or son his mother-in-law her mother and his father-in-law's mother Gamara the mission does not state he who commits incest with a woman whose daughter he has married but he who commits incest with a woman and her daughter this proves that both are forbidden who are they then his mother-in-law and her mother then the mission further states there is included in a woman and her daughter this proves that the first are explicit and the others derived now this agrees with Abbe who maintains that they differ as to the text from which the law is derived hence the mission is taught in accordance with our Akiva's view but on Rabba's view that they differ about his mother-in-law after his wife's death with whom does the mission agree? Rabbi can answer you read in the mission he who commits incest with a woman whose daughter he has married there is included in a woman and her daughter his mother-in-law her mother and his father-in-law's mother in Abbe's view since the mission desires to state his father-in-law's mother it adds his mother-in-law and her mother on Rabba's view because the mission must teach his father-in-law's mother and his mother-in-law's mother his mother-in-law to his Mentioned once do we know this for our rabbis taught and if a man take a woman and her mother it is wickedness they shall be burnt with fire both he and they this law refers only to a woman and her mother once do I derive it for a woman and her daughter or her daughter's daughter or her son's daughter the word simba wickedness occurs here and is also written elsewhere just as there her daughter her daughter's daughter and her son's daughter are meant by simba so here to her daughter her daughter's daughter and her son's daughter are included in the punishment of burning decree for incest with them once do we know that males are as females wickedness simba is stated here and also elsewhere just as their males are as females so here too once do we know that the lower is as the upper wickedness simba is stated here and also elsewhere just as there the lower is as the upper so here too and just as here the upper is as the lower so there too the master Said once do we know that males are as females what is meant by this shall we say that her son's daughter is equally forbidden as her daughter's daughter but these are simultaneously derived again if it means that his father-in-law's mother is as his mother-in-law's mother but seeing that the latter is as yet unproven why demonstrate that the former is equal there to Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B.A.B. said this is what is meant once do we know that his issue is as hers the word Simba occurs. Here and is also written elsewhere etc. but Simba is not written in connection with his issue Rav answered our Isaac B.A.B. he said unto me we learn identity of law from the fact that Hannah occurs in two related passages and likewise Simba wickedness into the master said once do we know that the lower is as the upper what is meant by lower and upper shall we say that her son's daughter and her daughter's daughter lower are as her own daughter upper but are not all three. Simultaneously derived again if it means that his father-in-law's mother and his mother-in-law's mother are as his mother-in-law then instead of the lower is as the upper the tana should have said the upper is as the lower read the upper is as the lower if so how explain wickedness simba is stated here and also elsewhere seeing that their very prohibition is as yet unknown how can simba be written in connection there with Abbe answered this is its meaning once do we know that the third generation above is treated as the third below the word simba is written in connection with both the lower generation and the upper just as in the lower the third generation is forbidden also so in the upper too and just as the lower is assimilated to the upper in respect of punishment so is the upper to the lower in respect of formal prohibition are as she said after all it is as taught what then is the meaning of lower lower in gravity of the prohibition now if so then just as her I his wife's maternal grandmother is forbidden to him, so is his maternal grandmother. Abbe answered the writ saith the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother teaching thou canst punish for incest with his mother, but not with his mother's mother. Rabbi said whether we maintain judge from it in its entirety or judge from it and place it on its own basis, this could not be deduced for on the view judge from it in its entirety. The deduction would proceed thus just as her his wife's maternal grandmother is forbidden to him, so is his maternal grandmother forbidden and carrying the analogy to its uttermost, just as in her case I incest with the former is punished by fire, so in his case I incest with the latter is punished by fire, but on the view that burning is severer than stoning this analogy can be refuted, thus why is her case forbidden because her his wife's mother is similarly forbidden, but can you? Say the same in his case seeing that his mother is forbidden only on pain of stoning moreover his mother is forbidden on pain of stoning shall his mother's mother be forbidden on pain of burning further just as in her his wife's case you have drawn no distinction between her mother and her mother's mother both being forbidden on pain of burning so in his no distinction must be drawn between his mother and his mother's mother and on the view that stoning is severer if analogy cannot be deduced because of this last difficulty whilst on the view judge from it and place it on its own basis the deduction would proceed thus just as her his wife's maternal grandmother is forbidden to him so is his maternal grandmother forbidden but place it on its own basis thus in the former case the punishment is burning but in the latter stoning the penalty which we find prescribed for incest with his mother now on the view that burning is severe this can be refuted Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin. A thus why is her case i.e. his wife's maternal grandmother forbidden because her mother is forbidden on pain of death by fire but can you say the same in his case seeing that his mother is forbidden on pain of stoning only further his maternal grandmother is like hers just as in the latter case no distinction is drawn between his wife's maternal grandmother and her his wife's daughter so in the former no distinction should be allowed between his own maternal grandmother and his daughter whilst on the view that stoning is severe the analogy cannot be made on account of this last difficulty but if so just as his daughter-in-law is forbidden him so is his wife's daughter-in-law forbidden him have they answered the writ thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law she is thy son's wife teaching you can punish only for incest with his son's wife but not with her his wife's son's wife Rabbi said whether it be maintained judge from it in its entirety or Judge from it and place it on its own basis. This could not be deduced for on the first view the deduction would proceed thus just as his daughter in law is forbidden him, so is hers forbidden him, and carrying through the analogy in its entirety used as in his case the penalty is stoning, so in her case is the penalty stoning. But if we regard stoning severe, this analogy can be refuted. Thus why is his daughter in law forbidden because his mother is forbidden him on pain of stoning can. You then say the same of her daughter in law seeing that incest with her mother incurs only death by fire, moreover her daughter is forbidden on pain of burning, shall her daughter in law be forbidden on pain of stoning. This is no difficulty for let his own case prove it his own daughter is forbidden by fire, yet his daughter in law by stoning, but refute the analogy, thus just as in his case thou drawest no distinction between his mother and his daughter in law, so in hers his wife's you can. Draw no distinction between her mother and her daughter-in-law and on the view that burning is considered more severe the analogy cannot be made because of this last difficulty whilst on the view judge from it and place it on its own basis the deduction would proceed thus just as his daughter-in-law is forbidden him so is her daughter-in-law forbidden and place it on its own basis thus in the former case his daughter-in-law the punishment is stoning but in
Priest adulterous daughter only she is burnt but not her paramour so for incest with an illegitimate daughter only she should be burnt but not her paramour Abay answered the writ say if she profaneth her father teaching that this applies only to a case where she profaneth her father excluded thus is this case since her father profanes her rob answered in the former case you idly exclude him from the penalty of a priest's daughter and assimilate him to an Israelite's daughter but in this case to whom will you assimilate him to an unmarried woman now whence do we derive a formal prohibition of incest with an illegitimate daughter this is in order according to Abay and Rabba from the Verjayi from which they deduce punishment they also learn the prohibition but what of a deduction made by Arabin's father Arale answered the writ say if do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be whore our Jacob the brother of Arahavi Jacob objected is this verse do not profane thy daughter to Cause her to be a whore employed for this purpose, but it is needed for them which has been taught. Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. I might think that this prohibits a priest from marrying his daughter to a Levite or an Israelite. Therefore, Scripture states to cause her to be a whore, showing that the reference is only to profanation by harlotry, thus prohibiting the giving over of one's daughter for sex purposes without marriage intention. If so, Scripture should have said Al. To hell while Tehalal that both may be deduced from it. Now, how do Abay and Rabbah utilize the verse? Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Armani said according to them, this refers to one who marries his young daughter to an old man as it has been taught. Do not profane thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Our Eliezer said this refers to marrying one's young daughter to an old man. Our Akiva said this refers to the delay in marrying off a daughter who is already a bogar with our. Kahana said on Arakib's authority, the only poor in Israel is the subtly wicked, and he who delays in marrying off his daughter of Bogareth, but is not one who thus delays himself. Subtly wicked, Abay answered Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be this is its meaning, which poor man is subtly wicked, he who delays marrying off his daughter of Bogareth. Our Kahana also said on Arakib's authority, beware of one who counsels thee for his own benefit. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, one who marries his daughter to an old man, or takes a wife for his infant son, or returns a lost article to a kuti, and concerning him, Scripture saith that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him. An objection was raised, he who loves his wife as himself, and honors her more than himself, and leads his children in the right path, and marries them just before they attain puberty of him. Scripture saith, and thou shalt know. That thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation, and shalt not sin. If just before puberty it is different, our rabbis taught he who loves his neighbor displays friendly intimacy towards his relatives, and marries his sister's daughter, and lends a cellar to the poor man in time of his need of him. Scripture saith, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer our rabbis taught. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness, they shall be burnt with fire, both he. And the eth, and this means he and one of them, that is our Ishmael's opinion. Our Akiva said, It means he and both of them, wherein do they differ? Abbe said, They differ as to the text from which the law is derived. Our Ishmael maintains that he and eth, and means he and one of them, for in Greek one is hello, hence incest with his mother in law's mother as a punishable offense is arrived at only by biblical interpretation, but our Akiva maintained he and eth, and means he and both of them, hence. His mother in law's mother is explicitly interdicted in this verse. Rabba said they differ about his mother in law after his wife's death. Our Ishmael holds that incest with his mother in law after his wife's death is punished by burning, whilst our Akiva's view is that it is merely forbidden. Mission of the following are decapitated a murderer and the inhabitants of a seduced city, a murderer who slew his fellow with a stone or an iron or kept him down under water or in fire so that he could not. A sentence is executed if he pushed him into water or fire, but so that he could ascend, yet he died. He is free from death if he set on a dog or a snake against him and they killed him. He is free from death, but if he caused a snake to bite him by putting his jaws against him, our Judah ruled that he is executed. The sages that he is not Gemara Samuel said why his hand not mentioned in connection with iron because iron can kill no matter what its size it has been taught. Likewise, Rabbi said. It was well known to him who spake and the world came into being that iron no matter how small can kill therefore the Torah prescribed no size for it this however is only if one pierced therewith or kept him down underwater the first clause teaches the extreme limit of the law and so does the last thus the first clause teaches the extreme limit of the law that though he himself did not push him into the water yet since he could not ascend through being held down and so died he is executed. The last clause likewise teaches the extreme limit that though he actually pushed him into the water yet since he could have ascended but died he is free from death whence do we know that he is liable to death for keeping him down Samuel answered the writ saith or if with enmity he smote him with his hand this extends the law to one who keeps his neighbor fast e.g. in water thus causing his death a certain man can find his neighbor's animal in a place exposed to the sun so that it died of Sunstroke Rubina held him liable or Ahabi Rab ruled that he was not Rubina held him liable by an ad majus argument from a murderer if a murderer in whose case unwitting murder is not treated as deliberate nor an accident as intention is nevertheless executed for confining his neighbor in a place where he must die Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin then with respect to damages where an unwitting damage is treated as deliberate and an accident as intention surely he is liable for confining the animal R. Ahabi Rab ruled that he is not liable said our Meshur Shiawa does my grandfather rule him not liable because of the verse or an enmity he smite him with his hand that he die he that smote him shall surely be put to death for he is a murderer only a murderer has a law made liable for confining but not one who causes damage thereby Rabba said if one bound his neighbor and he died of starvation he is not liable to execution Rabba also said if he bound him in the sun and he died or in a place of Intense cold and he died he is liable but if the sun was yet to appear or the cold to make itself felt he is not Rabbah also said if he bound him before a lion he is not liable before mosquitoes who stung him to death he is Arashi said even before mosquitoes he is not liable because these go and others come it has been stated if one overturned to bat upon a man who then died of suffocation or broke open a ceiling above him Rabbah and Arzara differ one ruled that he is liable the other that he is not it can be proved that it was Rabbah who ruled that he is not liable for he said if one bound his neighbor and he dies of starvation he is not liable on the contrary it can be shown that Arzara ruled that he is not liable for Arzara said if one let his neighbor into an alabaster chamber and lit a candle therein so that he died of the fumes he is liable now the reason is only that he lit a candle that he is liable but had he not lit a candle and the prisoner died of the natural heat and lack of air he would be exempt I will tell you in that case without a candle that he would not have commenced its effects Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be immediately he placed him therein but in this case of placing the upturned bat over him that he commences immediately mnemonic ladder shield balsam in the wall Rabbah said if one thrust his neighbor into a pit in which there was a ladder so that he could have climbed out and then another came and removed it or even if himself hastened to remove it he is not liable for the victim's death because when he threw him and he could have climbed out Rabbah also said if one shot an arrow at his neighbor who was holding a shield but another came and snatched it away or even if he himself the thrower hastened to do so he is not liable because when he shot the arrow its force was spent Rabbah also said if one shot an arrow at his neighbor who had balsam in his hand wherewith he could have healed the wound but another dashed it out of his hand, or even if he himself the thrower did so, he is not liable because when he did it, he could have been healed. Arashi said, Therefore, this holds good. Even if there was balsam in the market, Araha the son of Rabbah asked Arashi, What if he came across the balsam by chance? He replied, Behold, he has left Beth in a free man. Rabbah also said, If one threw a stone at a wall which rebounded and killed his neighbor, he is liable. And Atana teaches in support of this if murder is committed by a man. Playing, for example, with the ball, if intentional, the thrower is executed. If unintentional, he is sentenced to the refuge cities. If unintentional, he is sentenced to the refuge cities. But is that not obvious? It is necessary to teach that if intentional, he is executed. The second half being added to complete it, for I might say this is a case of a doubtful warning, for who knows that it will rebound. We are therefore taught otherwise. Our Talifa of the West recited before
because it is by his agency but if so it should go upwards Talmud, Mas and Hedron whilst if it is not by his agency it should fall vertically down but it is through his agency though weakened our rabbis taught if ten men smote a man with ten staves whether simultaneously or successively and he died they are exempt our Judah be but there is said if successively the last is liable because he struck the actual death blow our Yohan and said both derive their rulings from the same verse and he that kill a kol nefesh let all life of man shall surely be put to death the rabbis maintain that kol nefesh implies the whole life but our Judah be but there holds that kol nefesh implies whatever there is of life rabbis said both agree that if he killed a tirfa he is exempt if he slew one who was dying through an act of God he is liable their dispute refers only to one who was dying through man's act the one likens him to a tirfa the other to a person dying naturally now he who likens him to a Therefore, why does he not liken him to a person dying naturally because no injury has been done to the latter but an injury has been done to this one whilst he who likens him to a person dying naturally why does he not liken him to a tirfa a tirfa has his vital organs affected but this one has not a tanner recited before our she's hate and he that cleft all life of man this includes one who smote his fellow but there was not in his blow enough force to kill and then a second came and killed him teaching the latter is executed but if the first man's blow was insufficient to kill is it not obvious that the second is liable but say thus the first smote him with sufficient force to kill but before he expired a second came and slew him then the second is liable this anonymous Beretha agrees with our Judah B but the Rabbah said if one kills a tirfa he is exempt whilst if a tirfa committed murder if in the presence of a Bethdin he is liable otherwise he is exempt why is he Liable if in the presence of a Bethdin because it is written so shalt thou put away the evil from the midst of thee but if not he is exempt because the law of CONFU testimony is inapplicable and testimony which cannot be so CONFU is inadmissible Rabbah also said he who commits pederasty with a tirfa is liable to punishment but if a tirfa committed it if in the presence of a Bethdin he is liable otherwise he is not if in the presence of a Bethdin he is liable because it is written so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee otherwise he is not because the law of CONFU testimony is inapplicable why state the second law is it not identical with the first it is necessary to teach concerning one who commits pederasty with a tirfa for I might think that he is as one who abuses a dead person and hence exempt therefore he teaches that punishment is generally imposed because of the forbidden pleasure derived and in this case two pleasure is derived Rabbah also Said if witnesses testified to murder against a tirfa and were then CONFU'd they are not executed but if witnesses themselves tirfa were CONFU'd they are executed are as she said even these are not slain because those who disprove their evidence are not liable if their own is subsequently CONFU'd Rabbah also said if an ox a tirfa killed a man it is liable to be stoned but if an ox belonging to a tirfa person killed it is exempt why so because the writ set the ox shall be stoned and his owner shall also be put to death wherever it is possible to read and his owner shall also be put to death we also read the ox shall be stoned but where we cannot apply and his owner shall also be put to death we do not read the ox shall be stoned are as she said even an ox a tirfa is exempt why so since the owner in a similar condition would be exempt the ox too is exempt if he set on a dog or a snake against him etc our Ahabi Jacob said if you will investigate the grounds of it Dispute you will learn that in our Judah's opinion the snake's poison is lodged in its fangs therefore one who causes it to bite by placing its fangs against the victim's flesh is decapitated whilst the snake itself is exempt but in the view of the sages the snake emits the poison of its own accord therefore the snake is stoned whilst he who caused it to bite is exempt mission if a man smote his fellow whether with a stone or with his fist and they, the experts declared that death would ensue but then its effect lessened so that it was thought that he would live only to increase subsequently so that he died he is liable our Nehemiah said that he is exempt since there is evidence that he did not die as a result of his injuries as he had already been on the men Kamara our rabbis taught our Nehemiah gave the following exposition if he rise again and walk abroad Talmud Moss and Hedron be upon his staff and shall he that smote him be quit now could you have thought that whilst he walks in the marketplace his assailant is executed but it must refer to one who it was judged would die of his injuries but then their effect lessened only to increase subsequently so that he died the Torah thus teaching that his assailant is quit but how do the rabbis explain then shall he that smote him be quit this teaches that he is incarcerated until the result is known whence does our Nehemiah know this from the gatherer of sticks then let the rabbis also deduce it thence the gatherer was certainly liable to death Moses merely not knowing by which death that excludes our case where we do not know whether he is liable to death at all but our Nehemiah maintains that it can be deduced from the blasphemer though not knowing whether he was liable to death they imprisoned him but the rabbis say that in case of the blasphemer his incarceration was an ad hoc decision the preceding discussion agrees with what has been taught Moses knew that the gatherer was to be executed for it is Written everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death but he did not know by which death as it is written and they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him but in the case of the blasphemer it is only said and they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be shoot them implying that Moses did not know whether he was at all liable to death or not now on our Nehemiah's view it is right that two phrases bearing on judicial assessment are written. One teaching that if his injury was declared to be fatal but yet he survived the other that if it was judged that he would die and then the effect of the blow was lightened yet he subsequently died that in both cases he is quit but according to the rabbis who maintain that in the latter case he is executed why are two such clauses necessary one teaches that if his injuries were declared fatal yet he survived and the other that if they were declared non-fatal yet he died that in both Cases the assailant is free, but our Nehemiah maintains that no verse is necessary for the latter case since he left Beth in a free man. Our rabbis taught if a man smite his neighbor and the blow was assessed to be fatal, yet he survived, he is dismissed if the injury was declared fatal, but subsequently lightened a second assessment of the financial damage is made if thereafter he grew worse and died. The second assessment is followed. This is our Nehemiah's view. The sages maintain there can be no second assessment after the first. Another very the taught if his injuries were declared fatal, they may subsequently be declared non fatal, but once his injuries are declared non fatal, they cannot subsequently be declared fatal if the blow was assessed to be fatal, but then he became better. A second assessment of the financial damage is made, and if he subsequently died, he must make compensation for the damage pain, etc. To the ears from when must compensation be made from when he smote him and Thus this anonymous Barith agrees with our Nehemiah mission if he intended killing an animal but slew a man or a heathen and he killed an Israelite or a prematurely born and he killed a viable child he is not liable if he intended to strike him on his loins where the blow was insufficient to kill but smote the heart instead where it was sufficient to kill and he died or if he intended smiting him on the heart Talmud, Moss and Hedron where it was enough to kill but struck him on the loins. Where it was not and yet he died he is not liable if he aimed a blow at an adult whom it was insufficient to kill but caught a child whom it was enough to kill and he died he is not liable if he struck at a child with sufficient force to kill him but it caught an adult for whom it was insufficient and yet he died he is not liable but if he intended to strike his loins with sufficient force to kill but caught the heart instead he is liable if he aimed a blow at an adult hard enough to kill but Struck a child instead and he died he is liable Simeon said even if he intended killing one but killed another he is not liable Gemara to which clause does our Simeon refer shall we say to the last in that case the Mishnah should state our Simeon declares him not liable but he refers to the first clause if he intended killing an animal but slew a man or a heathen and he slew an Israelite or a prematurely born and he slew a viable child he is not liable this implies that if he intended killing one Israelite and killed another he is liable thereupon our Simeon said even if he intended killing one but killed another he is not liable now it is obvious that if Reuben and Simeon were standing and the murderer said I intended killing Reuben not Simeon whom he did actually kill that is the case wherein they differ but what if he said I intended killing any of them or again if he thought that this victim was Reuben but then found him to be Simeon come and here for it has been taught our Simeon said he is not liable unless he declares my intention was to kill so and so whom he did kill what is our Simeon's reason the writ saith but if any
This is not so life being literally meant giving is stated below and giving is also stated Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be above just as the latter refers to money so the former two rabbis said the following tana of the school of Hezekiah differs from both rabbi and the rabbis for a tana of the school of Hezekiah taught and he that killeth a beast shall pay for it and he that killeth a man he shall be put to death just as in the case of one who kills an animal you draw no distinction between an unwitting or a deliberate act an intentional or unintentional blow a downward blow or an upward one not acquitting him thereof but imposing monetary liability so in the case of killing a man you must draw no distinction between an unwitting or a deliberate act an intentional or unintentional blow a downward or an upward thrust not imposing a monetary liability but acquitting him thereof now what is meant unintentional shall we say entirely unintentional but then it is identical with unwitting Hence it obviously means not intending to slay this one but another and for such a case it is taught not imposing monetary liability but acquitting him thereof but if he is liable to death it is surely unnecessary to teach that he is not liable to make compensation hence it follows that he is liable neither to execution nor to make compensation mission if a murderer became mixed up with others they are all exempted from the penalty our Judah said they are placed in a cell if a number of condemned persons differing in their death sentences became mixed with, with one another they are executed by the most lenient death if criminals condemned to stoning became mixed up with others condemned to burning our Simeon said they are stoned because burning is severe but the sages say they are burned because stoning is more severe our Simeon said to them were not burning severe it would not be decreed for a priest adulterous daughter they replied were not stoning more severe it would not be the penalty of a blasphemer and an idolater if men condemned to decapitation became mixed up with others condemned to strangling our Simeon said they are all decapitated the sages say they are strangled Gemara who are meant by others shall we say other innocent men is it not obvious moreover could our Judah say in such a case that they are placed in a cell Nemotic Bishrak our Rabbah said in Samuel's name the Mishnah treats of an unsentenced murderer who became mixed up with other murderers already sentenced the Rabbis holding that no man can be condemned save in his presence therefore they are all freed while our Judah maintains that they cannot all be exempted since they are murderers therefore they are placed in a cell Reshlakish said if this happened to human beings all agree that they are exempt but here the reference is to an ox that had gored but was as yet uncondemned which was mixed up with other oxen already condemned the Rabbis maintain as the death penalty of its owner so is that of the ox therefore an ox too can be sentenced only in its presence hence they are all exempt but our Judah rules that they are placed in a cell Rabbah Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin if so how could our Jose observe thereon even if Abba Halafta were amongst them but Rabbah explained it thus if two were standing and an arrow was shot by one of them unknown and killed they are both exempt whereon our Jose remarked even if Abba Halafta was one but if an oxagora which had been sentenced was mixed up with innocent oxen they are all stoned our Judah said they are placed in a cell and thus has it been taught likewise if a cow killed a man and then calved if before sentence the calf is permitted for any use if after the sentence the calf is forbidden if the cow became mixed up with others and these with others again they are placed in a cell our Eliezer son of our Simeon said they are all brought to Beth Din and stoned the master said if it calved before sentence the calf is permitted, implying even if it was with calf when it gored, but did not Rabbah say the calf of a cow that gored is forbidden because the mother and the calf gored. The calf of a cow subjected to bestiality is likewise forbidden because the mother and the calf were thus subjected. Say thus, if the calf was conceived and born before its mother was condemned, it is permitted for use, but if conceived and born after sentence, it is forbidden. Now this agrees with the view that the product of two things, one being forbidden, is itself forbidden. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be but on the view that such is permitted. What can you say? But Rabbah said, read thus, if the calf was conceived and born before its mother was condemned, it is permitted, but if conceived before sentence and born after sentence, it is forbidden because the embryo is a thigh, i.e., part of its mother. If a number of condemned persons differing in their death sentences, etc., they are executed by the most lenient death. This Proves that a warning of a greater penalty is ipso facto a warning for a smaller one to our Jeremiah said this is no proof for the Mishnah treats of a case where he was warned in general terms and it agrees with the following tana for it has been taught but others liable to any death penalty decreed in the Torah are executed only on the testimony of at least two witnesses by a congregation i.e. a full beth of 23 and after a warning which warning must have we see that if it cow was with calf when it gored the calf is regarded as identical with its mother stated that he was liable to death at the hands of beth our Judah said that the witnesses must have informed him by which death he would be executed the first tana deduces his ruling from the gatherer of sticks who had not been warned how he would be executed but was nevertheless stoned whereas our Judah maintains that the gatherer was executed on an ad hoc decision if criminals condemned to stoning became Mixed up with others condemned to burning our Ezekiel taught his son Ram if criminals condemned to burning became mixed up with others condemned to stoning our Simeon said they are stoned because burning is severe thereupon Rab Judah said to him father teach it not thus why state the reason because burning is severe this follows from the fact that the majority are for stoning how then should El teach it the son replied thus if criminals condemned to stoning became mixed up with others condemned to burning our Simeon said they are stoned because burning is severe if so consider the second clause but the sages say they are burned because stoning is more severe but does it not follow from the fact that the majority are to be burned there the rabbis oppose our Simeon you say burning is severe but that is not so for stoning is severe Samuel said to Rab Judah you keen scholar Talmud Ma Sanhedrin speak not thus to your father for it has been taught if one was unwittingly Transgressing a precept of the Torah, his son must not say, Father, you transgress a biblical precept, but say the Torah writes thus, but after all, does it not amount to the same thing? But he must say this, Father, the following verse is written in the Torah Mishnah, he who incurs two death penalties imposed by Beth is executed by the severe. If he committed one sin for which a twofold death penalty is incurred, he is executed by the severe. Our Jose said he is judged according to the first interdict, which lay upon him. Jemmer, is it not obvious that he is executed by the severe? Shall he then profit by his additional crime? Rob answered, The circumstances are these first, he committed the lighter offense for which he was sentenced, then the more serious one. I might think, since he was already under sentence for the lighter offense, he is as a dead man underscore and cannot be further sentenced. We are therefore taught otherwise. The father of our Joseph Behama inquired of Rabbi B. Nathan, whence do we know? This law stated by the rabbis is one who incurs two death penalties passed by Beth Din is executed by the severe. He answered from the verse if he has seen the righteous man beget a son that is a robber a shedder of blood who hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife. Now if he beget a son that is a robber a shedder of blood this murder is punished by decapitation and defiled his neighbor's wife. This is adultery punished by strangulation and hath lifted up his eyes. To the idols refers to idolatry for which stoning is incurred and it is written he shall surely die his blood shall be upon him which indicates stoning our and B. Isaac objected may it not refer to a series of offenses all punishable by stoning thus if he beget a sword a robber a shedder of blood refers to a wayward and rebellious son who is stoned and defiled his neighbor's wife to a betrothed maiden whose ravisher who is stoned and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols to idolatry for which Stoning is likewise incurred if so what does Ezekiel teach us but perhaps he was merely revising the Torah then he should have revised it all just as Moses had revised it or Ahabi Hanada gave the following exposition what is meant by but if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right etc and hath not eaten upon the mountains i.e. he did not eat through his forebears merit neither hath he lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel that he did not walk with haughty mean neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife indicating that he did not competitively enter his neighbor's profession neither hath come near to a menstruous woman meaning that he did not benefit from the charity fund and it is written he is just he shall surely live when our Gamaliel read this verse he what saying only he who does all these things shall live but not merely one of them thereupon our Akiva said to him if so defile not yourselves in all these things is the prohibition against all Combined only but not against one surely not but it means in one of these things so here too for doing one of these things shall he live if he
Come since however he abandoned himself to sin by transgressing a third time we hasten his death our Jacob said to our Jeremiah be talifah come I will interpret it to you the streets of flagellation for one sin involving extinction which was twice repeated but if he committed two or three different sins each involving extinction it may merely be his desire to experience sin and not a complete abandonment thereto one who was twice flagellated twice though not thrice shall we say that the mission does not agree with our Simeon be Gamaliel for if it did does he not maintain there is no presumption until a thing has happened three times Robin said it may agree even with our Simeon be Gamaliel the mission is of the opinion that transgressions afford a basis for presumption and objection was raised if one committed an offense involving flagellation the first and second time he is flagellated on the third occasion he is placed in a cell Abbas said even on the third occasion he is flagellated. But on the fourth he is placed in a cell now presumably both agree that flagellation affords a basis for presumption and they differ on the lines of Rabbi and Arsimian B. Gamaliel no both agree with Arsimian B. Gamaliel but they differ on this question one master holds that transgression affords a basis for presumption the other master that only flagellation affords it but what of the following that has been taught is if he the transgressor was warned of his liability to flagellation but remained silent or warned and nodded his head the first and second time he is to be warned but on the third occasion he is placed in a cell Abbas said the third time too he is warned but on the fourth he is placed in a cell now there he is not flagellated wherein then do they differ Rabbi said they differ as to whether one must be warned of the cell and what was the form of the cell Rab Judah said a chamber of his the transgressor's full height and where is it alluded to Resh Lakish. Quoted evil shall slay the wicked. Resh Lakish also said what is meant by for man. Also, note not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil trap. What is an evil trap? Resh Lakish said a hook mission one who commits murder without witnesses is placed in a cell and forcibly fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction. Gemara, how do we know that he committed murder? Rab said on a disjoint evidence. Samuel said without a warning, Arhista said in Abimi's name through witnesses who were disproved as to the minor circumstances of the crime but not on the vital points as we learned it once happened that Banzakai examined the witnesses as to the stocks of the fix and fed bread of adversity and water of affliction. Why does this mission teach and fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction? Whilst the former teaches he is placed by Beth in a cell and fed with barley bread until his stomach bursts. Arshis hate answered in both cases he is fed with bread of adversity and water of affliction for his intestines to shrink thus blocking the passage and then he is fed with barley bread until his stomach bursts mission if one steals the key swag or curses by enchantment or cohabits with a heathen litzerian woman he is punished by zealots if a priest performed the temple service whilst unclean his brother priests do not charge him there with at bethdin but the young priests take him out of the temple court and split his skull with clubs a layman who performed the service in the temple are said he is strangled the sages say his death is at the hands of heaven gemara what is he swore judah answered the service vessels of the temple and thus it is said and the vessels cast of libation and where is this alluded to that they come not to see how the holy things are stolen lest they the purloiners die or curses by enchantment are joseph learned he curses thus may the charm the idol slay its enchanter the rabbis others say Rabbi Bimari say he curses may the charm slay him his enemy his master and his provider etc or cohabits with a heathen woman Arkahana propounded a problem to Rab Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin what if zealots did not punish him now Rab had completely forgotten what he had learned about this so Arkahana was made to read in his dream Judah hath dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and hath been intimate with the daughter of a strange god he then went and related to Rab this was I made to read thereupon he reminded Rab of it all Judah hath dealt treacherously this refers to idolatry even as it is said surely as a wife departeth treacherously from her husband so have you dealt treacherously with me O house of Israel saith the Lord and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem refers to Peter Asti, and thus it is written thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination for Judah hath profaned the holiness coach of the Lord. This refers to harlotry, and thus it is said there shall be no consecrated harlot Kadesha of the daughters of Israel, and hath been intimate with the daughter of a strange God. This refers to intimacy with a heathen woman. Now this verse is followed by the Lord will cut off the men that doth this the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. This means if he is a scholar, he shall have none awakening, i.e., teaching among the sages and none responding among the disciples. If a priest, he shall have no son to offer an offering unto the Lord of hosts. Our high Beobia said he who is intimate with a heathen woman is as though he had entered into marriage relationship with an idol, for it is written and hath been intimate with the daughter of a strange God, hath been a strange God a daughter, but it refers to one who cohabits with a heathen woman. Are Hi Biobi also said this and yet another is written upon Jehoiakim's skull our paradise grandfather found a skull thrown down at the gates of Jerusalem upon which this and yet another was written so he buried it but it reemerged again he buried it and again it reemerged thereupon he said this must be Jehoiakim's skull of whom it is written he shall be buried with the burial of an astron and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem yet he reflected he was a king and it is not mannerly to disgrace him so he took it wrapped it up in silk and placed it in a chest when his wife came home and saw it she went and told her neighbors about it it must be the skull of his first wife said they to her whom he cannot forget so she fired the oven and burned it when he came he said to her that was meant by its inscription this and yet another when Ardimi came he said the Beth of the Hasmonians decreed that one who cohabits with a heathen woman is liable to punishment on account of Nashka when Rabin came he said on account of Nashka's I enitish Hagoya and Zona but not on account of a married woman because they themselves see the heathens do not recognize the marriage bond but the other they certainly gave no license to their wives Arhista said if the zealot comes to take counsel whether to punish the transgressors enumerated in the mission we do not instruct him to do so it has been stated likewise Rabbi Barhan said in Aryohanan's name if he comes to take counsel we do not instruct him to do so what is more had Zimri forsaken his mistress and Phineha slain him Phineha would have been executed on his account and had Zimri turned upon Phineha and slain him he would not have been executed since Phineha was a pursuer seeking to take his life and Moses said unto the judges of Israel slay every one of his men that were joined unto Baal Peer there upon the tribe of Simeon went unto Zimri ben Salu and said unto him behold capital punishment is being needed out yet you sit silent i.e. enacted what did he do he rose and assembled twenty four thousand israelites and went unto kashbi and said unto her surrender thyself unto me she replied i am a king's daughter and thus hath my father instructed me thou shalt yield only to their greatest man i too he replied i am the prince of the tribe moreover my tribe is greater than his moses for mine is second in birth whilst his is third he then seized her by her coiffure and brought her before moses son of amram exclaimed he is this woman forbidden or permitted and should you say she is forbidden who permitted the jethro's daughter at that moment moses forgot the halacha concerning intimacy with a heathen woman and all the people burst into tears hence it is written and they were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and it is also written and phineas the son of eliezer the son of aaron the priest saw it now what did he see rab said he saw what was Happening and remembered the Halachah and said to him, O great uncle, did you not teach us this on thy descent from Mount Sinai? He who cohabits with a heathen woman is punished by zealots. He replied, He who reads the letter, let him be the agent to carry out its instruction. Samuel said he saw that there is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord whenever the divine name is being profaned. Honor must not be paid to one's teacher. Our Isaac said in our Eliezer's name he saw the angel wreaking destruction amongst the people and he rose up out of the midst of the congregation and took a spear in his hand. Hence one may not enter the house of learning with weapons. He removed its point and placed it in his undergarment and went along Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin be leaning upon the stock of the spear into which the pointed blade is inserted. And as soon as he reached the tribe of Simeon, he exclaimed, Where do we find that the tribe of Levi is greater than that of Simeon? I.e. I too wish. To indulge thereupon they said let him pass to he enters to
Moreover, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to Moses, Be the first to extend a greeting of peace to him as it is written, Wherefore, say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and this atonement that Phinehas has made is worthy of being an everlasting atonement. Arnaman said in Rab's name, What is meant by Greyhounds are Zermath 9 lit energetic of loins, and he goat also Tash and a king against whom there is no rising up that wicked man as sees him reach by the 424. Times that day and Phinehas waited for his strength to weaken, not knowing that God is a king against whom there is no rising up in the very though we learned sixty time until he became like an adult egg whilst she became like a furrow filled with water. Arkahana said and her seat was a Beth Ser Joseph learned her womb opening was a cubit. Arsheshit said her name was not Kajbi but Shulana the daughter of Zuwa. Why then was she called Kajbi because she falsified her father's teachings? Another interpretation is she said to her father devour me coast by this people and thus it is a pillar proverb what business had Shulana by the reeds of the lake what had Shulana to do amongst the peeling rushes she prostitutes her mother Aryohan and said Zimri had five names Zimri the son of Salu Saul the son of a Canaanite woman and Shalamil the son of Zerisha died Zimri because he became like an adult egg Bezaham Uzareth the son of Salu because he outweighed his leader sins. Of his family Saul because he lent himself Hishael F. Arshal to sin the son of a Canaanite woman because he acted in a Canaanite fashion i.e. depravedly whilst his real name was Shalamil the son of Zerisha died if a priest performed the temple service whilst unclean our Abihu not propounded a problem to Arshis hate does a priest who performed the temple service whilst unclean merit death at the hands of heaven or not he replied we learned it if a priest P.E.R.F.O.R.I.E.D. the temple service whilst Unclean his brother priests do not charge him at Bethdin but the young priests take him out of the temple court and R.E.A.K. his skull with clubs but shall you think that he merits death at the hands of heaven should he not be left to be slain by him will you say then that he is not so liable is there anything for which the merciful one did not impose a penalty for which we may kill and is there not but we learned one who was twice flagellated is placed by B.T.H. Din in a cell thus the messiful one. Exempted him yet we slay him that is no difficulty for did not our Jeremiah say in the name of Reshlakish the reference is to flagellation for an offense punishable by extinction hence he is liable to the th but what f one who steals a kiswa that two causes no difficulty for did not Rab Judah say this refers to service vessels death for the theft of which being alluded to in the verse thought they come not to see how the holy things are stolen lest they the purloiners die but what of one who curses by enchantment there too did not our Joseph learn he curses thus made the charm slay the enchanter so that it excess somewhat analogous to blasphemy but what of one who cohabits with a heathen woman there too our Kahana was made to read a verse in his dream which on being told to Rab entirely reminded him of the law he objected h who pours the oil on the meal offering mingles it with the flour breaks up the meal offering cakes salts the meal offering waves it presents it. Opposite the southwest corner of the altar sets the table with the shoe bread trims the lamps takes off the handful of flour from the meal offering or receives the blood if he did any of these outside the temple court he is not liable to extinction nor is punishment incurred for any of these acts Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin on account of Zeruth uncleanliness lack of priestly garments or the non-dash washing of hands and feet this implies but if he burnt incense he is liable and presumably his liability is to death no merely in respect of the prohibition but if so the Zeruth mentioned is likewise merely in respect of the prohibition surely it is written and the strangers are that cometh nigh shall be put to death each has its own ruling now it follows that not even a negative precept is transgressed for pouring and mingling under the conditions enumerated but it has been taught once do we derive a negative precept for the pouring and mingling of the oil by Unclean priest from the verse they shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God the prohibition is rabbinical only the verse being a mere support and objection was raised the following are liable to death at the hands of heaven an unclean priest who performed the temple service etc this definitely refutes his Arsheshit is ruling to turn to the main barrier the following are liable to death at the hands of heaven one who ate people an unclean priest who ate undefiled teramazar or an unclean priest who performed the temple service or one who performed it on the day of his ritual bath or lacking the proper priestly garments or lacking the sacrificial atonement one who did not wash his hands and feet or drank wine or a priest with overgrown locks but the performance of the service by an uncircumcised priest and one and or by one who officiated while sitting is not liable to death but merely prohibited if a priest with a blemish Officiated rabbi said he is liable to death. The sages maintain he is merely prohibited if he deliberately transgressed in respect of a trespass offering. Rabbi said he is liable to death, and the sages say he transgressed a mere prohibition. Now, whence do we know it of one who eats people? As Samuel said on the authority of our Eliezer, whence do we know that one who eats people is liable to death from the verse, and they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel which they shall offer to the Lord? Now, the verse refers to that which is yet to be offered, and then identity of law is learned from the use of profanation here, and in the case of Terima, just as there the penalty is death, so here too, but let us rather learn the penalty from the use of profanation here, and in the case of Nahar, just as there the penalty is extinction, so here too it is logical to make the deduction from Terima because they are equal in the following points. I Terima two extra. Territoriality 3 annulment for plural form be land produce 6 pickle and 7 nuthar on the contrary should not the deduction rather be made from nuthar since they are alike in the following points I unfitness of food and to no annulment of prohibition by amikwe even so those people and terima have more points in common Robin answered the use of the plural form is certainly a stronger link and whence do we know that an unclean priest who ate undefiled terima is liable to death as Samuel said whence do we know that an unclean priest who ate undefiled terima is punished by death at the hands of heaven from the verse therefore they shall keep my ordinance lest they bear sin for it and die therefore if they profane it this however applies only to undefiled but not to polluted terima for Samuel said in our Eliezer's name whence do we know that an unclean priest who ate unclean is not liable to death from the verse and die therefore if they profane it Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin be excluding this unclean terima which already stands profaned as our who ate terima rap said as our who ate terima is flagellated Arkahana and R.C. said to him why does not the master say is liable to death since it is written there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing I the Lord do sanctify them breaks across the subject an objection is raised the following are liable to death as our who ate terima do you oppose a bury the Tarab's ruling rab is a tana and may dispute the ruling of bury the Azar who performed the temple service for it is written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death or an unclean priest who performed the temple service even as our high be Abin inquired of our Joseph whence do we know that an unclean priest who performed the temple service is punished by death because it is written speak unto Aaron and to his sons that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel and that they profane not my Holy name and identity of law is derived from the use of profanation here and in the case of terima just as there the penalty is death so here too but should not the deduction rather be made from nuthar just as there the penalty is extinction so here too it is reasonable to make the deduction from terima because they have the following in common I bodily unfitness to uncleanliness three mequay four plural form on the contrary should not the deduction rather be made from nuthar since they share the following in common I sanctity two within the temple court three pickle and four nuthar even so the fact that in both cases this terima and the sacrificial service profanation is spoken of as an act of many unlike nuthar outweighs the points which sacrificial service and nuthar have in common or one who performed it on the day of his ritual bath whence do we know this even as has been taught our said where is the illusion that one who officiated in the temple on the day of his ritual bath has committed an act of profanation from the verse they shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God since this cannot refer to the ministration of an unclean priest the prohibition of which is derived from that they separate themselves apply it to a priest officiating on the day of his ritual bath then an analogy is drawn from the use of profanation both here and in the case of Terima just as there the penalty is death so here too or lacking the proper priestly garments whence do we know it or about said in our Yohanan's name and the teaching is ultimately derived from our Eliezer son of our Simeon the Ritzeth and thou shalt put coats upon them
2. But the performance of the service by an uncircumcised priest and one or by one who officiated while sitting is not liable to death but merely prohibited whence do we know it of the uncircumcised artist. Da said we did not learn this from the Torah of Moses our teacher until Ezekiel the son of Buzah came and taught it to us no stranger uncircumcised in heart Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary whence do we know it of an one and because it is. Written neither shall he see the one and high priest go out of the sanctuary yet shall he not profane the sanctuary of his God hence if any other priest does not go out he profanes the sanctuary are at a set to rob then let us derive identity of law from the use of profanation here and in the case of Terah just as there the punishment is death so here too is then the prohibition of an one and explicitly stated in that verse it is only inferred from the high priest hence it is a law. Derived from a general proposition and such cannot be further subjected to deduction by his Urisha whence do we know it of one who officiates whilst sitting Rabba said in our Naman's name the writ said for the Lord thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister implying I have chosen him for standing but not for sitting if a priest with a blemish officiated Rabbi said he is liable to death at the hands of heaven the sages maintain he is merely prohibited what is. Rabbi's reason because it is written only he shall not go in unto the veil nor come nigh unto the altar because he hath a blemish that he profane not my sanctuaries then the law is derived from the use of profanation here and in the case of Terah just as there the penalty is death so here too but let it rather be derived from Nahar just as there the penalty is extinction so here too it is more reasonable to make the deduction from Terah for thus bodily unfitness is derived from bodily. Unfitness on the contrary is it not preferable to base the analogy on Nathar since they share the following in common I sanctity too within the temple precincts three pickle and four Nathar but the analogy is drawn from an unclean priest who officiated thus bodily unfitness is derived from bodily unfitness and a case distinguished by sanctity the inner precincts of the temple pickle and Nathar derived from another so distinguished but the rabbis the writ set and die therefore implying. But not for the sin of being blemished if he deliberately transgressed in respect of the trespass offering rabbi said he is liable to death and the sages maintain he is merely prohibited what is rabbi's reason are about said he derives identity of law from the fact that sin is used here and in the case of Terah just as there the penalty is death so here too but the rabbis they maintain the writ set and die therefore implying but not for trespasses are who officiated in the temple it has been. Tatar Ishmael said it is here written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death whilst it is elsewhere said whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die just as their death was at the hands of heaven so here too Arachibah said it is here written and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death whilst it is elsewhere said and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death just as there it is by stoning so here too are Yohan and Binri. Said just as there it is by strangling so here too wherein do our Ishmael and our Akiba differ our Akiba maintains shall be put to death must be compared which shall be put to death but not which shall die whilst our Ishmael maintains a layman must be compared to a layman but not to a prophet but our Akiba since he seduced no man is more of a layman than he wherein do our Akiba and our Yohan and Binri differ in the dispute of our Simeon and the rabbis for it has been taught if a prophet seduced he is. Stoned our Simeon said he is strangled but we learned our Akiba said he the Tsar is strangled to Tanaim differ as to our Akiba's ruling our mission is taught on our Simeon's view as to our Akiba's ruling whilst the very the stating that the Tsar is stoned and that this is derived from the false prophet gives the rabbi's view as to our Akiba's ruling Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin BCHAPTERX mission the following our strangled he who strikes his father or mother or kidnaps a Jew to sell as a slave and elder rebelling against the ruling of Beth Din the false prophet one who prophesies in the name of an idol one who commits adultery witnesses who testified falsely to the adultery of a priest's daughter and her paramour tomorrow once do we know it of him who strikes his father or mother from the verse and he that smites his father or mother shall surely be put to death and by every unspecified death sentence decreed in the Torah strangulation is meant but say perhaps it is only if he kills. Not merely strikes them you surely cannot think so for killing any other person he is decapitated whilst for his father's murder he is only strangled now this answer is correct on the view that strangulation is more lenient but on the view that the sword is more lenient what canst thou say but since it is written he that smite the man so that he dies shall surely be put to death and also or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die it follows that whenever an unqualified smiting is mentioned it does not mean slaying now it is necessary that both he that smite the man and whoso killeth any soul etc be written for head the divine lord and only he that smite the man that he die I should have thought that it applies to the slaying of an adult only since such is himself bound by law but not to the slaying of a minor therefore the divine lord writes whoso killeth any soul whilst head the divine lord and only who killeth any soul I should have thought that it applies. Even to an Ephel or an eight-month child therefore the former verse is necessary too to exclude these now reverting to the main question let us say that even if he smote his father without wounding him he is executed why have we learned he who strikes his father or his mother is liable only if he wounds them the writ set and he that killeth a beast he shall restore it and he that killeth a man he shall be put to death just as for smiting an animal there is no liability unless it is wounded since Nefesh soul is written in connection there with so also no liability is incurred for smiting a man i.e. one's parent unless there is a wound our Jeremiah objected if so if one permanently impaired its sc the animal strength by loading stones upon it yet not wounding it is he then not liable for its loss in value but say thus since Nefesh written in connection with an animal is irrelevant therefore even if one impaired its strength by loading stones upon it he is Liable transfer its teachings to man then what need is there of the analogy for that which was taught in the school of Hezekiah now this is well according to the view which accepts this teaching but on the view that rejects it why is the analogy required to teach just as one who smites an animal to heal it is not liable for any damage so if one wounds a man see his parent to heal him he is not liable for any damage that may ensue for the scholars propounded may a son let blood for his father our math ruled but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself or deem behind and a said the writ set and he that killeth a beast he shall restore it and he that killeth a man he shall be put to death just as one who strikes an animal to heal it is not liable for damage so if one wounds a man see his parent to heal him he is not liable rab would not permit his son to extract a thorn from his flesh since in drawing it out he would make a slight wound mar the son of Robina would not permit his son to lance a fester for him lest he wound him thereby unintentionally transgressing a prohibition if so even a stranger should be forbidden in the case of a stranger the unintentional transgression is in respect of a mere negative precept but high sons involve strangulation but what of that which we learned a small needle lit hand needle may be moved on the sabbath for the purpose of extracting a thorn but should we then not fear that a wound might be made in extracting it and thus a prohibition involving stoning be unintentionally transgressed thereby so doing he effects damage now this agrees with the view that one who does damage on the sabbath is not liable to punishment but on the view that he is what can you say whom have you heard maintaining that one who inflicts damage by means of a wound is liable for the desecration of the sabbath Arsimian Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, but Arsimian also maintains that any mode of work not required for itself is not punishable. A problem was propounded to our sheesh, may one be appointed an agent by Beth Din to flagellate and curse his father, he replied, who then permitted even a stranger to do this, but that the divine honor overrides other prohibitions, so here too the divine honor overrides the prohibition against smiting and cursing one's parents, an objection was raised, if one whom it is a positive command to smite may nevertheless not be smitten, how much more so may one whom it is not a positive command to smite not be smitten, now do not both clauses relate to smiting as a precept, but that one treats of a son, the other of a stranger, no, in both clauses no distinction is drawn between a son and a stranger, yet there is no difficulty, the one treats of smiting as a precept, the other one not, and it is thus to be interpreted if when a precept is involved, i.e. when it is a positive command to smite, see a person under sentence of flagellation, it is nevertheless a command not to smite unnecessarily, i.e. With more than the prescribed number of lashes bis 40 then when no positive command is involved bis when one is not to be
People meaning only when he acts as is fitting for that people this as well as far as cursing is concerned but whence do we know the same of smiting because we compare smiting with cursing if so should not the same apply to his son even as Arfinius said elsewhere this refers to one who had repented if so even a stranger should be liable our Mari answered among that people implies abiding among that people if so should not the same apply to his son Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be it is the same. As after death what is our final decision Rabbi son of Arhuna said and Atana of the school are Ishmael taught likewise for no offense may a son be appointed an agent to smite or curse his father excepting if he be a Mesut since it is written neither shalt thou spare nor conceal him Mishnah he who strikes his father or his mother is liable only if he wounds them in this respect cursing is more stringent than smiting for he who curses his parents after death is liable whilst he who smites. Them after death is not Gemara or Rabbis taught his father or his mother he hath cursed his blood shall be upon him this means even after death for I would think since he is liable for smiting and for cursing so also for cursing moreover an admages reasoning would seem to prove the contrary if for smiting where a parent not of that people is assimilated to one of that people there is nevertheless no punishment for doing so after his death and cursing where one not of that people is. Assimilated to of that people is surely not punishable if done after death therefore the writ saith he hath cursed his father or his mother now this accords with Arjana to whom the verse his father or his mother he hath cursed is superfluous but on Arjashiyah's view what can be said for it has been taught for Ishish any man that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death now scripture could have said a manish what is taught by any manish is the inclusion of a daughter Tumtum and other as being subject to this law that curses his father and his mother from this I know only that he is punished for cursing his father and his mother once do I know the same if he cursed his father without his mother or his mother without his father from the passage his father and his mother he hath cursed implying a man that cursed his father a man that cursed his mother this is Arjashiyah's opinion Arjana said the beginning of the verse alone implies either the two together or each separately unless the verse had explicitly stated together once then does he or Joshua learn the law under discussion he derives it from the verse and he that curses his father or his mother shall surely put to death and the other he utilizes it to include a daughter a tum-tum and other maphrodite but why not derive this from any man the Torah employ human speech now reverting to the Mishnah should it not also teach smiting is a greater offense than cursing since with respect to the smiting not of that people is as of that people which is not the case with respect to cursing the Tana of the Mishnah maintains that smiting is assimilated to cursing shall we say that these Tanaim differ on the same lines as the following this one Baritha was taught as for Akuti and you are enjoined against smiting him but not against cursing him but another Baritha taught you are enjoined neither against smiting nor cursing him now. The hypothesis is that all agree that the Kutians were true proselytes, hence presumably the grounds of their dispute are these one master holds that smiting is likened to cursing and the other master that it is not no all agree that smiting is not likened to cursing but this is the cause of their dispute the one master maintains Kutians are true proselytes the other master holds that they are sham proselytes driven to conversion through fear of lions if so how can the bury the further state but his ox is as one belonging to an Israelite hence this proves that the dispute is in respect of the analogy this proves that Mishnah he who kidnaps a Jew incurs no liability unless he brings him into his own domain our Judah said unless he brings him into his own domain and puts him to service for it is written if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and put him to service and sell him if he abducts his own son or Ishmael the son of our Yohanan be Berica. Declared him liable, but the sages exempted him if he kidnapped a semi-slave and semi freeman Arjuna declares him liable, but the sages acquit him tomorrow. But does not the first tanner require putting to service as a condition of punishment? Our Abba, the son of Rabbah, said they differ in respect of service worth less than a paratah. Our Jeremiah propounded what if one kidnapped and sold a person asleep? What if one sold a pregnant woman for the expected child? Is this a sort of service or not? But surely can this not be solved from the fact that there is no service at all? It is necessary to propound this only if he the kidnapper leaned upon the sleeper, or in the case of a pregnant woman, if she was placed in front of a wind. Now does this constitute service or not? This problem remains unsolved. Our rabbis taught if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel from this, I know the law only if a man abducted once do I know it of a woman from the verse end. One that stealeth a man from these verses I know the law only if a man kidnapped a man or a woman and of a woman who abducted a man once do I know it if a woman abducted a woman from the verse then that thief shall die implying in all cases of theft another bury the taught if a man be found stealing any of his brethren whether a man woman proselyte monument slave or minor be abducted he is liable if he stole him but did not sell him or if he sold him but he is still in his SC the victim's own house he is exempt if he sold him to his SC the victim's father brother or to one of his relations he is liable he who steals slaves is exempt Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin and now Atana recited this Baritha before Arshis hate whereupon he observed I learned our Simeon said if a man be found stealing a person from his brethren implies that he is not liable unless he withdraws him from the control of his brethren i.e. relations yet you say that he is liable red right? instead he is Exempt, but what difficulty is this? Perhaps the latter is our Simeon's view only, and the former the rabbis. You cannot think so for our Yohanan said the author of an anonymous mission is our Meir of an anonymous Tisaf and Nehemiah of an anonymous dictum in the Sifra Arjuda in the Sifra our Simeon, and all are taught according to the views of our Akiva. If he abducts his own son, etc., what is the reason of the rabbis? Have they answered the Ritzeth if a man be found stealing any of his brethren, etc.? Thus excluding one SC, the victim who is ever to be found with him, our Papa said to Abbe, if so, when scripture saith if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, will you also interpret if a man be found as excluding a woman who is immediately accessible, i.e., found with him, e.g., in the house of so and so, where the women are within easy reach, are they their lovers exempt? He replied, I deduce it from and he that stealeth a man and selleth him, and he be found in his hand. Rabbah said therefore the instructors of children and teachers of students are regarded as having their charges ready to hand and hence are not punished for abducting them if he kidnapped a semi-slave and semi-freeman etc. We learned elsewhere our Judah said slaves have no claim for shame what is our Judah's reason the writ saith when men strive together a man with his brother teaching that this applies only to one who has fraternal relationship thus excluding a slave who has no fraternal relationship but the rabbis maintained he the slave is his brother in obligation to fulfill the divine precepts now in this case abduction how is the verse interpreted our Judah maintains if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel of his brethren excludes slaves the children of Israel excludes a semi-slave and a semi-freeman of the children of Israel likewise excludes one who is a semi-slave and semi-freeman thus one limitation follows another which always Indicates extension, but the rabbis do not agree that of his brethren exclude slaves since they are his brethren in obligation to fulfill the divine precepts. Whilst as for the double limitation implied in the children of Israel and of the children of Israel, one excludes a slave and the other excludes a semi slave and semi freeman. Once do we learn a formal prohibition against abduction? Our Josiah said, From thou shalt not steal, our Yohanan said, From they shall not be sold as bondsmen. Now there is no dispute. One master states the prohibition for stealing, i.e., abduction, the other master for selling the kidnapped person. Our rabbis taught thou shalt not steal. Scripture refers to the stealing of human beings. You say scripture refers to the stealing of human beings, but perhaps it is not so. The theft of property, let money being meant, I will tell you go forth and learn from the thirteen principles whereby the Torah is interpreted, one of which is that a law is interpreted by its. General context of what does the text speak of crimes involving capital punishment hence this too refers to a crime involving capital punishment another very the taught ye shall not steal the writ refers to theft of property you say thus but perhaps it is not so scripture referring to the theft of human beings I will tell you go forth and learn from the thirteen principles whereby the Torah is interpreted one of which is that a law is interpreted by its general context of what does the text speak of money matters therefore this too refuse to a money theft it has been stated if the witnesses of the abduction or those of the sale of human being were proved so memem H
Executed their injunction is one for which a warning of death at the hands of Bethdin may be given and for such there is no flagellation but if he the accused is not to another their testimony is invalid here also the abduction is only half an offense likewise the sale in itself proves nothing as the vendor might have sold his own slave therefore their testimony cannot convict the accused and consequently they themselves if proved so memam are not executed flagellated how can they the false witnesses be but our papa said thus all agree that the witnesses of the sale who were proved so memam are slain they differ only with respect to the witnesses of abduction Hezekiah maintains that they are not executed abduction being one offense and selling another whilst our Yohanan holds that they are executed abduction being the first step towards selling but our Yohanan admits that if the first witnesses of a stubborn and rebellious son are proved so memam they are not executed since they can. Say we came to have him flogged. Abbe said all agree in one matter relating to a stubborn and rebellious son, and all agree in a second relating to a stubborn and rebellious son. And there is a dispute in the case of a stubborn and rebellious son. Thus all agree in one matter relating to a stubborn and rebellious son. Is with respect to the first witnesses proved so memem that they are not slain since they can plead. We came to have him flagellated, and all agree in a second matter relating to a stubborn and rebellious son. Is with respect to the last witnesses that they are executed. For since the first witnesses could plead, we came to have him flogged. These attest the entire offense involving death. And there is a dispute in the case of a stubborn and rebellious son. Is when two testify that he stole and two that he ate. R.C. said if the witnesses of the sale of an abducted person are proved so memem they are not executed since the vendor could plead else sold my. Slave R. Joseph said with whom does this dictum of R.C. agree with R. Akiba who ruled the whole matter but not half the matter Abbe said to him for on the view of the rabbis they would be executed but he gives his reason since etc. Hence it may agree even with the rabbis providing there were no witnesses of abduction if so why stated it is necessary to state this only if witnesses of abduction subsequently appeared but even so why stated this is necessary only when they made signs. To each other I might think that signaling is of consequence therefore he R.C. informs us that it is of no consequence mission and elder rebelling against the ruling of Beth deny us strangled for it is written if there arise a matter too hard for thee for judgment etc. Three courts of law were there one situated at the entrance to the temple mount another at the door of the temple court and the third in the hall of hewn stones they first went to the Beth Din, which is at the entrance. To the temple mount and he the rebellious elder stated thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught if this first Beth Din had heard a ruling on the matter they stated if not they go to the second Beth Din, which is at the entrance of the temple court and he declares thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught if the second Beth Din had heard a ruling on the matter they stated if not they all proceed to the great Beth Din of the hall of hewn stones whence instruction issued to all Israel for it is written which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall shoot thee if he return to his town and taught again as heretofore he is not liable but if he gave a practical decision he is guilty for it is written and the man that will do presumptuously showing that he is liable only for a practical ruling but if a disciple Gave a practical decision opposed to the Bethdin, he is exempt thus the very stringency of his ordination. I as a source of leniency for him, Gemara our rabbis taught if a thing be outstandingly difficult, people for the Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the Rid refers to an outstanding member of Bethdin, he refers to a matter needing a counselor, and thus it is said there is one come out from he that imagine evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor, a thing refers to a traditional halachah in judgment. This means a law deduced by a din between blood and blood, the blood of an idiot childbirth, and gonorrhea between ruling and ruling, whether capital or civil cases or cases involving flagellation between lepers, plague spots and plague spots, embracing leprosy in man houses and garments matters refers to haram evaluations and sanctifications, contentions refers to the water ordeal of a soda, the beheading of the heifer, and the purification of a leper within. The gates this refers to the gleanings forgotten sheep and the corner of the field and thou shalt arise that is from the sitting of Bethdin and ascend this teaches that the temple was higher than the rest of Palestine and Palestine is geographically higher than all other countries into the place this teaches that the place is the cause now it is correct to say that the temple was higher than the rest of Palestine since it is written and thou shalt ascend but once does he learn that Palestine is more elevated than all other countries from the passage therefore behold the days come saith the Lord that they shall no more say the Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I have driven them and they shall dwell in their own land our rabbis taught a rebellious elder is liable only for a Matter the deliberate transgression of which is punished by extinction whilst the unwitting offense involves a sin offering this is our mayor's view our Judah said for a matter of which the fundamental principle is biblical whilst its interpretation is by the scribes our Simeon said even for a single detail arising out of the subtle interpretations of the rabbis what is our mayor's reason he draws an analogy from the use of Dabar matter in two places here it is written if there arise a Dabar matter too hard for the in judgment and elsewhere it is written and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance the matter Dabar being hidden from the eyes of the assembly just as there the reference is to a provision which if deliberately transgressed is punished by extinction whilst if unwittingly involves a sin offering so here too and our Judah scripture states according to the Torah which they shall teach the intimating that both the Torah i.e. the basic law and their SC. The scribes teaching, i.e., the interpretation thereof must be involved, whilst our Simeon's reason is, and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place shall shoot thee, indicating even the smallest nicety. Our who not behind and is said to Rabbah, explain me the above verita according to our mayor thereupon. Rabbah said to our Papa, go forth and explain it to him. Thus, if a matter be outstandingly difficult, people the rid refers to an outstanding member Mufla of Beth Dindi to a question. Needing a counselor who knows how to determine the intercalation of years and fixation of months, now the rebelliousness of the elder may be in respect of what we learned. They testify that a leap year may be proclaimed during the whole month of Adar. This testimony was necessary because the i.e., the other sages maintained only until Purim, hence if the elder flouted the ruling of the great Beth Din in either direction, he permitted Levin to be eaten on the Passover, a thing refers to a Traditional halachah by this is meant the traditional halachahs of the eleventh day for it has been stated as for the tenth day are Yohanan maintained that it is as the ninth whilst our Simeon Belakish ruled that it is as the eleventh are Yohanan maintained that it is as the ninth just as a blood discharge on the ninth necessitates observation so for an issue on the tenth two observation is required but Resh Lakish ruled that the tenth day is as the eleventh just as a blood discharge on the eleventh does not necessitate observation so on the tenth two no observation is required in judgment this means a law deduced by Adin Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Bibas incest with one's daughter by an outraged woman for Rabbah said our Isaac be a me said unto me we learn identity of law from the fact that henna they occurs in two related passages and likewise some wickedness between blood and blood the blood of an childbirth and gonorrhea the blood of an this enters. Into the dispute of Akhibia Bimahalil and the rabbis, for we learned a greenish discharge of blood. Akhibia Bimahalil declares it unclean, and the sages declare it clean. The blood of childbirth. This depends on the dispute between Rab and Levi, for it has been stated Rab said it all issues from one and the same source. The Torah declaring it unclean during the first 14 days and clean the following 66 days. Levi said it proceeds from two different sources at the end of 14 days. The unclean source is closed, and the clean one opened at the end of 80 days. The source of clean blood is closed, and that of unclean blood opened, and the blood of Gonorrhea easy. But this enters into the dispute of our Elizer and our Joshua, for we learned if a woman was in labor for three days within the 11th and ceased for 24 hours, live from time to time from an hour on one day to the same on the next, and then gave birth. She is regarded as a woman bearing with a Gonorrhea discharge, this is our Eliezer's opinion. Our Joshua said the cessation must be a night and a day as the night and day of the Sabbath. The cessation referred to as cessation from labor, not from blood discharge, between ruling and ruling, whether they be capital or civil cases or cases involving flagellation
Mean Rabbah said when the spot is darkened he is clean leprosy and houses this enters into the dispute of our Eliezer son of Arsimian and the rabbis for we learned our Eliezer son of Arsimian said a house never becomes unclean unless a plague spot appears the size of two beans on two stones in two walls and at the angle of the walls it must be two beans in length and one in breadth why so because the Bible refers to the walls of the house and also to the wall where is one wall as two at its angle. Leprosy in garments this depends on the dispute of our Nathan B. of Ptolemos and the rabbis for it has been taught our Nathan B. of Ptolemos said once do we know Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin that a spreading outbreak of leprosy in garments covering the whole is clean baldness of the back of the head Karahath and baldness of the front Gabahath are mentioned in connection with human leprosy and also in connection with leprosy of garments just as in the former if the plague spread over the whole. Skin he is clean so here too if it spread over the whole garment it is clean matters this refers to valuations haram and sanctifications valuations is dependent on the dispute of our Meir and the rabbis for we learned if one dedicates the value of an infant less than a month old our Meir rules he must render its value the sages maintain his declaration is null haram is involved in the dispute of our Judah Bithera and the rabbis for we learned our Judah Bithera said unspecified haram amar. For the temple use as it is written every haram devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord but the sages say unspecified haram belong to the priests as it is written but the field when it goeth out in jubilee shall be holy unto the Lord as a field of haram the possession thereof shall be the priests if so what is taught by every haram is most holy unto the Lord that it sc the vow of haram is legally binding in respect of objects of the highest or of ordinary sanctity sanctifications this. Depends on the dispute of our Eliezer B. Jacob and the rabbis, for it has been taught our Eliezer B. Jacob said even a hook of hitish requires ten men for its redemption contentions refers to the water ordeal of a soda, the beheading of the heifer, and the purification of a leper. The water ordeal of a soda is involved in the dispute of our Eliezer and our Joshua, for we learned he who warns his wife against infidelity, our Eliezer said he must warn her in the presence of two witnesses and can subject her to the water ordeal on the testimony of one witness or on his own. Our Joshua said he must warn her in the presence of two and cause her to drink on the testimony of two. The beheading of the heifer, this is dependent on the dispute of our Eliezer and our Akiba, for we learned once was the measurement taken. Our Eliezer said from his SC, the victim's navel, our Akiba said from his nose, our Eliezer B. Jacob said from the place where he becomes a murdered corpse is the neck and the purification of a leper. This. Depends on the dispute of our Simeon and the rabbis, for we learned if he the leper lacks the thumb of the right hand, the big toe of his right foot, and the right ear, he can never become clean. Our Eliezer said it as see the blood and oil is put upon the place thereof, and he thus fulfills the requirements of purification. Our Simeon said it is placed upon his corresponding left limbs, and he is acquitted of his obligations within thy gates. This refers to the gleanings forgotten sheep and it. Corner of the field, the gleanings, even as we learned two ears that fell down are gleanings to be left for the poor three are not as to forgotten sheep. Two forgotten sheep are treated as forgotten, i.e. must be left for the poor three are not, and concerning all these Bat Shammai rule three belong to the poor four to the landowner. The corner of the field, this is dependent on the dispute of our Ishmael and the rabbis, for it has been taught the precept of PEI, the corner applies in. The first instance to the standing corn if this was not done a portion of the harvested sheep should be given if this was omitted a part of the stack should be separated providing it has not yet been even but once even it must first be tithed and then the poor man's portion given to him on the authority of our Ishmael it was said it must be separated even from the dough three courts of law etc. Our Kahana said if he says I base my ruling on tradition and they say likewise he is not executed if he says thus it appears to use and they say thus it appears to us he is not executed how much more so if he says I base it on tradition and they say thus it appears to us he is executed only when he says thus it appears to me whilst they say we base our ruling on tradition the proof being that Akhibi Abimahalil was not executed our Eliezer said even if he says I base my ruling on tradition and they say thus it appears to us he is executed that strife may not spread in Israel. And if thou argues why was Akhibi of Bimahalil not executed because he did not give a rule for practical guidance we learned he stated thus have I expounded and thus have my colleagues expounded thus have I taught and thus have my colleagues taught does it not mean that he said I base it on tradition and they said thus it appears to us no he said thus it appears to me and they said we base it on tradition come and hear our Josiah said three things to Zeira an inhabitant of Jerusalem tell. Me if the husband renounced his warnings they are null Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B2 if the father and mother wish to pardon a stubborn and rebellious son they may do so and three the local Beth Din may pardon a rebellious elder if they desire it but when I went to my colleagues of the south they agreed to the first two but not to the rebellious elder that contention might not increase in Israel this is all unanswerable refutation it has been taught our Jose said originally there were. Not many disputes in Israel, but one Beth Din of seventy-one members sat in the hall of hewn stones, and two courts of twenty-three sat one at the entrance of the Temple Mount, and one at the door of the Temple Court, and other courts of twenty-three sat in all Jewish cities. If a matter of inquiry arose, the local Beth Din was consulted. If they had a tradition thereon, they stated it. If not, they went to the nearest Beth Din. If they had a tradition thereon, they stated it. If not, they went to the Beth Din situated at the entrance to the Temple Mount. If they had a tradition, they stated it. If not, they went to the one situated at the entrance of the court. And he who differed from his colleagues declared, "Thus have I expounded, and thus have my colleagues expounded. Thus have I taught, and thus have they taught." If they had a tradition thereon, they stated it. And if not, they all proceeded to the hall of hewn stones, where they, i.e., the great Sanhedrin, sat from the morning until the evening. Talmud on Sabbaths and festivals they sat within the hell the question was then put before them if they had a tradition thereon they stated it if not they took a vote if the majority voted unclean they declared it so it clean they ruled even so but when the disciples of Shammai and Hillel who sc the disciples had insufficiently studied increased in number disputes multiplied in Israel and the Torah became as two Torah from there the hall of hewn stones documents were written and sent to all Israel appointing men of wisdom and humility and who were esteemed by their fellow men as local judges from their sc the local Beth Din they were promoted to the Beth Din of the Temple Mount thence to the court and thence to the hall of hewn stones they sent word from there who was destined for the world to come he who is meek humble stooping on entering and on going out and a constant student of the Torah without claiming merit therefore there upon the rabbis cast their eyes upon Arola. B. Abba is endowed with all these qualities if he returned to his town and taught again etc. Our rabbis taught he is not liable unless he himself acts upon his ruling or states his ruling to others who act thereon. Now as for stating his ruling to others who act upon it it is well before receiving the decision of the great Beth Din he was not liable to death since he personally committed no wrong whilst now he is foreflouting its authority but as for the proviso that he himself must act upon his ruling even before the decision was rendered in the hall of hewn stones he was liable to death now there is no difficulty if his ruling referred to forbidden fat and blood since before he was not liable to whilst now he is but if he ruled on a matter involving the death penalty at the hands of Beth Din he would have been liable to death even before before he needed a formal warning now he does not but what of is for whom no warning is required before had he stated a Reason excusing or justifying his action it might have been accepted but now even if he stated a reason it would not be accepted Mishnah there is greater stringency in respect to the teachings of the scribes than in respect to the Torah thus if one rebellious elder says there is no precept of Tefillin so that a biblical law may be transgressed he is exempt but if he rules that the Tefillin must contain five compartments thus adding to the words of the scribes he is liable Gemara R. Eliezer said in Arashai's name he is liable only for a matter of which the fundamental law is biblical whilst its interpretation is of the scribes and in which there is room for addition which addition however is the equivalent of subtraction now the only precept fulfilling these conditions is that of Tefillin now the statement was made according to Arjuna but is there not the law of the fundamental law of which is biblical the interpretation rabbinical there being room for addition which Addition amounts to subtraction now what is our opinion if
This is our Akiva's opinion. Our Judah said his judgment must not be delayed, but he is executed immediately whilst proclamations are indicted and sent by messengers to all place. So and so has been sentenced to death at Beth Gemara. Our rabbis taught he was executed neither by his local Beth nor by the Beth at Jabna, but taken to the great Beth in Jerusalem and kept there until the next festival and executed thereon. For it is written, and all the people shall hear and fear. This is our Akiva's opinion. But our Judah said to him, Is it then stated, shall see and fear only shall hear and fear is stated? Why then delay his sentence? But he is executed immediately and a proclamation is written and sent to all places. So and so has been sentenced to death at Beth Our rabbis taught public announcements must be made for four malefactors amidst the stubborn and rebellious son, a rebellious elder, and witnesses who were proved so memo. In the case of all others, it is written and all the People or in all Israel, but in the case of witnesses proved Zomemim it is written, and those which remain shall hear and fear, since not all are eligible to be witnesses. Mission of false prophet, he who prophesies what he has not heard or what was not told to him is executed by man, but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet or a prophet who transgresses his own word, his death is at the hands of heaven, for it is written, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which the prophet shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. He who prophesies in the name of an idol, saying, Thus hath the idol declared, even if he chanced upon the right halacha, declaring the unclean, unclean, or the clean, clean, or he who was intimate with a married woman after her entry into her husband's home for any as you, and though the marriage was not consummated, he is strangled. Likewise, witnesses proved Zomemim in a charge of adultery against the priests. Daughter and her paramour are strangled for all Zomemim are led for to meet the self same death which they sought to impose save Zomemim in a charge against the priest's daughter and her paramour Gemara our rabbis taught three are slain by man and three by heaven he who prophesies what he has not heard or what has not been told him and he who prophesies in the name of an idol are slain by man but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet and a prophet who transgresses his own words are slain by heaven whence do we know all this Rab Judah said in Rab's name from the verse but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name this applies to one who prophesies what he has not heard which I have not commanded him to speak implying but which I did command his neighbor hence means one who prophesies what was not told to him personally or that shall speak in the name of other gods this connotes prophesying in the name of idols and then it is written even that prophet shall die and by every unspecified death sentence decreed in the Torah strangulation is meant but he who suppresses his prophecy or disregards the words of a prophet or a prophet who transgresses his own words is slain by heaven for it is written all it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken Yishma now this may be understood as implying to proclaim and hear kenning himself unto my words and the verse concludes I will require it of him i.e. he shall be slain by heaven he who prophesies what he has not heard e.g. Zedekiah the son of Chinana as it is written and Zedekiah the son of Chinana had made him horns of iron but what else could he have done seeing that the spirit of Naboth had deceived him it is written and the Lord said who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramathilead and there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and he the Lord said thou shalt persuade him and Prevail also go forth and do so. Rab Judah said what is meant by go forth, go forth from my precincts. What spirit is meant are Yohanan said the spirit of Naboth the Jezreelite. He should have scrutinized the forecast of the assembled prophets. Even as our Isaac said, this the same communication is revealed to many prophets. Yet no two prophets prophecy in the identical phraseology. Thus Obadiah said the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Whilst Jeremiah said thy terribleness hath deceived thee. And the pride of thine heart. But since all these prophets employed exactly the same expression, it proved that they had nothing really divinely inspired. But perhaps he did not know of this criterion laid down by our Isaac. Jehoshaphat was there and warned them thereof as it is written. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? Thereupon he have exclaimed, But behold, all these I have a tradition from my grandfather's house that the same. Communication is revealed to many prophets, but no two prophesy in the identical phraseology. Replied Jehoshaphat, he who prophesies what was not told him, e.g., Hanani the son of Ezra. Now Jeremiah stood in the upper marketplace and said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam. Thereupon Hanani the son of Ezra drew in a minority conclusion of Elam, which only came to assist Babylon. Yet the Holy One, blessed be he, said, Behold, I will break the law of Elam. Then how much more so? The Chaldeans, i.e., Babylonians themselves. So he went to the lower marketplace and proclaimed, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the kingdom of Babylon. Our Papa asked Abbe, but this was not told even to his colleagues. Viz Jeremiah, he answered, Since the minority reasoning has been given for biblical exegesis, it is as though it had been told to him. Jeremiah, hence only to Hanani was it not revealed, he who prophesies in the name of an idol, e.g. The prophets of Baal, he who suppresses his prophecy, e.g. Jonah the son of Amittai, or who disregards the words of a prophet, e.g. the colleague of Micah Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, B.I.E. Micah the son of Imla, as it is written, and a certain man of the son of the prophet said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee, and the man refused to smite him, and it is further written, and he said unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee, etc., or a prophet who transgresses his own words, e.g. Ido the prophet, as instanced by the following verses, I foresaw it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest to, and he the self styled prophet said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art, and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house that he may eat bread and Drink water three, so he went back with him four, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. A tanner recited before Arhistah, he who suppresses his prophecy is flogged, to which he retorted, One who eats dates out of a sieve is flogged, who then warned him. Abbe answered his fellow prophets, Whence do they know? Said Abbe, for it is written, Surely the Lord will do nothing but that he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets, but perhaps they see the heavenly court. Repented thereof, had they repented, all prophets would have been informed, but in the case of Jonah they did repent, yet Jonah himself was not informed. Jonah was originally told that Nineveh would be turned, but did not know whether for good or for evil he who disregards the words of a prophet, but how does he know that he is a true prophet, that he should be punished if he gives him a sign, but Micah did not give a sign, yet he, i.e., his colleague was punished if he was well established as a Prophet, it is different, for should you not admit this, how could Isaac listen to Abraham at Mount Moriah, or the people hearken to Elijah at Mount Carmel and sacrifice without the temple? Hence, the case where the prophet is well established is different, and it came to pass after these words that God did tempt Abraham. What is meant by after our Yohan and said on the authority of our Hosea Bezimra, after the words of Satan, as it is written, and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Thereupon Satan said to the Almighty Sovereign of the universe, To this old man thou didst graciously vouchsafe the fruit of a womb at the age of a hundred, yet of all that banquet which he prepared, he did not have one turtle dove or pigeon to sacrifice before thee, hath he done up but in honor of his son replied, He yet were I to say to him, Sacrifice thy son before me, he would do so without hesitation straightway. God did tempt Abraham and he Said, Take, I pray thee, N.A. thy son, our Simeon, B. Abba said, N.A. can only denote entreaty. This may be compared to a king of flesh and blood who was confronted by many wars which he won by the aid of a great warrior. Subsequently, he was faced with a severe battle. Thereupon he said to him, I pray thee, assist me in battle that people may not say there was no reality in the earlier one. So also did the Holy One bless be. He said unto Abraham, I have tested thee with many trials, and thou didst withstand all. Now be firm for my sake in this trial that men may not say there was no reality in the earlier ones, thy son, but I have two sons, thy only one, each is the only one of his mother whom thou lovest. I love them both, Isaac, and why all the circumlocution that his mind should not reel under
Every unspecified death sentence in the Torah strangulation is meant the seducers of a seduced city are executed by stoning. What is the reason of the rabbi's similarity of laws learned from the employment of seduction here and in the case of either a Mesut or a prophet who seduced but are simian maintain similarity of laws learned from the employment of seduction here and in the case of a prophet who seduced but let us rather deduce it from Mesut. An analogy is drawn between two who incite a multitude and not between one who incites a multitude and another who seduces an individual. On the contrary, should not an analogy be drawn between two laymen rather than between a layman and a prophet. Are simian maintain since he seduced no man is more of a layman than he are his das et talmud. Ma sanhedrin of the differ only in respect of one who uproots the fundamental prohibition of idolatry or who partially confirms and partially annuls the prohibition of idolatry since the divine law. Said to seduce thee from men the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, implying even part of the way. But if one a false prophet fundamentally uproots any other precept, all agree that he is strangled. Whilst if he partially annuls and partially confirms any other precept, all agree that he is exempt. Our hand objected it has been taught because he hath spoken to seduce thee from the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk. This refers to positive commands. There in botch negative commands, but should you say that this refers to idolatry? How is a positive command conceivable in respect of idolatry? Our histah explained it as referring to and ye shall overthrow their altars. Our hand said they differ in respect of one who uproots the fundamental injunction, whether of idolatry or other precepts, or who partially annuls and partially confirms the prohibition of idolatry, since the Torah said from the way, implying even part of the way. But if he Partly confirms and partly annuls any other precept. All agree that he is exempt. Our rabbis taught if one prophesies so as to eradicate a law of the Torah, he is liable to death. Partially to confirm and partially to annul it. Our simian exempts him. But as for idolatry, even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow, all declare him liable. Now Abbe agrees with our and reconciles this with him. Rabbi holds with our Hamana and explains it according to his views. Abbe agrees with our and reconciles it with him. Thus, if one prophesies so as to uproot a law of the Torah, all agree that he is strangled. Partially to confirm and partially to annul it. Our simian exempts him and the rabbis likewise. But as for idolatry, even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow, he is liable. Each according to his views. Rabbi holds with our Hamana and explains it according to his opinion. If one prophesies to uproot an injunction of the Torah, whether idolatry or any other precept, he is. Liable each according to his views, partially to confirm and partially to annul it. Our Simeon declares him exempt, and also the rabbis. But as for idolatry, even if he said serve it today and destroy it tomorrow, he is liable each according to his views. Our Abbas said in our Yohanan's name in every matter, if a prophet tells you to transgress the commands of the Torah, obey him with the exception of idolatry. Should he even cause the sun to stand still in the middle of the heavens for you as proof of divine inspiration, do not hearken to him. It has been taught. Our Jose the Galilean said the Torah understood the extreme depths of depravity inherent in idolatry. Therefore, the Torah gave him the false prophet power. Therein, that should he even cause the sun to stand still in the middle of the heavens, thou must not hearken to him. Our Akiba said, God forbid that the Almighty should cause the sun to stand still at the behest of those who transgressed his will. But the Torah refers to one as. Hanani the son of Ezra who was originally a true prophet and only subsequently became a false prophet likewise witnesses proved so memem in an accusation of adultery against the priest's daughter and her paramour once do we know this our Abba the son of Araka said for it has been taught our Jose said why does scripture state then shall you do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother for all falsified witnesses spoken of in the Torah the Zomem and the paramours are assimilated to them but in the case of a priest's daughter she prophet teaches she is executed by burning but not her paramour hence I do not know whether the Zomem are likened to him or to her but when the writ said to have done unto his brother it teaches to his brother but not to his sister chapter 11 mission all Israel have a portion in the world to come for it is written that people are all righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified, but the following have no portion therein. He who maintains that resurrection is not a biblical doctrine, the Torah was not divinely revealed, and in Epicoros are Akiba added one who reads uncanonical books, also one who whispers a charm over a wound and says, I will bring none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth the Abbas. All says also one who pronounces the divine name as it is spelled three kings and four. Commoners have no portion in the world to come. The three kings are Jeroboam, Ahab, and Manasseh. Our Judah said, Manasseh hath a portion therein, for it is written, and he prayed unto him and was entreated of him, and he hearkened to his supplication, and they restored him to Jerusalem to his kingdom. They the sages answered him, they restored him to his kingdom, but not to his portion in the world to come. Four commoners, Bizbalam, Doeg, Ahedafel, and Gehazagamar, and why such severity attended hot. Since he denied the resurrection of the dead, therefore he shall not share in that resurrection. For in all the measures of punishment or reward taken by the Holy One, blessed be he. The divine act befits the human deed, as it is written. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. And it is written, And the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord made windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be, and it is further written, and so it fell unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. But perhaps this was the result of Elisha's curse. For Rab Judah said in Rab's name, the curse of a sage, even if unright is fulfilled, if so, Scripture should have written, they trod upon. Him and he died while trod upon him in the gate to show that it was on account of matters pertaining to the gate how his resurrection derived from the Torah as it is written and ye shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest but would Aaron live forever he did not even enter Palestine that Teremah should be given him but it teaches that he would be resurrected and Israel give him Teremah thus resurrection is derived from the Torah the school of our Ishmael taught to Aaron. Means to one like Aaron just as Aaron was a Haber so his sons must be Habram our Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name whence do we know that Teremah must not be given to a priest and am higher as from the verse moreover he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the Levites that they might hold fast to the law of the Lord thus whoever holds fast to the law of the Lord has a portion whoever does not has no portion our Ahabi said in Rab Judah's name one who Gives Teramah to an ignorant priest is as though he had placed it before a lion, just as a lion may possibly tear his prey and eat it, and possibly not so is an ignorant priest, he may possibly eat it undefiled and possibly defiled. Our Yohanan said he even causes his SC the ignorant priest's death, for it is written, and die therefore if they profane at the school of our Eliezer be Jacob taught, he also embroils him in a sin of general trespass, for it is written, or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. It has been taught our semi said once do we learn resurrection from the Torah from the verse, and I also have established my covenant with the Messi, the patriarchs, to give them the land of Canaan to give you is not said, but to give them personally, thus resurrection is proved from the Torah Nimon Exedek Gambishem Kam Sectarians Minim Ask Rabban Gamaliel once do we know that the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect the dead, he answered them. From the Torah of the prophets and the hagiographer, yet they did not accept it as conclusive proof from the Torah, for it is written, and the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers and rise up again. But perhaps said they to him, the verse reads, and the people will rise up from the prophets, as it is written, Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body, shall they arise awake and sing, yet that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out its dead. But perhaps this refers to the dead whom Ezekiel resurrected from the hagiographer, as it is written, and the roof of thy mouth like the best wine of my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. But perhaps it means merely that their lips will move, even as our Yohanan said, If a Halachah is said in any person's name in this world, his lips speak in the grave, as it is written,
and Hidra Tikrath his iniquity shall be upon him now seeing that he shall utterly be cut off in this world when shall his iniquity be upon him surely in the next world our Papa said to Abba could he not have deduced both this world and the next from he shall be utterly cut off they would have replied the Torah employed human phraseology this is disputed by Tanaim that soul shall utterly be cut off Hidra he shall be cut off in this world and Tikrath in the next this is our Akibah's view are Ishmael said but the verse has previously stated he reproached the Lord and that soul shall be cut off are there than three worlds but interpret thus and that soul shall be cut off in this world Hidra he is to be cut off in the next whilst as for the repetition Tikrath that is because the Torah employs human phraseology how do both our Ishmael and our Akibah utilize his iniquity shall be upon him for that which has been taught I might think that this is so even if he Repented therefore scripture saith his iniquity is upon him I decreed that he shall be cut off only if his iniquity is still in him Queen Cleopatra asked Armeir I know that the dead will revive for it is written and they see the righteous shall in the distant future blossom forth out of the city Jerusalem like the grass of the earth but when they arise shall they arise nude or in their garments he replied thou mayest deduce by an aforciori argument the answer from a wheat grain of a grain of wheat which is buried naked sprout forth in many robes how much more so the righteous who are buried in their raiment an emperor said to Rabban Gamaliel you maintain that the dead will revive but they turn to dust and can dust come to life Talmud Ma Sanhedrin thereupon is the emperor's daughter said to him the rabbi let me answer him in our town there are two potters one fashions his products from water and the other from clay who is the more praiseworthy he who fashions them from water he replied if he can fashion man from water surely he can do so from clay the school of our Ishmael taught it can be deduced from glassware if glassware which though made by the breath of human beings can yet be repaired when broken then how much more so man created by the breath of the holy one blessed be he a sectarian men said to rmi maintain that the dead will revive but they turn to dust and can dust come to life he replied i will tell thee a parable this may be compared to a human king who commanded his servants to build him a great palace in a place where there was no water or earth for making bricks so they went and built it but after some time it collapsed so he commanded them to rebuild it in a place where water and earth was to be found but they replied we cannot thereupon he became angry with them and said if you could build in a place containing no water or earth surely you can where there is yet continued rmi if thou dost not believe go Forth into the field and see a mouse which today is but part flesh and part dust and yet by tomorrow has developed and become all flesh and shoots thou say that takes a long time go up to the mountains where thou wilt see but one snail whilst by tomorrow the rain has descended and it is covered with snails a sectarian men said to Gabi Pasisa woe to you ye wicked who maintain that the dead will revive if even the living die shall the dead live he replied woe to you ye wicked who maintain that the dead will not revive if what was not now live surely what has lived will live again thou hast called me wicked said he if I stood up I could kick thee and strip thee of thy hump if thou couldst do that he retorted thou wouldst be called a great doctor and command large fees our rabbis taught on the twenty fourth of Nisan the revenue farmers were removed from Judah and Jerusalem for when the Africans came to plead against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon they said Canaan Belongs to us as it is written the land of Canaan with the coasts thereof and Canaan was the ancestor of these people i.e. ourselves thereupon Gabi Habib Pasissa said to the sages authorize me to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedon should they defeat me then say ye have defeated but an ignorant man of us whilst if I defeat them then say to them thus the law of Moses has defeated you so they authorized him and he went and pleaded against them once do ye this your proof. Ask he from the Torah they replied I too said he will bring you proof only from the Torah for it is written and he said curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren now if a slave acquires property to whom does he belong and whose is the property moreover it is now many years that ye have not served us then Alexander said to them answer him give us three days time they pleaded so he gave them a respite they sought but found no answer immediately thereon they fled. Leaving behind their sown fields and their planted vineyards, and that year was a sabbatical year. On another occasion, the Egyptians came in a lawsuit against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon. They pleaded, Thus is it not written? And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and they lent them gold and precious stones, etc. Then returned us the gold and silver which ye took thereupon. Gabi Habibis said to the sages, Give me permission to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedon. Should they defeat me, then say, Ye have merely defeated an ignorant man amongst us. Whilst if I defeat them, then say, The law of Moses has defeated you. So they gave him permission, and he went and pleaded against them. Once do ye this your proof? Asked he from the Torah. They replied, Then I too said, He will bring you proof only from the Torah, for it is written now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. Pay us for the Toil of six hundred thousand men whom he enslaved for four hundred thirty years. Then King Alexander said to them, Answer him, give us three days' time. They begged, so he gave them a respite. They sought, but found no answer. Straightway they fled, leaving behind their sown fields and planted vineyards. And that year was a sabbatical year. On another occasion, the Ishmaelites and the Keturians came for a lawsuit against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon. They pleaded, Thus Canaan belongs jointly to all of us. For it is written, Now these are the generations of Ishmael Abraham's son, and it is further written, And these are the generations of Isaac Abraham's son. Thereupon Gabi Habibis said to the sages, Give me permission to go and plead against them before Alexander of Macedon. Should they defeat me, then say, Ye have defeated one of our ignorant men. Whilst if I defeat them, say, The law of Moses has defeated you. So they gave him permission, and he went and pleaded against them. Once do you your proof asked he from the Torah they replied then I too said he will bring you proof only from the Torah for it is written and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac but unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had Abraham gave gifts if a father made a bequest to his children in his lifetime and sent them away from each other has won any claim upon the other obviously not what gifts did he give them or Jeremiah B. Abba said this teaches that he imparted to them the secrets of it. Unhallowed arts Antoninu said to Rabbi the body and the soul can both free themselves from judgment thus the body can plead the soul has sinned the proof being that from the day it left me I lie like a dumb stone in the grave powerless to do what whilst the soul can say the body has sinned the proof being that from the day I departed from it I fly about in the air like a bird and commit no sin he replied I will tell thee a parable to what may this be compared to a human king who owned. A beautiful orchard which contained Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be splendid figs now he appointed two watchmen there and one lame and the other blind one day the lame man said to the blind I see beautiful figs in the orchard come and take me upon thy shoulder that we may procure and eat them so the lame best rode the blind procured and ate them some time after the owner of the orchard came and inquired of them where are those beautiful figs the lame man replied have I then feet to walk with thee. Blind man replied have I then eyes to see with what did he do he placed the lame upon the blind and judged them together so will the holy one blessed be he bring the soul replace it in the body and judge them together as it is written he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people he shall call to the heavens from above this refers to the soul and to the earth that he may judge his people to the body Antoninu said to Rabbi why does the sun rise in it? East and said in the west he replied where it reversed thou wouldst ask the same question this is my question said he why said in the west he answered in order to salute its maker as it is written and the host of the heavens make obeisance to thee then said he to him it should go only as far as mid heaven pay homage and then reascend on account of the workers and wayfarers Antoninus also said to rabbi when is the soul placed in man as soon as it is decreed that the sperm shall be male or female etc or when the embryo is actually formed he replied from the moment of formation he objected can a piece of meat be unsalted for three days without becoming putrid but it must be from the moment that god decrees its destiny rabbi said this thing Antoninus taught me and scripture supports him for it is written and thy decree hath preserved my spirit i.e. my soul Antoninus also inquired of rabbi from what time does the evil tempter hold sway over man from the formation of the embryo or from its issuing forth into the light of the world from the formation he replied if so he objected it would rebel in its mother's womb and go forth but it is from when
The light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. It is no difficulty. The latter refers to the messianic era, the former to the world to come. And according to Samuel, who maintained this world differs from the messianic era only in respect of the servitude of the diaspora. It is still no difficulty. The latter refers to the camp of the righteous, the former to the camp of the divine presence. Rabbah opposed two verses. It is written, I kill and I make alive, whilst it is also written, I wound and I heal the holy one. Blessed be he said, What I slay, I resurrect I in the same state. And then what I wound, I heal after their revival. Our rabbis taught, I kill and I make alive. I might interpret, I kill one person and give life to another as the world goes on. Therefore, the writ states, I wound and I heal just as the wounding and healing obviously refer to the same person. So putting to death and bringing to life refer to the same person. This refutes those who maintain that. Resurrection is not intimated in the Torah, it has been taught. Our Meir said, Whence do we know resurrection from the Torah from the verse? Then shall Moses and the children of Israel sing the song unto the Lord, not sang, but shall sing is written, thus resurrection is taught in the Torah. Likewise, thou readest, then shall Joshua build an altar unto the Lord God of Israel, not built, but shall build is written, thus resurrection is intimated in the Torah. If so, then did Solomon build an high place for Kemosh the abomination of Moab does that to mean that he shall build, but there the Rid regards him as though he had built our Joshua believe I said, Whence is resurrection derived from the Torah from the verse? Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they shall ever praise thee, seal and not praise thee, but they shall praise thee as stated, thus resurrection is taught in the Torah. Our Joshua believe I also said, Whoever utter a song of praise to God in this world shall be privileged to do so in it. Next world too as it is written blessed are they that dwell in thy house they shall ever praise thee seal our high be Abba said in our Yohanan's name whence do we learn resurrection from the Torah from the verse thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing not sang but shall sing is written thus resurrection is derived from the Torah Rab Judah said in Rab's name whoever withholdeth the halacha from his disciple is as though he had robbed him of his ancestral heritage as it is written Moses commanded us Allah even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob it is an inheritance destined for all Israel from the six days of creation our Hanabi business said in the name of our Simeon the pious whoever withholds a halacha from a disciple even the embryo in his mother's womb curses him as it is written he that withholdeth our Kornyakabo Lom Talmud Ma Sanhedrin Lom can only mean embryo as it is written and one Lom shall be stronger than the other. People and Yakubu can only denote cursing as it is written, How shall I curse a cop whom God hath not cursed? And Bar can refer to nothing but the Torah as it is written, Nourish yourselves, Bar on the Torah, lest he be angry. Olabi Ishmael said, He is riddled with holes like a sieve. Here is written, The people Yakubu, whilst elsewhere is written, W. A. Yakub, and he bored a hole in the lid of it. Abbe said, Like a fuller's trough, but if he teaches him what is his reward, Rabbi said in the name of Arshis, he will receive blessings like Joseph's as it is written, But blessing shall be upon the head of Mishpur, him who selleth it. Mishpur can only refer to Joseph as it is said, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and it was he, Hamishpur, that sold to all the people of the land. Arshis hate said, Whoever teaches the Torah in this world will be privileged to teach it in the next as it is written, and he that watereth shall water again to Rabbi said, Whence is resurrection derived from? The Torah from the verse let Reuben live and not die meaning let Reuben live in this world and not die in the next Reuben has said it is derived from this verse and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt are as she said from this verse but go thou thy way till the end before thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days our Eliezer said every leader who leads a community with mildness will be privileged to lead them in the next world too as it is written for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them our Eliezer also said great is knowledge since it was placed between two letters as it is written for a god of knowledge is the Lord our Eliezer also said great is the sanctuary since it was placed between two letters as it is written thou hast made for the O Lord a sanctuary O Lord thy hands have established it our so then great is vengeance since it was placed between two letters as it is written O God of vengeance O Lord O God of vengeance manifest thyself he replied for its purposes it is so indeed even as Ola said why these two manifestations one as a measure of reward for the righteous and the other as a measure of punishment for the wicked our Eliezer also said whenever one has knowledge it is as though the temple was built in his day since each has seen knowledge and the temple was placed between two letters our Eliezer also said whoever has knowledge will eventually be wealthy as it is written and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches our Eliezer also said whosoever lacks knowledge one may have no mercy upon him as it is written for it is a people of no understanding therefore he that made them will not have mercy upon them and he that formed them will show them no favor our Eliezer also said whoever gives of his bread to one who lacks knowledge will be assailed by suffering as it is written they that eat thy bread have laid Mazur a wound under thee there is no understanding in him Mazur can refer only to suffering as it is written when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his Mazur is suffering our Eliezer also said whoever lacks knowledge will ultimately be exiled for it is written therefore my people are gone into exile because they have no knowledge our Eliezer also said the house in which the words of the Torah are not heard at night shall be consumed by fire as it is written all darkness is hid in the secret places of fire not blown shall consume him he grudges Sarad him that is left in his tabernacle now Sarad can refer only to the scholar as it is written and in those left you base redeem whom the Lord shall call our Eliezer also said whoever does not benefit a scholar with his goods will never see a sign of blessing as it is written there be none Sarad that remaineth to eat it therefore shall he not hope for prosperity now Sarad refers to none but the scholar as it is written and in those left whom the Lord shall call our Eliezer also said he who leaves no bread on the table at the end of his meal will never see a sign of blessing as it is written there be none of his meat left therefore shall he not hope for his prosperity but did not our Eliezer say he who leaves crumbs on his table is as though he engaged in idol worship for it is written that prepare a table for Gad and that furnish the drink offering unto. Meaning it is no difficulty in the latter case a whole loaf is left there with i.e. with the pieces but in the former there is no whole loaf left there with our Eliezer also said whoever dissembles in his speeches as though he had engaged in idolatry here it is written and I shall seem to him as a deceiver and elsewhere it is said they are vanity and the work of deceivers our Eliezer also said whoever gazes upon one shame is burly shall be empty for it is written shame shall empty thy body. Strength our Eliezer also said be always humble so shalt thou endure our Zerah said we have learned likewise the windows of a dark house may not be open to examine its leprosy this proves it our Tavi said in our Josiah's name what is meant by the grave and the barren womb and the earth that is not filled by water now what connection has the grave with the womb but it is to teach thee just as the womb receives and brings forth so does the grave to receive and bring forth now does this not furnish us with an aforciori argument if the womb which receives in silence yet brings forth amid great cries of jubilation and the grave which receives the dead amid cries of grief will much more so bring them forth amid great cries of joy this refutes those who maintain that resurrection is not intimated in the Torah the Tanah who states the righteous whom the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect will not revert to dust for it is said and it shall come to pass that he that is left. In Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem just as the Holy One endures forever so shall they endure forever Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be and should you ask in those years during which the Almighty will renew his world as it is written and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day what will the righteous do the Lord will make them wings like eagles and they will fly above the water as it is written therefore we will not fear when the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea and should you imagine that they will suffer pain therefore scripture saith but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint but should we not deduce the reverse from the dead whom Ezekiel resurrected he accepts the view that in the truth the story of the resurrection of the dry Bones was but a parable for it was taught our Eli
For our parts are Jeremiah B. Abba said they were the men who lacked the vitalizing sap of good deeds as it is written O ye dry bones head the word of the Lord our Isaac Napaha said they were the men who covered the whole temple with abominations and creeping things as it is written so I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about whilst there in the case of the dry bones it is written and caused me to pass by them round about Aryohanan said they were the dead of the plain of Dura Aryohanan also said the plain of Dura extends from the river Eshel to Rabbath amongst the Israelites whom Nebuchadnezzar drove into exile there were young men who shamed the sun by their beauty the Chaldean women looking upon them were inflamed with passion their husbands being informed thereof reported it to the king who ordered the execution of these exiles yet they still burned with Desired so by royal command they were trampled out of recognition our rabbis taught when the wicked Nebuchadnezzar threw Hanani missile and Ezra into the fiery furnace the holy one blessed be he said to Ezekiel go and resurrect the dead in the plain of Dura this being done the bones came and smote the wicked man upon his face what kind of bones are these he exclaimed they his courtiers answered him their companion is resurrecting the dead in the plain of Dura thereupon he broke into utterance how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation our Isaac said may mold and gold be poured into the mouth of that wicked man as seen Nebuchadnezzar had not an angel come and struck him upon his mouth he would have eclipsed all the songs and praises uttered by David in the book of Psalms our rabbis taught six miracles were wrought on that David as the furnace floated upward to its walls partly. Fell in three its foundations crumbled with the heat for the image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up to be worshipped was overthrown upon its face before royal sweets were burned six Ezekiel resurrected the dead in the valley of Dura all these are known by tradition but that pertaining to the four royal sweets is scriptural for it is written then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes the governors and the captains the judges the treasurers the counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image etc and it is further written there are certain Jews serve not that God etc also and the princes governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whom the fire had no power the school of our Eliza B Jacob taught even in times of danger one should not lay aside his insignia of office for it is written then these men were bound in their coats their hosen and their Hats and their other garments, etc. Are Yohan and said Talmud, Moss and Hedron of the righteous are greater than the ministering angels, for it is said he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God, our Tanham Behanalas said when Hanani Missal and Ezra emerged unscathed from the fiery furnace, all the nations of the world came and smote the enemies of Israel upon their faces, saying to them, Ye have such a God, yet ye worship an image immediately that the apostate Jews opened their mouths and confessed, O Lord righteousness, spelling death unto thee, but unto us shamefacedness as at this day our Samuel be Naman he said in our Jonathan's name, what is meant by I said I will go up to the palm tree, I will take hold of the boughs thereof, I said I will go up to the palm tree, etc. This refers to Israel, but now I grasp but the one bow of Hanani Missal and Ezra Yohan and said, What is meant by I saw? By night and behold a man riding upon a red horse and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom etc. What means I saw by night the Holy One blessed be he wished to turn the whole world into night but behold a man riding man can refer to none but the Holy One blessed be he as it is written the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name upon a red horse the Holy One blessed be he wished to turn the whole world to blood but as soon as he looked upon Hanani missile and Ezra his anger was appeased for it is written and he stood among Hadassim the myrtle trees that were in the deep now Hadassim refers but to the righteous as it is written and he brought up Hadassah and deep refers to Babylon as it is said that saith to the deep be dry and I will dry up thy river straightway he who was filled with wrath was partially calmed and then completely pacified our Papa said this shows that a white horse is a favorable omen in a dream whither did the rabbis go rap said they Died through an evil eye. Samuel said they drowned in the spittle. Our Yohanan said they went up to Palestine, married and begot sons and daughters. This is as a dispute of Tanaim. Our Eliezer said they died through an evil eye. Our Joshua said they drowned in the spittle. The sages said they went up to Palestine, married and begot sons and daughters. As it is written here now, O Joshua the high priest and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at now for which men was a wonder. Rod Hanani missile and Ezra whither had Daniel gone. Rab said to dig a great spring at Tiberias. Samuel said to procure animal fodder. Our Yohanan said to obtain pigs from Alexandria of Egypt, but that is not so. For we learned that the others, the doctor said no cow or pig leaves Alexandria of Egypt without its uterus being cut out to prevent reproduction. She procured small ones to which they paid no attention. Our rabbis taught three were involved in that conspiracy to keep Daniel out of it. Furnace the Holy One blessed be he Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar the Holy One blessed be he said let Daniel depart hence lest it be said that they were delivered through his merit Daniel said let me go from here that I be not a fulfillment of the graven images of their God shall yet burn with fire whilst Nebuchadnezzar said let Daniel depart lest people say he has burnt his God in fire and whence do we know that he worshipped him from the verse then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel etc. Thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel of Ahab the son of Kolah and of Zedekiah the son of Masiah which prophecy a lie unto you in my name etc. And it is written and of them shall be taken up the curse by all the captivity of Judah which are in Babylon saying the Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire not whom he burnt but whom he roasted is written are Yohanan said on the authority of our Simeon Behohavis teaches. That he made them like parched sheaves of corn because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives, etc. What did they do? They went to Nebuchadnezzar's daughter Ahab said to her, Thus saith God, give thyself unto Zedekiah, whilst Zedekiah said to her, Thus saith God, surrender to Ahab. So she went and told her father, who said to her, The God of these hate and chastity, when they again approached thee, send them to me. So when they came to her, she referred them to him who told this to you, asked he of them the Holy One, Blessed be he replied, they, But I have inquired of Hanani Missal and Ezra, who informed me that it is forbidden. They answered, We to our prophets, just as he to him, he did not say it, but to us that I desire that ye be tested, just as Hanani Missal and Ezra were he retorted, But they are three, whilst we are only two, they protested, then choose whom ye wish to accompany you, said he, Joshua the high priest, they answered. Thinking let Joshua be brought for his merit is great that he may protect us so he was brought and they were all thrown into the furnace they were burned but as to Joshua the high priest only his garments were cinched for it is said and he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and it is written and the Lord said unto Satan the Lord rebuked thee O Satan etc. Thus said he to him I know that thou art righteous but why should the fire have affected thee even? Slightly Hanani missile and Ezra were not affected at all they were three said he but I am only one but he remonstrated Abraham who was only one no wicked were with him so the fire was not empowered to do any harm but here I had wicked men with me so the fire was unable to do its work he rejoined thus people say if there are two dry billets and one went one the former burned the latter now why was he thus punished our papa said because his sons married wives unfit for the priesthood. And he did not protest as it is said now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments now surely it was not his wont to wear filthy garments but this intimates that his sons married women unfit for the priesthood and he did not forbid them our tantum said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris what is meant by these six of barley gave each to me what are six of barley shall we say it is meant literally but was it Boaz's practice to give only six barley grains Talmud, Moss and Hedron be but if it means six. Seahs can a woman take six Seahs but he symbolically intimated to her by giving her six barley grains that six sons were destined to come forth from her who should each be blessed with six blessings Viz David Messiah Daniel Hanani Missal and Ezra David for it is written then answered one of the servants and said behold I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man and a
This teaches that he loaded him with good deeds and suffering as a mill is laden rumpus and he smells a man and judges as it is written and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears yet with righteousness shall he judge the poor barcos of Arain two and a half years and then said to the rabbis I am the Messiah the answered of Messiah it is written that he smells and judges let us see whether he barcos can do so when they saw that he was unable to judge by the scent they slew him Daniel had an eye missile and Azariah as it is written of them in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans what is meant by in whom there was no blemish our Hamabi Hanada said they did not even bear the scar made by bleeding what is the meaning of and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace our Hamabi Hanada said this teaches that they restrained themselves from levity conversation and sleep and suppressed the call of nature out of royal respect now among these were of the children of Judah Daniel Hanani missile and Azariah our Eliezer said they were all of the children of Judah but our Samuel be Namani said Daniel was of the tribe of Judah whilst Hanani missile and Azariah were of the other tribes and of thy sons which Shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget shall they take away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon what is meant by eunuchs rap said literally eunuchs are Hanana said in their days the idols were sterilized now according to the opinion that the idols were sterilized in their days it is well to state and there is no hurt in them but on the view that eunuchs is literally meant what is meant by and there is no hurt in them no hurt of fire but is it not written nor the smell of fire had passed on them they were neither hurt by the fire nor even smelled thereof now according to the opinion that the idols were sterilized in their days it is well to write for thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths but on the view that eunuchs is literally meant with scripture recount the shame of the righteous there were both among them now the literal rendering is in conformity with the verse even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls. A place and a name better than of sons and of daughters, but on the view that the idols were sterilized in their days, why state better than of sons and of daughters are nominee be Isaac answered better than the children whom they had formerly possessed, but had died. What is meant by I shall give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off our ten home said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris. This alludes to the book of Daniel, which was named after him. Now let us consider the whole subject. Matter of the book of Ezra was narrated by Nehemiah the son of Hashali. Why then was the book not called by his name? Our Jeremiah B. Abba said because he claimed merit for himself, as it is written, Think upon me, my God, for good, but did not David say likewise, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people, O visit me with thy salvation. David merely supplicated in prayer, our Joseph said, because he spoke disparagingly of his predecessors, as it is written, but the former. Governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside forty shekels of silver etc. Moreover he spoke thus even of Daniel who was greater than he and whence do we know that Daniel was greater than he from the verse and I Daniel alone saw the vision for the men that were with me saw not the vision but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves for the men that were with me saw not the vision now who were these men are. Jeremiah others say are high B. Abbasid Hadi Isaac Arya and Malachi Talmud, Moss and Hedron that they were greater than he in one respect and he was superior to them in another thus they were greater than he since they were prophets whilst he was not he on the other hand was superior to them since he saw the vision which they did not but since they did not see it why were they terrified though they themselves saw nothing their guardian angel did see it Robin said this proves that when one is terrified and knows not why though he has not seen anything his guardian angel has what shall he do to dissipate his fears let him leap four cubits from his place alternatively let him read the Shema but if he is standing in an unclean place where the Shema may not be recited let him say thus the butcher's goat is fatter than I of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end our ten home said Barkabra expounded in Sephoris why is every mem in the middle of a word open whilst this is closed the Holy One blessed be he wished to appoint Hezekiah as the Messiah and Sennacherib as Gog and Magog whereupon the attribute of justice said before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe if thou didst not make David the Messiah who uttered so many hymns and psalms before thee wilt thou appoint Hezekiah as such who did not him be in spite of all these miracles which thou wroughtest for him therefore it the mem was closed straightway the earth Exclaimed Sovereign of the Universe let me utter song before thee instead of this righteous man Hezekiah and make him the Messiah so it broke into song before him as it is written from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs even glory to the righteous then the Prince of the Universe said to him Sovereign of the Universe that the earth hath fulfilled thy desire for songs of praise on behalf of this righteous man but a heavenly voice cried out it is my secret it is my secret too. Which the prophet rejoined woe is me woe is me how long must we wait the heavenly voice again cried out the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously yet the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously which rob others say our Isaac interpreted until there come spoilers and spoilers of the spoilers the burden of Duma he calleth to me out of seer watchman what of the night watchman what of the night are you hand and said the angel in charge of the souls is named Duma all the souls. Assembled before Duma and said to him, What saith the watchman? S. C. God of the night, what saith the watchman of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night, if ye will inquire, inquire, ye return cometh, and reported in the name of our Papias. It was a reproach to Hezekiah and his company that they uttered no song to God until the earth broke into song, as it is written from the uttermost part of the earth. Have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous? Similarly, we read, and Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you, were on a tent and taught in the name of our Papias. It was a reproach to Moses and the six hundred thousand Israelites that they did not bless the Lord until Jethro came and did so, and Jethro rejoiced. W. A. U. had Rab and Samuel disputed its meaning. Rab said he caused a sharp knife to pass over his flesh. Samuel said his flesh crept with horror at the destruction of the Egyptians. Rab observed, Thus people say before a proselyte even. Unto the tenth generation insult not an Aramean therefore shall the Lord the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness what is meant by among his fat ones Bamish of leanness the Holy One blessed be he said let Hezekiah who hath eight Shemina names come and meet out punishment to Sennacherib who hath likewise eight Hezekiah as it is written for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called by wonderful. Two counselor three mighty four judge be everlasting six father seven prince and eight peace but is there not Hezekiah two that means whom God hath strengthened alternatively Hezekiah denotes who strengthened Israel in their devotion to their father in heaven Sennacherib of whom it is written I tiglath piles are two tilgath dash pilmas are three shulmanis are four pool these are six a snapper seven rabba and eight yakarab but is there not Sennacherib two that means that is very Conversation was strife alternatively that he pracked with inflammatory speech against the most high Aryohan and said why did that evil man merit the titles of the great and noblest snapper because he did not speak slightingly of the land of Israel as it is written until I come and take you away to a land like your own land Rab and Samuel dispute the matter one maintained that he was a wise king the other that he was foolish the view that he was a wise king is because had he said a land that is better than your own they would have replied thou liest whilst the opinion that he was foolish is because if so i.e. that the land of exile would be no better than their own what inducement did he offer whither did he deport them Marzitra said to Africa our Hanada maintained to the mountains of Salud but Israel spoke with contempt about Palestine for when they came to Shush they said this is as good as our land to Alman they said this is like the house of eternities i.e. Jerusalem or the Temple on arriving at Cheshire, they said, This is twice as good as our land, and beneath his glory shall he kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Our Yohanan said that which was beneath his glory would be burnt, but glory is not literal, even as our Yohanan called his garments my honor. Our Eliezer said, Beneath his glory is literal as the burning of the sons of Aaron, just as there the burning of the soul is meant the body remaining intact. So here too attended taught in the name of our Joshua B. Karhafero, who personally blasphemed, was punished by the Holy One, blessed be he in person, Sennacherib, who blasphemed Tal
Wearied of the Davidic dynasty which rules them with gentleness like the waters of Shiloh which flow tranquilly and have set their desire upon Rezin and the son of Ramalai Aryohan and said what is meant by the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked but he blesseth the habitation of the just the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked refers to Pekka the son of Ramalai who ate 40 seahs of young birds as a mere dessert but he blesseth the habitation of the just applies to Hezekiah king of Judah who ate but a litter of vegetables for his entire meal now therefore behold the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river strong and many even the king of Assyria and all his glory and it is further written and he shall pass through Judah he shall overflow and go over he shall reach even to the neck and if so why was he sent Asherah punished the prophet prophesied with respect to the ten tribes whereas he set his face against the whole of Jerusalem. Thereupon the prophet came and said to him for the weary is not for the oppressor our Eliezer be brought he said this means the people that is tired out by intensive study of the Torah will not be delivered into the hands of her oppressor what is meant by when aforetime the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali did lighten its burden but in later times it was made heavy by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations it is not as the early generations who rejected it. Yoke of the Torah, but as for the latter generations who strengthen the yoke of the Torah upon themselves and are therefore worthy of having a miracle wrought for them like those who passed over the Red Sea and the Jordan, should he send Asherah repent of his attack upon Jerusalem, tis well, but if not, I will render him the butt of a nation scorn after these things and the truth thereof. Send Asherah, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself is such a reward me for such a gift. But what is meant by after these things and the truth thereof, Robin is said after the Holy One, blessed be he had anticipated events by an oath, for he reasoned thus, if I say to Hezekiah, I will bring Sennacherib and deliver him into thy hands, he will reply, I require neither the ultimate victory over him nor the preceding terror, therefore the Holy One, blessed be he forestalled him by swearing that he would bring him as it. Is written the Lord of hosts hath sworn saying surely as I have thought so shall it come to pass and as I have purposed so shall it stand that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot and shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders are you had and said the Holy One blessed be he said thus let Sennacherib and his army come and be a crib for Hezekiah and his army and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the oil or Isaac the smith said this means the yoke of Sennacherib shall be destroyed on account of the oil of Hezekiah which burnt in the synagogues and schools what did he do he planted a sword by the door of the schoolhouse and proclaimed he who will not study the Torah will be pierced with the sword search was made from Dan unto Beersheba and no ignoramus was found from Gabbath. Unto Antipri and no boy or girl man or woman was found who was not thoroughly versed in the laws of cleanliness and uncleanliness and concerning that generation it is said and it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep and it is further said and it shall come to pass on that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand vines and a thousand silverlings it shall even be for briars and thorns though a thousand vines be worth a thousand silverlings yet shall it be for briars and thorns and your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of a caterpillar the prophet said unto Israel gather your spoil thereupon they questioned him to take it as our own booty or to divide it like the gathering of a caterpillar replied he just as caterpillars gather each one for itself so take your spoil each one for himself but objected they the wealth of the ten tribes is mixed up there and he answered as the watering of pools doth he water it. Just as pools purify the unclean, so are the possessions of Israel which having fallen into the hands of heathens become clean. I illegitimate are who not said that wicked man made ten marches on that day as it is written. I he is come to Ayat 2. He is passed at Migrant 3 at Mike Mash. He hath laid up his carriages for they are gone over the passage. Be they have taken up their lodgings at Gabba 6. Rama is afraid. 7. Jabia of Saul is fled. 8. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim 9. Cause it to be heard unto Lavish X. O poor and Adhoth 11. Madmanah is removed. 12. The inhabitants of Gabim gather themselves to flee, but these are more than 10. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim was said by the prophet to the people of Israel. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Galim, thou daughter of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who performed good deeds as the waves of the sea in multitude. Cause it to be heard unto Lavish fear not this man, but be in dread of the wicked Nebuchadnezzar who is. Like unto a lion as it is written the lion as seen Nebuchadnezzar is come up from his thicket what is meant by Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin Aopor and Anathoth Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah from Anathoth is destined to prophesy thereon as see concerning Jerusalem as it is written the words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin but what comparison is it there Nebuchadnezzar is called Ari whilst your lash is written Ari Yohanan answered the lion has six names Bizari Ari Kefir Lady Lash Shahal and Shahas but if so there were less than ten I there gone over to the passage implies to what is meant by as yet shall he halt at Nob that day Arunah said only that day was left for the punishment of the crime committed in Nob so his soothsayer said to him if thou proceedest now to attack thou wilt conquer it if not thou wilt not conquer it therefore the journey that should have taken ten days to make he completed in one day when Jerusalem was reached mattresses were piled up for him until by ascending and sitting on the uppermost he saw the whole of Jerusalem on beholding it it appeared small in his eyes is this the city of Jerusalem he exclaimed for which I set all my troops in motion and conquered the whole country why it is smaller and weaker than all the cities of the nations which I have subdued by my might then he arose and shook his head and waved his hand to and fro contemptuously toward the temple in Zion against the temple court in Jerusalem may the astrologers urge let us attack immediately ere to worn out he replied but tomorrow let each of you bring me a stone and we shall stone it straightway and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand and when they arose early in the morning behold they were all dead corpses our papa said thus men say if the verdict is postponed overnight it comes do not Anish Babinab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass and weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. What is meant by Anish Babinab? Rab Judah said in Rab's name, a man who came on account of Nob for the Holy One, blessed be he had said to David, How long will this crime be hidden in thy hand? I.e., unpunished through thee, Nob, the city of priests was massacred through thee, Dog the Edomite was banished, and through thee, Saul and his three sons were slain. Wouldst thou rather thy line to end or be delivered unto the enemy's hand? He replied, Sovereign of the universe, I would rather be delivered into the enemy's hand than that my line should end. One day, when he David ventured forth to seek Horbusy, Satan appeared before him in the guise of a deer, he shot arrows at him, but did not reach him, and was thus led on until impeeled into the land of the Philistines. When Anish Babinab espied him, he Exclaimed it is he who slew my brother Goliath, so he bound him, doubled him up, and cast him under an olive press, but a miracle was wrought, and the ground softened under him, hence it is written, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip now that day was Sabbath, and Abishai the son of Zeruiah, washing his head in four gribes of water, remarked some blood stains there, and others say a dove came and beat its wings before him thereupon he reasoned Israel is likened to a dove. As it is written, Yer as the wings of a dove covered with silver, this must be an intimation that David is in trouble, so he went to his house but did not find him. Now said he we learned one may not ride upon his Essia king's horse, nor sit upon his seat, nor use his scepter, but how is it in a time of danger? So he went and propounded the question in the schoolhouse and was answered in time of danger, it is permitted he then mounted his Essie David's mule and rode off, and the earth contracted under. And whilst riding he saw Urbah his S.C. Ishbibinab's mother spinning on descrying him she broke off the thread of the spindle and threw at the spindle at him intending to kill him then she said young man bring me the spindle but he threw it on the top of her head instead and killed her when Ishbibinab beheld him he said to himself now that there are two they will slay me so he threw David up in the air
he had set out on that day our father Jacob Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B as it is written and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went to Haran which is followed by and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set for when he reached Haran he said to himself shall I have passed through a place in which my fathers prayed without doing so likewise he wished therefore to return but no sooner had he thought of this than the earth contracted and immediately he lighted upon the place the objective of his journey and alternative exegesis is this pity I can only mean prayer as it is written therefore pray thou not for this people neither lift up cry nor pray for them neither make intercession to me and tarried there all night because the sun was set having prayed he wished to proceed there upon the holy one blessed be he said this righteous man has come to my habitation shall he depart without a night's rest immediately the sun set before its time hence it is written and as he passed over Penuel the sun rose for him now had the sun risen for him alone surely it had risen for the whole world but said our Isaac the sun which had prematurely set on his account now rose prematurely on his account too now whence do we know that David seed ceased from the verse and when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead she arose and destroyed all the seed royal but was not Joash left there too. Abiathar was left as it is written and one of the sons of Ahimelech the son of Ahidab named Abiathar escaped Rab Judah said in Rab's name had not Abiathar been left of Ahimelech the son of Ahidab not the slightest remnant would have remained of David seed Rab Judah said in Rab's name the wicked Sennacherib advanced against them with a force consisting of 45,000 princes each enthroned in a golden chariot and accompanied by his ladies and harlots 80,000 warriors in coat of male and 60,000 swordsmen of the front line the rest cavalrymen a similar host attacked Abraham and a like force will accompany Gog and Magog in the Beretha it was taught the length of his army was 400 parsangs the horses standing neck to neck formed the line 40 parsangs long and the grand total of his army 2,600,000 less one Abbe inquired less one Rebo 10,000 1,100 or one the question stands over a tan taught the first company swam across as it is written he shall overflow and go over the second walked across as it is written he shall reach even to the neck the third cast up the dust of the riverbed with their feet and found no water in the river to drink until it was brought from elsewhere and they drank as it is written I have digged and drunk water but is it not written then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred and fourscore and five thousand and one day arose early in the mornings behold they were all dead corpses are a bad replied these were the army captains are as she said this may be deduced too for it is written therefore shall the Lord send among his fat ones leanness meaning amongst the cream i.e. the leaders of them Rabbana said this may be also deduced for it is written and the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the men of valor and the leaders and the princes in the camp of the king of Assyria so he returned with shamefacedness too his own land and when he entered into the house of his god they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword this proves it wherewith did he the angel smite them or Eliezer said he smote them with his hand as it is written and Israel saw the great hand implying the hand that was destined to exact vengeance of Sennacherib or Joshua said he smote them with his finger as it is written and the magician said unto Pharaoh this is the finger of God implying this is a finger destined to punish Sennacherib or Eliezer the son of our Jose said the holy one blessed be he said to Gabriel is thy sickle sharpened to mow down the Assyrians he replied sovereign of the universe it has been sharpened since the six days of creation as it is written for they fled from the swords from the sharpened sword etc our Simeon B.O. he said it was the time for the ripening of fruits so the holy one blessed be he said to Gabriel when thou goest forth to ripen the fruits attack them as it is Written as he passeth, he shall take you for morning by morning, shall he pass by by day and by night, and it shall be a sheer terror to understand the report. Our Papa said, Thus people say in passing, Reveal thyself to thine enemy. Others say, He Gabriel breathed into their nostrils, and they died as it is written, and he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. Our Jeremiah B. Abba said, He smote his hands at them, and they died as it is written, I will also smite mine hands together, and I will cause my fury to rest. Our Isaac the Smith said, He unsealed their ears for them, so that they heard the hey oaths and praises to God, and they died as it is written, at thine exaltation. The people were scattered, now how many were left of them? S. C. The Assyrians host Rab said, Ten as it is written, and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few that a child may write them. What figure can a child write? Ten Samuel said, Nine were left as it is written, yet cleaning grapes shall be left in it as it. Shaking of an olive tree, two and three berries in the top of the uppermost bough, four and five in the utmost fruitful branches thereof are Joshua B. Levi said, fourteen as it is written, two, three, four, five are Yohanan said, five is Sennacherib and his two sons Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuzaradan that Nebuzaradan survived is a tradition Nebuchadnezzar as it is written, and the form of the fourth is like an angel of God. Had he not seen an angel, how did he know his appearance? Sennacherib and his two sons as it is written, and it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch's God that a like and Sharezer his son smote him with the sword. Arabab said, were not the following verse written, it would have been impossible to conceive of it. Is in the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by the riverside by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall consume the beard. The Holy One blessed be he went and appeared before. Him Sennacherib as an old man and said to him when thou goest to the kings of the east and the west whose sons thou didst lead to battle and cause their death what wilt thou say to them he replied I too entertain that fear what then shall I do ask ego he replied Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin A and disguise thyself how shall I disguise myself bring me a razor and I myself will shave thee he answered whence shall I procure it enter that house and take it he rejoined so he went and found it there. But the ministering angels appeared to him in the shape of men grinding palm kernels give me the razor said he grind a grey of palm kernels they replied and we will give it thee so he ground a grey of palm kernels and they gave him the razor by the time he returned it had become dark go and bring some fire he ordered so he went and brought fire whilst he was blowing it into a blaze it caught hold of his beard whereupon he shaved off the hair of his head together with his beard the the scholar said that is what is meant by the phrase and it shall also consume the beard our papa said thus men say if thou art singeing the hair of an Aramean and he is pleased there with set light to his beard so wilt thou not suffer his mockery he then went away and found the plank of Noah's ark they said he must be the great god who saved Noah from the flood if I go to battle and am successful I will sacrifice my two sons to thee he died but his sons heard this so they killed him as it is written and it came to pass as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch his god that Adramelech and Sharezer his son smote him with the sword etc and he fought against them he and his servants by night Lila and smote them or Yohan and said the angel who was appointed to aid Abraham was named Lila night as it is written let the day perish wherein I was born and the Lila which said there is a man child conceived our Isaac the smith said he the angel set into motion the activities of the night is the stars on his behalf as it is written they fought from heaven the stars in their courses fought against the Sarah Reshlech said the smith's interpretation is better than the son of the smiths and he pursued them unto Dan or Yohan and said as soon as that righteous man came unto Dan his strength failed him for he prophetically saw his descendants who would practice idolatry in Dan as it is written and he set the one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan that wicked man. Nebuchadnezzar too did not prevail until he reached Dan as it is written the snorting of his horses was heard from Dan Arzara said O our Judah be but there is sent a message from Nisibah saying observe the respect due to a scholar who has forgotten his learning through a misfortune e.g. illness and be careful to cut the jugular veins in accordance with our Judah's ruling and be heedful of the honor due to the children of the ignorant for from them proceed at the Torah yet such a thing as this is made known to them, his righteous art, thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk to thee of thy judgments, wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper, wherefore are all the happy that deal very treacherously, thou hast planted them, yet they have taken root, they grow, yet they bring forth fruit, what was he answered, if thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with the horses, and if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest stay? Wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan, this may be compared to a man who boasted, I can run three parts in front of
Post 10 hours as it is written, behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which is gone down in the sundial of Ahas 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down there. Upon him, Radash Baladon inquired of them his courtiers, What is this? They replied, Hezekiah has sickened and recovered. There is such a great man, exclaimed he, and shall I not send him a greeting right thus to him? Peace to King Hezekiah, peace to the city of Jerusalem, and peace to the great God. Now Nebuchadnezzar was Baladon's scribe, but just then he was not present when he came. He asked them, How did he write? And they told him, We wrote thus, and thus he called him the great God, said he, yet you mentioned him last, thus said he should yet have written, Peace to the great God, peace to the city of Jerusalem, and peace to King Hezekiah. Let the reader of the letter said they to him, Become the messenger. So he ran after him, but when he had taken four steps, Gabriel came and Made him halt our Yohanan observed had not Gabriel come and stopped him nothing could have saved the enemies of Israel why was he called Merodach dash Baladon the son of Baladon it is told Baladon was a king whose face turned into that of a dog so that his son sat upon his throne instead in his documents he wrote his own name and the name of his father king Baladon Ayimur dash Baladon this is the meaning of the verse a son Hanureth his father and a servant his master now his son Hanureth his father refers to what has just been said and a servant his master as it is written now in the fifth month in the tenth day of the month which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came Nebuchadnezzar captain of the guard and stood before the king of Babylon in Jerusalem and burned the house of the Lord and the king's house Talmud Mos and Hedron, but had Nebuchadnezzar gone up to Jerusalem surely it is written they carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Ribble and R. Abou said that this was Antioch Arhista and Arisaq Abu Dimi replied as follows one answered his Nebuchadnezzar's portrait was engraved on his Nebuchadnezzar's chariot and the other explained he stood in such awe before him that it is as though he were in his presence Rabbah said Nebuchadnezzar sent Nebuchadnezzar 300 mules laden with iron axes that could break iron but they were all shattered on a single gate of Jerusalem for it is written and now they attack its gate Latour. Together with axes and hammers they smite he desired to return but said I am afraid lest I meet the same fate which befell Sennacherib. Arab thereupon a voice cried out thou leaper son of a leaper leave Nebuchadnezzar for the time has come for the sanctuary to be destroyed and the temple burnt he had but one axe left so he went and smote the gate with the head thereof and it opened as it is written a man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees he hewed down the Jews as he Proceeded until he reached the temple upon his setting fire there to it sought to rise up but was trodden down from heaven as it is written the Lord hath trodden down the virgin daughter of Judah the temple as in a wine press his mind was now elated with his triumph when a voice came forth from heaven saying to him thou hast slain a dead people thou hast burned a temple already burned thou hast ground flour already ground as it is written take the millstones and grind meal uncover thy locks. Make bare the lake uncover the thigh pass over the rivers not wheat but meal is said after that he saw the blood of Zechariah seething what is this cried he it is the blood of sacrifices which has been spilled they answered and said he bring some animal blood and I will compare them to see whether they are alike so he slaughtered animals and compared them but they were dissimilar disclose the secret to me or if not I will tear your flesh with iron combs he threatened they replied this is the blood of a priest and a prophet who foretold the destruction of Jerusalem to the Israelites and they killed him I said he will appease him so he brought the scholars and slew them over him yet it did not cease to boil he brought school children and slew them over him still it did not rest he brought the young priests and slew them over him and still it did not rest until he had slain 94,000 and still it did not rest whereupon he approached him and cried out Zechariah. Zechariah I have destroyed the flower of them dost thou desire me to massacre them all straightway it rested thoughts of repentance came into his mind if they who killed one person only have been so severely punished what will be my fate so he fled sent his testament to his house and became a proselyte our rabbis taught Naaman was a resident alien Nebuchadnezzar was a righteous proselyte the descendants of Caesar studied Torah in Jerusalem the descendants of Sennacherib taught Torah to the Multitude who were these Shimei and Aptalian, the descendants of Haman, studied Torah in Bnei Barak, the Holy One, blessed be he purposed to lead the descendants of that wicked man to under the wings of the Shechinah, but the ministering angels protested before him, Sovereign of the universe, shalt thou bring him under the wings of the Shechinah, who laid thy house in ruins and burnt thy temple, that is meant by the verse, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed, Ola said this refers to Nebuchadnezzar, our Samuel, Binaman, he said by this are meant the rivers of Babylon, which run along the palm trees of Babylonia, Ola said Ammon and Moab were evil neighbors of Jerusalem, as soon as they heard the prophets predicting the destruction of Jerusalem, they sent to Nebuchadnezzar, leave thy country and come hither, he replied, I am afraid lest I be treated as my predecessors thereupon, they sent word for the man is not at home, and man refers only to the Holy One, blessed be he as it is written. The Lord is a man of war, he sent answer, but he may be near to which they returned. He hath gone a long journey, he again sent word they have among them righteous men who may pray to him and bring him back. They answered, He hath taken a bag of money with him, and money refers to none but the righteous, as it is written. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and an half homer of barley. He sent back the wicked may repent, pray for mercy, and bring him back. They answered, He hath already fixed a time for them, as it is written, and will come home at the day appointed. Hakes and Kes can only refer to time, as it is written in the time appointed. Be on our solemn feast day, he then sent word, It is winter, and I cannot come on account of the approaching snows and rains. They replied, Come by way of the mountains, which will protect you, as it is written, Send ye a messenger to the ruler of the earth, i.e., Nebuchadnezzar, that he may come by way of the Rocks i.e. mountains to the wilderness unto the mount of the daughter of Zion he sent back if I come I have no place for encamping they replied their graveyards are better than thy palaces as it is written at that time saith the Lord they shall bring out the bones of the king of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked Arnaman said to our Isaac have you heard when Barnabal will come who is Barnabal he asked Messiah he answered do you call Messiah Barnabal even so he rejoined as it is written in that day I will raise up Talmud Mos and Hedron of the tabernacle of David Hanof left that is fallen he replied thus hath our Yohanan said in the generation when the son of David i.e. Messiah will come scholars will be few in number and as for the rest their eyes will fail through sorrow and grief multitudes of trouble and evil decrees will be promulgated anew each new evil coming with haste before the other has ended our rabbis taught in the seven year cycle at the end of which the son of David will come in the first year this verse will be fulfilled and I will cause it to rain upon one city and cause it not to rain upon another city in the second the arrows of hunger will be sent forth in the third a great famine in the course of which men women and children pious men and saints will die and the Torah will be forgotten by its students in the fourth partial plenty in the fifth great plenty when men will eat drink and rejoice and the Torah will return to its disciples in the sixth heavenly sounds in the seventh wars and at the conclusion of the septenate the son of David will come our Joseph demurred but so many septenates have passed yet has he not come have they retorted were there then Heavenly sounds in the sixth and wars in the seventh. Moreover, have they seen the troubles been in this order wherewith thine enemies have reproached the Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed? It has been taught our Judah said in the generation when the son of David comes, the house of assembly will be for harlots, Galilee and ruins, Gabon lie desolate. The border inhabitants wander about from city to city, receiving no hospitality. The wisdom of scribes in this our God, fearing men despise people, be dog faced and truth entirely lacking, as it is written. Yet truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil make himself a prey. What is meant by a truth faileth? Any adoreth the scholars of the school of Rab said this teaches that it will split up into separate groups and depart. What is the meaning of any that departeth from evil make himself a prey? Mishdol the school of Arshila said he who departs from evil will be dubbed a fool by his fellow men. Rabbi said, I
of David will not come until the whole world is converted to the belief of the heretics. Rabbi said what verse proves this it is all turned white. He is clean. Our rabbis taught for the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself of his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. The son of David will not come until denunciators are in abundance. Another interpretation of their power is gone until scholars are few. Another interpretation until the last. Heretai has gone from the purse yet another interpretation until the redemption is despaired of for it is written there is none shut up or left as were it possible to say so Israel had neither supporter nor helper even as Arzara who whenever he chanced upon scholars engaged thereon i.e. in calculating the time of the Messiah's coming would say to them I beg of you do not postpone it for it has been taught three come unawares Messiah found article and a scorpion arcana said six thousand years shall the world exist and one thousand the seventh it shall be desolate as it is written and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day Abbe said it will be desolate two thousand as it is said after two days will he revive us in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight it has been taught in accordance with arcana just as the seventh year is one year of release in seven so is the world one thousand years out of seven shall be fellow as it is written and it Lord alone shall be exalted in that day and it is further said a psalm and song for the Sabbath day meaning the day that is altogether Sabbath and it is also said for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past the Tanah de Belia who teaches the world is to exist six thousand years in the first two thousand there was desolation two thousand years the Torah flourished and the next two thousand years is the Messianic era Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be but through our many. Iniquities all these years have been lost Elijah said to Rab Judah the brother of Arsali the pious the world shall exist not less than eighty five jubilees and in the last jubilee the son of David will come he asked him at the beginning or at the end he replied I do not know shall this period be completed or not I do not know he answered Arash he said he spoke thus to him before that do not expect him afterwards thou mayest await him Arhin and be Talafa sent word to our Joseph I once met a Man who possessed a scroll written in Hebrew and Assyrian characters, I said to him, Whence has this come to thee? He replied, I hired myself as a mercenary in the Roman army and found it amongst the Roman archives, and it is stated that 4,230 1 years after the creation, the world will be orphaned as to the years following. Some of them will be spent in the war of the great sea monsters, and some in the war of Gog and Magog, and the remaining period will be the Messianic era. Whilst the Holy One, blessed be he, will renew his world only after 7,000 years. Our Abba, the son of Rabbah, said the statement was after 5,000 years. It has been taught, our Nathan said this verse pierces and descends to the very abyss, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though he tarry, wait for him, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, not as our masters who interpreted the verse until a time and times ended. Dividing of time, nor as our Simlay who expounded, thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them tears to drink a third time, nor as our Akiba who expounded, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth. But the first dynasty, S.C., the Hasmonean, shall last seventy years, the second, the Herodian, fifty two, and the reign of Barcos of two and a half years, what is meant by, but at the end it shall speak, we have and not lie, our Samuel be Naman, he said in the name of our Jonathan, blessed be the bones of those who calculate the end, for they would say, since the predetermined time has arrived, and yet he has not come, he will never come, but even so, wait for him as it is written, though he tarry, wait for him, should you say, we look forward to his coming, but he does not, therefore, scripture saith, and therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you, but since we look forward to it, and he does likewise what delays is coming the attribute of justice delays it but since the attribute of justice delays it why do we await it to be rewarded for hoping as it is written blessed are all they that wait for him have they said the world must contain not less than 36 righteous men in each generation who are vouchsafed the sight of the Sheshanah's countenance for it is written blessed are all they that wait low for him the numerical value of low is 36 but that is not so for did not Rabbah say the row of righteous men immediately before the Holy One blessed be he consists of 18,000 for it is written it shall be 18,000 round about that is no difficulty the former number 36 refers to those who see him through a bright speculum the latter to those who contemplate him through a dim one but are there as many did not Hezekiah say in the name of our Jeremiah on the authority of our Simeon Bioh I have seen the sons of heaven and they are but few if there are a thousand I and my son are included if a hundred I and my son are included and if only two they are myself and my son there is no difficulty the former number 36 refers to those who enter within the barrier to contemplate the Shechinah with permission the latter uncertain number to those who may enter without permission Rab said all the predestined dates for redemption have passed and the matter now depends only on repentance and good deeds but Samuel maintained it is sufficient for a mourner to keep his period of mourning this matter is disputed by Tanaymar Elizer said if Israel repent they will be redeemed if not they will not be redeemed our Joshua said to him if they do not repent will they not be redeemed but the Holy One blessed be he will set up a king over them whose decrees shall be as cruel as Haman's whereby Israel shall engage in repentance and he will thus bring them back to the right path another buried the taught our Elizer. Said if Israel repent they will be redeemed as it is written return ye backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings our Joshua said to him but is it not written ye have sold yourselves for naught and ye shall be redeemed without money ye have sold yourselves for naught for idolatry and ye shall be redeemed without money without repentance and good deeds our Eliza retorted to our Joshua but is it not written return unto me and I will return unto you our Joshua rejoined but is it not written for I am master over you and I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion our Eliza replied but it is written in returning and rest shall ye be saved our Joshua replied but is it not written thus saith the Lord the Redeemer of Israel and his holy one to him whom man despiseth to him whom the nations abhorreth to a servant of rulers Talmud Ma Sanhedrin a king shall see and arise princes also shall worship our Eliza countered but is it not written if Thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, or Joshua answered, but it is elsewhere written, and I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swore by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times and a half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished at this. Our Eliza remained silent. Our Abba also said there can be no more manifest sign of redemption than this is what is said, but ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. Our Eliezer said, and this too, as it is written, for before these days there was no hire for man nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. What is meant by neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of it. Affliction Rab said even for scholars who are promised peace as it is written great peace have they which love thy law there shall be no peace on account of the affliction Samuel said until all prices are equal our hand and said the son of David will not come until a fish is sought for an invalid and cannot be procured as it is written then will I make their waters deep and cause their rivers to run like oil whilst it is written in that day will I cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud. Fourth our hand of Behan and said the son of David will not come until even the pettiest kingdom ceases to have power over Israel as it is written he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches and this is followed by in that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people that is scattered and peeled Zeir I said in our hand name the son of David will not come until there are no conceited men in Israel as it is written for then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride which is followed by I will also leave in the midst of the afflicted and poor people and they shall take refuge in the name of the Lord our assembly said in the name of our Eliezer son of our Simeon the son of David will not come until all judges and officers are gone from Israel as it is written and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all that in and I will restore thy judges as at first. Well, I said Jerusalem shall be redeemed only by righteousness as it is written Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness our Papa said when the haughty cease to exist in Israel the Magi shall c
Will I do it? Our Alexandria said, Our Joshua B. Levi pointed out a contradiction. It is written in its time, Will the Messiah come whilst it is also written? I, the Lord, will hasten it. If they are worthy, I will hasten it. If not, he will come at the due time. Our Alexandria said, Our Joshua opposed two verses. It is written, And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, whilst elsewhere it is written, Behold, the King cometh unto the lowly and riding upon an ass. If they are meritorious, he will come with the clouds of heaven. If not lowly and riding upon an ass, King Shubra, I said to Samuel, You maintain that the Messiah will come upon an ass. I will rather send him a white horse of mine. He replied, Have you a hundred huge teeth? Our Joshua B. Levi met Elijah standing by the entrance of our Simeon. Behold, whom he asked him, Have I a portion in the world to come? He replied, If this master desires it, our Joshua B. Levi said, I saw two, but heard the voice of a third. He then asked. And when will the Messiah come go and ask him himself was his reply where is he sitting at the entrance and by what sign may I recognize him he is sitting among the poor lepers all of them untie them all at once and rebandage them together whereas he unties and rebandages each separately before treating the next thinking should I be wanted it being time for my appearance as the Messiah I must not be delayed through having to bandage a number of sores so he went to him and greeted him. Saying peace upon thee master and teacher peace upon thee O son of Levi he replied when wilt thou come master asked he today was his answer on his returning to Elijah the latter inquired what did he say to thee peace upon thee O son of Levi he answered thereupon he Elijah observed he thereby assured thee and thy father of a portion in the world to come he spoke falsely to me he rejoined stating that he would come today but has not he Elijah answered him this is what he said to thee do. Day if ye will hear his voice the disciples of our Jose Bikisma asked him when will the Messiah come he answered I fear lest ye demand a sign of me that my answer is correct they assured him we will demand no sign of you so he answered them when this gate falls down is rebuilt falls again and is again rebuilt and then falls a third time before it can be rebuilt the son of David will come they said to him master give us a sign he protested did ye not assure me that ye would not demand a sign. They replied even so we desire one he said to them if so let the waters of the grotto of Panias turn into blood and they turned into blood when he lay dying he said to them place my coffin deep in the earth Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be for there is not one palm tree in Babylon to which a Persian horse will not be tethered nor one coffin in Palestine out of which a Median horse will not eat straw said the son of David will not come until the Roman power enfolds Israel for nine months is it? Is written therefore will he give them up until the time that she which traveleth hath brought forth and the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Ola said let him the Messiah come but let me not see him. Rabbi said likewise let him come but let me not see him. Or Joseph said let him come and may I be worthy of sitting in the shadow of his ass's saddle. Abbe inquired of Rabbi what is your reason for not wishing to see him shall we say because of the birth pangs. Preceding the advent of the Messiah but it has been taught our Eliezer's disciples asked him what must a man do to be spared the pangs of the Messiah he answered let him engage in study and benevolence and you master do both he replied I fear lest sin cause it in accordance with the teaching of our Jacob B.E.D. who opposed two verses visit is written and behold I am with thee and will guard thee in all places whither thou goest but it is written and Jacob was greatly afraid and Distressed he was afraid that sin might cause the nullification of God's promise even as it was taught till that people pass over O Lord this refers to the first entry into Palestine till that people pass over which thou hast purchased this refers to their second entry hence you may reason the Israelites were as worthy of a miracle being wrought for them at the second entry as at the first but that sin caused it not to happen our Yohanan said likewise let him come and let me not see him rush. Lakish said to him why so shall we say because it is written as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him but come and I will show you it's like even in this world when one goes out into the field and meets a bailiff it is as though he had met a lion when he enters the town and is accosted by a tax collector it is as though he had met a bear on entering his house and finding his sons and daughters in the throes. Of hunger it is as though he were bitten by a serpent, but his unwillingness to see the Messiah is because it is written, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child, wherefore do I see every man jeeper with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. What is meant by wherefore do I see every jeeper? Rabbi Isaac said in Rab's name it refers to him to whom all Gebera's strength belongs, and what is the meaning of and all faces are turned into paleness. Our Yohanan said this refers to God's heavenly family, i.e. the angels and his earthly family, i.e. Israel. When God says these the Gentiles are my handiwork, and so are these the Jews, how shall I destroy the former on account of the latter? Our Papa said thus men say when the ox runs and falls, the horse is put into his stall. Our said in Rab's name the Jews are destined to eat their fill in the days of the Messiah. Our Joseph demurred, is this not obvious? Who else then should eat? Hilak and Bilak this was said in opposition to our Hillel who maintained that there will be no Messiah for Israel since they have already enjoyed him during the reign of Hezekiah Rab said the world was created only on David's account Samuel said on Moses' account our Yohanan said for the sake of the Messiah what is his the Messiah's name the school of our Sheila said his name is Shiloh for it is written until Shiloh come the school of our Yanai said his name is Yenin for it is written his name shall endure for every year the son was his name is Yenin the school of our Hanana maintained his name is Hanana as it is written where I will not give you Hanana others say his name is Menahem the son of Hezekiah for it is written because Menahem the comforter that would relieve my soul is far the rabbi said his name is the leper scholar as it is written surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him a leper smitten of God and afflicted our nom and said if he the Messiah is of those living today it might be one like myself as it is written and their nobles shall be of themselves and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. Rab said if he is of the living it would be our holy master if of the dead it would have been Daniel the most desirable man. Rab Judah said in Rab's name the holy one blessed be he will raise up another David for us as it is written but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up. Unto them not I raised up but I will raise up is said our Papa said to Abbe but it is written and my servant David shall be their prince Nasi for every Egean emperor and a viceroy are expounded what is meant by woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord to what end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness and not like this may be compared to a cock and a bat who were hopefully waiting for the light i.e. Don the cock said to the bat I look forward to the light because I have sight. But of what use is the light to the Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin A and Azamin said to Arabad when will the Messiah come he replied when darkness covers those people you curse me he exclaimed he retorted it is but a verse for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall shine upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee it has been taught our Eliezer said the days of the Messiah will last forty years as it is written forty years long shall I take hold of the generation our Eliezer B. Ezra said seventy years as it is written and it shall come to pass in that day the tire shall be forgotten seventy years according to the days of one king now who is the one uniquely distinguished king the Messiah of course Rabbi said three generations for it is written they shall fear thee with the sun and before the moon they shall fear thee a generation and generations are Hillel said there shall be no Messiah for Israel because they have already Enjoyed him in the days of Hezekiah our Joseph said may God forgive him for saying so now when did Hezekiah flourish during the first temple yet Zechariah prophesying in the days of the second proclaimed rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass and other buried the taught our Eliezer said the days of the Messiah will be forty years here it is written and he afflicted thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna whilst elsewhere it is written make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us our Joseph said four hundred years it is here written and they shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years whilst elsewhere it is written make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us Rabbi said three hundred and sixty five years even as the days of the solar year as it is written for. The day of vengeance is in
Wait for him now he differs from Arabah who said the place occupied by repentant sinners cannot be attained even by the completely righteous for it is written peace peace to him that is far off and to him that is near thus first he that is far off and he that is near now what is meant by far off originally far off and what is meant by near originally near and still so but are Yohanan interprets him that is far off that is and has been far from sin him that is near that was near to sin but is now far off our high Abba also said in our Yohanan's name all the prophets prophesy only in respect of him who marries his daughter to a scholar or engages in business on behalf of a scholar or benefits a scholar with his possessions but as for scholars themselves the eye hath not seen O God beside thee etc what does the eye hath not seen refer to our Joshua B. Levi said to the one that has been kept maturing with his grapes since the six days of creation Rush said to Eden. Which no eye has ever seen, and should you demur, where then did Adam live in the garden, and should you object the garden and Eden are one? Therefore, Scripture teaches, and a river issued from Eden to water the garden, and he who maintains that the Torah was not divinely revealed, our rabbis taught, because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. This refers to him who maintains that the Torah is not from heaven. Another rendering, because he hath despised the word of the Lord, refers to an epic rose. Another rendering, because he hath despised the word of the Lord, refers to one who gives an interpretation of the Torah not according to the halacha and hath broken his commandment. This means one who abolishes the covenant of flesh, that soul shall utterly be cut off. Hitra, tikra, hitra, to be cut off implies in this world, tikra, it shall be cut off in the next. Hence, our Eliza of Modi, I am taught he who defiles it. Sacred food despises the festivals, abolishes the covenant of our father Abraham, gives an interpretation of the Torah not according to the Halacha, and publicly shames his neighbor even if he hath learning and good deeds to his credit, hath no portion in the future world. Another buried the top because he hath despised the word of the Lord. This refers to him who maintains that the Torah is not from heaven, and even if he asserts that the whole Torah is from heaven, excepting a particular verse, which he maintains was not uttered by God but by Moses himself, he is included in because he hath despised the word of the Lord, and even if he admits that the whole Torah is from heaven, excepting a single point of particular and major deduction or a certain desertion, while he is still included in because he hath despised the word of the Lord, it has been taught our Meir used to say he who studies the Torah but does not teach it is alluded to, and he hath despised the word of the Lord. Our Nathan said. It refers to whoever pays no heed to the mission. Our Nehri said, Whosoever can engage in the study of the Torah but fails to do so, our Ishmael said, This refers to heathens. How is this implied? Even as the school of Ishmael taught, because he hath despised the word of the Lord, this applies to one who despises the word spoken to Moses at Sinai. Because I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Our Joshua B. Karha said, Whosoever studies the Torah and does not revise it is likened unto one who sows without reaping. Our Joshua said, He who studies the Torah and then forgets it is like a woman who bears a child and buries it. Our Akiba said, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be chanted every day, chanted every day. Said, Our Isaac, be a good What verse supports this? He that labureth, labureth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. He toils in one place, the Torah toils for him. In another, our Eliezer said, Every man is born for toil, as it is written, Yet man is born for toil. Now I do not. No whether for toil by mouth or by hand, but when it is said for his mouth craveth it of him, I may deduce that toil by mouth is meant, yet I still do not know whether for toil in the Torah or in secular conversation, but when it is said this book of the Torah shall not depart out of thy mouth, I conclude that one was created to labor in the Torah, and this coincides with Rabba's dictum, viz all human bodies are carriers, happy are they who are worthy of being receptacles of the Torah, who so committate adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, Rush Lakish said this alludes to one who studies the Torah at irregular intervals, as it is written, for it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, our rabbis taught, but the soul that doth thought presumptuously, this refers to Manasseh the son of Hezekiah, who examined biblical narratives to prove them worthless, thus he jeered, had Moses nothing to write, but and Lot's sister was Tim and Timna was concubine to Eliphaz and Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found Mandrix in the field thereupon a heavenly voice cried out thou sittest and speakest against thy brother thou slanderest thine own mother son these things hast thou done and I kept silence thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes and of him it is explicitly stated in the post mosaic scriptures woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope what is meant by and sin as it were with a cart rope R.C. said temptation at first is like a spider's thread but eventually like a cart rope a propos what is the purpose of writing and Lot's sister was Timna Timna was a royal princess as it is written a love duke Lot and a love duke Timna and by a love an uncrowned ruler is meant desiring to become a proselyte she went to Abraham Isaac and Jacob but they did not accept her. So she went and became a concubine to Eliphaz the son of Esau, saying, I had rather be a servant to this people than a mistress of another nation from her Amalek was descended who afflicted Israel. Why so? Because they should not have repulsed her. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found Mandrix in the field. Rabbi Isaac said in Rab's name, This shoes that righteous men do not take what is not theirs and found Dutty Mandrix in the field. What are Dutty Rab said Mandrix? Levi said, Violets are Jonathan said, Mandrix flowers are Alexandria said, He who studies the Torah for its own sake makes peace in the upper family and the lower family men as it is written, or let him take hold of my strength, i.e., the Torah, that he may make peace with me and he shall make peace with me. Rab said, It is as though he built the heavenly and the earthly temples as it is written, and I have put my words in thy mouth and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand that I may plant it. Heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people, are Yohanan said, He also shields the whole world from the consequences of its sins, for it is written, and I have covered a product to thee in the shadow of mine hand. Levi said, He also hastens the redemption, as it is written, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people, Rush Lakish said, He who teaches Torah to his neighbor's son is regarded by Scripture as though he had fashioned him, as it is written, and the souls which they had made inherent, our Eliezer said, as though he himself had created the words of the Torah, as it is written, Keep therefore the words of this covenant and make them. Rabbah said, As though he had made himself, for it is written, and make them render not them but yourselves, are about said, He who causes his neighbor to fulfill a precept is regarded by Scripture as though he had done it himself, for it is written, The Lord said unto Moses, Take thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, did Moses. Then smited Aaron smote it, but he who causes his neighbor to fulfill a precept is regarded by scripture as though he had done it himself. And Epicoros Rab and Arhanna both taught that this means one who insults a scholar are Yohanan and our Joshua believe I maintain that it is one who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar. Now on the view that he who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar is an Epicoros, it is well for then he who insults a scholar himself will be included in the expression he who acts impudently against the Torah, but on the view that he who insults a scholar himself is an Epicoros who is meant by she who acts impudently against the Torah, e.g. Manasseh be Hezekiah others taught this dispute with reference to the second clause, he who acts impudently against the Torah Rab and Arhanna both maintain that this means one who insults a scholar himself, whilst our Yohanan and our Joshua believe I held that it is one who insults his neighbor in the presence of a Scholar now on the view that he who insults a scholar himself is denoted by the expression he who acts impudently against the Torah it is well for then he who insults his neighbor in the scholar's presence is dubbed an epicoros but on the view that he who insults his neighbor in the presence of a scholar is considered to have acted impudently against the Torah who then is meant by epicoros are Joseph said e.g. those who give up what use are the rabbis to us for their own benefit they read the scripture and for their own benefit they study post scriptural learning particularly the mission Abbe said to him but this too denotes acting impudently against the Torah as it is written thus saith the Lord but for my covenant study day and night I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth are nom and B. Isaac said it is also deduced from the verse that I will spare all the place
shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine whereupon a certain old man said to him well spoken and are you had and taught likewise are jeremiah said to our zara such an attitude savors of the reverence he replied but he merely supported you but if you have heard of something which may be dubbed the reverend it is this are you had and was sitting and teaching the holy one Blessed be he will bring jewels and precious stones each thirty cubits long and thirty cubits high and make an engraving in them ten by twenty cubits and set them up as the gates of Jerusalem for it is written and I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles a certain disciple derided him saying we do not find a jewel even as large as a dove's egg yet such huge ones are to exist some time later he took a sea journey and saw the ministering angels cutting precious stones and pearls he said unto them for what are these they replied the holy one blessed be he will set them up as the gates of Jerusalem on his return he found our Johanan sitting and teaching he said to him expound O master and it is indeed fitting for you to expound for even as you did say so did I myself see wretch he exclaimed had you not seen you would not have believed you deride the words of the sages he set his eyes upon him and he turned into a heap of bones and objection was raised and I will Make you go comb of the youth upright armor said it means with the height of two hundred cubits twice the height of Adam our Judah said a hundred cubits corresponding to the length of the temple and its walls as it is written that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth that our daughters may be as cornerstones fashioned after the similitude of the temple our Yohanan referred only to the ventilation windows what is meant by in the leaf thereof leaf for medicine our Isaac be a good evening. And our histot for therein one maintained to unlock the upper mouth the other to unseal the lower mouth it has been said likewise Hezekiah said to free the mouth of the dumb barkeeper said to open the mouth of barren women our Yohanan said literally for a medicine what does this mean our Samuel be Namani said to give a comely countenance to scholars our Judah son of our Simeon expounded he who emaciates his face for the sake of the study of the Torah in this world the Holy One blessed be he will. Make his luster shine in the next as it is written his countenance shall be as a Lebanon excellent as the cedars are ten hum be our handle as said he who starves himself for the sake of the study of the Torah in this world the Holy One blessed be he will fully satisfy him in the next as it is written they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures when our Dini came he said the Holy One blessed be he will give every righteous man his full hand of reward for it is written blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits even the God of our salvation seal have but is it possible to say thus is it not written who have measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span he replied why are you not found familiar with the Agatha for it was said in the west i.e. Palestine in the name of Rabbi Mari the Holy One blessed be he will give to every righteous man three hundred Ten worlds as it is written that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance yesh, and I will fill their treasures now the numerical value of yesh is three hundred ten it has been taught our measure said in the measure which one measure so will there be measured out to him as it is written in measure when it should forth thou will contend with it our Judah said but can we say thus if one gives a handful of charity to a poor man in this world shall the holy one blessed be he give him his handful in the next surely it is written and meted out heaven with the span he replied do you not admit this now consider which measure is greater that of goodness i.e. reward or a punishment Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be surely the measure of reward is greater than that of punishment for with respect to the measure of goodness it is written and he commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat whilst of the measure of punishment it is written and the windows of heaven were opened yet in respect of the measure even of punishment it is written and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh but if one puts his fingers into the fire in this world it is immediately burnt but just as the holy one blessed be he gives the wicked the strength to receive punishment so does he give the righteous the capacity to receive reward our Akiva said also he who reads uncanonical books etc a tanna taught this means the books of the Sadducees our Joseph said it is also forbidden to read the book of Ben Sarabe said to him why so shall we say because there is written therein do not strip the skin of a fish even from its ear lest thou spoil it but roast it all the fish with the skin in the fire and eat there with two twisted loaves now if you object to it in its Literal sense the Torah 2 states thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof whilst in a metaphorical sense this teaches good taste that one should not cohabit unnaturally but if you take exception to the passage a daughter is a vain treasure to her father through anxiety on her account he cannot sleep at night as a minor lest she be seduced in her majority lest she play the harlot as an adult lest she be not married if she marries lest she bear no children if she grows old lest she engage in witchcraft but the rabbis have said the same the world cannot exist without males and females happy is he whose children are males and woe to him whose children are females again if because of the following let not anxiety enter thy heart for it has slain many a person but Solomon said likewise anxiety in the heart of men Yashana make that stupor am I and RC differ in its interpretation one rendered it let him banish it from his mind the other let him relate it to others and if because it contains withhold the multitude from thy house and bring not everyone into thy house but rabbi said the same for it has been taught rabbi said one should never have a multitude of friends in his house for it is written a man that hath many friends bringeth evil upon himself but because there is written therein a thin bearded man is very wise a thick bearded one is a fool he who blows away the froth from off his glass of liquor is not thirsty he who says with what shall i eat my bread take the bread away from him he whose beard is parted will be defeated by none our joseph said yet we may expound to them the good things it contains e.g a good woman is a precious gift who shall be given to the god-fearing man an evil woman is a plague to her husband how shall he mend matters let him banish i.e divorce her from his house so shall he be healed of his plague happy the man whose wife is beautiful the number of his days is doubled divert thine eyes from a charming woman less Thou be caught in her snare, turn not into her husband to drink wine with him, for many have been slain by the countenance of a beautiful woman, and numerous are those slain by her, and many are the blows sustained by itinerant peddlers. Those who seduce to adultery are as a spark that kindles the ember, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Restrain the multitude from entering into thine house, and bring not everyone therein to let there be many to inquire after thy well. Being yet revealed thy secret to but one in a thousand, guard the openings of thy mouth from her who lieth in thy bosom, fret not over tomorrow's trouble, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, and peradventure tomorrow he is no more, thus he shall be found grieving over a world that is not his. All the days of the poor are evil. Bensor is set his nights to the lowest roof is his roof, and on the highest mountain is his vineyard. The rain of other roofs strip onto his whilst the earth of his vineyard is born unto other vineyards. Nemonic Zerah Rabba Meshashia had an Etopia Janay easily suited Yohanan Raham Joshua Mikazar Arzera said in Rab's name what is meant by all the days of the afflicted are evil. This refers to the students of the Talmud, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast. This refers to students of the Mishnah Rabba reverse the interpretation, and this is what our Meshashia said in Rabba's name what is meant by whoso removeth stones shall be. Her therewith this refers to the students of the Mishnah, but he that cleaveth with shall be warmed thereby. This refers to students of the Talmud. Our Hanan said all the days of the afflicted are evil alludes to one who has a bad wife, whilst but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to him who possesses a good wife. Our Janay said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to one who is overfastidious, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to a person who is. Easily suited are Yohanan said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to the compassionate but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to the cruel are Joshua believe I said all the days of the afflicted are evil refers to him Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin who is of a petty nature but he that is of a merry heart hath a continuous feast to a contented mind are Joshua believe I also said all the days of the poor are evil but are there not the Sabbaths and festivals it is as Samuel said this. Change of diet is the first step to indigestion our rabbis taught he who recites a verse of the song of songs and treats it as a secular ear and one who
may be charmed to render them tame and harmless on the Sabbath and an article may be placed over the eye on the Sabbath to protect it. Our Simeon B. Gamaliel said this applies only to articles which may be handled but those which may not be handled are forbidden nor may demons be consulted on the Sabbath. Our Jose said this is forbidden even on weekdays. Our Huna said the Halashat is not as our Jose and even he said it only on account of its danger as in the case of our Isaac B. Joseph who was swallowed. Up in a cedar tree, but a miracle was wrought for him. The cedar splitting and casting him forth. Our rabbis taught the bowels may be oiled and massaged on the Sabbath, providing this is not done as on weekdays. How then shall it be done? Our Hamas son of our Hananah said they must first be oiled and then massaged. Our Yohanan said the oiling and massaging must be done simultaneously. Our rabbis taught it is permitted to consult by a charm the spirits of oil or eggs, but that they give false answers. Incantations are made over oil contained in a vessel, but not in the hand. Therefore, one may anoint with the latter, but not with the former. Our Isaac B. Samuel B. Martha chanced upon a certain and some oil was brought to him in a vessel with which he rubbed himself, whereupon blisters broke out on his face. He then went out to the marketplace and was seen by a woman who observed, I see here the blast of Hamath. Our Abba said to Rabbi B. Mari, it is written, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he left thee, but since he hath brought no disease, what need is there of a cure? He replied, Thus hath our Yohanan said this verse is self explanatory because the whole reads, and he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, thus if thou wilt hearken, I will not bring disease upon thee, but if thou wilt not, I will yet even so I am the Lord that he left thee. Rabbi Barhana said, When our Eliza fell sick, his disciples entered his house to visit him, he said to them, There is a fierce wrath in the world, they broke into tears, but our Akiba laughed, Why dost thou laugh? They inquired of him, Why do ye weep? He retorted, They answered, Shall the scroll of the Torah lie in pain, and we not weep? He replied, For that very reason I rejoice, as long as I saw that my master's wine did not turn sour, nor was his flax smitten, nor his oil putrefied, nor his honey become rancid, I thought, God forbid that he may have received. All his reward in this world leaving nothing for the next but now that I see him lying in pain I rejoice knowing that his reward has been treasured up for him in the next year Elizer said to him Akiba have I neglected anything of the whole Torah he replied thou O master has taught us for there is not a just man upon earth that doth good and sineth not our rabbis taught when our Elizer fell sick four elders went to visit him Bizar Tarfan our Joshua our Eliezer B. Ezra and our Akiba our Tarfan observed thou art more valuable to Israel than rain for rain is precious in this world whereas thou art so for this world and the next our Joshua observed thou art more valuable to Israel than the sun's disc the sun's disc is but for this world whilst my master is for this world and the next our Eliezer B. Ezra observed thou art better to Israel than a father and a mother these are for this world whereas my master is for this world and the next but our Akiba observed suffering is Precious thereupon he the sick man said to them support me that I may hear the words of Akiba my disciple who said suffering is precious Akiba queried he whence dost thou know this he replied I interpreted a verse Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem etc and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord now it is elsewhere written Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin B these are also the proverbs of Solomon which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied out now would Hezekiah king of Judah have taught the Torah to the whole world yet not to his own son Manasseh but all the pains he spent upon him and all the labors he lavished upon him did not bring him back to the right path save suffering alone as it is written and the Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people but they would not hearken unto him wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria which took Manasseh among the thorns and Bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon, and it is further written, and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem unto his kingdom. And Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God, thus thou learnest how precious his suffering. Our rabbis taught three came with a circuitous plea, his Cain he saw, and Manasseh came for it. He's written, and Cain said unto the Lord, Is my sin too great to be forgiven? He pleaded thus before him, Sovereign of the universe, is my sin greater than that of the six hundred thousand Israelites who are destined to sin before thee, yet wilt thou pardon them? He saw for it is written, and he saw said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father Manasseh? He first called upon many deities, and only eventually called upon the God of his fathers, Abbas, said also he who pronounces it. Divine name as it is spelled, etc. It has been taught this holds good only in the country and in the sense of the Samaritan AGA blaspheming three kings and four commoners, etc. Our rabbis taught the name Jeroboam denotes that he debased the nation. Another meaning is that he fomented strife amongst the nation. Another explanation that he caused strife between Israel and their father in heaven. The son of Nebat denotes that he beheld but did not see a tenant taught Nebat Micah and Sheba the son of Bikri are one and the same. He was called Nebat because he beheld but did not see Micah because he was crushed in the building. And what was his real name? Sheba the son of Bikri. Our rabbis taught three beheld but did not see his Nebat Ahitophel and Pharaoh's astrologers. Nebat he saw fire issuing from him. He interpreted it as signifying that he would reign yet that was not so but that Jeroboam would issue from him Ahitophel. He beheld leprosy breaking out in him. He thought that it meant that he would reign but it was not so but referred to Bathsheba his daughter from whom issued Solomon Pharaoh's astrologers even as Arhamah son of Arhanana said what is meant by this is the water of Mary but this is what Pharaoh's astrologers saw but heard in its interpretation they saw that Israel's savior would be smitten through water therefore he Pharaoh ordered every son that is born ye shall cast into the river but they did not know that he was to be smitten i.e. punished on account of the water of Mary but now whence do we know that he Jeroboam will not enter the future world because it is written and this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth to cut it off implies in this world and to destroy it in the next are and said why did Jeroboam merit sovereignty because he reproved Solomon and why was he punished because he reproved him publicly as it is written and this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king Solomon built Millo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father he said thus to him thy father David made breaches in the wall that Israel might come up to Jerusalem on the festivals whilst thou hast closed them in order to exact toll for the benefit of Pharaoh's daughter what is meant by and this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king Arnon and said he took off his phylacteries in front of him Arnon and said the conceit which possessed Jeroboam drove him out of the world as it is written now Jeroboam said in his heart now shall the kingdom return to the house of David if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem then shall the heart of this people turn unto their Lord even unto Rehoboam king of Judah and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah he reasoned thus it is a tradition that none but the kings of the house of Judah may sit in the temple court now when they did. People see Rehoboam sitting and me standing they will say the former is the king and the latter his subject whilst if I sit too I am guilty of treason and they will slay me and follow him straightway wherefore the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem behold thy gods O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt how did he take counsel our Judah said he said a wicked man by the side of the righteous in the council chamber and said to him will ye sign your approval of all that I may do they replied yes I wish to be king he went on and they again said yes will ye execute all my commands he asked again they replied yes even for the worship of idols whereupon the righteous man rejoined God forbid but urge the wicked upon the righteous dost thou really think that a man like Jeroboam would serve idols he only wishes to test us to see whether we will give full acceptance to his orders Talmud Ma Sanhedrin. A and even Ahijah the Shilonite heard and signed for Jehu was a very righteous man as it is written and the Lord said unto Jehu because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart thy children of the fourth generation shall sit upon the throne of Israel yet it is
Rehoboam went to Shechem for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. It had a taught in Arhose's name. It was a place predestined for evil. In Shechem, Dinah was ravaged. In Shechem, his brethren sold Joseph. And in Shechem, the kingdom of the house of David was divided. Now it came to pass at that time that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem. Arhan of said he went out of the destiny of Jerusalem. And the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way and he clad himself with a new garment. And they two were alone in the field. What is meant by with a new garment? Arnam and said as a new garment, just as a new garment has no defect. So was Jeroboam's scholarship without defect. Another explanation: a new garment intimates that they expounded new teaching such as no ear had ever heard before. What is taught by and they two were alone in the field. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, all other scholars were as the herbs of the field before them. Others say that all the reasons of it. Torah were as manifest to them as a field, therefore shalt thou give parting gifts to Morshak, the houses of Ixab shall be allied to the kings of Israel. Our Hanabi Papa said, a heavenly voice cried out and said, He who slew the Philistine and thereby gave you possession of Gath shall ye give parting gifts to his sons, therefore the houses of Ixab shall be allied to the kings of Israel. Our Hanabi Papa said, He who enjoys out of this world without uttering a blessing is as though he robbed. The Holy One blessed be he and the Ken Seth Yisrael, for it is written, Whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression, the same is the companion of a destroyer. Now his father can refer only to the Holy One blessed be he as it is written, Is not he as see God thy father that hath bought thee, whilst his mother can mean nothing but Ken Seth Yisrael, as it is written, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. What is meant by the same is it? Companion of a destroyer, he is the companion of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who destroyed the allegiance of Israel to their father in heaven. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. Are Yohanan said as two sticks which cause each other to rebound? These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel in the wilderness. And as I have the school of Arjan, expounded Moses said before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, it was because of the silver and gold I have which thou didst lavish upon them until they said enough die that they were led to make a god of gold. The parable the lion does not tear and roar out of a basket of straw, but out of a basket of meat. Arashai said until Jeroboam Israel imbibed the sinful disposition from one calf, but from him onwards from two or three calves. Our Isaac said no retribution whatsoever comes upon the world which does not contain a slight fraction of the first calf, i.e., the molten calf in it. Wilderness as it is written, nevertheless in the day when I visit I will visit their sin upon them. Arhanna said after twenty-four generations the doom foretold in this verse was exacted as it is written. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying cause the visitations of the city to draw near even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. After this thing Jeroboam turned not from his evil way. What is meant by after this thing? Arabah said after the Holy One blessed be he had. Seized Jeroboam by his garment and urged him repent and I thou and the son of Jesse i.e. David will walk in the garden of Eden and who shall be at the head inquired he the son of Jesse shall be at the head if so he replied I do not desire it or about used to make a practice of lecturing on the three kings falling sick he undertook not to lecture thereon any more yet no sooner Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be had he recovered than he lectured upon this again they his disciples remonstrated. With him did you not undertake not to lecture on them? He replied, Did they abandon their evil course that I should abandon my habit of lecturing upon them in the college of Arashi? The lecture one day terminated at three kings tomorrow said he we will commence with our colleagues that night Manasseh came and appeared to him in a dream thou hast called us thy colleagues and the colleagues of thy father now from what part of the bread is the peace for reciting the Hamatsi to be taken? I do not know he answered thou hast not learned this he jived yet thou kayest us thy colleagues teach it me he begged and tomorrow I will teach it in thy name at the session he answered from the part that is baked into a crust he then questioned him since thou art so wise why didst thou worship idols he replied wert thou there thou wouldst have caught up the skirt of thy garment and sped after me the next day he observed to the students we will commence with our teachers so referring to the Three kings have the notes that he was an odd brother to heaven and an a father to idolatry and odd to heaven as it is written a brother is born for trouble and a father to idolatry as it is written as a father loveth his children and it came to pass that it were a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat or Yohanan said the light minor transgressions which Ahab committed were equal to the gravest committed by Jeroboam what and does scripture make Jeroboam the exemplar of sin because he was the first to corrupt yet their altars are as heaps in the furrows of the fields or Yohanan said this teaches that there is no furrow in Palestine upon which Ahab did not plant an idol and worship it whence do we know that he will not enter the future world from the verse and I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall him that is shut up and forsaken in Israel shut up implies in this world forsaken in the next or Yohanan said why did Omri merit sovereignty because he added a region to Palestine as it is written and he bought the hill Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver and built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shemer owner of the hill Samaria Aryohan and said why did Ahab merit royalty for twenty two years because he honored the Torah which was given in twenty two letters as it is written and he sent messengers to Ahab king of Israel into the city and said unto him thus Seth ben Hadad thy silver and thy gold is mine thy wives also and thy children even the goodliest are mine yet will I send my servants unto thee tomorrow at this time and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes they shall put in their hand and take it away wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben Hadad tell my lord the king all that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do but this thing I May not do now what is meant by whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, surely the scroll of the Torah, but perhaps this refers to an idol, you cannot think so, because it is written, and all the leaders and all the people said unto him, hearken not unto him, nor consent, but perhaps they were evil elders, is it not written, and the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel were on our Joseph commented, they were evil elders there, and all the people is not stated, whilst here it is written, and all the people, and it is impossible that there were no righteous among them, for it is written, yet I have left one seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him, or Naman said Ahab was equally balanced, since it is written, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at the Ram Gilead, and one said in this manner, and one said in that manner, our Joseph objected, he of whom it is written, but there was none. Like unto Ahab which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord whom Jezebel his wife stirred up whereon it was taught every day she used to weigh out gold shekels for idols yet thou sayest that he was equally balanced but Ahab was generous with his money and because he used to benefit scholars with his wealth half his sins were forgiven and there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said I will persuade him and the Lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and he said thou shalt persuade him and prevail also go forth and do so which spirit is meant are Yohanan said the spirit of Naboth the Jezreelite what is meant by go forth Rubin said go forth from within my barrier as it is written he that telephlies shall not tarry in my sight our papa observed thus men say he who takes his vengeance destroys his own house and Ahab made a grove and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him or Yohanan said this means that he wrote upon the gates of Samaria Ahab denies the God of Israel therefore he has no portion in the God of Israel and he sought Ahaziah and they caught him for he was hid in Samaria our Levi said he was engaged in erasing the divine names from the Torah and substituting the names of idols in their stead Manasseh denotes that he forgot God another explanation Manasseh denotes that he caused Israel to forget their father in heaven and how do we know that he will not enter the future world because it is written Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem and he made a grove as did Ahab king of Israel just as Ahab has no portion in the world to come so has Manasseh neither our Judah said Manasseh had a portion therein for it is written and he prayed unto him and was entreated of
Be he wished to hurl the world back into chaos on account of Jehoiakim, but that he gazed at the rest of his generation and his mind was a peace, the Holy One blessed be he also desired to hurl the world back into chaos because of Zedekiah's generation, but that he gazed at Zedekiah himself and his mind was a peace, but in the case of Zedekiah too it is written and he did that which was evil in the sight of God that denotes that he could have stemmed the evil of others and did not are. Yohanan also said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe what is meant by if a wise man contend with a foolish man whether he rage or laugh there is no rest the Holy One blessed be he said I was wrath with Ahaz and delivered him into the hands of the kings of Damascus whereupon he sacrificed burnt incense to their gods as it is written for he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus which smote him and he said because the gods of the kings of Syria help them therefore will I sacrifice to them that they may help me but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel I smiled upon Amaziah and delivered the kings of Edom into his hands so he brought their gods and prostrate himself before them as it is written now it came to pass that after Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burnt incense unto them our papa commented thus men say we for him who knows not his Fortune laugh for him who knows not his fortune woe to him who knows not the difference between good and bad and all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate our Yohanan said on the authority of our Simeon Biohe it was the place where Halashad are decided upon our papa observed thus men say where the master hangs up his weapons there the mean shepherd hangs up his pitcher mnemonic by the field houses not shall befall our his da said in the name of our Jeremiah's be Abba. What is meant by the verse I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding and lo it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down I went by the field of the slothful this refers to us and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding this denotes Manasseh and lo it was all grown over with thorns to Amon and nettles had covered the face thereof to Jehoiakim and the stone wall. Thereof was broken down this alludes to Zedekiah in whose days the temple was destroyed Arista also said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba four classes will not appear before the presence of the Shechinah the class of scoffers the class of liars the class of hypocrites and the class of slanderers the class of scoffers as it is written he withdrew his hand from the scoffers the class of liars as it is written he that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight the class of hypocrites as it is written for an hypocrite shall not come before him the class of slanderers as it is written for thou art not a god that hath pleasure in wickedness neither shall evil dwell with thee which means thou art righteous and hence there will not be evil in thy boat Arista also said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba what is meant by the verse there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling there shall no evil befall thee the evil impulse shall have no power over thee Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, thou wilt not find thy wife a doubtful nido when thou returnest from a journey. Another interpretation there shall no evil befall thee, thou wilt not be affrighted by nightmares and dread thoughts. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, thou wilt not have a son or a disciple who publicly burns his food. Thus far his father blessed him, beyond this his mother blessed him, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, etc. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. Thus far his mother blessed him, beyond this heaven blessed him, Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, will set him on high, because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him with long life, will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Our Simeon Belakish said what is Meant by the verse and from the wicked their light is withholden and the high arm shall be broken now why is the iron of Rishad I am wicked suspended once a man becomes poor in friends below on earth he becomes poor above in heaven then let the iron not be written at all our Yohanan and our Eliezer differ in their answer one said because of David's honor the other said because of the honor of Nehemiah the son of Hashali our rabbis taught Manasseh interpreted Leviticus in 55 different ways corresponding to the years of his reign Ahab in 85 and Jeroboam in 103 ways it has been taught our Meir said Absalom has no portion in the world to come for it is written and they smote Absalom and slew him they smote him in this world and slew him in the next it has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer said on the authority of our Meir Hazahazia and all the kings of Israel of whom it is written and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord will neither live in the future world nor be judged there moreover Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord here in Babylon it is interpreted as meaning that he slew Isaiah in the West Palestine they said it means that he made an image as heavy as a thousand men and every day it slew all of them with whom does the stick of Rabbi be Barhan agreed as the soul of one righteous man is equal to the whole world with whom does it agree with the author of the view that he killed Isaiah scripture writes and he set the graven image but it is also stated and the groves and the graven images which he had set up are Yohanan said at first he made it with one face but subsequently he made it with four faces that the Sheshanah might see it and be Ratha said it in an upper chamber as it is written and the altars that were on it Top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, etc. Manasseh placed it in the temple as it is written, and he set up a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Amon introduced it into the Holy of Holies as it is said, for the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself. In it now what is meant by for the bed is shorter than that one can stretch himself on it, our Samuel bin Amon, he said in the name of our Jonathan, for this bed is too short that two neighbors may rule therein together, what is the meaning of and the covering narrower, etc. Our Samuel bin Amon, he said when our Jonathan reached this verse, he wept, he of whom it is written, he gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap should a molten image be made a rival to it, Ahaz caused the sacrificial service to. Cease and seal the Torah as it is written, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Manasseh cut out the divine name from the Torah and broke down the altar. Amon burnt the Torah and allowed spider webs to cover the altar through complete disuse. Ahas permitted consanguineous relations. Manasseh violated his sister Amon, his mother, as it is written, for he Amon sinned very much. Our Yohanan and our Eliezer dispute therein. One maintained he burnt the Torah, the other he disannuled his mother. His mother remonstrated with him, Hast thou then any pleasure in the place whence thou didst issue? He replied, Do I do this for any other purpose than to provoke my creator? When Jehoiakim came, he said, My predecessors knew not how to anger him. Do we need him for aught but his light? But we have parving gold which we use for light. Let him take his light, said they, his courtiers to him. But silver and gold are his too, as it is written, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. A host he has long since given them to us, he replied, as it is written, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Rabbi said to Rabbi Bimari, why did they not count Jehoiakim amongst those who have no portion in the world to come, seeing that it is written of him and the remaining words of Jehoiakim and the abomination which he wrought and that which was found upon him, etc. What is meant by that which was found upon him are Yohanan and Arlizer. Differ one maintained that he engraved the name of an idol upon his person and the other held that he engraved the name of heaven thereon as a gesture of contempt. He answered, I have heard no explanation concerning the kings why Jehoiakim was not included, but I have heard one concerning the commoners, thus why did they not include Micah because his bread was available to travelers, as it is written, every traveler turned to the and he shall pass through the sea with affliction. And shall smite the waves in the sea. Our Yohanan observed this refers to Micah's graven image. It has been taught. Our Nathan said from Gareb to Shiloh is a distance of three mils, and the smoke of the altar and that of Micah's image intermingled the ministering angels wished to thrust Micah away. But the Holy One blessed be he said to them, Let him alone, because his bread is available for wayfarers. And it was on this account that the people involved in the matter of the concubine at Jabi were punished for the Holy One blessed
dwelt among the people, it causes God's eyes to be averted from the wicked. This is learned from Micah and made the Sheshanah to rest upon the prophets of Baal from the companion of it of the prophet. For it is written, and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back, and an unwitting offense in connection therewith is accounted as deliberate. For Rab Judah said in Rab's name had but Jonathan given David two loaves of bread for his travels. Not the city of priests would not have been massacred, Dog the Edomite would not have been destroyed, and Saul and his three sons would not have been slain. Now why did they not include Hazar Jeremiah B. Abba said because he was placed between two righteous men, Jotham and Hezekiah. Joseph said because he was abashed before Isaiah as it is written, and said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, and Shear Jashub thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the Highway of the field of the copes. What is the meaning of copes? Some say he hid his face in shame and fled. Others say he dragged the fuller's trough upon his head, reversed to hide his face in shame and fled. And why was Ammon not included because of Josiah's honor? Then Manasseh Hezekiah's son too should not be included because of Hezekiah's honor. A son confers privileges on his father, but a father confers no privilege on a son. For it is written, Neither is there anyone that can deliver. Out of my hand, Abraham cannot deliver Ishmael, and Isaac cannot deliver Esau. Now having arrived at this answer, Ahaz too was omitted because of Hezekiah's honor. And why was Jehoiakim omitted on account of what our high son of Arabia said? For our high son of Arabia said, Upon Jehoiakim's skull was written this, and yet another. Now our parent's grandfather found his skull lying about at the gates of Jerusalem, and upon it was written this, and yet another. So he buried it, but it refused to be buried. I e. it reemerged again, he buried it, and again it would not remain buried thereupon. He said, This must be Jehoiakim's skull, of whom it is written, He shall be buried with the burial of an astron and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Yet reflected he, he was a king, and it is not meet to disgrace him. So he wrapped it up in silk and placed it in a chest on his wife, seeing it, she thought that it must be the skull of his first wife, whom he could not forget, so she fired the oven and burnt it. This is the meaning of the inscription, this and yet another it has been taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said, On account of Hezekiah's boasting, and I have done that which was good in thy sight, he was led to inquire what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, on account of what shall be the sign he even ate at his table, and on account of even eating at his table, he caused his children to go into exile. This supports Hezekiah's dictum, he who invites a even into his house and attends. To him causes his children to go into exile as it is written, and of thy sons that shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. And Hezekiah was glad of them and chewed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment, etc. Rab said what is meant by the house of his precious things, his wife who mixed the drinks for them. Samuel said he shewed them his treasury are. Yohanan said he shewed them weapons which could destroy other weapons. How it the city said solitary Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, why was Israel smitten with it? Because they transgressed the thirty-six injunctions of the Torah which are punished by extinction. Our Yohanan said, Why were they smitten with an alphabetical dirge? Because they violated the Torah which was given by means of the alphabet sit bad solitary Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, the Holy One blessed be he exclaimed. I said Israel then shall dwell in safety alone bad at the fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine also his heavens shall drop down dew but now they shall sit solitary the city that was full of people Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name they used to marry off a young girl to an adult and a minor to a full-grown woman that they might bear many children she is become as a widow Rab Judah said in Rab's name as a widow yet not a widow in fact as a woman whose husband had gone overseas but intense returning to her she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name wherever they went they became princes of their masters our rabbis taught it once happened that two men Jews were taken captive on Mount Carmel and their captor was walking behind them Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be one of them said to the other the camel walking in front of us is blind in one eye and is laden with two barrels one of wine and the other of oil and of it. Two men leading it, one is a Jew and the other a heathen. Their captor said to them, Yes, if neck people, whence do you know this? They replied, Because the camel is eating of the herbs before it, only on the side where it can see, but not on the other where it cannot see. It is laden with two barrels, one of wine and the other of oil, because wine drips and is absorbed into the earth, whilst oil drips and rests on the surface. And of the two men leading it, one is a Jew and the other a heathen, because a heathen obeys the call of nature in the roadway, whilst the Jew turns aside. He hastened after them and found that it was as they had said, so he went and kissed them on the head, brought them into his house, and prepared a great feast for them. He danced with joy before them and exclaimed, Blessed be he who made choice of Abraham's seed and imparted to them of his wisdom, and wherever they go, they become princes to their masters. Then he liberated them and they went home in peace. She weepeth, yes, she. Weepeth in the night why this double weeping Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name once for the first temple and once for the second in the night on account of what happened at night for it is written and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night Rabbi observed in our Yohanan's name it was the night of the ninth of and the Almighty said to Israel ye have wept without cause therefore will I appoint a weeping to you for future generations another interpretation of in the night whoever weeps at night his voice is heard another meaning whoever weeps at night the stars and constellations weep with him another meaning whoever weeps at night he who hears him weeps in sympathy it happened that the child of a neighbor of Argamaliel died and she was weeping for him at night Argamaliel on hearing her wept in sympathy with her until his eyelashes fell out on the morrow his disciples discerned this and removed her from his neighborhood and her Tears are on her cheeks, Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name as a woman who weeps for the husband of her youth, as it is written, lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Her adversaries are the chief, Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, whoever distresses Israel becomes a chief, as it is written, nevertheless there shall be no weariness for her that oppressed her. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time hath he made it glorious by way of the sea beyond Jordan, the circuit of the nations, whereupon Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, whoever oppresses Israel does not weary not to you all yet that pass by. Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, this gives biblical support to the custom of saying not to you all yet that pass by. Our said in Rab's name, they have made me as those who transgress the law, for in the case of Sodom it is written, and the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. Whilst in the case of Jerusalem it is written from above, hath he sent fire into my bones, and it prevaileth against them, for the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of Sodom is there than favoritism in the matter. Rabbi answered in our Yohanan's name, there was an extra measure of punishment in Jerusalem which Sodom was spared for. In the case of Sodom it is written, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy, whereas in the case of Jerusalem it is written, The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their children, the Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me, as one says to his neighbor, This coin has lost its currency, all thine enemies have opened their mouths against thee. Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, Why did he place the PE before the eye because of the spies who spoke with their mouths? What they had not seen with their eyes, they eat my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. Rabbi said in our Yohanan's name, Whoever eats the bread of Israel enjoys the taste of bread. Whoever does not eat the bread of Israel does not enjoy the taste of bread. They call not upon the Lord. Rab said this refers to the judges. Samuel said to teachers of children now who enumerated them. Rashi said the men of the great assembly enumerated them. Rab Judah said in Rab's name they wish to include another S.C. Solomon, but an apparition of his father's likeness came and prostrated itself in supplication before them, which however they disregarded a heavenly fire descended and its flames licked their seats, yet they still disregarded it, whereupon a heavenly voice cried out to them, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before me, men he who gave precedence to
Answer for the prophet said to Israel return and repent your fathers who sinned where are they they replied and your prophets who did not sin where are they as it is written your fathers where are they and the prophets do they live forever he answered them yet your fathers repented and admitted the justice of their punishment as it is written but my words and my statutes which I commanded my servants the prophets did they not take hold of your fathers and they returned and said like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doing so hath he dealt with us Samuel said ten men came and sat down before him as see the prophet said he to them return and repent they answered if a master sells his slave or a husband divorces his wife has one claim upon the other there upon the holy one blessed be he said to the prophet go and say to them thus saith the Lord where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom I have put away or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you behold for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves and for your transgressions is your mother put away this agrees with Rush Lakish who said why does scripture write David my servant Nebuchadnezzar my servant because it was revealed and known to him who spoke and the world was created that Israel would argue thus therefore the holy one blessed be he forestalled them by calling him his servant and when a servant acquires property to whom does it servant belong and to whom the property and that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that yes say we will be as the heathen as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone as I live saith the Lord God surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you or not and said even with such fury let the merciful rage against us but that he redeem us for he doth chastise him to discretion and his God doth teach him Rabbi Barhanna said the prophet urged Israel return and repent they replied we cannot the tempter rules over us he said to them curb your evil desires they replied let his God teach us four commoners his Balaam D-O-E-G Ahitophel and Gehazi Balaam denotes without the people another explanation Balaam denotes that he corrupted the people the son of Beer denotes that he committed bestiality Atan and Top Beer Kishan Rishathim and Laban the Syrian are identical Beer denotes that he committed bestiality Kishan Rishathim that he perpetrated two evils upon Israel one in the days of Jacob and the other in the days of the judges but what was his real name Laban the Syrian scripture writes the son of Beer but also his son was Beer Yohan and said his father Beer was as his son in the matter of prophecy now only Balaam will not enter the future world but other heathens will enter on whose authority is the mission taught on our Joshua for it has been taught our Eliezer said the wicked shall be Turned into hell and all the nations that forget God the wicked shall be turned into hell this refers to transgressors among Israel and all the nations that forget God to transgressors among the heathen this is our Eliezer's view but our Joshua said to him is it stated and those among all the nations surely all the nations that forget God is written but interpret thus the wicked shall be turned into hell and who are they all the nations that forget God now that wicked men Balaam to gave a sign for himself that he would not enter the future world by saying let me die the death of the righteous meaning if I die the death of the righteous i.e. a natural death my last end will be like his but if not i.e. if I die a violent death then behold I go unto my people and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed and taught there was never peace between Midian and Moab the matter may be compared to two dogs in one kernel which were always enraged at each other than a wolf Attacked one whereupon the other said if I do not help him he will kill him today and attack me tomorrow so they both went and killed the wolf our papa observed thus people say the weasel and cat went at peace with each other had a feast on the fat of the luckless and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam but whither had the princes of Midian gone as soon as he said to them lodge here this night and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me the reason does any father hate his son Arnam and said impudence even against heaven is of avail at first it is written thou shalt not go with them yet subsequently it is said rise up and go with them Arshis hate said impudence is sovereignty without a crown for it is written and I am this day weak though anointed king and these men the sons of Zir you be too hard for me or you had and said Balaam limped on one foot as it is written and he walked haltingly Samson was lame in both feet as it is written Dan shall be a serpent by the way an adder in the path that bite the horse's heels Balaam was blind in one eye as it is said and the man whose eye is open he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum for here it is written falling but having his eyes open whilst elsewhere is written and Haman was fallen on the bed whereon Esther was it was stated Marzitra said he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum Mar the son of Robin said he committed bestiality with his ass the view that he practiced enchantment by means of his membrum is as was stated the view that he committed bestiality with his asses because here it is written he bowed he lay down as a lion and as a great lion whilst elsewhere it is written at her feet Talmud Ma Sanhedrin be he bowed he fell and knoweth the mind of the most high now seeing that he did not even know the mind of his ass could he know the mind of the most high what is this about the mind of his ass for the elders said to him why didst thou not ride upon thy horse, he replied, I have put it to graze in the dewy pastures, but the ass said to him, Am I not thine ass merely for carrying loads? He replied, Upon which thou hast ridden, that was only by chance ever since I was thine until this day. She added, Moreover, I serve thee as a companion by night. Here is written, Was I ever want to do so unto thee? Whilst elsewhere it is written, And let her be his companion. What then is meant by knowing the mind of the Most High? He knew how to gauge the exact moment when the Holy One blessed be he is angry, and that was what the prophet said to Israel, O that people remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beer answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. What is meant by that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord? The Holy One blessed be he said to Israel, Know now how many acts of charity I performed for you, and that I did not become angry all the time in the Days of Balaam the wicked for had I waxed angry during that time none would have remained or been spared of Israel's enemies and thus Balaam said to Balak how shall I curse whom God hath not cursed or how shall I rage when the Lord hath not raged this teaches that for the whole of that time the Lord had not been wroth but normally God is angry every day and how long does his anger last a moment as it is written for his anger endureth but a moment in his favor is life etc or if you like deduce it from this verse come by people enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed now when is he angry in the first three hours of the day when the comb of the cock is white but at all times it is white at all other times it has red streaks but at that moment of God's anger there are no red streaks in it a sectarian lived in the neighborhood of our Joshua Belevi who used to vex him one day he took a Foul tied it to the foot of his bed and sat down saying when that moment comes I will curse him but when that moment came he dozed off this proof said he that it is not fitting to do this for it is written also to punish is not me good for the righteous even of a sectarian one should not speak thus attended taught in the name of our Meir when the sun shines and kings place their crowns upon their heads and adore the sun immediately the Almighty becomes wroth and Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass attended taught on the authority of our Simeon B. Eliezer love disregards the rule of dignified conduct this is deduced from Abraham for it is written and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass hate likewise disregards the rule of dignified conduct this is deduced from Balaam for it is written and Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass Rab Judah said in Rab's name one should always occupy himself with Torah and good deeds though it be not for their own sake for out of good work misapplied in purpose there comes the desire to do it for its own sake for as a reward for the forty-two sacrifices offered up by Balak he was privileged that Ruth should be his descendant as our Hosea Behuna said Ruth was the daughter of Eglon the grandson of Balak king of Moab Rabbah said to Rabbah Bimari it is written and moreover the king's servants came to bless our lord king David saying God make the name of Solomon better than thy name and make his throne greater than thy throne is it mannerly to speak thus to a king he replied they meant according to the nature of thy throne etc for should you not say thus consider blessed above women shall jail the wife of Heber the Canite be blessed shall she be above women in the tent now who are the women in the tent Sarah Rebecca Rachel and Leah is it then me to say thus but it means according to the nature of their blessedness so here too it bears the same meaning now this conflicts with our Jose Bihoni for our Jose Bihoni said of everyone a man is jealous except his son and disciple his son this is deduced from Solomon his disciple is deduced if you like say from let a double quantity of thy spir
It is written, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing for thee because the Lord thy God loved thee. The curse, but not the curses, are Samuel. Be Namani said in our Jonathan's name, What is meant by the verse, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Better is the curse wherewith Ahijah the Shilamite cursed Israel than the blessing wherewith the wicked Balaam blessed them. Ahijah the Shilamite cursed Israel by reed as it is said, For the Lord shall smite. Israel as a reed is shaken in the water just as a reed grows in well watered soil and its stem tall mood. Ma Sanhedrin is renewed and its roots are numerous, and even if all the winds of the world come and blow upon it, they cannot dislodge it from its place, but it sways in unison with them, and as soon as the winds subside, the reed still stands in its place, so may Israel be, but the wicked Balaam blessed them by the cedar just as the cedar does not stand in a watery place, and its roots are few. And its stock is not renewed, and even if all the winds of the world come and blow upon it, they cannot stir it from its place. But immediately the south wind blows upon it, uproots and overturns it on its face. So may Israel be named, or it was the reed's privilege that a quill thereof should be taken for the writing of the scroll of the Torah prophets and Hagiographa. And he looked on the Kenite and took up his parable. Balaam said to Jethro, Thou Kenite, wast thou not with us in that scheme? Who then placed thee among the strong ones of the world? And that is what our high B. Abba said in our Semai's name. Three were involved in that scheme. Viz Balaam, Job, and Jethro. Balaam, who advised it, was slain. Job, who was silent, was punished through suffering. And Jethro, who fled his descendants, were privileged to sit in the hall of hewn stones, as it is written. And the families of the scribes which dwell at Jabez, the Tyrathites, the Shemithites, and such Hathites, these are the Kenites that came of Hemoth. The father of the house of Rechab, whilst elsewhere it is written, and the children of the Kenite Moses' father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees, and he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doth this? Our Simeon be said, Woe unto him who make himself alive by the name of God, our Yohan, and said, Woe to the nation that may be found attempting to hinder when the Holy One blessed be he accomplishes the redemption of his children who would throw his garment between a lion and a lioness when these are copulating and ships shall come from the coast of Chittim. Rab said, This refers to the white legion and shall afflict Asher and shall afflict Eber until Asher they shall slay after that they shall throw into subjection. And now behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. But he should have said what thy people shall do to this people. Our Abubikahana said, It is as one who cursing. Himself refers his male diction to others. He Balaam said thus to him, Balak the god of these hates lewdness, and they are very partial to linen. Come, and I will advise thee erect for them tents enclosed by hangings in which place harlots, old women without young women within to sell them linen garments. So he erected curtain tents from the snowy mountain Hermon as far as Beth Hayashimoth, I right from north to south, and placed harlots in them, old women without young women within. And when an Israelite ate, drank, and was merry, and issued forth for a stroll in the marketplace, the old woman would say to him, Dost thou not desire linen garments? The old woman offered it at its current value, but the young one, for less this happened two or three times after that, she would say to him, Thou art now like one of the family, sit down and choose for thyself gourds of Ammonite wine lay near her, and at that time Ammonite and even wine had not yet been forbidden, said she to him, Wouldst thou? Like to drink a glass of wine, having drunk his passion was inflamed, and he exclaimed to her, Yield to me. Thereupon she brought forth an idol from her bosom and said to him, Worship this, but I am a Jew. He protested, What does that concern thee? She rejoined, Nothing is required, but that thou should uncover thyself, whilst he did not know that such was its worship. Nay, said she, I will not leave thee ere thou hast denied the Torah of Moses thy teacher, as it is written, they went into Baal Pier and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved, and Israel abode in Shittim. Our Eliezer said its name was Shittim. Our Joshua said they engaged in ways of folly, she and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. Our Eliezer said they met them naked. Our Joshua said they were all excited to pollution. What is the meaning of Revitim? Our Eliezer said Revitim was its name. Our Joshua said it was so called because there they slackened in there. Loyalty to the Torah as it is written, the fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands. Or Yohanan said, wherever scripture writes, and he abode or dwelt, it denotes trouble. Thus, and Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And the time drew near that Israel must die in Judah. And Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. Had the Edomite, he was the king's seed in Edom, and they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain. Balaam also the son of Beer, they slew with the sword. What business had Balaam there? Or Jonathan said he went to receive his reward for the twenty-four thousand Israelites whose destruction he had. Encompassed Marzitra B. Toby remarked in Rab's name, This is what men say when the camel went to demand horns, they cut off the ears. He had Balaam also the son of Beer, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword a soothsayer, but he was a prophet. Our Yohanan said, At first he was a prophet, but subsequently a soothsayer. Our Papa observed, This is what men say, she who was a descendant of princes and governors played the harlot with carpenters Talmud. Ma Sanhedrin B. did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Rab said, They subjected him to four death stoning, burning, decapitation, and strangulation. A certain men said to our Hannah, Hast thou heard how old Balaam was? He replied, It is not actually stated, but since it is written, Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, it follows that he was thirty three or thirty four years old. He rejoined, Thou hast said correctly, I personally have seen Balaam's chronicle in. Which it is stated, Balaam the Lame was thirty years old when Phinehas the robber killed him. Bar the son of Rubin said to his sons, In the case of all those mentioned as having no portion in the future world, you should not take the biblical passages dealing with them to expound them to their discredit, excepting in the case of the wicked Balaam. Whatever you find written about him, lecture upon it to his disadvantage. Scripture writes, Dog and Doeg are Yohanan said, At first the Holy One. Blessed be he sits and is anxious, lest one go out on an evil course, but when he has done so, he exclaims, Woe that he has entered on an evil path. Nemotic, the mighty wicked, righteous, rich scribe, our Isaac said, What is meant by the verse, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man, the goodness of God endureth continually? The Holy One, blessed be he said to Dog, Art thou not a mighty man in Torah? Why then boastest thou thyself in mischief? Is not the love of God continually spread over thee? Our Isaac also said what is meant by the verse, but unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? The Holy One blessed be he said to the wicked dog, What hast thou to do to declare? I.e. study my statutes when thou comest to the sections dealing with murderers and slanderers. How dost thou expound them, or that thou shouldst take my covenant in thy mouth? Or am I said dog's learning was only from the lips without our Isaac also said what is meant by the verse, the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. At first they shall fear the wicked person, but subsequently laugh at him. Our Isaac also said what is meant by the verse, he hath swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. David pleaded before the Holy One, blessed be he sovereign of the universe, let dog die. He replied, He hath swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. He rejoined, Let God cast them out of his belly. Our Isaac also said what is Meant by God shall likewise destroy thee forever. The Holy One blessed be he said to David, Let us bring Dog to the future world. He replied to him, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. What is meant by the verse, he shall take thee away and pluck thee out of the tent and root thee out of the land of the living seal. The Holy One blessed be he urged, Let a law be stated in his name in the schoolhouse. But he David replied to him, He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of the tent and let his children be rabbis and thy root shall be torn out of the land of the living seal. Our Isaac also said, What is meant by the verse, Where is the enumerator? Where is the way? Where is he that counted the towers? Where is he who enumerated all the letters of
Elsewhere it is written, and if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house shall be established. Lazimuth to him that hath bought it, which we translate law halyadin, i.e., absolutely and definitely the purchasers. And we learned the only difference between him who is a bizarre malat, definitely a leper, and one who is locked up for observation is in respect of letting the hair grow wild and tearing the garments. Nimani three saw in half and called Aryohan and said, Three destroying angels appeared before Dog. One caused him to forget his learning. One burnt his soul, and the third scattered his ashes in the synagogues and schoolhouses. Aryohan and also said Dog and Ahitafel did not see each other. I.e., were not contemporaries. Dog living in Saul's reign. Ahitafel and David's Aryohan and also said Dog and Ahitafel did not live out half their days. It has been taught likewise. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. Dog's entire lifetime. Amounted only to thirty-four years, and Ahitophel's to thirty-three. Aryohan and also said, At first David called Ahitophel his teacher and his companion colleague, and finally his disciple. At first he called him his teacher, as it is written. But it was thou a man, mine equal, my guide, and mine acquaintance, and his companions, as it is written. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Finally his disciple, yeah, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, Talmud, Moss. Sanhedrin, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Rab Judah said in Rab's name, One should never intentionally bring himself to the test, since David, king of Israel, did so and fell. He said unto him, Sovereign of the universe, Why do we say in prayer the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, but not the God of David? He replied, They were tried by me, but thou wast not. Then replied, He, Sovereign of the universe, Examine and try me, as it is written, Examine me. Lord, and try me, he answered, I will test thee, and yet grant thee a special privilege, for I did not inform them of the nature of their trial beforehand, yet I informed thee that I will try thee in a matter of adultery straightway, and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed, etc. Aryohan and said, He changed his night couch to a day couch, but he forgot the halachah. There is a small organ in man which satisfies him in his hunger, but makes him hunger when satisfied, and he walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now Bathsheba was cleansing her hair behind a screen when Satan came to him, appearing in the shape of a bird, he shot an arrow at him which broke the screen, thus she stood revealed, and he saw her immediately, and David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of William, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent. Messengers and took her and she came unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanliness and she returned unto her house thus it is written thou host proved mine heart thou hast visited me in the night thou host tried me and shalt find nothing I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress he said thus would that a bridle had fallen into the mouth of mine enemy i.e. himself that I had not spoken thus Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse to the chief musician Asam of David in the Lord put I my trust how say to my soul flee as a bird to your mountain David pleaded before the holy one blessed be he sovereign of the universe forgive me that sin that men may not say your mountain as see the king has been put to flight by a bird Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse against thee the only have I sent and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest David pleaded before the holy one. Blessed be he thou knowest full well that had I wished to suppress my lust I could have done so but thought I let them the people not say the servant triumphed against his master Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse for I am ready to halt and my sorrow is continually before me Bathsheba the daughter of William was predestined for David from the six days of creation but that she came to him with sorrow and the school of our Ishmael taught likewise she was worthy i.e. predestined for David from the six days of creation but that he enjoyed her before she was right Rabbah expounded what is meant by the verse but in my adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together yet the objects gathered themselves together against me and I knew it not they did tear me and cease not David exclaimed before the holy one blessed be he sovereign of the universe thou knowest full well that had they torn my flesh my blood would not have flown moreover when they are engaged in studying the four Deaths inflicted by Beth did they interrupt their studies and taught me saying David what is the death penalty of him who seduces a married woman I reply to them he who commits adultery with a married woman is executed by strangulation yet has he a portion in the world to come but he who publicly puts his neighbor to shame has no portion in the world to come Rab Judah said in Rab's name even during David's illness he fulfilled the conjugal rights of his eighteen wives as it is written I am weary with my groaning all the night make I my bed to swim I water my couch with my tears Rab Judah also said in Rab's name David wished to worship idols as it is written and it came to pass that when David was come to the head where he worshipped God now Rosh head can only refer to idols as it is written this image's head was of fine gold but behold Hushai the archai came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head he demonstrated with David shall people say a king like thee has worshipped idols, he replied, and shall a king like myself be slain by his son? Let me worship idols rather than that the divine name be publicly profaned. He retorted, Why then didst thou marry a beautiful woman captured in battle? He replied, The merciful one permitted a beautiful woman. He rejoined, Dost thou not interpret the proximity of verses? For in proximity thereto is written, If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, this teaches whoever marries a beautiful woman taken in battle. Will have a stubborn and rebellious son, are dosti of very expounded unto whom may David be likened unto a heathen merchant. David said before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, who can understand his errors. He replied, They are forgiven thee, cleanse thou me from secret faults. He pursued, I grant it, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Tis granted, let them not have dominion over me, then shall I be upright, so that scholars may not discuss me. Granted, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression so my sins may not be recorded he replied that is impossible if the single yod which I removed from Sarai continuously cried out in protest for many years until Joshua came and I added it to his name as it is written and Moses called Hoshea the son of Nun Jehoshua how much more so a complete section and I shall be innocent from great transgression he pleaded before him sovereign of the universe pardon me that sin completely as though it had never been committed he replied it is already ordained that thy son Solomon should say in his wisdom can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned so he that goeth into his neighbor's wife whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent he lamented must I suffer so much he replied accept thy chastisement and he accepted it Rab Judah said in Rab's name six months was David smitten with leprosy the Shechinah deserted him and the Sanhedrin held aloof from him, he was smitten with leprosy, as it is written, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. The Shechinah deserted him, as it is written, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And the Sanhedrin kept aloof from him, as it is written, Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. How do we know that it was for six months, because it is written, and the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem, whilst elsewhere it is written, in Hebron reigned he over Judah seven years and six months. Thus these six months are not counted in the first passage quoted, proving that he was smitten with leprosy. He prayed to him, Sovereign of the universe, forgive me that sin it is forgiven thee, then shew me a token for good that they which hate me. May see it and be ashamed because thou Lord hast helped me and comforted me. He replied, In thy lifetime I will not make it known that I have forgiven thee, but in the lifetime of thy son Solomon. Thus when Solomon built the temple, he wished to take the ark into the Holy of Holies, but the gates thereof cleaved to each other and would not open. He uttered twenty-four psalms, but was not answered. He then further supplicated, Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in, who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And it is further said, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Still he was not answered, but on praying, O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. He was immediately answered in that hour. The faces of David's enemies
Men servants and maid servants, but had he taken so much, he had only taken silver and garments. Our Isaac said, Just then Elisha was sitting and lecturing on the eight unclean reptiles. Now Naaman, the chief captain of the king of Syria, was a leper. A maiden who had been captured from the land of Israel said to him, If thou wilt go to Elisha, he will heal thee. When he came there, he said to him, Go and dip thyself in the Jordan. Thou dost but ridicule me, he exclaimed, but his companions urged him, What does? It mattered to thee, go and test it. So he went, dipped himself in the Jordan, and was healed. He returned and offered him all he had, but he Elisha refused to accept it. Thereupon Gehazi left Elisha's presence, went and took whatever he did and put it away. When he returned, Elisha saw a leprous eruption on his head. Thou wicked man, he cried, The time has come for thee to receive thy reward for studying the laws of the eight reptiles. So the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. Our Yohanan said they were Gehazi and his three sons. It was taught. Our Simeon B. Eliezer said, Human nature, a child and a woman, the left hand should repulse them, but the right hand bring them back. Our rabbis taught Elisha was ill on three occasions. Once when he incited the bears against the children, once when he repulsed Gehazi with both hands, and the third was. The illness of which he died, as it is written, now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died until Abraham. There was no old age. Whoever saw Abraham said, This is Isaac, and whoever saw Isaac said, This is Abraham. Therefore Abraham prayed that there should be old age, as it is written, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age until Jacob. There was no illness, so he prayed, and illness came into existence, as it is written, and one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick until Elisha. No. Sick man ever recovered, but Elisha came and prayed, and he recovered, as it is written, now Elisha was fallen sick of sickness, whereof he died. Mission of the generation of the flood has no portion in the future world, nor will they stand at the last judgment, as it is written, and the Lord said, My spirit will not always enter into judgment with man, there will be neither judgment nor my spirit for them. The generation of the dispersion have no portion in the future world, as it is written, so the Lord. Scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, so the Lord scattered them abroad refers to this world, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad to the world to come. The men of Sodom have no portion in the future world as it is written, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord, exceedingly wicked in this world, and sinners in the world to come, yet will they stand at judgment. Our Nehemiah said, Neither the generation of the flood nor the men of Sodom will stand at judgment as it is written, therefore Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin of the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment refers to the generation of the flood, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous to the men of Sodom. They the sages answered him, They will not stand in the congregation of the righteous, but they will stand in the congregation of the wicked, the spies have no portion in it. World to come as it is written, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord they died in this world by the plague in the world to come the generation of the wilderness have no share in the future world and will not stand at the last judgment as it is written in this wilderness they shall be consumed and there they shall die. This is our Akiva's view our Eliza said concerning them it is said gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice the congregation of Korah is not destined to ascend from the earth as it is written and the earth closed upon them in this world and they perished from among the congregation in the next this is our Akiva's opinion our Eliza said of them it is written the Lord killeth and make the live he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up tomorrow our rabbis taught the generation of the flood have no portion in the world to come as it is written and every living Substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground and every living substance was destroyed refers to this world which was upon the face of the ground to the next this is our Akiva's view our Judah be but they are maintained they will neither revive nor be judged as it is written my spirit will not always enter into judgment with man teaching neither judgment nor spirit another meaning of my spirit will not enter etc their soul shall not return to its sheath our men of son of our Jose said even when the holy one blessed be he restores the souls to the dead bodies their soul shall grieve them in the Gehenna as it is written ye shall conceive chaff ye shall bring forth stubble your soul as fire shall devour you our rabbis taught the generation of the flood waxed haughty only because of the good which the holy one blessed be he lavished upon them behold what is written of them their houses are safe from fear neither is the rod of God upon them it is also written their bull gender end. Faileth not their cow calveth and casteth not her calf further they send forth their little ones like a flock and their children dance further they take the timbrel and the harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ and it is also written they spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures and it is also written and in a moment go down to the grave and tis that which caused them to say to God depart from us for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways what is the Almighty that we should serve him and what profit should we have if we pray unto him they said thus do we need him for aught but the drop of rain we have rivers and wells to supply our wants thereupon the Holy One blessed be he said by that very good which I lavished upon them they provoke me and by that I will punish them as it is written and behold I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth our Jose said they waxed haughty only on account of the covetousness of the eyeball which is like water as it is written and they took them wives from all which they chose therefore he punished them by water which is like the eyeball as it is written all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened our Yohan and said the corruption of the generation of the flood is characterized as great and their punishment is characterized as great their corruption is characterized as great as it is written and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and their punishment is characterized as great as it is written all the fountains of the great deep our Yohan and said three of those hot fountains were left the gulf of Gadar the hot springs of Tiberias and the great well of Byram for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth our Yohan and said this teaches that they caused beasts and animals animals and beasts to copulate and all of these were brought in connection with man and man with them all our Abu Bikahana said all of them returned to their own Kind accepting the Tushlami and God said unto Noah the end of all flesh is come before me or Yohanan said come and see how great is the power of robbery for lo though the generation of the flood transgressed all laws their decree of punishment was sealed only because they stretched out their hands to rob as it is written for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth and it is also written violence i.e. robbery is risen up into a rod of wickedness none of them shall remain nor of their multitude nor any of theirs neither shall there be wailing for them or Eliezer said this teaches that it violence personified directed itself like a staff stood before the Holy One blessed be he and said sovereign of the universe there is no good in of them or out of their multitude or of theirs neither shall there be wailing for them the school of our Ishmael taught the doom of destruction was decreed against Noah too but that he Found favor in the eyes of God as it is written it repenteth me that I have made them but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and the Lord was comforted that he had made man in the earth when our demi came he said the Holy One blessed be he exclaimed I did well in preparing graves for them in the earth how is this signified by the verse here is written and the Lord was comforted whilst elsewhere it is stated and he comforted them and spake kindly to them others say he exclaimed I did not do well in establishing graves for them in the earth here it is written and it repented the Lord whilst elsewhere it is written and the Lord repented of the evil which he had thought to do unto his people these are the generations of Noah Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations our Yohanan said in his generations but not in other generations Reshlakish maintained even in his generations how much more so in other generations our Hanana said as an illustration of our Yohanan's view to what may this be compared to a barrel of wine lying in a vault of acid in its place its odor is fragrant by comparison with the acid elsewhere its odor will not be fragrant our Ashai said as an illustration of Reshlakish view to what may this be compared to a file of spikenard oil lying amidst refuse if it is fragrant where it is how much more so amidst spices and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle if man sent how did the beasts in Aitan had taught on the authority of our Joshua B. Karhathis may be compared to a man who set up a bridal canopy for his son and prepared a banquet with every variety of food subsequently his son died whereupon he arose and broke up the feast
The water from coming up from heaven we have a substance called Echop. Others say Echosh which can ward it off. He replied he will bring it from between the heels of your feet as it is written he is ready for the steps of your feet. It has been taught the waters of the flood were as severe as semen as it is written it is ready for the steps of the feet. Aristotle said with hot passion they sent and by hot water they were punished for here it is written and the water cooled whilst elsewhere. It is said then the king's wrath cooled down and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. What was the nature of these seven days? Rab said these were the days of mourning for Methuselah, thus teaching that the lamenting for the righteous postpones retribution. Another meaning is after the seven days during which the Holy One blessed be he reversed the order of nature, the sun rising in the west and setting in the east. Another meaning the Holy One blessed be he first appointed a long time for them and then a short time. Another meaning after the seven days during which he gave a foretaste of the future world that they might know what good they had withheld from themselves of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens man and wife have and beast marital relationship. Our Samuel B. Nam and said in our Jonathan's name it means of those with which no sin had been committed. Once did he know no Arista said he led them past the Arthos. Which the ark accepted had certainly not been the object of sin, whilst those which it rejected had certainly been the object of sin. Arabab said he took only those which came of their own accord, make the an ark of gopher wood. What is gopher? Arada said the scholars of Arshila said it is with like others maintain golemish a window shalt thou make to the ark. Aryohan and said the holy one blessed be he instructed Noah set there in precious stones and jewels so that they may give thee light bright. As the noon and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above for thus would it stand firm with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it attended taught the bottom story was for the dung the middle for the animals and the top for man and he sent forth the raven Reshalakish said the raven gave Noah a triumphant retort it said to him thy master hate me and thou hatest me thy master hate me since he commanded seven peers to be taken of the clean creatures but only two of the unclean thou. Hatest me seeing that thou leavest the species of which there are seven and sendest one of which there are only two should the angel of heat or a cold smite me would not the world be short of one kind or perhaps thou desirest my mate thou evil one he exclaimed even that which is usually permitted me has now been forbidden how much more so that which is always forbidden me and whence do we know that they were forbidden from the verse and thou shalt enter into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and the wives of thy sons with thee whilst further on it is written go forth from the ark thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons wives with thee were on our Yohan and observed from this we deduce that cohabitation had been forbidden our rabbis taught three copulated in the ark and they were all punished the dog the raven and ham the dog was doomed to be tied the raven expect or its seed into his mate's mouth and ham was smitten in his skin also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abetted, our Jeremiah said this proves that the clean fowl dwelt with the righteous and low in her mouth was an olive leaf tariff as food. Our Eliezer said the dove prayed to the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, let my sustenance be as bitter as the olive, but in thy charge rather than sweet as honey, and in the charge of flesh and blood. Whence do we know that tariff connotes food from the verse? Feed me with food convenient for me after their kinds they went. Forth from the ark, our Yohan and said after their kinds, but not they alone. Our Hannah be business said Eliezer Abraham's servant remarked to Shem Noah's eldest son, It is written after their kinds they went forth from the ark. Now, how were you situated? He replied, In truth, we had much trouble in the ark. The animals which are usually fed by day, we fed by day, and those normally fed by night, we fed by night, but my father did not know what was the food of the chameleon. One day he was sitting and cutting. Up a pomegranate, when a worm dropped out of it, which at the chameleon consumed from then onward, he mashed up bran for it, and when it became wormy, it devoured it. The lion was nourished by a fever for Rab said, Fever sustains for not less than six days nor more than thirteen. As for the phoenix, my father discovered it lying in the hold of the ark. Dost thou require no food? He asked it. I saw that thou wast busy. It replied, So I said to myself, I will give thee no trouble, may it be God's will. That thou shouldst not perish, he exclaimed, as it is written, Then I said, I shall die in the nest, but I shall multiply my days as the phoenix are Hanabila. Why said Shemnoah's eldest son said to Eliza Abraham's servant, When the kings of the east and the west attacked you, what did you do? He replied, The Holy One blessed be he took Abraham and placed him at his right hand, and they got and Abraham through dust which turned to swords and chaff which turned to arrows, as it is written a psalm of David the Lord said unto my master sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool and it is also written who raised up the righteous man as see Abraham from the east called him to his foot gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings he made his sword as the dust and his bow as driven stubble Nahum of Gimzo was accustomed whatever befell him to say this too is for good it once happened that the Jews wished to send a gift to the emperor said they by Talmud, Mas. Sanhedrin to whom shall we send it we will send it by Nahum of Gimzo who is well versed in miracles on arriving at a certain inn he wished to lodge there what hast thou with thee they asked him he replied I am bearing tribute to the emperor so they arose at night untied his box removed all its contents and refilled it with earth when he arrived there it was found to be earth the Jews mocked me he exclaimed so they led him out to execution this too is for good said he then Elijah came disguised as one of theirs the Romans and suggested to them perhaps this is the earth of Abraham the patriarch who threw earth which turned to swords and chaff which became arrows so they examined it and found it to be even so and a district which they had been unable to conquer they threw this earth at it and conquered it thereupon they led him to the treasury and said to him take what thou pleasest so he filled his box with gold on his return the inmates of the inn where he had previously been robbed. Asked him what didst thou take to the king what I took away from here I carried there was his reply so they took the same and brought it there as a result of which these folk were executed the generation of the dispersion have no portion in the world to come etc what did they do the scholars of Arshila taught they said let us build a tower sent to heaven and cleave it with axes that its waters might gush forth in the west sc Palestine academies they laughed at this if so they should. Have built it on a mountain. Our Jeremiah B. Eliezer said they split up into three parties. One said, Let us ascend and dwell there. The second, Let us ascend and serve idols. And the third said, Let us ascend and wage war with God. The party which proposed, Let us ascend and dwell there. The Lord scattered them. The one that said, Let us ascend and wage war returned to ape spirits, devils, and night demons. Whilst as for the party which said, Let us ascend and serve idols, for there the Lord did confound. The language of all the earth it has been taught. Our Nathan said they were all bent on idolatry. For here it is written, Let us make us a name. Whilst elsewhere it is written, And make no mention of the name of other gods, just as their idolatry is meant. So here too, our Jonathan said, A third of the tower was burnt. A third sunk into the earth, and a third is still standing. Rab said the atmosphere of the tower causes forgetfulness. Our Joseph said, Babylon and Borsif are evil omens for the Torah. What is? The meaning of Borsif R.C. said an empty shafi pit bore the men of Sodom have no portion in the world to come etc. Our rabbis taught the men of Sodom have no portion in the future world as it is written but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly wicked in this world and sinners in respect of the world to come. Rab Judah said they were wicked with their bodies i.e. immoral and sinners with their money i.e. uncharitable wicked with their bodies as it is. Written how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God and sinners with their money as it is written and it be sin unto thee before the Lord refers to blasphemy exceedingly that they intentionally sin to tan taught wicked with their money and sinners with their bodies wicked with their money as it is written and I, I be wicked against thy poor brother and sinners with their bodies as it is written and I will sin against God before the Lord this refers to blasphemy. Exceedingly, this refers to bloodshed as it is written. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood. Exceedingly, our rabbis taught the men of Sodom waxed haughty only on account of the good which the Holy One blessed be he had lavished upon them. What is written concerning them is for the earth out of it cometh bread, and under it it is burned up as it were with fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl know it, and which the vultures eye hath not seen. The lions whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lions pass by it. They said, Since there cometh forth bread
He who has only one ox must tend all the oxen of the town for one day, but he who has none must tend them two days. Now a certain orphan, the son of a widow, was given oxen to tend. He went and killed them and then said to them, The Sodomites Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, be he who has an ox, let him take one hide. He who has none, let him take two hides. What is the meaning of this? They explained, said he, the final usage, i.e., the disposal of the ox when dead must be as the initial one, just as the initial usage is that he who possesses one ox must tend for one day, and he who has none must tend two days. So should be the final usage. He who has one ox should take one hide, and he who has none should take two. Likewise, the rule he who crosses with the ferry must pay one zoos for the privilege, but he who does not entering by another way must give two. If one had rows of bricks, every person came and took one, saying, I have taken only one. If one spread out garlic or onions to dry them. Every person came and took one, saying, I have taken only one. There were four judges in Sodom named Shakra, Shakra, Isa, Yafai, and Mazaldina. Now, if a man assaulted his neighbor's wife and bruised her, they would say to the husband, Give her to him that she may become pregnant for thee. If one cut off the ear of his neighbor's ass, they would order, Give it to him until it grows again. If one wounded his neighbor, they would say to him, The victim, Give him a fee for bleeding thee. He who crossed over with the ferry had to pay for Zuzim, whilst he who crossed through the water had to pay eight. On one occasion, a certain fuller happened to come there, said they to him, Give us four Zuzim for the use of the ferry, but protested he, I crossed through the water. If so, said they, Thou must give eight Zuzim for passing through the water. He refused to give it, so they assaulted him. He went before the judge who ordered, Give them a fee for bleeding and eight Zuzim for crossing through the water now. Eliza Abraham's servant happened to be there and was attacked when he went before the judge. He said, Give them a fee for bleeding me thereupon. He took a stone and smote the judge. What is this? He exclaimed, He replied, The fee that thou owest me give to this man who attacked me whilst my money will remain in statu quo. Now they had beds upon which travelers slept. If he the guest was too long, they shortened him by lopping off his feet. If too short, they stretched him out. Eliza Abraham's servant happened to go there, said they to him, Arise and sleep on this bed. He replied, I have vowed since the day of my mother's death not to sleep in a bed. If a poor man happened to come there, every resident gave him a dinar upon which he wrote his name, but no bread was given him when he died. Each came and took back as they made this agreement amongst themselves. Whoever invites a man a stranger to a feast shall be stripped of his garment. Now a banquet was in progress when Eliza chanced. There, but they gave him no bread, wishing to dine. He went and sat down at the end of them. All said they to him who invited thee here. He replied to the one sitting near him, Thou didst invite me. The latter said to himself, Peradventure they will hear that I invited him and stripped me of my garment. So he took up his raiment and fled without thus. He Eliza did to all until they had all gone. Whereupon he consumed the entire repast. A certain maiden gave some bread to a poor man hiding it in a pitcher on the matter becoming known. They daubed her with honey and placed her on the parapet of the wall. And the bees came and consumed her. Thus it is written. And the Lord said, The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, because it is great, whereon Rab Judah commented in Rab's name on account of the maiden river. The spies have no portion in the world to come, as it is said. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord died implies in this world by the Plague in the next assembly of Korah have no portion in the world to come as it is written, and the earth closed upon them, implying in this world, and they perished from among the congregation. In the next, this is our Akiva's view. Our Eliza said of them, The Ritzeth, the Lord killeth and make the life. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Our rabbis taught the assembly of Korah have no portion in the world to come, for it is said, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. This is our Akiva's view. Our Judah be, but there is said they are as a lost article which is sought, for it is said, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Now Korah took Reshlagish, said he took a bad bargain for himself, being plucked out of Israel, the son of Azar, a son who incensed the whole world with himself as the heat of noon, the son of Kohat, a son who set the teeth of his progenitors on edge, the son of Levi, a son who Became an inmate of Gehenna, then why not stay to the son of Jacob, implying a son who marched himself into Gehenna? Our Samuel will be our Isaac. Answer Jacob supplicated for himself not to be enumerated amongst Korah's ancestors, as it is written, O my son, come not into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united, O my soul, come not unto their secret. This refers to the spies, unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united to the assembly of Korah. David denotes that he violated God's law of Iram, that he stoutly refused to repent on that he sat in lamentations. Pilate, that wonders were wrought for him, the son of Reuben, a son who saw and understood. Rab said, On the son of Pilate was saved by his wife, said she to him, What matters it to thee whether the one Moses remains master or the other Korah becomes master? Thou art but a disciple, he replied, But what can I do? I have taken part in their counsel, and they have sworn me to be with them. She said, I know that. They are all a holy community, as it is written, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. So she proceeded, sit here, and I will save thee. She gave him wine to drink, intoxicated him, and laid him down within the tent. And she sat down at the entrance there to Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin, A, and loosened her hair. Whoever came to summon him saw her and retreated. Meanwhile, Korah's wife joined them, the rebels, and said to him, Korah, see what Moses has done. He himself has become king. His brother, he appointed high priest, his brother's sons. He hath made the vice high priest of Teramah. His brought, he decrees, let it be for the priest. If the tithe is brought, which belongs to you, i.e., to the Levite, he orders, give a tenth part thereof to the priest. Moreover, he has had your hair cut off and makes sport of you as though ye were dirt, for he was jealous of your hair, said he to her, but he has done likewise. She replied, since all the greatness was his, he said, also let me die with it. Philistines, moreover, he has commanded you set fringes of blue wool in the corners of your garments, but if there is virtue in blue wool, then bring forth blue wool and clothe thine entire academy therewith. Thus it is written, Every wise woman buildeth her house. This refers to the wife of on the son of Pilate, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands to Korah's wife, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty. They were the most distinguished men of the community chosen for the appointed times, meaning they were skilled in intercalating the year and fixing new moons, men of renown famous throughout the whole world. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. What news did he hear? Our Samuel be Naman, he said in our Jonathan's name that he was suspected of adultery with the married women, as it is written, they were jealous of Moses in the camp, which teaches that every person warned his wife on Moses' account, as it is written, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, and Moses rose up and went into David and Abiram Rush Lakish said this teaches that one must not be obdurate in a quarrel for Rab said he who is unyielding in a dispute violates a negative command as it is written and let him not be as Korah and as his company are as she said he deserves to be smitten with leprosy here it is written as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses whilst elsewhere it is said and the Lord said furthermore unto him put now thine hand into thy bosom and when he took it out behold his hand was leprous as no our Joseph said whoever contends against the sovereignty of the house of David deserves to be bitten by a snake here it is written and it unages slow sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zoheleth whilst elsewhere it is written with the poison of serpents so hail of the dust are his dust said whoever contends against the ruling of his teacher is as though he contended against it. Shechina, as it says, when they strove against the Lord, our Hannah, son of our Hannah, said, Whoever quarrels with his teacher is as though he quarreled with the Shechina, as it is said, This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, our Hannah, be Papa, said, Whoever expresses resentment against his teacher is as though he expressed it against the Shechina, as it is said, Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord, our Abba, said, He who imputes evil to his teacher is as though he imputed it to the Shechina, as it says, And the people spake against God and against Moses, which is kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. Reshlakish said, This refers to Korah's wealth and all the substance that was at their feet. Our Eliezer said, This refers to a man's wealth which puts him on his feet. Our Levi said, The keys of Korah's treasure house were a load for three hundred white mules, though all the keys and locks were of leather. Our
Authority of Moses our master a place was set apart for them in the Gehenna where they sat and sang praises to God Rabbi Barhanna said I was proceeding on my travels when an Arab said to me come and I will show thee where the men of Korah were swallowed up I went and saw two cracks once issued smoke thereupon he took a piece of clipped wool soaked it in water attached it to the point of his spear and passed it over there and it was cinched said I to him listen to what you are about to hear and I heard them saying thus Moses and his Torah are true but the Korah's company are liars Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin be the Arabian and said to me every thirty days Gehenna causes them to turn back here like meat in a pot and they say thus Moses and his Torah are true but they are liars the generation of the wilderness hath no portion in the world to come etc our rabbis taught the generation of the wilderness hath no portion in the world to come as it is written in this wilderness. They shall be consumed and there they shall die they shall be consumed refers to this world and there they shall die to the world to come and it is also said forty years long was I grieved with this generation sc of the wilderness unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest this is our act view our lies are maintained they will enter into the future world for it is written gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice how then do I interpret unto whom I swear in my wrath etc only in my wrath I swear but repented thereof our Joshua B. Karha said this verse was spoken only in reference to future generations thus gather my saints together unto me this refers to the righteous of every generation that have made a covenant with me to Hanani Missal and Ezra who submitted to the fiery furnace by sacrifice to our Akiba and his companions who gave themselves up to immolation for the sake of the Torah our Simeon B. Manasia said they will enter the future world as it is said and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs Rabbi Barhanna said in our Yohanan's name here our Akiba abandoned his love for it is written go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying thus saith the Lord I remember thee the kindness of thy youth the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown if others will enter the future world in their merit surely they themselves most certainly will mission the ten tribes will not return to Palestine for it is said and cast them into another land as is the stage just as the day goes and does not return so they too went and will not return this is our Akiba's view our Eliezer said as the stage just as the day darkens and then becomes light again so the ten tribes even as it went dark for them so will it become light for them tomorrow our rabbis taught the ten tribes have no portion in the world to come as it says and the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and the Lord rooted them out of their land refers to this world and cast them into another land to the world to come this is our Akiba's view our Simeon be Judah of the Kfar of Akko said on our Simeon's authority if their deeds are as the stays they will not return otherwise they shall rabbi said they will enter the future world as it is said and it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcast in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of Jerusalem rabbi Barhanna said in our Yohanan's name here our Akiba abandoned his love for it is written go and proclaim these words toward the north and say return thou backsliding Israel saith the Lord and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you for I am merciful saith the Lord and I will not keep mine anger forever now do. What does his lover for even as it has been taught the children of the wicked of Israel who died in their minority will not enter the future world as it is written for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yet and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them upset the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root or branch refers to this world branch to the world to come this is Rabban Gamaliel's view our Akiva said. They will enter the world to come as it is written the Lord preserveth Pethi and in the island cities a child is called Pathia and it is said also hew the tree down and destroy it yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth how then do I interpret that it shall leave them neither root nor branch that he shall not leave them unpunished the violation of a single precept or the remnant thereof i.e. even the most insignificant precept another interpretation root refers to the soul. And branch to the body, but as for young children of the wicked heathens, all agree that they will not enter the future world. And our Gamaliel deduces it from, and thou hast made all their memory perish. It has been said, an infant from when may he enter the future world? Our high and our Simeon be rabbi disagree. One maintained from birth, the other from when it spoke. The one who says that it is from birth derives it from the verse. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born. That he hath done this. The one who holds from when it spoke deduces it from the verse. A seed shall serve him. It shall be related of the Lord for a generation. It has been stated, Rabbi maintained from conception as it is written. A seed shall serve him. Our nominee be Isaac said from its circumcision, for it is written, I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up while I suffer thy terrors. I am distracted. It was taught on our Meir's authority from when he said, Amen, as it is written. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter and render not which keepeth the truth but which saith Amen Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin what is the meaning of Amen our Hanan said God faithful king therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure Rush said it means for him who leaves undone even a single statute our Yohanan said to him it is not pleasing to their master that you say thus to them but say who has not studied even a single statute and it shall come to pass that in all the land saith the Lord two parts therein shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein Rush said this means a third of the descendants of Shem said our Yohanan to him their master is not pleased that you say so of them but say thus a third even of all the descendants of Noah for I am married unto you and I will take you one of a city and two of a family Rush said this is meant literally said our Yohanan unto him. Their master is not pleased that you say so of them, but say thus one of a city means that his virtues shall benefit an entire city and two of a family will benefit the entire family. Arkahana sat before Rab and stated this is meant literally Rab said to him, Their master is not pleased that you say so of them, but say thus one of a city shall benefit an entire city and two of a family will benefit the entire family. He Rab then observed him dress his hair instead of paying attention to his studies and come and sit before Rab said he to him, and it shall not be found in the land of the living. He exclaimed, You curse me, he replied, I but side a verse which teaches the Torah shall not be found in one who attends to his own wants whilst studying it. It has been taught our Semi said it says, and I will take you to me for a people, and it is also said, and I will bring you in unto the land, etc. Their exodus from Egypt is thus likened to their entry into the promised land just as at their entry into the promised land there were but two out of six hundred thousand so at their exodus from Egypt there were but two out of six hundred thousand Rabbah said it shall be even so in the days of the Messiah for it is said and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt it has been taught our Eliezer son of our Jose said I once visited Alexandria of Egypt and found an old man there who said to me come and I will shoot thee. What my ancestors did to thine some of them they drowned in the sea some they slew by the sword and some they crushed in the buildings and for this Moses was punished as it is said for since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name he hath done evil to this people neither hast thou delivered thy people at all there upon the Holy One blessed be he said to him alas for those who are gone and no more to be found for how many times did I reveal myself to Abraham Isaac and Jacob by the name of El. Should I and they did not question my character nor say to me what is thy name I said to Abraham arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for I will give it unto thee yet when he sought a place to bury Sarah he did not find one but had to purchase it for four hundred silver shekels and still he did not question my character I said to Isaac sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee yet his servants sought water to drink and did not find it. Without its being disputed as it is said and the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen saying the water is ours still he did not question my character I said to Jacob the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it unto thy seed yet he sought a place to pitch his tent and did not find one until he purchased it for an hundred kezit and nevertheless he did not question my character nor did they say to me what is thy name and now thou sayest to me neither hast thou delivered thy People at all therefore now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh thou shalt behold the war against Pharaoh but not the war against the thirty one kings and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped what did
shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory ZB and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people etc. What is meant by for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty to those who obey his will and hope for his salvation I might think this applies to all therefore scripture states unto the residue of his people meaning unto those who make themselves as a remnant and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate and for a spirit of judgment this means to him who rules over his inclinations and to him that sitteth in judgment i.e. to him that renders an honest judgment according to the truth thereof and for strength this to him that prevails against his evil inclinations that turn the battle to those who engage in the battle of the Torah to the gate to those who appear morning and evening to the synagogue and house of study but the attribute of judgment protested before the Holy One blessed be he. Sovereign of the universe wherein do these differ from those he replied but they also have heard through wine and through strong drink are out of the way Paku Belilia they stumble in judgment now look at the root idea of Paku can only mean the Gehenna as it is said that this shall be no grief unto thee and Belilia can only refer to the judges as it is said and he shall pay as the judges determine mission of the inhabitants of a seduced city have no portion in the world to come as it is. Written certain men the children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city they are not executed unless the seducers are of that city and that tribe and the majority thereof are seduced and the seducers are men if women or minors seduced and if a minority were seduced or if the seducers were from without the city they are treated as individuals and two witnesses and a formal warning are necessary for each offender in this the penalty of Individuals is severer than that of a multitude, for individuals are stoned, therefore their property is saved, but multitudes are decapitated, hence their possessions are destroyed. Thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. A company of ass drivers or camel drivers passing from place to place saves it, destroying it utterly, and all that is therein, and the cattle thereof from this it was deduced that the property of the righteous which is within the city is destroyed, but that which is without is saved, whilst that of the wicked, whether within or without, is destroyed, and thou shalt gather all the spoil thereof into the midst of the public square thereof, etc. If it had no public square, one is made for it, if it was situated without the town, it is brought within it, as it is said, and thou shalt burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof, every whit for the Lord thy God, the spoil thereof implies, but not the spoil of heaven, hence it was ruled. The holy objects therein must be redeemed. The Torah allowed to rot, and the second tithe and the sacred writings hidden. The whole offering for the Lord thy God. Our Simeon said, The Holy One, blessed be He, declared, If ye execute judgment upon the seduced city, I will ascribe merit to you as though ye had sacrificed to me a whole offering, and it shall be a heap forever. Hence, it may not be converted into gardens and orchards. This is the view of our Hosea the Galilean. Our Akiba maintained it shall not be built again. Implies that it may not be rebuilt as it was, but may be converted into gardens and orchards. And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand. That the Lord may turn from the fierceness of His wrath and shew thee mercy. As long as the wicked exist in the world, there is fierce anger in the world. When the wicked perish from the world, fierce anger disappears from the world. Gemara, our rabbis taught, If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, saying they have gone out. This implies they but not their agents men the plural cannot mean less than two another explanation men implies but not women men but not minors the children of Belial denotes children who have thrown off the yoke of heaven from their necks from among you but not from a border town the inhabitants of their city but not the inhabitants of a different city saying teaches that witnesses and a formal warning are necessary for each offender it has been stated are Yohanan maintained one city might be divided among two tribes Reshlakish said one city might not be divided among two tribes are Yohanan asked Reshlakish unless the seducers are of that city and of that tribe surely it means though the seducers be of that city yet only if they belong to that tribe too does the law apply but not otherwise which proves that a city might be divided among two tribes no such a case is possible if a portion of the town came to them the seducers through inheritance or was gifted to them he further objected nine cities out of these two tribes surely it means four and a half from each thus proving that a city might be divided among two tribes no four from one and five from the other if so these should be specified Talmud, Ma Sanhedrin this is a difficulty the scholars propounded what if they were self-seduced in scripture right certain men have seduced the inhabitants etc it implies but not if they were self-seduced or perhaps the law holds good even if they were self-seduced come and here if women or minors seduced if they are treated as individuals but why so should it not be at least as though they were self-seduced no the latter are enticed through their own desires whilst the former are influenced by women and minors unless the majority thereof are seduced how is this encompassed our Judah said we judge and imprison judge and imprison said Ula to him and thou delayest the judgment of these but Ula said thus we judge and stone them and judge and stone it has been stated our Yohanan maintained we judge and stone them judge and stone them rush lakish ruled many courts of law are set up but that is not so for did not our Hamasan of our Jose say in our Ashai's name then thou shalt bring forth that man or that woman unto thy gates this teaches a man or a woman thou mayest bring forth to thy gates but not a whole city but many law courts are set up and the indictments examined but no verdicts pronounced then the accused are taken to the great Beth in their trials completed and they are executed thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city etc our rabbis taught if a company of ass drivers or camel drivers passing from place to place lodges therein and were seduced together with it if they had stayed there thirty days they are decapitated and their possessions destroyed if less they are stoned but their possessions unharmed an objection was raised how long must a stranger stay in a town that he may be as its citizen twelve months Rabbah answered there is no difficulty the latter period is necessary for one to be a full citizen the former to be regarded a town resident and it has been taught likewise he who forswears benefit from the citizens of a town is forbidden to benefit from anyone who has tarried twelve months therein but if less he is permitted if he forswears benefit from the residents of a town he may not benefit from anyone who has tarried there thirty days but if less he is permitted destroying it utterly and all that is therein etc our rabbis taught destroying it utterly and all that is therein this excludes the property of righteous men without the city and all that is therein this includes the property of righteous men within it the spoil of it teaches but not the spoil of heaven and all the spoil of it teaches that the property of the wicked without the city is included our Simeon said why did the Torah ordain that the property of the righteous within the city shall be destroyed what caused them to dwell therein their wealth therefore their wealth is destroyed the master said and all the spoil of it thou shalt gather includes the property of the wicked without it are his dog observed but only if it can be gathered therein to are his dog said entrusted objects of the inhabitants of a doomed city are permitted how so shall we say those belonging to another city and now within it is it then not obvious that they are permitted not being the spoil thereof if again the reference is to their own objects placed in another city in this case if they can be gathered therein to why are they permitted whilst if they cannot be gathered then surely he has already stated this once no after all it refers to objects of another city placed in this one but the circumstances are that the person to whom they were entrusted accepted responsibility for them i might think since he accepted responsibility they are as his therefore he teaches otherwise are his said Animal the property partly of a condemned city and partly of another is forbidden entirely though belonging partly to a condemned city and partly to another is permitted why so because an animal is as undivided whilst though is as though already divided are his stop propounded an animal of a condemned city does shechet out to purify it from the uncleanliness of nibble the divine law said thou shalt surely smite the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword hence it is all alike whether slaughtered ritually or killed or perhaps having been ritually slaughtered the shechet is efficacious to permit it what is the law this problem is to stand over our joseph propounded what of the hair of the righteous women within the condemned city rob asked this implies that the hair of the wicked women is forbidden surely scripture writes thou shalt gather and thou shalt burn denoting that which only lacks gathering and burning is forbidden for general use yet must be thus Destroyed, excluding this which needs cutting off, gathering, and burning. But said Rabbi, the problem refers to a wig. How so? If it is fastened to herself, it is as herself. It is necessary to propound this only if it is hanging on a nail, i.e., not being worn, is it as other property of the righteous within the town and destroyed, or perhaps since it is donned and doffed, it is as her garments. The problem is to st
Sacrifice and be sold and the money utilized for a free will offering are you and answered the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination Rush Lakish said it is the property of its owner the reference here being to dedicated animals for which the owner is responsible if lost or injured and the ruling according to our simian who maintained that such is the owner's property but since the second clause is our simians it follows that the first is not say then the reference is to sacrifices of lower sanctity and it agrees with our Jose the Galilean who maintained that such are the property of their owners but what of sacrifices of the highest sanctity are they to be redeemed if so the second clause instead of teaching that that which is dedicated to the temple repair must be redeemed should have drawn and taught a distinction in that very matter of his animals dedicated to the altar thus this law that the animals must die holds good only of sacrifices of lower sanctity but Sacrifices of the highest sanctity are to be redeemed since there is a sin offering among the latter which if its owner die must perish this cannot be stated as a general rule now it is intelligible that our Yohanan did not answer as Rush Lakish since it is written the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination but why did Rush Lakish not answer as our Yohanan he can reply to you when do we say the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination when they are in their original state but these sins. Their state is changed if the animal is redeemed are changed our Simeon said the cattle thereof implies but not the firstlings or tithes to what does this refer shall we say to unblemished animals then they are the spoil of heaven but if blemished they are the spoil of it Robin answered in truth the reference is to blemished animals but only that which is eaten as the cattle thereof is destroyed excluding these which are eaten not as the cattle thereof but as firstlings and tithes and are. Thus considered spoil of heaven now this Robin's answer conflicts with Samuel's for Samuel said in explanation of the same difficulty everything can be sacrificed and everything can be redeemed now what does this mean it means this that which is sacrificed if unblemished and redeemed when blemished is excluded by the spoil of it but that which is offered up if unblemished but not redeemed when blemished e.g. the firstling and the tithe is excluded by and the cattle thereof the terumeth must be allowed to rot our said this applies only to terumah in the hands of an Israelite but if in the hands of the priest being his property it must be burnt our Joseph objected the second tithe and the sacred writings must be hidden now the second tithe in the hands of an Israelite is as terumah in the hand of the priest yet it teaches they must be hidden but not burnt but if it our histas dictum was stated it was thus stated our histas said this applies only to terumah in the hand of it Priest, but Teramah in the hand of an Israelite must be given to a priest of another city. We learned elsewhere, though, of the second tithe is exempt from hell. This is Armeir's view, but the sages hold it liable. Arhista said this refers only to the second tithe in Jerusalem. Armeir maintaining that the second tithe is sacred property, whilst the rabbis regard the second tithe as secular property. But in the provinces, all agree that it is exempt. Our Joseph objected the second tithe and sacred writings must be hidden. To what does this refer? Shall we say to Jerusalem? But can it become a condemned city? Has it not been taught? Ten things were said concerning Jerusalem, and this is one of them. Visit cannot become a condemned city. But if it the second tithe was of another city and was brought up thither to Jerusalem, surely its barriers have received it. Hence, it must surely refer to the provinces. Yet it is stated they must be hidden. No, in truth, it is of another city and brought thither to. Jerusalem, but we deal with a case where it became defiled, and should it not be redeemed for our Eliezer said, Whence do we know that if the second tithe became defiled, it can be redeemed even in Jerusalem from the verse when thou art not able to bear it, then thou shalt turn it into money. Now Sef can only refer to eating as and he took and sent maize off messes unto them from before him. We deal with purchased commodities, Talmud, Moss and Hedron, but let them be redeemed, for we learned. If that which was purchased with the redemption dash money of the second tithe became defiled, it is redeemed. This agrees with our Judah who ruled it must be buried. If so, why particularly the second tithe of a condemned city? The same applies to any place in general, but in reality it refers to undefiled second tithe, the circumstances being that the barriers of Jerusalem had fallen, and this is in accordance with Rabbah's dictum for Rabbah said the law of the walls of Jerusalem and that it did. Second tithe must be eaten within them is biblical but that they have retaining power is merely rabbinical now when did the rabbis decree this only as long as the walls exist but if the walls are gone having fallen the decree does not hold good sacred writings must be hidden our mission does not agree with our Eliezer for it was taught our Eliezer said no city containing even a single mezuzah can be condemned why so because it says in reference thereto and thou shalt burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof every whit but if it contains a single mezuzah this is impossible because it is written ye shall not so do unto the Lord your God our Simeon said the Holy One blessed be he declared etc shall we say that they disagree in respect of the dictum of our Abin in our Eliezer's name for our Abin said in the name of our Eliezer wherever you find a general proposition in the form of a positive command and a particular specification in the form of a negative injunction they are not interpreted. As a general proposition followed by a particular specification one master agreeing with Abin's dictum while the other master rejects our Abin's dictum no all except our Abin's rule but here the ground of their dispute is this the one master maintains that it shall not be built od again implies not at all whilst the latter holds that od implies as it was formerly it may not be rebuilt but may be converted into gardens and orchards our rabbis taught if it contain trees already cut down before the city was condemned they are forbidden but if still growing in the soil they are permitted but the trees of a different city whether cut down or growing in the soil are forbidden what is alluded to by a different city are at Jericho for it is written and the city shall be accursed to the Lord and Joshua adjured them at that time saying curse be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth the city Jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn end in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. It has been taught neither Jericho with the name of a different town nor a different town under the name of Jericho. It is written in his days did heal the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundations thereof in Abiram his firstborn and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son's sake. According to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Joshua the son of Nun, it has been taught in Abiram his firstborn. He was wicked and so he could not have learned from his death. But in his youngest son's sake, he should have taken a lesson. What then did Abiram and Sekub do? This is its meaning from Abiram his firstborn. That wicked man he should have learned that its doors would be set up only with the death of Sekub his youngest son. Now since it is written in Abiram his firstborn, I know that Sekub was his youngest wife and state Sekub his youngest son. This teaches that he buried his children in succession from Abiram to Sekub. Now Ahab was. His close friend he and Elijah went to inquire after his welfare in the house of mourning he Ahab sat and remarked perhaps when Joshua pronounced his curse it was thus neither Jericho under a different name nor a different city by the name of Jericho Elijah replied that is so said he of Moses curse was not fulfilled for it is written and yet turn aside and serve other gods and worship them which is followed by and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain etc yet though that man set up idols upon every single furrow the rain did not permit him to go and worship them shall the curse of Joshua his disciple have been fulfilled straightway and Elisha the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand there shall not be due or rain these years but according to my word he prayed and the key of rain was given him upon which he arose and departed and the word of the Lord came unto him saying get thee hence and turn thee Eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning etc. Whence did they bring it? Rab Judah said in Rab's name from Ahab slaughterers and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now when God saw that the world was distressed because of the drought it is written and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise get thee to Zerfaith and it is further written and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman the mistress of the house fell sick Elijah prayed that the keys of resurrection might be given him but was answered three keys have not been entrusted to an agent of birth rain and resurrection shall it be said two are in the hands of the disciple and only one in the hand of the master bring me the other and take this one as it is written go shoe thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth a certain Galilean. Expounded before Arhista, if one should make an analogy in respect of Elijah, what does this matter resemble a man who locked his gate and lost the key?